King Grey, a king who owned everything in a world dominated by martial arts, spent the last moments of his life alone in an empty room with thousands of questions about the death that awaited him. At the last moment, he thought his life was over, but the light at the end of the road appeared. King was reincarnated and started a new life. Will his life still be as lonely as before? Let's wait together. Watching King's new journey after becoming a dog student, he thought he had ended his lonely life, although there were still many questions about the reason he died. But what greeted King Grey was the bright light at the end of the deep road. In his ears was a congratulation to a certain couple on the addition of a healthy son to their family. King Grey tried to open his eyes and look at him, listening to every sound. The compliments were close to his ears. Blurry image of a couple, he began to understand that the healthy boy in the strange woman's words was himself, causing him to strain his eyes as he watched the blurry image gradually become clear. What caught his eye was the image of a person. The beautiful woman is smiling happily. What a warm smile. Perhaps in your life before, you have never seen a smile like that. Surely, this is your mother. You are heard in this new world next to you. The man's voice said, Hello, little angel Ace, can I call Papa? So that's his new name in this world. He's happy to meet his Papa. But I wonder if he's too ambitious. Asking for a newborn baby, as he calls himself Papa, a new family gives him a feeling of happiness. He has a warm mother, Alice, and a trustworthy father, Jot, feels the difference between this life and a lonely life full of difficulties and dangers. Because the enemy is always lurking in the past. But sometimes, this is not so wonderful that a newborn baby feels very boring when the soul matures and the body he's so small that he only knows how to eat and sleep all day long. He tries to control the activities of his arms and legs to limit embarrassing situations. But, unfortunately, his body is still just that of a baby who needs attentive care down to every detail. He couldn't do anything but covered his face with his hands in those embarrassing situations. He was always curious about the world he was living in. His mother often went into the city to buy necessary items and carried him on her back every time. So he always observed attentively, and he realized that he had reincarnated into an ancient era when people often carried weapons with them. Strength-enhancing drugs were sold at a cheap price of only two coins everywhere, where Ace always firmly believes that his knowledge is enough to create strength, that he has mastered everything. But it doesn't take just one throw in the air from the silly old dad to make him exhausted thinking that the game is over. As he played and flew into the sky, his funny father immediately gave him a spinning gift. If Alice's mother hadn't stopped his joy, perhaps he would have had a chance to continue reincarnating into the next world. So he sought his mother's miraculous healing ability. In the end, he realized that he was still very young and green and could not fully understand this world. Sometimes, he thought about his life before he was born. As a king, with his military command, he challenged most countries in the world. You know that must be one of the reasons why he died early without knowing why. Don't forget that, I never felt proud of my achievements in my past life. But now, I'm extremely proud just because I was able to defeat Ba himself. A glorious victory, and like a handsome young man. He cares about his appearance, which is evident when, the first time he learned how to crawl, he went to the mirror and looked at his car wreck. To the surprise of his parents, he thought he was okay. Hyde didn't look away, he was satisfied. I can't even die, but I'm already thinking about the future with the ladies. I also have a small opinion about my current name. I think I was once a cool king, so my current name is too cool. Cute doesn't suit his old soul, but not long before the wind, he smiles crookedly because of the cuteness of his beauty in the mirror. Evil's daily work will surprise you during the day. He will pretend to be a baby. Well behaved, but when night fell after his mother kissed truck good night, he carried out the escape from the crib and went to the study room to read a book to look for more information about the world he was living in. He learned that he was born. Born in the desolate sand continent, with three large kingdoms deep in the jungle, the Efino kingdom deep underground, the dwarf kingdom, and finally the human kingdom of Sapin. This world also follows the empire. The monarchy was like Asia's previous world but less developed. Ace flipped through the pages of the book and was extremely interested in magic in this world. He realized that when he was in the old world, he was just like a nah in this world. Is that man exists around and cannot be obtained through rigorous training. Man can use many different methods, of which two common methods are body strengthening and using magic to strengthen the body. They use mana to strengthen your body to increase your defensive power and amazing agility. But the weakness is that the range of those abilities is limited and the magic part uses your mana to manipulate the world. Outside world to control the surrounding environment at will but must supplement the mana core inside the body with mana from the outside world to be able to do this. My mana is restored to others. Read the book and learn that the first awakening of a magician is at puberty, with knowledge of previous lives and mana in this life. He sat down with his hands clasped together, forming a circle that began to focus energy to form a mana core for himself. 
he was excited because it had worked at the crucial moment. Prison escapee by mistake, he was discovered by his mother, and was suspected of pooping. In the diaper, well the truth is that you pooped oh, the face of this emperor is gone forget the not so happy memories of the poop leak, it's been two years since Alice's mother came to this world, observing him from knowing that he likes to go to small shops, located in the center of the city to enjoy new things with magic weapons. Although he always feels that he is a difficult person to understand, but must admit that he is really a boy, and she I love you very much. Alice wishes she wouldn't pay too much attention to studying and studying, but it's too late. Alice is not only passionate about studying and studying, but look at him standing by the window, watching his father practice magic. She gasped in surprise when she saw her father waste three minutes of his life just to throw a few rocks. Alice came to the window where she was standing, rubbing her head and complaining about how her father had messed up her yard after so many years. As he watched, he realized that his father was a martial arts master. He was closing his eyes and feeling the slightest movement around him. When the leaf fell, that's when his body began to move with one punch and then a series of kicks. His body moved. With his last flexible move, he kicked the leather leaf away house facing fear, exactly the fear brought by the steps next to the window evil. We are so small the image of a great king with illustrious achievements. Many people are afraid he bent down and tried to put his mother down. He sat next to him, watched his series of innocent movements, then picked him up, gave him a kiss on the cheek, and planned to sleep. He fell asleep on the way to the bedroom, catching his attention. He bumped into the brightly lit study room. He whined to get his mother to let him read books like he couldn't. In the end, the once great king used her secret trick to coddle Alice, who fell in love with that cuteness, and agreed to let him play in the study room. While she was focused on her book, Alice quickly turned around to stop her husband from adding any more plants. The room started to check on his training process. He had made a lot of progress in forming his Manana Corps in the past two years. Once he had successfully moved tens of thousands of mana fragments in his body and directed them to slowly gather towards the center of his body. He understood why people could form mana properly until they reached puberty. Naturally, this process was quite a challenge for both his mind and body, and now he had found the final piece for his mana core. There was an explosion that blew away the roof of the house, causing Freed his mother was out in the garden extremely frightened. Behind them was a huge fire. Rose asked and checked on Alice's safety. Alice's eyes widened when she realized her son was still there. Renos was extremely frightened when she saw him. Knowing that Ace was in the house, he gritted his teeth and used all his strength to run straight into the fire, in the hope that his little son was still safe. He used both hands to remove all obstacles in front of him, his eyes glazed over. Mr. Kwai knelt down. He smiled in pain. He mistakenly thought it was a smile of bewildered surprise, when in front of his eyes was a son who seemed to be dead, but was hovering over the middle stage with light covering the ruined floor, drowning out a boy, not yet three years old. He succeeded in creating his mana core, while his biological mother had not yet regained his spirit. Ace returned to his normal state with a satisfied face, because he had his mana core. His right hands were facing the sky, feeling everything around him. Today was so wonderful that he suddenly stopped at the scene of ruins where he was standing. Who was it that had the audacity to destroy a king's castle? Was he attacked? He wondered to himself, not knowing that it was he who caused this scene. He was a vigilant since he was young. After that victory, he had a new home. His mother taught him to read and write. Thanks to that, he learned the core of using and enhancing Manana in this one year. He convinced his father to agree to guide him in training from then on instead of living a life of just eating and sleeping like before. He started by following his father jogging on the roads to perform exercises to help his body stay healthy and long. On his third birthday, his father gave him a wooden sword. Renos was a gift to him, a great dad at least from the moment he burst through the door and took him to sword practice while he was absorbed in the pages of his books. He didn't deny that he had talent in swordsmanship. Look at how easily he avoided the paths. The sword he swung out with a smile on his face. He encouraged him to try harder, knowing his father wouldn't let him rest. If his sword couldn't touch him, he closed his eyes and concentrated. Man Navong made a sharp slash. The sharp edge broke the tree branch in his father's hand when he was still surprised and didn't know what had just happened. Now he could escape from his father and continue with the research process. His father blocked him from entering the room. Sitting quietly on a familiar bed concentrating all senses, he is in the process of filtering the mana core. The lighter the mana core is the purer and more powerful the mana core will be purified from black, red, tamam, yellow, and white each stage, divided into three shades of dark gray and light. At the end of this process, you will have a super mana core. You are immersed in thoughts about a future with a good mana core. When your mother's voice rings out, it means it's time to eat. At this moment, he wasn't hungry but just angry because he felt like he didn't have private time to study what he wanted. While he was angry and used the meaning of fighting with the food, 
His father was holding his head and grimacing. Talk to your mother about needing to find you a tutor. It's more suitable. Looked, sometimes it's the opposite of what Reno's thinks. Alice is extremely angry at her husband's suggestion. The fight between the couple about whether or not they should hiring a tutor for evil officially begins. It turns out that all this time Gino still hasn't been shocked by Asia's ability to control Mena at only four years old. He has tried his best to hold back this power out of fear. His small body can't withstand that strength, so he hires a tutor for his son. Why is this couple arguing so much? Hiring a tutor means that you will have to go to a strange city, thousands of miles away, and Alice can't accept this okay. If you two can't decide then to decide, he used his small hand to hit the tabletop, quickly attracting the attention of the two soldiers. His father asked seriously, What is your opinion on whether you want to go to the big city and learn from a real teacher and not an amateur like him? It's a rare opportunity when the godfather allows you to decide this for yourself. I don't know that he is very trust him, or is it because he wants to avoid war with his beloved wife that he gives the devil such a heavy ball? Swallow the half-eaten piece of meat and ask his parents to go with him to meet the teacher. Asia has made a choice. The family will go to XR US together with the joy of the parents about a new plan to dispel the mother's worries, and the father's desire to transfer him is quite steep when he overhears what his parents have prepared. It was over for the family's three-week trip. The night before the journey began, he was still engrossed in the pages of a book when suddenly his mother discovered him, and he reluctantly crawled under the blanket, wondering about the early journey. Then expected, his parents' old group of friends from Tawan Horn's group also came, Cyrus. His family will go with them. Mom kissed Boring and told him not to stay up late reading books. If you want, you can bring according to some rights tomorrow. I'll know the group to win, H. Orange their group consists of two conjurers and three air, they are nearby and once helped the family rebuild the house after the explosion. The year he is three years old tomorrow, finally Ace will leave town quietly have lived for the past four years to see what this world has in store for him. Welcome Dawn is a new beginning, the whole family walks on the road out of town to meet up with the group talents from afar to Ace's family and they wave goodbye to each other. His father gave Adam a warm hug as a thank you for letting his family accompany him under the encouragement of Ace's father. He put his hands in front of his chest and bowed his head like a true gentleman. He introduced himself by name and thanked them for letting his family come with him. Adam Warrior used his spear to pat his head and humorously wondered if he was his father's son or not because he was too polite and his father didn't have time to figure out what the question meant when he was picked up and he blushed when Angela the magician wrapped his face in her chest. What was this unexpected fun? He blushed and had difficulty breathing. Before he could enjoy it for long, he was grabbed by his shirt and suspended in midair by Din Walker, an earth magic mage. A tall, giant black man picked him up and put him down. The land is safe. His cheerful face looks like an upside-down dog waiting for praise from his owner. The wind blows the leaves from the trees and flutters. His eyes are directed towards a girl with black hair and red eyes. That is Jasmine, Flames Goose Keen. Bin Song Hedge, maybe she's the introverted type. So after their eyes met, she turned around and got into the carriage. Helen's greeting from the magic warrior rang out in her ears after getting to know each other. The group loaded their belongings onto the carriage and began their journey to Exerus. On the journey to Asia, they witnessed firsthand the abilities of the members of the group. Everyone with their skills quickly destroyed the herd. Ferocious wolves gathered in the night that gathered together around the fire contrary to everyone's laughing. Eating and drinking happily Ace was frowning at Helen San. They thought that a four-year-old boy like him must be very tired, she wondered. Wondering about the truth from Zeno's boast about him that he was a natural magician and that he had actually awakened a year ago. While he was chatting with Helen, Sir Adam stood up with the desire to stretch his legs. A little bit first, when he went to bed and mentioned to his father that he wanted to borrow him to play for a bit. Yes, you heard right. An experienced spear warrior wanted to play with a four-year-old sword. He didn't know if he would play dead or not. No, I heard that. I thought to myself, if you like, go play by yourself. I won't continue, but life is not like a dream. Your old father gave you to Adam with a short, careful message. Perhaps while, well, hey, you're thinking about the question. When you first met Adam, is he your father? He was sitting with his face as a mystic holding a sword. Then a second later he was carried away hopelessly in the thoughts of people in this world. In this world, surely four-year-old children can be warriors instead of being sheltered and hidden to see that he was preparing to fight a warrior right now. Adam put the wooden sword on his shoulder and grinned wickedly, asking if he was okay. Are you ready? Ace swings his hands. Warm up with wooden sword in hand. Get ready to fight Adam. Adam puts on a fighting stance and asks if he knows how to enhance weapons. Doesn't answer this question. Ace uses his face. My loved one turned to the group of heartless adults to ask for help. But unfortunately he was overwhelmed. They were eagerly waiting for the match to worry about him again. 
They strained their eyes and tried to send brainwaves to their old dad. Please save him. He was about to be killed, but he must have forgotten that the person who took him to the scaffold was his father who was asking for help. Oh, how cold it is. His father clenched his hands and shouted, Please take Adam down. Decided to give up asking for help. He turned his head to look straight at the sword, concentrating his spirit and accumulating man now, with the will to be the king of his previous life, full of real combat experience. He was ready to get into a fighting position and immediately attacked Adam. He used the momentum to step on it. Big Steps flew up with the wooden sword in his hand rushing towards Adam, who was standing confidently waiting to block his attack at the moment he suspected he was about to strike Adam raised his sword to block, but the ace suddenly disappeared and immediately appearing behind Adam. He thought he would immediately strike, but he didn't. His small body, playing with suit, almost ate grass. After a moment of surprise, A.D. regained his wicked smile, looked at Ace, swung his sword, and slashed horizontally. Adam's stomach, but blocked him immediately. Adam counterattacked, and of course, with his experience, Ace quickly escaped from Adam's surprise. He used an iron attack to hit Adam's left side, causing him to fall. Before he could regain his composure, he had received the next attack from the evil. Adam rolled around to avoid it, and swung the spear towards Ace when he first touched the ground after the attack. The overwhelming light suddenly remembered Newton's third law, and he knew he was about to fall on his butt in pain. After the impact, he was thrown far away. His mother's screams sounded in his ears. He propped himself up and sat up. In the distance, Adam was being hit by the ground. Pat your head because he's being harsh with you, right, Adam? He's really an idiot who would use all his strength on a four-year-old child just to stretch his muscles. Before going to sleep, Adam yelled at everyone to respond to Zeno's words about drowning, doesn't know how to fight, and asked Zeno's how he trained him to turn him into a monster. But his father claims he really didn't teach him that mother runs to Ace, using her ability, healed his wounds, and blamed him for secretly learning the dangerous things he had just used in the last match. The pale-faced Ace quickly gave an explanation to calm mother's anger, that he had learned it from his father, and read some books hearing that all eyes were surprised to turn towards him, Jasmine and Adam, demanded that he teach him to move like the way he used Ace, tried to use the most innocent face, could have taught them about this technique. But the result was that Jasm fell helplessly to the ground. Adam was even worse, his head stuck into the tree. In front of Asia's panic, many days had passed. Since their journey began, Asia's birthday just passed. He received many gifts and lessons from everyone. Jazza became more open when he received from her a birthday gift of a knife. At the same time, he also had training sessions for Adam Helen and his father. Everyone made a lot of progress. The most surprising thing was probably Jasmine. She learned a few new techniques. The relationship between the members of the group grew stronger. Becoming closer together, they bathed together on the banks of the stream and did tricks with cows chasing each other while wearing only their long-distance skirts while passing through a valley while while reading a book. Their convoy was surrounded and attacked by a group of robbers armed with bows and arrows. Fully armed, they ambushed fuck everywhere. The leader ordered an attack to keep the children and women. Women to make goods to sell at high prices. His previous life was filled with many ups and downs. After reincarnating, he got used to the care and protection of his family. So for a moment, he forgot that no matter where he was, he always existed. Scum people like these robbers get mad when they hear them likening him. And everyone else to goods. His hands clutching the sword his eyes full of hatred, looking at them in front of him. His mother was scared and she rushed in to hug him, took him and comforted him as his emotions gradually stabilized. Outside, the robbers had begun to attack. Dong also shot arrows towards his father's convoy, and the men in the convoy gathered to rush forward to shield him. And the women from above the robbers shot arrows at his carriage, and Angela's mother used the wind to blow away the arrows. Helen also joined in and she shot arrows at the robbers, surprising them, and his father too constantly attacking the group of robbers while he was defeating two robbers. A robber suddenly appeared and swung a sword behind him. Mai, on behalf of Helen, appeared and dealt a fair blow to the robber Jasmine and Adam attacked and destroyed. Many Adam defeated a tough opponent with a knockdown from a familiar long spear. Jasm female warrior with a short knife in her hand frightened the robbers when a blonde pervert appeared and looked at her. With greedy eyes, he swung the whip at her, but with her technique, she was able to dodge this direction. Standing from afar, he observed everything, and saw the disadvantage falling on Jasmine's side, but he was worried, and wanted to help. She crashed the carriage, he and his mother were hiding and broke in half. His father lay down and collapsed. After fighting with the bandit leader, he screamed at his mother and asked her to heal his father or he would die. Mother's hands were shaking. She said she couldn't, could use his powers and his father also comforted her, that he was fine just doing what she could and rest assured he turned around and told him that he would hold out against the leader who couldn't protect them. 
He gave you this important responsibility. He told you to take your mother and run in the opposite direction. And don't stop. Don't accept this. You can't abandon your father. Convince him that you can fight and help him. Protect his mother and kill the enemy Rose comforts him. He believes he can fight. And that's why he entrusted her to him to protect. He says he not only protects his mother, but also protects the baby in her womb. Now he having just found out that his mother was pregnant, he now understood the reason why she was often tired on the trip and how she could not use all her strength to treat his father's wounds. With steadfast eyes, he looked at his father and affirmed, promised that he would protect his mother while she healed his father and prepared his weapons. His father signaled him to ask if he was ready. That was also when the leader discovered that his mother was an extremely valuable commodity. Ignoring the leader who ordered his henchmen to focus on attacking his mother, he was determined to capture her as soon as possible. He held his mother's hand and pulled her away, leaving his father and everyone behind trying to stop the bandits from taking advantage of the opportunity. While giving mother and child time to escape, a robber suddenly appeared behind Adam and quickly approached to stop and urge him. He quickly ran away, grabbed his mother's hand, and ran quickly down the road. Suddenly he felt danger from behind. An arrow came towards him. He took out his wooden sword and blocked it, breaking it in half before the archer's surprise. Helen quickly assisted and defeated him. She urged him to continue running. He discovered something extremely strange about the Ami. There are four magicians, but only three are fighting so where is another magician? Suddenly, the leader screams who is he talking to exactly the last magician? What is he preparing to end his life? Damn this group of people you saw him, the last mage. He stood high up concentrating his mana into a circle and planning to shape that ball down on you and your mother in a split second your head, started calculating you knowing for sure that even if he could avoid this attack with mana, his mother could not avoid it, he decided to choose push his mother into the ball, and used the mana rope to pull the magician down to the bottom of the abyss. That bastard tried to grab a rock to avoid falling, but he couldn't. The giant tried to save Ace with his magic rock, but he couldn't reach Ace fell into the abyss, leaving behind the scream. After his mother's miserable cries, and everyone's shock. He smiled knowing that he had succeeded. Tears of regret welled up in the corners of his eyes. He always wanted to be a good brother, but maybe he no longer had that chance. While falling, images of his previous life gradually revealed that the world in that life was chaotic, with problems such as low birth rates, resource depletion, and war being resolved by fighting, or, or a duel of the king. And the ace is one of them, you are a king. But the truth is the rulers are the council members, they are the ones who manage the country both politically and economically. Ace had enough of that, and one day he decided to leave the golden throne in that world. He spent his whole life chasing the illusion of being the strongest, and then got nothing. Glory, glory, moon. In the end, Ace is still an orphan who lost everyone he loved, and at that time, he hoped that if given the chance he would give up everything to return to Beer just to see them again. But that was not the case. Could it be the end? Could it be that you're dead? Look at the beautiful sunset sky, the light seeping through the leaves, and I realize that you're still alive, but the robber wasn't so lucky. He's already dead, and you're too tired. His consciousness gradually sank into the darkness, not knowing how much time had passed. A leaf gently fell on his face, waking him up. He looked around and saw things scattered around. He dragged himself to grab things that could fill his stomach later. Then he fell asleep again. And when he woke up he felt better and tried to stand up with his body covered in wounds and still couldn't believe he was still alive after that fall. Where is this place? I really don't know. And he didn't know how long he had been here. He only knew that he had to try to leave here as soon as possible. Suddenly, a voice from somewhere came into his ears and asked in surprise, Are you awake? He thought that the robber's corpse was talking to him, but no. It was a strange question of concern from somewhere he had not yet discovered. The mysterious person comforted him not to be afraid and affirmed that the corpse would not wake up. Hearing that, he breathed a sigh of relief, jumped into the air, waved the knife and asked the owner of the voice, was he the one who saved him? He had to go to this person's hidden place to be able to know the evil suspicions. But when he heard the mysterious person say he could help him get home, he began to waver in the image of his parents appearing in his younger brother. His unborn baby, he began to speak softly and hoped the mysterious person would lead the way so he could meet sooner. The mysterious person complimented the district but complained a bit when he called a lady sir and accepted to lead the way. He came next to her, a source of energy passed into his body, helping his eyes to see where the mysterious person wanted him to go. His eyes were red with pain. His hand was raised in space. A clear image appeared. Surely, this is where the mysterious person's spell resides. You must take advantage of it, while it's still light and quickly go to the place that has been directed all the way. Always wondering what kind of magic the mysterious person used to be able to save you at such a high level. So why only save yourself? The more you think about it, the more your head hurts. Then you just keep walking with your little feet. 
Finally, you have reached the place you need to go. In front of you is the place that appeared in the image guiding you. Climb over. Discovering a clear stream on the cliff, I quickly jump down to wash off all the dirt and blood stains. What a gentleman. Even if his clothes are tattered, he still must be clean and fragrant, while he is absorbed in the river of tears. The mysterious person's voice rang out again, accompanied by a laugh of delight when seeing him so carefree and adorable. Ace's face turned red, and he grabbed his shirt to cover the areas that needed to be covered. The mysterious person comforted him that there was nothing worth seeing. Should I worry that these words are like an invisible knife stabbing into the broken heart of the once great but is now so pathetic? The point is that he is only four years old, and there is really nothing to see. Swallowing his tears, he consoled himself and calmly got dressed and continued on his way, drinking spring water and eating wild berries to provide energy for his body to continue the journey. He guessed he was in the territory of God. The elves in this forest must be elk, but strangely, he didn't see any fog like everyone said. He had gone quite a distance. The fear of having to go through the open forest of wild animals had disappeared when he only saw caves. The small thing's fear was gradually replaced by the longing for his parents, the desire to return to his family. The fear that his mother would panic thinking that he was dead, that it could affect his younger siblings, he hoped. They were still alive after a long trip. Now appearing before his eyes was a rocky cave. He stepped through the small opening and went inside. He started to get scared, not knowing who was waiting inside, but he thought of his father. His mother was determined to return to them to help him walk more steadily inside the cave. It was not as easy to walk as he thought the mysterious person had just told him to be careful. His foot stepped on a rock. A slipped and fell from a height of two floors. His face was pale and painful. He wished that someone had warned him about this height early. He would have fallen less painfully than freely falling in surprise like this. He stood up, brushed his clothes, and continued walking. Oh no, continue. This time he slipped and fell, not because he slipped on a rock but because he was frightened by the image in front of him. What was this monster? A large black body with two tall horns and glowing red eyes. At this moment, a familiar voice rang out, as if to confirm to Ace that this was the mysterious person who saved him. Ace's mouth opened wide. His eyes were scared and dull, making the mysterious person unable to do anything more than remind him to calm down with a threat if he continued to open his mouth wide so she can't guarantee that there won't be anything flying into the hook's mouth or if her claws come out with a threat, making him afraid and retreating back, he thought she would do something harmful to him. But she really wanted to heal his wound then she said that she would try to create a space portal strong enough to bring Ace home, which would take a long time but in the meantime Ace could eat things the special fruit can help him survive until a crack is formed, according to the instructions of the mysterious person. Inside the cave, there are many different types of sparkling fruits. Her appearance may be a bit scary, but from when he fell down the cliff, until now, she really helped him a lot. He thanked the mysterious person and went forward with the fruits he had been told. He planned to pick a shiny round fruit with his image reflected on the peel of the fruit. I remember when his parents suddenly crushed a fruit with his own. It turned out that the mysterious person was standing behind him, trying to advise him on a better fruit, but advised her to choose a more appropriate approach next time. It's more appropriate, but like this, I'm also scared but I don't say anything to the four-year-old young man who has just experienced a lot of fear. They sat together to enjoy the meal after being full. He cautiously asked how to address her. Her name is Sylvia O.K. The two of them were like two friends who hadn't seen each other for a long time. The questioner and the answerer continued to ask. The initial fear gradually dissipated. Walking in ace, all the questions were answered. It turns out this is the area between Beast R and the Forest of Ulshire. No one knew about this place, so Sylvia was able to avoid being disturbed and Ace was the one who set foot there. This is the first time Sylvia tells that she is here alone simply because she has no one to be with anymore. There are many people who come to Sylvia to challenge her for something she has in the last battle Sylvia has achieved. She escaped, but the wounds on her body were the price of freedom, and in the end, Sylvia answered why she saved him. To be honest, she didn't know maybe it was because she was touched by the sacrifice. And your courage, or simply she feels lonely now, her wounds are cracking and spreading she can't open door in this condition, Sylvia decided to go rest and start trying that's tomorrow afternoon. I wish Sylvia good night. I follow every photo of Sylvia and constantly think about the loneliness she has endured all these years. Maybe just like you in your previous life, there's nothing else. Loneliness surrounded her. She turned around to inform her that she couldn't see exactly where his family had gone but she assured him that his family and friends were safe after hearing what she said. Ace choked with joy, because he knew everyone was still safe. So the day they met was not far away. Tears streamed down his plump face. He smiled contentedly, thanking Sylvia later when she was busy. 
Busy in making the gate, then she would practice. They spent hours together, just talking about all sorts of random things. When Sylvia wasn't busy working on the gate, hours and days and weeks passed slowly understanding Sylvia. Even though she never tells she is the clearest proof of the saying that you should never judge a good or bad book just by its appearance. With you, you can feel that Sylvia is a kind, gentle, patient, and warm person, like right now. Here while you are accumulating mana, she is picking food ready for you. Sylvia kindly asks if you have eaten yet, and gives you delicious fruits that she has just found. She is very much like your mother, gentle, warm, and kind. But also very strict when he made a mistake, remember when he was angry when talking about the robbers who had torn his family apart, showing his determination to chase them until death. He was snapped by Sylvia with two fingers. Falling back in surprise, howling like a swallow, his eyes widened in surprise. He dropped the bag. At that moment, he was extremely confused. He kept wondering why she did that. She taught him a big lesson, advising him not to let his eyes fall, covered by hatred, because then all the suffering is yours alone to endure. Instead, Sylvia advised him to live proudly and look forward, learn from failures, don't let hatred cloud your mind. Learn ask the right word from CH and face the future with a smile, because then you will truly win. The things she said will help you think differently about life. Of course, you won't forget the painful feeling. Because of the spark that day, perhaps because she was so engrossed in thinking that she forgot to eat, Sylvia called him many times but did not see him respond. Her eyes showed concern and concern, fearing that something was wrong with him. Ace grinned and rubbed his head to hide his embarrassment and replied to her that he was fine. He looked at Sylvia and noticed that her wound was gradually getting worse. The crack was spreading more and more. Red blood stained the wound. Sylvia comforted Ace, told him not to worry because it was always like that. Then she changed the topic to him. She was curious. Why did he have the mana core so early and could even use it more effectively than adult mages who barely knew how to answer? After all, Ace has lived a second life. Aids complacently replied that it was all because he was born a genius. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw Sylvia lean closer and guessed that you could learn how to meditate and absorb mana while moving, even when fighting. If you're good, look at the way Sylvia just showed off her eyes, mouth, and mouth, surprised and asked her why. It can be done. Sylvia explains that people don't understand mana well. Everything is spontaneous and small and ineffective. In the end, it takes a lot of effort, I heard. Tried concentrating mana in my hand according to Sylvia's words, but it didn't work. Can be done according to Sylvia because people wake up late, it is difficult to use this way, but because Ace wakes up early, if you practice hard, maybe you will succeed. Listen, Ace smiled and affirmed his determination to try his best. My strength, blood pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure. Sylvia laughed happily and affirmed that it was natural. Several days later, Ace practiced mana control under Sylvia's guidance. He finally did it. Ace shouted with joy. But he, he only saw Sylvia collapsing right next to the crack she had created, blood flowing down her body. Overwhelmed with pain, he couldn't believe his eyes. He shouted her name and ran to see blood everywhere she lay. He cried as he tried to flip him over, using the skill she taught him to concentrate his mana, using all the strength he had to flip Sylvia, and he was shocked to see her injury, not knowing when it had become so serious. Standing in a pool of blood, Sylvia's motionless body was next to him, he looked up and saw the crack she had completed. The memories of the past were deeply chained together. He knelt down. His body felt like it was about to collapse when he realized that he had created it. The gate that Sylvia's wound led to became worse. He cried in regret, knowing that because of him, she came to this point. Smothering her sobs, Sylvia's hand hugged him and comforted her, saying she only hurts a little, just a little bit, everything will be okay. But how can I believe that he cried, sobbing in frustration, saying how can it be okay when Sylvia died just because of you? She cried so much because she didn't want to admit the truth. He cried like a fool the child Sylvia doesn't have much time left, revealed her original form, a beautiful purple-eyed white dragon. She was extremely surprised to hear that. Sylvia said that she needed to use her original form to complete the gate, and now her enemies would come. Hurry, there's not much time left to answer the question. Sylvia came to the gate and completed it. Light flashed. Sylvia gave Ace a glowing egg. Surprised, she held the egg. Sylvia said, you can kept it. And then she pulled a feather from her body and gave it to him to hide the halo emitted from the last egg. Sylvia told him to endure and used her head to touch his arm, to drown out the pain, painfully enduring a series of strange glowing patterns clinging to his arm. That was the key that Sylvia gave him to answer all the questions that he was having in his mind when it was time to look and discover Sylvia at this moment. Her purple eyes had turned silver, as if signaling that her lonely life was about to end. Sylvia quickly opened the space gate and urged him to quickly go somewhere with humans because her enemy was about to come, and the two of them were not enough. The strength to fight them had just ended. 
The ceiling of the cave began to collapse. A person with a strange shape appeared, asking Sylvia to hand over something and they would heal her. Ace was hidden under Sylvia's wings. In order to hide their eyes, Sylvia pushed him through the door and confessed that she had deliberately delayed the time to complete the door to be with him longer. I hope he will forgive me and before leaving, I hope he calls her ma'am. Both of their tears flowed down their cheeks. At the last moment, they shouted out loud, Grandma. Sylvia smiled contentedly with a thank you. Surely Sylvia felt more secure when at the last moment of her life, she had a companion and a little egg was there. There is a place to hide from his enemies. He fell out of the gate. His small hand reached up to the sky. He wished he could reach out to take her with him. But that was not possible. The sunset light poured down under the canopy of the ace tree. Holding back the tears in his heart, he knew that Sphia was really gone, and he would never be able to see her again. Thinking about it, he screamed in despair and pain. The only response he got was the sound of rustling leaves. The startled sound of the birds chirping and occasionally drowning out his voice, he reached out to wipe the tears running down his face. At this moment, in his mind, there were only memories of the months and days spent together in the cave for a while. It's been a long time, but it's only been a moment. You know S. See you as a family that teaches you the things you need to know. I'm immersed in a stream of thoughts. Suddenly somewhere, there's a voice called Sia's voice. I'm spinning around, looking for her silhouette. If you don't see it, then Svia has transferred his will to you as a parting gift. It will help you become a magician in the future if you know how to use it properly, and when your mana core turns white you will receive it. Received Svia's last message, she promised to explain everything. Until then Sia's goodbye words echoed in his ears, goodbye King Grey. Thousands of questions flowed into Ace's head after the goodbye. At that moment, she wondered how long Shia had known about his true identity. How did she know that there were so many questions that needed to be answered? But she couldn't get the answers. At least not until now that she had been wrapped in evidence. Svu's feathers on his hand pushed the inference. You know that if you only focus on revenge, this life of yours will be no different from previous lives. Your job now is to move forward, move forward, suddenly. Suddenly he stopped, he was extremely confused because he did not know where he was surrounded by ancient trees, the light could not even penetrate through the tree canopy. He stepped back and gathered manna all over his body and jumped up into the tree. Opposite, he looked far away, but only one thing was clear. He was in a forest surrounded by only trees, and the trees jumped from one tree to another thanks to the magical circulation technique. What Libya taught him was that he could use magic much faster. But then he couldn't stop asking why he was being transferred here. It said that he would be transferred closer to where there were humans, secretly drowning out his hopes. He could find the earliest humans passing through the trees of the forest, and then he realized that climbing seemed to be his profession. He looked almost like a monkey now as he was complacent about his ability to climb. His rower heard a scream echoing from afar. He turned around in surprise and was happy because it was the sound of a girl's lustful nature awakening. He quickly moved towards the source of the sound and looked down. Under the canopy of the tree, he saw the girl next to him and a few men with him. He hoped they could give him a shout. But wait, something was wrong. He moved closer, perked up his ears, and listened to every sound. The girl's voice screamed as if she was being gagged. Right next to it, there was the sound of a man asking his accomplices to keep the girl quiet. A loud noise was heard. The girl was unconscious. Four men were farting. Chatting among themselves, they discussed leaving the forest faster and were sure that in just a few days, they could leave this damn forest. It turned out that the girl was an elf, and they thought she would get a very high price. Not to mention that this girl is so young. She must still have all the money intact. It's no joke. The leader asked his accomplices to be quiet and quickly put the girl in the back of the car. Then he quickly prepared to leave. On the tree branch, Ace was furious. His hands clutched the tree trunk. Maybe he was angry when thinking about the similar scene of his mother and son that day. Surely they were bastards specializing in slave trading. Ace's face darkened, and he stared. Pay attention to the unconscious girl they carried away. The girl with white hair is extremely beautiful. My love is here. Everyone, the slave trader's convoy started to depart. The car was pulled away by the dogs in the forest. The forest crossed the roads, they were leisurely carrying the loot on the cart, not knowing how they could tame the wolf. But he knew that if he had one of them, it would be the condition to help him quickly escape. Leaving this forest, he still followed the convoy. He hid himself in the trees, and he knew that in order to get home safely, he needed to calculate more carefully. It was necessary to destroy these human traffickers. But he did not act rashly. At this moment, dealing with these four pig-headed men to dry blood was too much for him. He watched them silently and quietly waiting for the right opportunity like an animal on the hunt. At this moment, just waiting was happiness at night. Letting go, he took the opportunity to focus on gathering mana and wait until his body was strong enough. 
You would attack the gorillas as soon as they were caught off guard. Ace opened his eyes wide. He knew that the opportunity had come. He reached out to pick one. Wild fruit. He used it to distract the attention of the wolf pack, to pull the wolf pack's cart. I'm afraid the whole forest will wake up from their screams, and of course, then their escape from the forest could end up in the sea. Their attempt to disperse their forces was successful. The lone mulberry took the big piece of meat away. Go to the wolf pack to feed them to extinguish the sound of Chu Cross in the night on the branch of the ace tree. Concentrate mana in your right hand, turn it into a sharp blade, and when the long mulberry is making nonsense advise the wolves to eat their horns. Then Ace appeared, and in just a blink of an eye, he rushed forward like a missile and instantly cut off the long-bearded man's neck, leaving him unable to utter any sound, took the dagger from the long-bearded man's body, and he became became a delicious night's meal for the seven wolves, pulling the cart of their fat accomplice. No say turned around and saw that the wolves had quieted down, but after waiting for a long time, he still couldn't see the long-bearded man. Turning back, he stood up and ran to the back. He thought he was his friend. I was busy watering the plants. But then a small noise rang out. He turned around in panic. Only for a split second evil appeared. Behind him, his hand covered the fat man's mouth, and the sharp blade was brought across his neck, ending the life of the second trafficker. Overcoming the difficulty of breathing, his small body fought harder than he thought, so he had to try to solve it quickly while the other two still didn't know anything. But life is not like a dream. The girl who was knocked out in the car was awake. Um. Oh, who's there? Uh, she's screaming so pitifully, not knowing if she's giving birth or not, but he feels so bad that he's so speechless that he laments. Why is it now? His body is already tired, and the traffickers won't. If you're still as negligent as before, you won't discover the traces of the long-haired guy and the fat guy. If you want to continue eliminating them, you'll hear the noise of the two remaining traffickers sleepily coming out of the tent. They're calling the names of their accomplices. As if there was no one to respond, the surrounding area was silent. His accomplices also did not respond to the call, catching the attention of the leader on both sides, rushing into the fight, swinging a long sword to drown, holding the dagger to block him and standing on tiptoe to take advantage. When the first guy was surprised to see the boy's small form, he gave his leg a long wound. The third guy had already finished dealing with this wound, he couldn't do anything to him. He screamed in pain, attracting attention. The other trafficker's idea was that he told his companions to warn the other person that he was a magician. Hearing that, the long-haired man smiled happily and dropped his sword, concentrating mana on his hands, step by step, walking closer and looking at him like looking at the expensive new item falling from the sky, thinking that he was worth more than the elf girl they had captured. He suddenly disappeared in front of his eyes and appeared right behind him, thinking that he would catch him right away. The first shot but oh la look at it, my ace was able to avoid it. He was excited about that, but within a few seconds, he was hit with a kick to the face. While he was still surprised when he saw the dagger of Ace, silently thought it was over. Then he picked up Ace's dagger and happily complimented his trick. Immediately after that, he threw it at him with such incredible speed that he didn't have time to avoid the attack, and he fell down. Mango on the ground, the long-haired man reached out and grabbed his leg, muttering that he was his bag of gold. An expensive commodity that he had just picked up, he grabbed him and hung him in the middle of the air. I advised him to give up because with, with that small body he couldn't do anything right at that moment. He started calculating he thought condensing the mana into a blade seemed similar to Geo's magic in this world, so fire magic also has I can't do that. Evil concentrated his mind and concentrated the man enough fire right where the long-haired mage's hand was lying under his bewildered curiosity. You exploded the bomb. Goodbye, dear doll. Goodbye, pretty left hand. Congratulations on winning and holding his hand. He went crazy. Looking at his lost arm, the hand screamed that you would die at his hands. Now he no longer cares about the need to preserve you like a rare commodity. He there was only one thought in his mind, how to send him back to his ancestors. He shouted a little too early, but before he could finish his sentence, his dagger flew through his neck, sending him off to the land of paradise with his companions. I'm the only one left alive whose legs were crippled by you, and I'm pitifully begging you to spare my life, but there's no way you'll forgive him. Congratulating your team on reuniting together on the road to Hoang Tian and stepping into your car. Seeing a little girl lying curled up, he smiled brightly. He held out his hand to inform her that she was safe. He called out to her. Come with him and let her know she can go back home. Next to the girl, he used a cloth to cover her eyes and led her outside to leave this place. The girl still wondered why he did that. Hey girl, people pity her and are afraid she will see the bloody scene out there. Fainted, but with the body of a four-year-old boy, oh forget the four-year-old boy. How could he take you with him? Be obedient, and you will have candy to eat. Don't explain too much, just say things that a child like her shouldn't know, shouldn't watch or listen. 
so the girl became even more confused because it was obvious that she wasn't older than her. He was still a child. But even though her questions hadn't been satisfactorily answered, the girl was still obedient. Obediently following him and leaving that place, she didn't know how long she had been gone. She took off the blindfold for her. His plump face gradually appeared. She shyly sent her thanks to the ex-girl. She was still young, but this elf girl promises to be a beauty in the future. But our ace turned around and was about to leave after saying hello. The girl grabbed the hem of its shirt that was no longer intact, without saying a word, looking at him with pitiful eyes. It's like telling the devil that she's so scared. Why did you abandon her? A cute, lovely girl like this. You're a bad person. Don't leave her behind. Look, her face turned pale and sweat began to fall. He must be feeling like he has just escaped from this danger and thought he could be happy. Now he has another debt to explain to her that he also needs to go home. The bad guys are no longer following her, so she can rest assured and find her. Go back to your home. Don't follow him. He tried his best to suppress the hands that were holding his shirt. He wondered if she was an elf. Wouldn't she be safer in the forest? The girl used all her strength to shake her head. As if answering his question, she said that the monsters were only afraid of adults and that the little girl would become their food. She also told her parents that the children would be eaten by monsters, hunting dogs, or tree ghosts. Lem a cowardly girl who is easily scared and starts to feel headaches and deadlocks. He gradually accepts the fact that if he takes Buddha, he takes him to Tay Thane and saves this girl. Then I'll take her home. But where is her house? He asked her if she still remembered the way home and how long it took to get there. He turned pale when he saw the girl turn her head away and pout her answer that she didn't know anymore. He curled his mouth and exhaled and threw out a cold sentence. If he didn't know, he'd just stay there and wait for her to be startled. Home was startled and thought he was going to throw her back, but he turned around and looked at her, smiling miserably, that he asked Dex to go find some food to eat for both of them, and he hoped he wouldn't be gone too long. The girl tilted her head, and Tham Beryl agreed, but he already saw the color of returning the favor, right? Evil friends return, where the trafficker's car gathered all the items he thought were necessary for the next trip, because neither of them knew how long the journey to find their way back would take. Look at him, he's much more handsome, his clothes have changed, He's carrying a tent and many things on his back. He's holding a short knife. He actually wants to ride a rickshaw, but unfortunately he can't. This would attract a lot of attention if he did. Using them, he cut the rope to free the wolves pulling the cart and returned to where the elf was waiting, hoping that the elf had something that could take him back to the human kingdom to the place where the beauty was. He gave her a set of clothes that he found on a Cuban trafficker's trailer and advised her to put on more clothes so she wouldn't get too cold. Be careful, like this. Maybe this elf's heart already belongs to her. About you, the girl thanked him. She rubbed her head and smiled brightly to let her know he was ready to take her home with the girl's vague understanding. They traveled together to a place she only hoped for. This time he was able to learn a lot more about the elf children who knew her name was Tessia and also introduced himself to Tessia. Tessia wondered how such a small boy could come to the Elshire forest. It would be a long story if he explained to Tessia. He promised to tell her at some point. But not right now, he just told Tessia that he lost his family Tessia, guessed he came from the human kingdom, and asked if all human males were perverts, and there were many wives. Ace was surprised because she didn't know someone had told her this nonsense. Because at least her father you only have your mother, and you too are the future Tessia, said that grandpa, she said that you understand he must want to protect his niece. But wait does this girl understand what a pervert is of course. Tessia didn't understand as she climbed the tall tree to find her direction and explain to her that in the human world not everyone has many wives. It depends on each person, and some nobles like to have many wives. Tessia seemed to understand better than evil, and wasn't sure about it, but now, he was just curious about Tessia's life in Wolf Noir. Tessia excitedly said it was a very nice place, because every day she spent a lot of time playing with other people. Guard and her grandfather and parents are very busy. Every time she wakes up, she will be tutored by a tutor. She is very happy, and excited about that. I don't know if you guys have noticed, it seems that evil is afraid of movements. The little thing he was startled away from, when he saw Tessia playing with insects, or the cute pink rabbit, was he wrong, because he heard this right now to satisfy his hunger and grinned, except that his right hand was holding a knife and his left hand was holding the child's ear. The poor rabbit was preparing to reincarnate under Tessia's frightened eyes. Finally, their dinner was ready. The rabbit's meat was fragrant. Contrary to Ace's cheerfulness, Tessia was pouting in front of the fire using her facial muscles. I did my best to let you know that she was dissatisfied with your actions during our time together. At this point, Tessia dared to ask you about the things she was always curious about. The person who kidnapped her did not dare to tell the truth. 
He only replied that they had had an unfortunate accident, and that they had met you. Tessia was not reassured. She was worried that they would find her again, but she knew that. It couldn't be because it was you who sent them off so carefully under the starry night sky once again. Tessia, thank you they sat by the fire. No one wanted to sleep surely you still had a lot to say Tessia still hasn't stopped being scared. Ace advised her to sleep and he would guard her outside the tent. Ace looked up at the night sky, immersed in thoughts. He wanted to use this time to learn about the things that Tessia had learned. Leaving but Tessia had already poked her head out of the tent, and she nor him inside in the tent for safety, and explained that it was because she was worried about him. Not because she was afraid, but she knew that perhaps the recent incident still haunted her, making her insecure, unable to sleep and wanting him to be there. Next to follow the little girl's lap, she sat next to her, her hand holding his pant leg and gradually falling asleep. He had to admit that Tessia was a nuisance, but the sound of her breathing steadily blended into the night. The process continued like that. Continuing the new things around helped E and Tessia learn many things. Ace followed Tessia through the dense forest canopy. His thoughtfulness probably made Tessia tremble. Roy's face turned red every time. Talk to Ace, and he also realized that he realized he shouldn't be too hasty in finding the way back home, because that would make his mood worse. Then he felt happier and enjoyed the trip more. This is like any other night and Tessia is having dinner by the fire when suddenly he collapses clutching his chest in pain, his mana core is having problems every now. And then randomly it hurts like this, it hurts so much Tessa gritted her teeth and endured the sweat rolling down her cheeks. Tessia concernedly approached him and asked if he was okay, she said he was fine. But maybe Tessia didn't believe it. Her worried face said it all. That night until Tessia got drunk. Duck then told her, struggling with pain from inside his body, but in the morning he smiled brightly as if nothing had happened Tessia knew everything she was worried about him, she knew he wasn't okay, but she couldn't help no matter what in the distance there are wolves always waiting, if there is a small mistake they will rush up and swallow the two evil people who turn and warn them with mana attacks, making the wolves startled and run away, Tessia saw that, was standing and smiling at her, Asia's pain had appeared recently more times than he had, he ducked and hid behind a tree, not wanting Tessia to see him, he didn't know if he should let Tessia know about his body condition or not, but he knew that Tessia couldn't help her. That only made her worry more. Time passed by. She shared and showed Tessia a lot of knowledge about the new world, even though she wanted to speed up the trip, but because of that, she couldn't. Tessia's strength is too weak. She needs to rest and can't go any faster toward her. He tries to help Tessia move faster. He moves all the objects to him, using the mat, strengthens her body, but the pain in her muscles is increasing day by day, making her it was more difficult for him to hide his condition from Tessia. But he didn't know that at night she would wake up and cover him with the blanket little by little. Maybe she knew but didn't want to embarrass him so she didn't say it in front of him. When the sky woke up, the young couple continued their journey. Tessia pulled Ace's sleeve and shyly asked if she could call him by the informal name Ace instead of a, of course, it was a girl. Ketch asked. He happily agreed. He even took the opportunity to tease her that he felt honored. When she called her by her intimate name, accompanied by a dirty face and bright eyes, she blushed and turned away from Tessia, complaining about the way he talked like an old man. Ace retorted in a gloating tone, recounting the times she cried and couldn't go to the bathroom without him round. Ace's face immediately became ugly. The tiger used his hands to stretch both sides of his mouth, asking him to be silent and not to mention those things again. Suddenly, Tessia discovered that behind her back, on a tree trunk, there was a glowing blue letter T. Tessia followed the places with Mark, happily confirmed with her eyes that she had arrived at her house. Before she could figure out what was going on, a stream of blue light spread and a gate appeared right at the base of the tree. Perhaps this was the door to enter. Where Tessia's house is, she turned around, sparkling eyes, and held out her left hand, calling him to come home with her. When she stepped through that bright green gate, there was a black space. It turned out that this was a teleportation gate. I hate this. Because at this moment, he had fallen to the ground. The pile of luggage as high as a mountain was pressing on him before he could wake up and realize that someone was poking him with his hand. It turned out to be Tessia. She bowed her head, smiled and said. With him, they had arrived and sat up, looking at the scene before their eyes, their mouths were wide open. Down there was the residence of the elf community. The space here was so vast. Under the canopy of a giant old tree, there were houses for the elves. The small houses are all straight and have round, jade-colored roofs. Green light shines on the empty street. Interspersed with water fountains, lush lawns cover the ground, narrow sidewalks and roads paved with stone. Most of the city is covered in shadows from the giant trees above the city, but the city itself also emits warm rays of light from what looks like orbs of light located above the city. 
disposing of trash all over the city in his mind, there was only one primitive word to describe this scene. While he was surprised, streams of man now flew from everywhere and gathered right in front of him and his Tessia. Tessia's hand rested on the sword, Tessia's eyes steadfastly looked forward, her hand signaling him not to worry. It turned out to be a group of ten guardians. Perhaps they were warriors of the elf race, all wearing costumes. Black clothes combined with green motifs with the left shoulder covered in orange gold. This guardian carries a sword at his waist, and the most surprising thing is that there is almost no mana aura emitted. Before they could wait for him to regain his composure, ten guards suddenly knelt down with their right hands on their chests and shouted respectfully towards Tessia, welcoming the princess back. What the hell is going on? Ace stood in line. Thousands of questions swirled around him. This useless girl was a princess. He kept turning his head to look at Tessia, and then pointed at the ten bodyguards as if secretly asking her. Didn't they recognize the wrong person? Are you the princess? With Asia Tessia's confusion and fear, nodding in confirmation with a happy smile, the guardian captain told Tessia that they had rushed over as soon as they noticed the royal teleportation gate was open. The king and queen's parents were Tessia was missing her very much. Before she could finish speaking, Tessia heard her parents scream with joy and a little worry for her. King Muin and Queen Mario were running to Tessia's side. They must have been very worried during that time. She was missing behind them was Varen Tessia's grandfather Ku King Eleanor, who led the army against the human kingdom of Sapin. His eyes focused intently on Tessia, smiling happily Ace, pushed gently with his hands she ran forward. Tessia ran quickly into the arms of her parents and grandfather in a burst of happiness. She was happy for her and in his heart. He also hoped that one day he could be like her and rush into the embrace. The hands of King Aiden's parents sent him a deep thank you for bringing their daughter back and invited him to their house to rest. He also wanted to know what happened to his daughter. Did he realize that? It was only an invitation, but an obligation through his grandfather's stern look. He bowed down, placed his right hand on his chest, and thanked the king's thin. Before he could raise his face, he was pulled away by Tessia. To his surprise, everyone is so disrespectful, Tessia. You're a girl. Is it okay to be a little shy? There's nothing to be shy about. When you go to the bathroom, there's still Tessia. Beside her, Tessia smiles happily. Let's go, she said she had a lot of things to share with you. Ace was taken by Tessia to visit everywhere. Tessia was very happy to see his surprised eyes at everything. The solemn golden crown was no less splendid than Ace. Place your hands on it. His head felt like he couldn't believe his eyes, as if he were diving into a fascinating novel. There were kings and queens and princesses. But of course he wasn't a prince. Queen Mario carefully instructed everyone. The people in the palace said that he was their honored guest. Let's bathe him and find him a room to rest. But he stopped him. He wanted to be told everything that happened. Because he knew they were very, very hot. Knowing about them, everyone gathered around a table. Ace stood up and introduced a few basic things about himself. He was secretly worried about not writing whether the discussion could start or not. Would they believe his words? Or just considered it an unfounded statement from a child? But fortunately, they probably didn't care about his age and were ready to listen to everything from his story, and so he recounted the journey. I started from a vague explanation about how he was separated from his family when he met the robbers. He didn't tell about his meeting with Svia, and inevitably he told the whole truth about how he met Tessia. After learning what happened to Tessia, King Aiden slammed his fist down and roared angrily when he learned that his daughter had been taken away by slave traders, confirming his initial prediction of who was behind it. The disappearance of Tessia is that evil people are also human when he sees King Aiden, as if all humans are slave traders, are bad guys, he feels like the person insulted him. He hopes King Aiden don't be confused, because slave trading is a profession that not everyone does. Perhaps his attitude was quite harsh, making the soldiers standing around feel angry. They pulled out their swords and pointed it straight at him. Grandma Tessia stopped them from asking questions, and wanted you to confirm once again what you did to save his niece. You begged or negotiated with us. Everyone would wonder how. The four-year-old boy was able to save Tessia from four cruel human traffickers in the middle of the forest. He explained that although he was a boy, he was a magician who defeated the slave traffickers and saved his niece. Your words were probably too unreasonable, making the guard disgruntled. He could not accept such a blatant lie. He pulled his sword out of its sheath and walked towards you as if he wanted you to pay for lying. Mr. Viren immediately looked at him with warning eyes, assessing the accuracy of Ace's words. It was not his turn to speak. He and everyone could identify the guard himself. He quietly retreated back to his position, his face pale, and he stood up from his chair. He knew his situation was hard to believe, but he didn't care. Anyway, Tessia had returned safely, and he didn't need anything from them, other than him. Extremely eager to return to reunite with her family, Tessia panicked, 
and stood up when she heard him talk about it. She didn't want him to go now. Her parents looked at each other with worried eyes when they saw her calling him by that name. When she was close to her grandfather, his eyes flashed dangerously as he stared at her. Feeling the smell of danger somewhere around here, he explained that he was human, and this place didn't seem to welcome him. He couldn't stay here. He seriously said his priority now was to make sure his family was safe, and he wanted to tell them that he was safe and okay, so they wouldn't worry and move on with their lives as he tried to find his way. Returning home, Father Tessia thought about it. He told him that his presence here was not serious and had nothing to do with the war between the two kingdoms, and more specifically, he was the benefactor who saved his daughter's life. He decided to give her life. Give you a favor. However, currently the portal to your Sapin kingdom can only be used once every seven years during the summit between the three races, and it will take at least another five years for that portal to open. Therefore, if you want to go home immediately, he can send a group of guards to escort you. Return home safely. Currently in the Elf Kingdom, not everyone can forget their hatred for humans and forget the pain caused by the war. The war was caused by that. For now, you can stay at the palace. Tomorrow, they will prepare an escort for you to leave. You were very happy when you heard that. After the discussion, you bowed and thanked me. After the discussion, you returned to your room. He was ready to take a shower and prepare to rest, but while he was taking a shower, the pain suddenly appeared again. This time it seemed to be much worse than before. He sat on the chair, holding the egg that Sia had left in his hand, and began to think. What should he do? He wished he could talk to her. She wished she was there, so she wouldn't feel lonely so she could help him. A knock on the door rang out, interrupting her thoughts. He quickly walked to the door. So it's Tessia. She's scowling. She's using all the strength she has to use an iron head to hit her in the stomach. She's complaining about him talking coldly to her family. Why did she want to leave so quickly, and when he first came to her house today, he grabbed Tessia's shoulder and lifted her up. He explained to her that he wasn't cold when he spoke to her family, but was respecting them, because they are not just parents of her, but they were also the king and queen, the leaders of this kingdom. He also looked angry when she didn't tell him in advance that she was the princess of the kingdom, a satisfactory explanation from Ace, but Tessia seemed like she didn't want him to return home because he was her first friend. From behind, Ace saw Tessia's shoulders tremble slightly, he tilted his head, smiled comfortingly, distracting her. Taking him around the castle, Tessia, of course, happily agreed. She led him out to a garden, introduced him that this was her favorite place in the castle, and excitedly told him about the prospect of when the winter season came. The flowers in the garden will comfort you, and if you stay, you will be able to see their beauty. Tessia bent down with one hand and lifted up the fireflies, bringing them to him with a radiant face and giving them to him. He reached out his hands to catch the firefly and suddenly felt danger coming from behind. He quickly pulled Tessia aside to avoid the weapon that was thrown in his hand. He caught it and threw it back to where it was launched. He quickly caught the suspect but looked closely and saw that it was Tessia's grandfather. He was surprised and asked him if Mr. Tin killed his granddaughter. Contrary to his angry expression, Mr. Tessie laughed and said that it was just a toy alone cannot cause a scar, let alone take a life. Only then did his niece calm down, and he looked down at the knife in his hand to check to see if it was as he said. He said no, it's a real toy. This old man teased him like his silly father, which made him scared. Grandpa Tessia leaned closer towards him and praised him for his amazing reaction and technique. However, that was not the case. As long as he catches your toy, he can use it against you. He hasn't waited for you to react yet. He has assessed your ability to use mana, and he believes you can kill those robbers. You can imagine it. Aren't you so happy to be accepted? Look at his face. Now just seeing this man, his brain must have been drunk. I can't help but feel that Ace was being teased by his grandfather. Tessia quickly went to protect her and complained. She asked him not to tease him. Her words made him angry. He thought she should know why he was here. This sentence overwhelmed his thoughts. But he didn't answer. He immediately threw it at him. Wooden sword, he wanted to test your talent. Maybe he found you to be an interesting guy. It's been a long time since he last met me personally. He felt like a new toy he had just discovered. I hope to play with it. It's just that my ace's health is not good right now. You hope he's fragile. Oh Lala, we pray for ace's peace. He took the sword that flew towards ace's eyes. He immediately shrugged. The sword was aimed at Grandpa Tessia's neck while he was still sitting making her panicked and screaming as if he was about to cut under her wooden sword, but the sword just swung out a layer of man. Ned was surrounding his body. He stood up and asked Ace if he was ready to leave. Asking right away, picking up the sword, Ace was already in a ready position and did not answer him. He used the momentum to swing, swing his sword, and rush forward to slash the sword, aiming at Tessie's grandfather. But in the blink of an eye, when the sword was about to touch his body, he disappeared and appeared right behind Ace's back, 
his hand raised, aiming straight at his neck, but Ace's intention was not easy to carry out. Now he glanced at his hand and quickly swung his sword behind his neck to block his attack. His attack collided with Tessie Ace's grandfather's attack. He felt that he was very strong. Suddenly, his fist came to his side. He immediately shrugged. The man jumped up and dodged behind him. His movements were surprisingly quick, but he was subjectively hasty. At the moment he moved, the man's remaining arm swept up and hit him, making the sword in his hand drown out the sound, and he missed. He quickly used his hand to reduce the force, creating friction so that he wouldn't fly too far away. The sword had already fallen. It was clear that he had lost. If the sword fell, it would overwhelm him. He continued to fly forward with a Z-line movement, blocking the sword's path, creating a bright red-orange light that collided with the turquoise man Na of his grandfather. He used man Na to reduce unnecessary movements, but still could not keep up with his actions while he blocked the attack of the old man who suddenly appeared. Right behind him, he quickly discovered and moved forward. There was a chance he dodged the attack from his feet touching the ground, threw his sword into the sky, then used the momentum to fly up and grab the sword trying to be faster. In order to be able to attack Grandpa Tessiaka, he made the handle of his wooden sword collide with his grandfather's sword, leaving a swollen red mark and the sword, and he were thrown far away. The sword stuck in the ground, and he rolled dozens of times before stopping. After all, he stopped climbing like a monkey, but now he rolled like a ball and woke up. Tessia shouted and ran to stop for a moment. If you guessed that she was going to his grandfather, then you were wrong. She was in love with him and ran to his side to help him up. Perhaps he was surprised that he was so careless. Tessia's grandfather admitted that he was too arrogant, but also admitted that he was indeed a talented person. Only Tessia had a frown on her face. Pouting, she ran to Grandpa and pinched him to stop him as he planned to immediately start the second round to sing, 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 sing. It hurts so much he screamed when Tessia pinched Tessia complaining because he was harsh with Ace. But her grandfather didn't think it was clearly right. If he was gentle, then the person would be bullied. Surely he felt a little heartbroken for Grandpa Tessia. Would rather he be hurt than want her to show pain. The love for boys is here nowhere else. Patting the dust on his clothes, his face happily thanked him and felt honored. When he praised him, his eyes were like a hawk catching prey. He wanted him to be his disciple. Ace was so confused and didn't know what he had done. He made him think like this and Tessia was bewildered. He asked him if he was serious and wondered why because he was clearly a person of this kingdom. It's very difficult to accept people appearing here, let alone their former king accepting him as a disciple. This could cause bad effects for him with the dirty sticker on his head. Tessia's grandfather's eyes. Extremely determined, he assured Ace that no one would dare to kick him out when he was under his protection. Ace was much stronger than other children. He knew he was well aware of this. He told Ace he didn't need to care about other things, just know that he is the one who can teach him things that even the most talented magicians in Sapin cannot offer. It's too tempting. But the main worry right now is still whether are your parents safe? How can you inform them that you are still alive? Grandfather Tessia bowed his head and looked at him attentively, affirming that he had a way for him to contact his family. He could rest assured. She wanted to ask him again to be sure, but Tessia was too sleepy. Her grandfather decided to continue the story later. For now, he had to put his baby to sleep after Tessia left. He said what he thought. He couldn't ignore his thoughts when he discovered that he had a problem. He was extremely surprised when he mentioned the pain inside Manna's core that he was suffering every day with more frequency than before. He bent down to look at his body and asked incredulously, how do you know? You reply that you know there is more to it than that, and your condition will get worse if you don't find the cause and treat it. I immediately thought that when she used her head to touch his core, he explained that in the ranking of beasts from rank E to rank, only beasts of rank A or higher could transfer their will and strength, its power to descendants, or someone bound to a single time. He couldn't imagine what kind of beast he had encountered, but now the power he had within him was becoming extremely dangerous. Aced was extremely surprised, perhaps he also had the beast will. Grandpa Tessia did not deny that. He was known as the monster tamer, because he had completely conquered the beast will inside him, and Ace would soon be like him. If you can conquer the will beast inside you know, I'm anxious to return to my family. But he advises you to deal with the will beast inside you, because your weak body won't be able to endure it any longer. His hand touched his chest. The image must project the will of the huge dragon beast. He told him that if he did not completely conquer it, this power would destroy his body from the inside out. After the conversation with his grandfather Tessier's returned to his room and fell asleep. Suddenly, he felt heavy as if he was being crushed by a monster. Could it be that it was created from his worries and burdens? He screamed at the monster to avoid him. But he didn't know that the heavy feeling he just felt came from Tessie's pressure. She was sitting on him trying to wake him up, and in the second, 
he was dreaming he called her a monster. That was wrong. It's too big to call a girl Lola a monster. If he continues like this, he's probably going to ruin it for the rest of his life. It's okay. He's only four years old. The road is still long. There's still a lot of girls to give birth. Don't worry. While Ace changes clothes, Tessie asks for confirmation about whether it was true that he would stay here, following what Grandpa said or not, jokingly calling her princess. She pinched her really hard and threatened to get angry if he refused to call her Tessie like before, poor shirt. Before he could even see his face, he was brutalized as soon as he opened his eyes. Tessia wanted to take a shower and suggested that if Tessie wanted to, she could follow. Otherwise, she should leave him alone for a moment. Tessia frowned, scrunched up her nose, and scolded him that he was a pervert. Run away, blushing and screaming after him. He's not a new pervert. But since he's already a pervert, it's unfair to you, Tessia. Please don't use words when you don't even understand the meaning of them. After taking a shower, I'll go back to the market the main hall where he was promised to be taken to a place where he could convey the news to his family. As he walked down the stairs, he heard the king begging his father not to bring Ace into the kingdom and stay here, waiting to pick up humans even though they were very grateful to him for saving Tessie's life, but letting him stay here was against elf tradition. Despite the pleas of his son and daughter-in-law Viren climbed into the car, preparing to cross his arms across his chest, his face determined to show that he still stands by his decision. He is interested in him. Those traditional letters are not enough to change his mind. He delivers the final killing blow to his family. The king and queen told the king and queen that Tessie agreed with this decision. Look at her nodding to show her father that she more than agreed to let her stay. The king stood clinging to the side of the carriage again and pleaded with his father. But he didn't want to hear anything more. Viren announced that he would finally accept Ace as his disciple and officially teach him. He asked the king to announce this to everyone in the kingdom, to know that Ace was standing on this high ground. Everyone you think Viren is so trustworthy. He is the one who said he could do it when he was in a daze. Viren saw you be complained you were late. They need to hurry. If you don't want the trip to be late, the car will pick you up. And Tessia went deep into the forest for a long time since they started but still didn't see the destination. She wondered how much further they had to go. He accidentally forced himself to call them Grandpa. Viren stroked his beard and looked at him. She seemed dissatisfied with this rather intimate dress. Looking at him smiling, Tessia next to him had been sleeping for a long time. She leaned her head on his shoulder. Looking at this scene, she complained to him that Tessia had woken up early and bothered him just because of him. Surprised because she was quite close and clingy, Uncle Viren came close and caressed his niece's head. He told him about Tessia, who is the only princess of the Elf Kingdom, so she is always lonely. Tessia has been hurt so much by both adults and children of the same age pretended to be friends to take advantage of her. But Tessia became cold and distant, erecting an invisible wall around herself, but for a short period of time. She went with him and they saw her smiling more and happier than in all these years, so they really thanked him. Their story ended and it was time to leave the carriage. In front of them was the hidden house. Under the tree canopy, the green door has two small round windows, filled with curiosity about the owner behind the door, not knowing who is inside, which could make the previous king, O.D., close to Trin, suddenly come to this remote countryside. Mr. Varan used all his strength to kick the door and shouted that he had arrived. Hurry up and welcome them. This action made everyone and Tessia panic, not knowing if they would be kicked out before they could even step foot in the house. Immediately, there was a wife. A woman appeared. She was quite old and had long gray hair. She screamed at Viran that her ears were still very good. Don't scream like that. Viran introduced Mrs. Rinia to her. She was his old friend and also a special divan. Can help you pass the information to your family politely. Hello, Rinia, ma'am. Everyone quickly go into the house. Because time is running out you need to quickly finish everything after entering the house Ace takes the initiative to say he wants to know Madam. Does it really help you convey information home like what Mr. Varian said? Hearing him mention Varian in a friendly way, Ms. Rinia turned to him and smiled sarcastically and asked him. It seemed like he had been lenient with him a lot. She turned to him. Introduction. She is a fairy and she can help you. If you want to know, no one can hide it. She uses you as an example of how you are so special that there are some parts of your life that she cannot understand. Seeing her looking at him eye to eye, her eyes on the outside were glowing blue, on the inside were fiery red. She said her eyes had seen a bit of Ace's past and future. She was surprised after the body died, realizing that Ace really came because he wanted to contact his family. Rini appointed him to lean over the basin of water. She had already prepared and focused on looking at her. She told Ace to celebrate the image of his parents as clearly and detailedly as possible, and what if you can see them in the water, you can talk to them. She concentrates man now. One hand is on your head, and the other is on the water. Concentrate and visualize the image of your mother. 
you think. About his mother, her hair was a golden brown color, sparkling with her slightly sun-kissed skin, bringing a warm feeling to others when looking at him. He remembered her worried appearance, and his father remembered him with his blue eyes and steady gaze, and the silly but warm smile in his head, longed for their presence, wishing they could appear now, then overwhelmed with surprise his eyes lit up when he saw his mother preparing dinner for the family familiar, but mother was sad her eyes no longer sparkled like before. Having dinner with her, father and son, wondered what occasion she cooked delicious food tonight. Alice honestly just wanted to cook for her husband since the trip. Last time, her pregnant belly was quite big. She sat down on the chair with difficulty, with her husband's help. Looking at the food on the table, she thought about it with sad eyes. This is the dish that her husband and son ate. She liked it the most, but now you're not here. She didn't answer your question. Instead, she sat down on the chair, exhaled, bowed her face, and rubbed her belly. Suddenly, she heard a loud noise coming from somewhere. Hello, Mrs. Surprise. She thought she was paranoid, because she missed her child so much that she had hallucinations. But her husband also heard Mr. Ngung Ban, looked at his wife, and their eyes met, as if asking if that was an evil voice. At this time, he repeated the greeting, Dad, Mother, and emphasized to them, that he was really Ace and their son. As soon as he finished speaking, the spoon in his father's hand let go and fell on their table. It was very surprising that Ace knew that his parents were surprised to hear his voice. In his head, he promised to explain everything to them later. But now, there was not much time he just wanted to let them know that he was alive and well and safe. He had managed to survive after falling off the cliff. He wanted them to keep this a secret and announce he is currently in the War Kingdom, with the elves he comforts his parents happy that they are all okay. He lets them know he is proud of what he has done. If he goes back again, you will still choose to do it, so don't worry they will be home soon while Ah encourages them we can see their memories. And what happened after a fall off the Reno's cliff and Alice and her friends searched for Asia for a long time but couldn't find his parents. Tears rolling down her worried face. Her mother had a time when she couldn't accept that he was missing and couldn't be found. Alice thought that he was dead. She died blaming herself for being in so much pain. She used a knife to end her life. But luckily, everyone discovered her and continued to save her. His father was so depressed when he saw that scene. His giant friend couldn't bear to give it to him. One punch told him to look straight at the truth. He needed to be strong to support his weak pregnant wife. Renos and Alice sadly hugged each other. When night came, they had to accept that they had lost him after arriving at Xeta City. Alice and Zenos said goodbye to their friends, they met a kind family and were given a place to stay and Zenos was introduced to a new job. Asia informed his parents that he would come home soon. However, his help was improving. There is a problem, and you need to focus on solving this, so that you can return to them as soon as possible. Explain to them that there are many people around you to help and Rinia is a Devian mage. She is the one who helped them. Hearing his voice, he promised Genos that he would continue to practice magic and real combat during his recovery, not forgetting to tell him to be careful, because when they meet, it might be the moment he defeats him until then. He needed him to take care of him and protect him, to keep him safe. Listening to his words, his parents burst into tears of joy, his son seemed to have passed away, but he was still alive. That was so wonderful. Bye-bye, he told them. He loved them so much, tears rolling down his face as the silhouette of his parents hugged each other on the water surface making him somewhat reassured. He turned around with steady eyes and told Mr. Viren that he was ready after contacting and informing his family. He and Tessia returned to the castle. As soon as they got out of the carriage, the king held him back. He put his hands behind his head, his eyes avoiding and shyly apologizing. Perhaps he was a bit old-fashioned and stubborn. Queen Belgium, she also gently patted his shoulder. She said they wanted to apologize to him sooner. Please accept the apology and consider this as your home. They wanted to once again welcome you in the most kind way. From afar, Varen observed the event, talking between them and looking extremely satisfied. Tessia suddenly rushed forward to block Ace's face and demanded that her father, if he was truly sorry, let her and Ace go outside to play. She wanted to introduce everything to him. Is this really a strange thing about this city? It's clear to see the couple turning their heads to look at each other. Maybe this is the first time this girl seems so excited about going out to the city when she's ready. He's waiting for Tessia. In front of the palace gate, a while later the girl appeared. Together, they held hands and walked down the crowded streets of elves. Ace was curious to see the new things around him. Suddenly, a child's hand bumped into him. He apologized, but only to receive an insulting scolding from him. He was a blonde boy with a haughty face. He pointed his finger at Ace and wanted to purify him. Just because he found Ace dirty, maybe that was the elf's hatred as for the Ace people. They didn't know what to say before the scene before their eyes. Where did this crazy kid appear? He appeared and acted like a star with many fans. 
So he glared at Ace and said, Don't think that being accepted by Mr. Varen and the king means you can think that you belong here. According to the blonde boy, a group of kids behind them think you're dirty and you don't belong here. You don't know what this young child guy wants. Do you want to fight? Tessie saw that with a steady look in her eyes. She was annoyed and felt she couldn't accept that rudeness. Do you want him to quickly leave with me? You need to pay attention to what they say. This cheeky blonde boy's name is first. He greeted Tessia and wanted to escort her for a walk in the city. And Tessia must be feeling cold right now because of this confidence. Smirking his lips, he pretended to be an idiot calling the wrong name first. Making his complacency rise, the boy boasted about his achievements. His smug face, suddenly he got angry because he found out that pressure was pronouncing his name wrong looking back. I saw Tessia covering her mouth, trying to suppress her laughter, placing one of her arms and legs in front of her chest, bowing her head first, giving compliments to the guy, and saying goodbye to him. Seeing Tessia smile, talking to Asia first got angry. Clearly he saw Asia G.I. insulting him, first threw his handkerchief on the ground, gave a challenge Asia male looked puzzled not understanding what was going on Tessia right in front of him and threatened to question why first dared complaining about fighting with Asia, when he is a warrior of Elder Viren like that, because it is rude and not allowed. Tessia resolutely gave first a stern look, but in return was his disrespectful attitude. That's not right because his father told him not to let anyone step on their pride. He first pointed his weapon at Ace and forced him to choose, either accept the duel or hang up. Run away like a monkey, and that choice will also reflect on his wife Ace, doesn't think the matter is so serious that this blonde guy wants to fight first in front of A's silence and thinks that he agreed the boy wanted Tessia to be the one to preside over the match Tessia was in a dilemma, she was forced to accept, and of course she believed Ace was the winner of this match with a reluctant look on her face C closed his eyes and used his hand to signal the start of the match. A large crowd gathered around, everyone excitedly watching the match between two kids in the middle of the street with a smug face. Immediately receiving a super fast punch from Ace, he didn't have time to react. The first bag was immediately punched in the left cheek. With the force of the punch, he fell to the ground and his sandals were thrown after the attack. Ace jumped back behind him. I didn't expect this kid to be so weak, but he was knocked out after just a gentle punch from the side, and the expression on his face was not surprised at all, as if she had foreseen this scenario and avoided doing anything bad. Following Tessia, he held Ace's hand and ran away, leaving behind the bewildered eyes of first accomplices as they surrounded him. Tessia took him everywhere in the city from the place selling weapons to the bookstore or places with beautiful scenery. I was very happy in the city today, especially when you got angry on the first day. You felt so comfortable. At this moment, all the worries that were deep in your mind were eliminated. You were grateful to Tessia for that while the two of you were admiring the scenery. Tessia confirmed again. Are you going to start training with your grandfather tomorrow? Reminiscing about the conversation with Mr. Viren, he said that he didn't know what he had been taught in the past, but he assured the upcoming training session will be really difficult and not easy. He advised him not to worry about the pain from the mana core that is tormenting him every day because the process of synchronizing the beast is often compared to submersion. Your body in boiling oil, and you'll be stuck here in this strange land without your family. Even everyday life will become extremely dark. But if you can bear it, if you can endure it, the results will be of great value. He asked him if he dared to accept it, and of course he was extremely excited and accepted it. He has been coming here for a long time now. He is practicing hard, and not forgetting to watch his parents. He was very happy because of all that. Moreover, he was curious about the events that would happen in the future in his life, and he couldn't wait any longer. For the next three years, Varen tried to help him fuse his bones and muscles with mana. This process was extremely painful. He thought he would be exhausted, but it wasn't enough to take away his energy. His strength made him extremely surprised and excited. After checking his body, he asked him if he was ready. He lay still, his hand on his forehead, and happily replied that he was ready. He believed that everyone could. Keep it a secret, even when you leave today like every other day. When you were so drunk, Tessie appeared. She took a hand and grabbed his foot, startling him. She announced that if he continued to sleep, they would, would be late. It turned out that Tessie had used mana to twist Ace's ankle, causing him pain. He complained. Could she find a gentler way to wake him up? Before his question, Tessie calmly replied that it wasn't her fault that he didn't wake up when she was kind to him. Besides that, Tessie said that he should be grateful that a cute girl like her wakes him up every day. In the morning, seeing her haughty face, he curled his mouth and didn't think it was right. He sat with his head tilted to one side and said something that made her angry. He saw that there were many mates here, 
she didn't need to come to her bed every morning. Pulling his head up like this, of course, Tessia wasn't happy because of what he said on the way. Tessia often complained to him about whether he felt the maid they just met was very beautiful or not didn't wait for a response. Mr. Viren's words rang out. He complained for waiting for the two of them for too long and reminded them that they should both be ready for their upcoming lesson. While Tessia lay down on the grass due to fatigue, Ace answered. Mr. Viren's question is about the knowledge that has been learned over time about the forms of mana and the peculiarities of the three races of dwarves, elves, and humans, through which we know that in this world there exist four basic elements, and other high-level elements, such as ice gravity-like sound these high-level elements, can only be achieved when a magician has overcome the grasp of his foundation element, and they call it Debian, and in of all races, dwarves can only manipulate both earth and fire, or only one of the two elements above. Elite's dwarves have a much higher affinity for these two elements. Their difference lies in all even dwarves can mold and bend metal while talented dwarves can manipulate fire and earth to such a high degree that they can combine elements and manipulate manana. To the elite they are limited by the elements of water, wind and earth, but with a higher compatibility than humans. In rare cases, the auras can also create special deviants capable of controlling plants. However, the auras cannot train creatures. Mages can control advanced forms of water, wind, and earth. Human mages possess the ability to control any of the four basic elements. They are also the only race capable of giving birth to breakers' rules in any element along with anomalies that cannot be classified in any element, such as emitters' healers. There exists a delicate balance of power between the three races of elven dwarves, and his explanation made him extremely satisfied. Tessia raised her hand to ask him to answer a question that she knew this whole assimilation process was to prepare to deal with the will beast inside her, but wouldn't. Wouldn't it be better to train your body while using magic like you? Addis himself already knows all the basic information from 30 clan masters in his lessons. Before that, but the racial differences became more and more obvious as he studied for three years now. If humans awaken and the last years of life are considered talented, then elf children awaken at the age of 10 with Tessia. She awakens woke up a year early at the age of 9. While he was deep in thought when Mr. Viren, after listening to Tessia's question with a humorous look, sat down and asked her if she was angry because she was the only one beaten. During practice, Tessia broke down and admitted this. She was beaten every day and Ace was fine. It hurt her little bee's heart. At least he had to be beaten like her. Now she is the only one who gets beaten up by her grandfather every day. Tessia has been training her mage skills with a tutor while learning how to fight from Mr. Viren and she will become a monster in the future, though I don't think he should say that to her. Of course, no beautiful girl wants to be like a monster, especially the girl Tessia. Mr. Viren explained what she said. Been working on this for three years to basically fuse back's bones, muscles, and internal organs with your mana, because she hasn't had the same physical training as Tessia. But he can guarantee that after the training is over, her body will you will be stronger and more resilient than a veteran warrior. Tessia. Tessia was extremely surprised. She turned her head and looked at him with cunning eyes, asking him if that was why he was so sensitive, when she woke him up every day with mana, and he screamed in pain like that. Underneath the joke, Tessia said that she should know that he had always felt pain about the time she used mana to twist his leg to wake him up until now. Mr. Ver felt that he was ready for it. New exercises from today, you will become a true monster master. But this is not the same as those lucky adventurers who simply use their monsters as tools. Varian will give you special episode. He will burn your mana core by inserting some of his own mana into it. You will feel a bit of heat, but it will be okay. Finish, Mr. Viren. Placing his hand on your chest, transmitting his mana into your mana core, as soon as his mana was transmitted into his body, he tensed up in pain, and immediately the two mana streams collided with each other. With a bang, Mr. Viren was thrown out. Both of them were surprised by what had just happened. Mr. Viren was still still in shock. He wondered what the hell was going on in the distance. He was lying on the ground. His shirt had faded away, revealing strong muscle lines. Wait, maybe no one was busy looking at his body right now. Where is your body? Tessia ran to ask if you were okay. He thought you were okay. Mr. Viren said that he knew you had some reason for not telling him until now, but he had given the information about the beast. The beast boy Ace replied that the person who gave him the beast power was a dragon Mr. Viren. Surprised speechless, he couldn't believe his ears. Oh my god Ace, is he a real dragon tamer? Could it be that he really did training a dragon tamer after that incident? He needed to rest, and Mr. Ven needed to research more carefully to come up with a better training plan. Ace opened his eyes and woke up to see that he had returned to his room. That's the last image. You still remember that Mr. Varian was going crazy with surprise when you talked about Svea, the person who gave you the beast power, was a dog. You knew he probably had a lot of things he wanted to ask you. You said you were feeling better and believed that everyone could keep it a secret. 
Confidential about that, Mr. Viren, of course, will ensure this. He informs you, the departure date has just been fixed. You will not have to wait another two years, but will start departing in the next few months. From now on, Ace was surprised, and he threw up the blanket to confirm the information from him once again. Mr. Viren explained that there would be a tournament between the youth and the three kingdoms being conducted thus the portals in Sip and City of Cyrus would open. Door for both Ellen No Kingdom and Dav Kingdom during this time, ya, yeah. who great information filled with excitement. His eyes sparkled suddenly, he stopped he remembered Tija, so he will break up with her after being next month. Mr. Viren patting his head, and encouraging him that they could meet again, he would arrange exercises for him. So he just wanted these four things to end soon now that he had completed the assimilation of the training process that would later become more difficult than Mr. Virian greeted Ace and left the room. He advised him to rest and prepare himself for the upcoming training in Ace's room. Thinking about what Mr. Virian just said, there are only four more months left, can return to his family right now. The egg that his grandmother gave him emitted a bright light. Greg made a small sound and it turned out that the eggshell had broken. I thought it was a strange rock. But no. Unexpectedly, it was an egg. Right after the eggshell broke, a black baby appeared. She shook her head and yawned loudly, then collapsed and froze. Looking at the scene before her eyes after a moment of surprise, he came closer and held the strange animal in his arms. He tilted his head, and she also tilted her head along with him. He asked if it was a dragon, but he forgot that she didn't know how to speak. She replied with a cute K sound and saw this little dragon. It was so cute. But right at that moment rushed forward and gave him a bite mark on his left arm. A symbol appeared after the bite. Immediately in his head, a voice called for mom. He turned around and looked around, trying to confirm the sound. Where did this cry come from? And then he was surprised to discover that this baby dragon could talk in his head. Mom. Ace frowned and probed the little dragon that he was a male and couldn't be his mother. It's best to call him. Although the little dragon was wondering what his father was, he decided to name it Sevi. The little dragon cried out in excitement. At this moment, he realized that the badge that appeared from the bite earlier was not that simple, as a bridge between him and Tiny Sevi. The strangest things probably happened to him. He was only eight years old, had a strange tattoo on his hand, and soon became the father of a dragon. He also felt like he was so many strange things, so tired. I hugged the little girl and fell asleep. Not long after, he was woken up by a strange scream. He jumped up and wondered what the hell was going on. He fell asleep but couldn't sleep. Be at peace again. Oh my god, it's little Tessia with her eyes full of love and her hands are hugging Sev and not letting go. Maybe she was conquered by the cuteness of her looking out the window. Oh my god, it's dark. It's as dark as pitch. You're depressed. You're so tired. You want rest. Throw the blanket over yourself and chase Tessia out of the room, saying she cannot follow me. After waking up, she protested. Explain to me. Tessia that he can communicate with Svia with his mind. Tessia feels so jealous and wishes she could do that too. It seems Sevia doesn't like Tessia looking at her hungrily he bared his teeth and growled looking at her, with Viren's eyes were vicious. In case Mr. Viren was waiting for both sides of the palace door, Tessia couldn't help but show off to him about Shia. As soon as he saw it, he knew it was a dragon. He was surprised and couldn't believe his eyes. Oh my god, what a day it was. Yesterday wasn't enough to shock him. Why is it that now a dragon appears next to him? making him look like he's too tired to complain that he will die soon. If he continues to be shocked like this after explaining to the Elder, Viren what happened, and where did Sevi come from? Ace learned that creatures like Sevi would usually only hatch in the presence of relatives. They tried to think of why Siva could hatch in front of Ace, but the only reason that can be thought of is the fact that she fully activated her astral will yesterday, while Mr. Ver was training Tizia in actual combat. She was sitting cross-legged practicing with her mana after the training session. Ask Mr. Viren if he needs to hide it when he comes back, because most people won't know that it is such a powerful creature. Mr. Viren agrees to that. He thinks he will be fine if pretend that Sia is just a rare mana beast. However, Mr. Viren thinks that it has many other things to worry about. Recently, he has been trying to strengthen Asia's mana core during the assimilation process. Now, Asia is completely pure. Stay alert, he will help you train both your core and your new dragon. When he hears you ask what needs to be done, Mr. Varen agrees that in his opinion, the best way to approach the first stage of the Will Beast will be to stop enhancing his strength. Mr. Kwong had a sword in his hand and told him that he needed to increase his actual combat experience. Listening to this, he stretched his arms and seemed interested. He explained further that he would have to fight a box of beastmen when he will use these stages against you. This will help you learn more. While Ace was still not able to figure out what he was saying, Mr. Varen immediately transformed his body into the possession stage of Beast Tamers. In this world, Beast Tamers are magicians who have the ability to exploit the unique inherited power 
of mana monsters in the initial step called the possession stage, when the animal tamer has the ability to borrowing the powers of the beasts they own. But in step two of the integration phase, is when the magus can fully utilize the unique abilities and characteristics of the beast, and with the viren after it is unlocked. In the second stage, after decades of understanding the desires of the beast he possessed until now, he was able to possess the deadly ability of a dark panther, before his eyes was the harmonious form between him Viran and the beast of mind, he possessed had a shiny black body, eyes that shot golden light, hands full of claws. Mr. Viran told him to pay attention when Mr. Len sneaked up to him. Ace nervously analyzed his wishes three instructions just now, then could he have sneaked up to him, even though he had warned him in advance, he strained his eyes, and focused on looking towards Viran, in a split second. His figure disappeared so quickly that he couldn't see his path in the blink of an eye. He placed a claw on his shoulder. He turned around, and it disappeared so quickly in his mind that he could only utter this word. While he was still looking for his figure, he appeared right behind him. He raised his hands to show his head. Ro, because you can't even react to his speed at this level honestly, if this was really a fight he would have beaten you to death. Mr. Venn explained that when using this state it's still causing him to waste a lot of energy. With the ace he was moving too fast. Regardless of that. The most important thing was that when he was right behind the ace, he couldn't even feel his presence, Varen explained. The Knight Leopard has the ability to manipulate wind and noise to achieve that effect in an extremely instinctive way, playing music on the sword and giving him notice that the training has now officially begun as the day passes more and more. Faster, he was completely immersed in training through Varian's guidance and his own abilities. He was able to get close to the first stage of the dragon's desire. Varen also taught him how to hide the monster's aura inside her body in front of the mages. If it wasn't for strengthening her mana core, or learning about the dragon's via's wish, she would have struggled against Viren's harsh training with luck during the assimilation process, allowing his body to adapt to training and conditioning every day every free time, using as much time as possible to enjoy the joys of childhood like any other child, just like what his grandmother had hoped for. I want you and Tessia to always be together in the past months. You two have had a lot of memories together, and today is also the day you have to say goodbye to her and start a new trip. Tessia was very sad when she heard you announce that she was going to start. Departing earlier than planned, he spent a lot of time comforting and encouraging Tessia before starting to split up. He had prepared everything for the trip. The feather that Mrs. Shia left behind could be used to cover the mark. Siv's Mr. Venn patted his shoulder and announced that it was time to leave. Tessia loomed behind the tube with a sad face and left in the distance. The tow truck was ready. Viren gave him a compass to examine the bones of the head of the Alice. It could help. He adjusted the direction through the forest and accepted it and thanked him. He suddenly leaned close to his ear and whispered about how he could use the compass to always find another princess to take him home immediately without getting caught. Nice pulled his beard, even though he knew he was just joking. Tessia was not happy at all. She shyly bowed her head and sadly said goodbye. Ace consoled them that they would meet again soon. He hoped that the next time they met, Tessia would be stronger than her. She bowed her head and agreed. Ace came forward and hugged her tightly and promised to remember her. He hoped Tessia would take care of her health. At this moment, Tessia burst into tears on his shoulder, waving goodbye to everyone. Ace got into the car and officially started his trip as soon as he got there. When he got in the car, he was asked by a blonde guy, Kaka, if he had been kicked out of the kingdom. He was confused and wondered who this guy was, which made him angry. It turned out that this guy was the first one. He kicked Knock out with just one punch when he first came here first was extremely angry because he didn't remember to blame him for winning unfairly that day and they should have used the law. The technique that he should be the one to strike first first surprised Ace and his friends covered their mouths and laughed. At this moment, Ace remembered who this blonde guy was. Just like many years ago, he mispronounced first's name, making him mispronounce first's name. He was so angry that he had to repeat his full name so he could remember while he was screaming. Suddenly, he grabbed his hand and greeted him in a friendly manner and apologized for bullying him before. They said it was true. No one hit him. Look at the smiling face, instead of continuing to be loud. First let out a breath of shame. He bowed his head to accept my apology. At first glance, it seemed like he was being confessed to. So shy and cute. Hey girl. The purple-haired guy sitting in the middle whispered that you can call him by the familiar name Phi like them. The other blue-haired guy also agreed with this, but blushed and wondered why she told him about his name but the only response was that he smiled happily at everyone around him. After a long journey, the four of them arrived at the place with the teleportation gate, which is also where his parents live in the floating city. The U.S. is a big city with massive architecture, people doing bustling business everywhere. He walked to a building, walked step by step on the stairs in a nervous mood. 
He was about to meet his family again after many years of separation. Memories of the past years came back in his mind. All those difficulties had passed. His efforts had been rewarded. At this moment he was really stressed. He put his hand on the door and knocked on a small girl's voice. He was surprised but opening the door for him was a maid. She asked if she could help him. She greeted confusedly and introduced her name. When she heard his name, a little girl poked her head out from behind his skirt. In the distance, she heard the voice of a woman who was none other than his mother, and this girl must have been his sister. She was about to tease her little daughter when she stopped and dropped the things in her hand. Because she couldn't believe her eyes, she saw someone like this. Is it Ace, or not her son? Immediately, when he saw his mother, tears welled up in the corners of his eyes. He smiled. Hello, she told her that he was home. His mother quickly ran to hug him. Marrying his uncle, they cried in happiness. They hugged each other. The younger sister saw her mother crying and also cried. Immediately after that, Reno's ran to hug both parents and children. The whole family hugged each other and cried. The scene was so touching that it made me want to cry. After a touching moment, the whole family exchanged greetings with each other. Alice asked about his illness, wondering if he was okay. She complained about him being too skinny, encouraged him, comforted him, and informed him of his current health condition. Very well, his father comforted his wife that she shouldn't worry too much. Just by looking at him, he could see that he was much bigger and stronger than before. Alice nodded in agreement. She looked towards the chair opposite and called out to her daughter, who was waiting. Pouting quickly came and greeted her. She was surprised to learn that the boy who was stealing her parents' attention was her second brother, climbed down from the chair and walked closer to everyone. Alice once again confirmed that he was the one. The second brother was one of the stories her parents told her before going to sleep. She shyly said hello and sat down to hold her hand. He was very happy to finally meet his sister. Alice tilted her head and leaned on her husband's shoulder, smiling. Happy looking at the two brothers Ace, after settling down Ace One, explained everything from the beginning. Although he trusted his family, he decided to ignore the story about Sia, and explained that he escaped that fall, thanks to luck, and his body unconsciously used magic to protect Asia, continued talking about finding Tessia and spending time in the Goblin Kingdom, to recover his health, his father wondered about Sevi sitting on his head Ace explained that when he was exploring, he came across a monster's hiding place, where Mother Sia was dying from serious injuries. He couldn't save Mother Sevi, so he took care of her. Until now, his mother still hasn't died. Rest assured, she confirmed once again that he was really healthy and unlikely to get sick again. He smiled and waved his hand that she didn't need to worry anymore. His health had really stabilized unexpectedly. His silly father stood up with an excited look on his face. Maybe he wanted to immediately test his abilities after all these years. He was immediately scolded by his wife and slapped on the head. He turned away. Fun pouted that it was what's wrong with wanting to compare one's strength. He bragged to Asia. After coming here, he became a guide for the gym security team. He used a suggestive face to ask his father about the development stage of his mana core. Genos proudly boasted that he had broken through two years ago and entered the dark orange core stage. Wow, it's easy to see that dad's face has risen a lot, but I didn't think he'd be able to break through to the next stage. It seems like he's been practicing. Very miserable. Zenos was excited when he heard an announcement that his man no core had turned into the red stage. He was so surprised that he cursed. Alice was very upset and was holding back her anger at Zeno's habit of talking nonsense. He begged down to his daughter and told her to forget the words he just said. Then he shook Ace's body to confirm once again. Is what he just heard read? Oh my god, I'm not as good as a boy. His eight-year-old self must have now acknowledged what Adam said when he was like a monster, not just a genius. He stood up and wanted to have a match with him right away, as if to verify what he had just heard. Alice held her head in front of her husband's impulsiveness. Next to her, she crossed her arms and laughed, feeling that it was good to go home. When the whole family was reunited, there was a man who threw open the door and ran in. Behind him was his wife and daughter. Perhaps they were ran here very quickly. He realized that they were the people who had always taken care of and helped him during the past time. Rose introduced everyone to each other. Thanks to that, he found out that he was Vincent, the operator of Healthy Auction Room, and also the old friend he was working for they were at Vincent Ace's house, bowed to express his joy at meeting Vincent's family. He hoped they would forgive his sudden appearance. Vision was very surprised that he looked Ace mature and mature, different from his foolish father. He happily admitted that he had heard this question many times, causing everyone around him to laugh out loud. Vincent's wife introduced Asia to their daughter. Name is Lilia. She hoped they can become good friends. Mentioning that father and son were about to go out to play a few games surprised Vincent. He thought it was just a joke. But the sight of the two of them getting ready to attack each other in front of his eyes was completely convincing. It was the truth. Oh my god. 
Seeing each other after so many years, showing their boundless love with a fight like this, was probably the first time Vincent saw this strange father-son pair while the two mothers laughed and joked about the game Lilia and his younger brother were playing. Joking with Sevi Zenos, hoping for Ace to be ready because he was much stronger than before, holding Ace's hand tightly, getting ready and saying that he should also be careful for his sake, was also much stronger than before, and came to sit next to the two women. Vincent asked Alice if her husband was joking about the fact that Asia's magic core was light red. Although Alice was very surprised, she admitted it. It's true, and he's always growing, always creating many surprises for everyone around him. Vincent still can't believe it. How can we believe that an eight-year-old boy not only awakened, but also passed through all three stages? Even the genius kids accepted into Xer US Academy still haven't reached the dark red stage when they hit 11 or 12 years old. Not to mention that Ace is only eight years old. This is hard to believe. Ace heard from afar and sighed. In one breath, he guessed that he shouldn't tell them that he was only light red because he couldn't cultivate both his magic core and beast tamer. Ignoring the side stories, he looked towards Zeno's and focused on the battle. About to happen, as soon as he finished speaking, he rushed towards Zeno's, leaving only a black streak. His moving speed was too fast. He swung his fist and, of course, his father stopped Zeno's, thinking that he must have more than this. He didn't finish speaking. Then he was kicked in the left arm, and immediately followed by a kick in the right side. All movements happened quickly. Zenos grabbed Ace's left hand, and threw him to the side. He quickly grabbed his shirt. Zenos stepped on his left leg, and then bent down, and threw Zenos back to the front in his surprise. Then he turned to ask him how he assessed his ability. Reno stood up. After the attack, he waved and praised him. The work was not bad. He admitted that he had made him defenseless. But now, he was really serious. Reno's concentrated on sending mana throughout his body, telling him to be careful. He prepared to launch new attacks. Looking at Zenos, you know that in this world, witches have an innate advantage in expressing, perceiving, and manipulating the elements they perceive for the class. Enhance their perception of elements more skillfully, and the true manifestation of the elements only comes after they reach a certain threshold for Zenos. He went through intense fighting and training since childhood, but had no basic training, so he had to reach the color core stage. Only then can he transform the explosive amount of mana into the fire you are seeing now. He replied that he also learned a few moves. I hope he won't be too surprised. After that, he concentrated on focusing his mana throughout his body. Everyone was surprised to realize that he was a black man. They didn't wait for Reynos to calmly jump on his feet and run straight to launch his attack. He moved so fast and threw a barrage of attacks that Zenos couldn't do anything other than defend himself. The two people collided with each other, creating a loud explosion causing everyone around them to panic. Reno's escaped the attacks and returned to the form of an ace attack, but he easily dodged it. Then Reno started to move faster. Just as he expected, his punches became sharper and sharper, and he realized that he was taking advantage of his reach so that he couldn't get close to him. He was punched right on the left cheek. He smiled happily and quickly changed his mind, changing the trajectory of moving, ducking, and crouching low. When his body came right under Reno's, he threw a punch from under his chin. He shouted that Reno's got hit in front of everyone's gasps. He hugged his son and praised him for his experience so far. Through the arduous training process, Ace's greatest success was probably that he had mastered the border. Although he had tried before, but could not use sound tape or gravity, at this moment, he felt extremely happy to be able to brag to his parents about the Reno's Devian, chirpingly asking his boss about when he became a student, how he learned it, and do you know anything else? Just learned it not long ago, and he didn't have anything else. Ali ran from afar to ask about Geno's. Alice ran after her, afraid she would fall, and everyone would notice. The most extraordinary thing was that Vincent was so surprised that he needed to take a dose of medicine to calm down after what he just witnessed after the match in the backyard. Everyone gathered to eat and drunk Vizen asked Joss if he wrote about how terrible Asia's future would be or not. Of course, Geno's knew that he had known this since Asia woke up when he was three years old. Hearing that, Vincent's family was surprised. Alice told him about that time. He blew the whole house away. Ryos patted the table and laughed happily. Vincent leaned back. The person who came back accepted the terrible truth that Ace was indeed a genius. He jumped up so quickly that his glasses fell off and offered to let him register for the Cyrus Renos Academy and asked Vincent if he was really serious. When he was only Aga's age in Cyrus Academy is the most prestigious magic organization on the planet. Will they accept him when he is too young? Vincent's wife agrees with her husband's point of view. She believes that with his talent, they should sponsor him. Going to school is very worthwhile, so you don't need to worry about tuition. Alice refused, saying that her family had received too much help from them and couldn't let them pay for her studies. 
Besides, he was only eight years old. He thought Cyrus Academy wouldn't touch her. Vincent smiled and said he happened to be doing business with the famous director of Texas Academy. He could talk to her about getting her into the Academy. Everyone is so engrossed and excited about her talent that they try to draw the next suitable future scenario for that talent and forget about her feelings. Please allow me to interrupt the conversation. I think this has something to do with it. Could affect his future, and he wanted to say a few words. He was grateful that everyone cared about him. But right now, he just wanted to spend time with his family before deciding to leave again, and I'm not sure if I really want to study at Cyrus Academy. I need time to think about it. After confirming that everyone has heard my thoughts, I stood up from the table and asked permission. Went back to rest, leaving everyone behind in silence. Lilia looked after him. When she saw him turn the wrong way, she humorously said that if he continued walking in that direction, he would go straight to the wine cellar, not the restroom. Then Lilia took over. Go down to the kitchen here and meet the kind maids. A woman with a fuck how face asked him if he was the boy who burned down the lawn that she mowed day and night. He heard that. Please. The uncle next to him explained that she was just joking with him. They laughed and talked together, looking at Lilia. He could feel it. Perhaps his first impression that she was a quiet and quiet person was probably wrong. The vivacious girl in front of him was her usual self right now, holding a knife and fork in her hand, eyes shining, saliva flowing to the corner of her mouth, asking everyone if there was any fatty duck meat left. The old lady immediately brought it, give her a portion of food as she requested and advised. Perhaps her mother was suspicious because she was gaining weight quickly. Lillian shyly straightened her back while her hand quickly cut pieces of meat to enjoy, but her mouth kept telling her again and again. She shouldn't have told her mother about this. Every night she went to her to ask for food. Everyone looked at her and smiled. Another maid whispered in her ear about how every time there was pressure, little Lillian would come to her. In the kitchen, he secretly wondered what this girl was stressed about, because he saw that she had nothing to be stressed about, especially when her parents loved her very much. The aunt and uncle next to her told her that Mr. Vincent had a wish. The biggest thing is that Lillian can awaken as a magician. Even though neither husband and wife are and little Lilia also wants to become a magician and that becomes pressure for her listen to what people say on the other side over there, Lillian, you should relieve pressure by eating. It turns out that in every era, there are people who relieve pressure by eating. Then when they get fat, they continue to feel pressured. Thinking about it, he smiled and said to her. Genos told him not to worry. He was sure that Vincent's family were kind people. Ace was sleeping soundly and suddenly he felt a tickle on his neck. It turned out that Sevi was playfully calling him to wake up. Ace picked Sevi up and announced that he was awake. When Sevi woke up, he looked so excited that he wondered what Elisa was doing. He missed the little princess. Suddenly, he smelled an excessively strong scent emanating from Sevi. He decided to take the kid to the bathroom. It turns out that not only does he need a bath, but so does this little friend, both of them are smelly. It's true that father and daughter are in Geo. After the struggle, Ace and Sevi smelled fresh and clean, but they didn't seem to like it. Hey, even though he thought it was great knock 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 on the door, someone was outside, he opened the door, and saw Elle outside. He was happily cheering for her and Elle was shyly saying that she had come to wake him up following what his mother told him, he knew his sister was still not used to this new brother, so he happily asked Elle to take him down to meet his mother. Hearing that, the little girl was happy and excited as she walked and sang, leading her downstairs after breakfast to sing with her mother, and his sister walked around the street, he saw with his own eyes the street stalls with a variety of products. He went to one side of the store and looked in curiously, wondering what kind of store this was inside were small spheres, called monster cores. They are placed on shelves around them that emit a characteristic mana light. According to the seller's explanation, these are magic cores extracted from mana monsters to increase their power. Although effective between different cores will be very different and buyers will accept spending hundreds of gold bars for them as a gamble, but if the buyer is lucky, they will receive a core that even contains the will of the mana monster, cried out in surprise, oh my god, hundreds of gold bars for just one magic beast core, without even knowing if it was really valuable. Yes, but he was even more shocked when Lilia's mother even emphasized that sometimes that number could reach hundreds of thousands, thousands of gold bars, not just hundreds of bars like what was said just now. According to Lilia's mother, Uncle Vincent's family's healthy auction room received a large amount of demon cores and newborn demon cores. You can see it if had the chance to smile. He thanked him for this kind offer. After a while of shopping together, Lillian pulled his shirt and offered to take him to a place where she wanted to take him as soon as she saw him. At home well, it's the barbershop. Looking at Ace's face in the mirror, you probably don't think your hair is so humiliating to the viewer. The burly barber lifts the scissors and prepares to send your hair off to a faraway place. Home Meng was afraid and turned back to ask for help. 
The four women sitting on the chair were pretending to talk and leaving him to let them cut his hair. Alice told her that his hair was really disgusting, so he should sit still and let the barber give him a style. The barber from above looked down at the woman's hand and cut off the ace. He turned his head and pledged to the four ladies that he would make the ace shine like a precious stone. Howling Howe heard this and his soul seemed to escape from his body. It's like you. Your soul is numb after screaming inside. We pray for peace. We hope you really have beautiful hair. After a while of manipulation, you feel like you look really stupid. But maybe it's just me. That's all you see. Look at your mother's sparkling eyes complimenting you. You look so perfect now. You really look handsome now. Elle also cleared her throat and said she, you look worthy of being her mother's second brother now. He also followed her and said that he is now truly like a modern man. His previous appearance was like that of a person. They walked out of the barber shop when they passed the bridge and saw the bridge below. There was a commotion, and it turned out that there was a group of people harassing her. Lilia told him that the bad guys down there were students at Exeter U.S. Academy. She recognized them through the uniforms they wore as proof. Special proof of their status as students. He drummed his chin and looked down at the scene going on down there. He thought that to him they looked like scoundrels. Lilia agreed. She also thought that many of them were indeed scoundrels. The guy is worthless, and she was discouraged to explain that as a student at Exeter U.S. Academy, they are almost considered royalty in this area. See, and Lilia stopped by the bridge for a long time. The two mothers turned around and asked curiously. Lilia said, she and Ace were just talking about school. Unexpectedly, Ace had evaporated, and he was no longer standing next to Lilia. She turned around to look for Ace, and saw him moving very strangely, looking like a puppy jumping. It seemed like he was very excited. Alice happily told Lilia's mother that normally he looks so calm and mature, but only when he sees something that interests him. He can be childish like now, which is so true. Now asking Lilia's mother, she agrees that she likes to look at her. Ace is more like an ass like this, especially after you showed off your talent last night, it still makes her feel shocked when talking about it. Everyone agrees, the image of him being cool when he hit them appeared in their heads. I'm really still not used to going to the ace part to see what makes him so excited. Then the ace saw a weapon store, he walked inside, ran and jumped touching everywhere. He looked happy like a child. Right at the same age, if Ace had a tail, we would probably still see the tail. He was wiggling with joy. The shopkeeper warned him that this place was not for children. He asked him to leave while they were still polite. The shopkeeper looked arrogant. Arrogantly told him that what he was looking at was a dangerous weapon. He needed to know that, and it wasn't about looking for toys like the ones he had at home. He said in an extremely rude voice, while reaching out his hand. He was about to grab his shoulder and pull them out, saying that there was a candy store outside, and that's where he should go. However, his hand had no chance of touching his shoulder. He waved his hand to knock him away, just intending to make the old man freeze in surprise, he hated leaving the weapon shop, not forgetting to say in a sarcastic tone, you know very well what a sword is, sorry for blocking his way, I felt insulted. I rushed over and grabbed his shoulder to question him. Whose son are you? Why did you speak so absent-mindedly? At that moment, Alice's voice rang out, asking him to quickly take his hands off of him. His voice and face appeared to be deceitful. He asked them if they knew who he was. Why did they dare to say something so insolent? When he looked closely at the opposite side, he was extremely confused. Holland Mang recognized the lady standing in front of him, coming from a healthy house, Mother Lilia announced. Ace is a protected child of the healthy family, and threatened him asking if he wanted them to revoke his and his family's right to participate in the auction at her family's auction room. He immediately knelt down and clasped his hands. This writer hopes that she will forgive him because he did not know that Ace was the Heli family's child. After that unpleasant incident, Ace and everyone left the weapon store. He thanked Mother Lilia for saving him from trouble, but she was happy. Said actually she was worried that if she showed up just a little longer, maybe he would have taken care of the other two guys. The mothers covered their mouths and laughed. At home, Vincent and Rios were already waiting on the living room chairs. Vincent greeted everyone and smiled happily while Geno seemed quite in a mood. Vincent told, as that there was someone he wanted him to meet. His eyes looked in the opposite direction. There was a rather old woman with gray hair and a small figure wearing a strange hat. She said hello and introduced herself as Sky, the founder and current operator of Cyrus Academy, as far as we know. As you know, the Cyrus Academy is an organization hailed as the most honorable place for anyone with power who wants to become a magician and has both family and talent. This is where praised scholars are born. Praise the Royal Engineers and Military Captains Guilds. Anyone who has influence over the world that Ace lives in is connected to Cyrus Academy. That is the reputation this school has is solid and unique. 
like a titan wall if compared to other academies on the planet, and standing at the top is the academy's administrator, Mrs. Gus Sky Ace, looked up and faced Mrs. Gus Sky, everyone in the room, held their breath watching the next thing that happened, was that she just stretched out her hand, and seemed very happy to meet her in her mind. Now think about what reasonable greeting you should choose in this case, should you kiss her hand or shake her hand? After a while thinking, he reached out his hand playing to shake hands with Mrs. Gus Sky. He said he was happy to meet her immediately Alice's hand reached out, she pulled Ace down and apologized for her son's rude action. She explained that he just got home, and he still doesn't understand basic TC spells. Mrs. Sky reached out to signal both mother and son to stand up. She thought that everything was really okay, and that she was actually the rude one to visit the family this late at night. She looked towards the chair where Genos and Vincent were sitting and she explained more. Although she knew that this visit was quite sudden, she could not refuse Vincent's invitation after his great contributions to Cyrus Academy. Vincent heard this and scratched his head in shame and explained that he just helped where he didn't want his daughter to go to school one day in the future listening to what her father said Lily of sad eyes the little girl pursed her lips and bowed her head not daring to look straight good sky come closer she explained she didn't she had a habit of visiting a potential student's house but Vincent aroused her curiosity when he repeatedly affirmed that a top-rate genius was currently living in her house. Mrs. Sky wished to meet her. Go somewhere spacious to see how much of his talent can be demonstrated. Mother Lilia completely agreed. They ignored Ace's protest that he was really hungry and he wished to have dinner before starting the test. But no one cared about what he said. Mr. Vincent and his wife quickly led Mrs. G. Sky to the garden, a suitable place for Ace to show off his talent. Ace was discouraged and followed him, complaining to Sevier that he and his car would definitely not be eaten. If this inspection isn't over yet, Sevi nervously exclaimed cake, this attracted Gus Sky's attention. She complimented Sly View. What a cute man, not monster. She asked Ace if that was a contracted beast. His father calmly replied that he was his best friend and was only born a few months ago. Good Sky found it extremely interesting because many nobles in this place bought Monsterana to form contracts, but Sevi looked very strange. She had never seen a man a monster like Sevi before explaining that Sevi's mother was a wolf with small wings and scales. Sevi's mother died while protecting it, and that she happened to encounter Sevi when she was just being a strange egg. She thought he was quite lucky because of that. Mrs. Gus Sky listened to the explanation and didn't know if she believed him about the story he just told, but she was silent and accepted it at that moment Vincent announced. They had arrived at the appropriate location for this test. Surprised if you personally witnessed the talent of the observer. Mrs. Gus Sky thought to herself, look at this boy, he is very calm. Not sure if he is really talented, or just the child's unruliness. She did not know that at this moment, I'm just thinking about dinner. You seem very hungry. I hope you can eat grilled fish. Everyone gathered in the distance, waiting for Vincent's performance. Standing there smiling happily, he must be good. Sky will be surprised when Asia performs fire and light magic, and is confident that this time, as will not be able to burn the field like last time because he has been prepared after the damage the first time Mrs. Gus Sky asked Asia about how he had no intention of using a weapon. Moon Ace coolly replied that he saw that Mrs. Gsky seemed to not be using the wand on her belt, so he wouldn't be using a weapon either. Hearing that Gsky looked down at his wand, a smile appeared on her waist. I don't know how you feel, but a principal of a large academy used a tailed weapon to test an eight-year-old boy. That would be a bit lame. So her not using a weapon might be a problem. It's easy to understand, but unfortunately it's deep inside. That little creature is the soul of a great king in another world. Maybe because of that, I don't feel the need to be imitated like that. Let's start from the time when I was still training with the energy viron. Explosive bursts of fire and adaptation to water counterattacks were the first key arts from Ace's old world to be manifested as true elements in this world, so that earth and wind skills from Evil's previous life also reached its peak. Evil closed his eyes to calm down. When he opened his eyes, his determined gaze flashed. He used his technique, combining Kai and Mana. The tiled floor under his feet crumbled and he stood there with his hands in his pockets. His body focused on controlling the combination of manna inside and outside his body and molding it into the effect he desired. Stepping one foot down on the broken tile floor and flying high into the air at this moment was cool. Everyone around them gasped in surprise. No one could believe their eyes while being tested. He also wanted to see the abilities of Mrs. Gus Sky, principal of Cyrus Academy. He jumped up and threw a kick. Towards Mrs. Gus Sky threw a large stone towards her. Just as the stone flew forward, it was only a few millimeters away from touching her face. She was surrounded by a source of yellow man na, broken rocks and soil that reversed its orbit. Flying towards Ace, he was surprised. He bent down, gathered mana in his hand, 
and used the momentum to fly like a rocket towards Mrs. Tahan Jiskai, immediately created an amount of manna that collided with manna, and the ace created a boom that flew far away. After the impact, the ace calmed down. He focused on using the wind to orient himself and stop condensing the pellets, kicking in the air. Then he jumped up and hit it so that he wouldn't fall too far away, hanging in midair on a stone slab. He gritted his teeth and thought, damn it after training with Varan, controlling the god at the same time. Two inert spells are still more difficult than water and fire. Now you need to concentrate more after you are good at controlling mana. Rushing towards Mrs. Gaskagiang stood immediately. Her hand created a whirlwind to prevent movement. His movements overwhelmed him. He stepped back. His hands clutched the ground to keep from being swept away. He looked up and noticed that in just a split second, Mrs. Good Sky had finished chanting his spell. Next, instead of just a tornado in her hand, currently, the number of new tornadoes being created is many times greater than the number of previous attacks. Thinking about a plan to deal with tornadoes, he controlled the wind to rotate in reverse to deflect the tornadoes. He rushed forward and changed the direction of the wind, dissolving the tornadoes around him. His clothes were torn on impact. Finally, he was able to neutralize Gus Sky's attack. She smiled and praised him for his impressive performance, but also criticized Ace when he was too confident in his abilities and recklessly dared to confront the elements head on. However, in summary, Ace's magic performance and actual combat skills were acceptable. She concentrated mana in her finger and informed him that it would be his final test. He told her to consider it as a bonus and advised him to stay alert. Then she passed this flow of mana onto Ace causing it to he was going crazy. She hugged her head and screamed. It turned out that it was a magical sound. It turned out that Mrs. Jiski was a magician. Mrs. Jiski turned away and praised her for being extraordinary. She announced to everyone that she had passed excellently. The control ability that A showed with the magical element of air, she decided to personally teach him. Witnessing her son's demonstration of controlling the elements, his father was extremely surprised. He ran to ask, Since when did you know how to use air and earth magic? Mrs. Guskai was surprised. She wondered what Mr. Zenos meant when he said that you can also use air and earth magic. Mr. Vincent explained that it was evil. Just learned how to use fire magic yesterday and lightning magic. That's why he brought everyone to this tiled field in case you burned the grass like yesterday's match, but unexpectedly you didn't use magic. Fire and lightning magic Mrs. G. Sky thought she heard wrong. She quickly confirmed that it was Vincent who said that Ace has the ability to control at least three elements and has one that can be used as a magician. Don't wait for Vincent to answer. Ace said that he could sense and use the four elements. Listening to this, Mrs. G. Sky was traumatized and took a few steps back, as if she couldn't believe what she had just heard. Zenos helped her stabilize her body and confirm if she was okay. The person was surprised by his ability. Mrs. G. Sky covered her mouth and smiled happily. It was very strong, and he could be the strongest person in the future. Oh my god, I was so surprised that I couldn't believe my ears after everyone calmed down. Please, it's the family's fault for keeping it a secret from his mother's name. He told him not to hide anything from the family in the future. Listening to his mother's words, his chest felt like it was really tight. He wished he could promise his mother that, but he couldn't. Vincent jumping happily everyone around was proud of him. Mrs. Guskai patted his shoulder as if she knew he had many secrets he couldn't tell anyone regardless of everyone around her. She created a barrier around the two of them and said that he could freely say confidential things without having to worry about the people around him. He smiled and realized that maybe the woman in front of him understood what he was about to say. It was like it was in his stomach. Tell her you reveal your true strength to her, because there are two things you need from her. Strength and power. They are the things that ensure your family is safe from you. You were strong enough to ensure that yourself. Not only did he join her academy, but he also accepted to be the object of her care. Ha ha ha. Mrs. Sky laughed loudly, because even the king and queen of Sapin wouldn't dare to set such one-sided conditions with her but I think she would consider making her relationship public with a green-nosed guy like you. He grinned, tilted his head, and smiled. He said that compared to the king and queen of Sapin, he was aware of his potential, and he believed that she also realized that. She thought that his obligation in this contract had to wait until he actually joined her academy, let her know that he had promised someone important about him, will live a fulfilling life, and he thinks it might be better to join Cyrus Academy at a normal age. Oh my god, Mrs. Gus Sky exclaimed that still three years away, she wondered if she was planning to what to do until then. He was currently thinking about expeditions. He turned to look at his parents. He hadn't told his family yet, but he was sure he wanted to become an explorer in the future. While waiting for me to be old enough to join the Academy, Aids had a talk with his parents about his plans to become an adventurer within three years. His mother exclaimed that she would never agree to this. Hey, my sister's son just came back after they thought he was dead. Not long after they were together, 
His wife said he wanted to go out into the afterlife to commit suicide for his expedition. No, Alice shouted. If he, if he wanted to go, he had to step over Mrs. Ali's body. He was so worried that he could hardly cry when he saw his angry mother. Vino stood next to him, not knowing what to say. He slowly hugged his wife's shoulders, showing that he did not say that he would agree to his son's return. However, he advised her to calm down and listen to her son finish his plans. Alice threw his hand away angrily, questioning how he could say that after everything they had been through. During the past four years, she burst into tears. Rayos hugged his wife to comfort him. He walked over, grabbed his mother's hand, and told her he didn't plan to leave so soon. Actually, he planned to stay home with everyone, about a few months. He knew he had only just returned, but after staying in the Elf Kingdom for three years, he felt like he had missed out on so much of this world. He wanted to experience the excitement that his mother and father had experienced when he was young. The two former adventurers Ace smiled and held Gino's mother's hand, saying that he knew where he was going, and when he was young he was extremely interested in the adventurous life. But his mother was right regardless of his presence. And no matter how ready he was, the life of an adventurer was very dangerous and unpredictable. They were really worried about him. Hearing that, he bowed his head and broke his ears, thinking he didn't know what to do to convince his parents suddenly. Come up with an idea and propose to his parents that if they don't feel secure, can he go with someone else who they can trust to protect and supervise him? Alice began to hesitate. Reynos thought it was not a bad idea, but he couldn't think of anyone that could take on this role. As soon as he uttered it, his wife angrily grabbed her collar and screamed because she couldn't believe it, that her husband was still considering it and that she would not let him send his son out into that dangerous world for another three years. She noticed the situation was quite tense, and he and his parents sat on the chair together. He lowered his voice and calmed down. Ands that he won't be gone for three years. He plans to come back once a month or regularly cut off each mission. His mother heard that and smiled, but in Don't Smile, Danger asked if he was sure about that. Oh, Mom, it's here. Is probably an image that any family has seen the scary faces of smiling mothers before anger overcame him, and he tried his best to nod and commit to his mother. Illy ran to cling to her. At his feet, her eyes were filled with tears. She asked him if he had to go. Seeing that, he repeatedly assured his sister that he would be here, and that she would be able to see him a lot. Alice looked at the two brothers and nursed themselves. You have to be serious and not fall down in front of your child's cuteness. Perhaps she has given up a bit. She crossed her arms and closed her eyes to tell him that she was still not satisfied. At least before he answered her why. Why do you want to become an adventurer? Wouldn't it be better for you to go to school before becoming an adventurer? Ace heard him laugh. He rubbed his head shyly and said if he went to school now, he would be a little younger than him. With his schoolmates, it would prevent him from integrating and making friends with people around him. And he didn't like that. Alice was surprised by his answer. She said he didn't need to go to school right away, but instead, he can help his father look at his wife awkwardly advising his son Reno's, gently patting her head, encouraging her that their son will be okay. Ah, here, that thank your father you yourself know that you not only want to practice more, but Yubi also wanted to fight and test the skills he had learned since coming to this world in a more comfortable and free space. Actually, he did not lie to his mother because that was what he really wanted. Remembering her, she remembered her advice that he should enjoy life as he wanted. Perhaps after this conversation, his parents also tacitly agreed with his choice to become an adventurer for three years. The next day at breakfast, while everyone was enjoying the food and chatting, Mr. Vincent mentioned that Xenos would come to the auction ring to guide a few new recruits under the frowning eyes of his two wives. The two men innocently talked about work like two children. Lilia rubbed her head and gave up at the childish story of the two old men happily and excitedly asking about everyone's plans for today. Lilia's mother and uncle's mother planning to run some errands around town to prepare for an upcoming event at the Healy Auction House. And they plan to take your sister and Lilia along, and you can come along if you want to hear that thank you. And he waved his hand in refusal. At this moment, Mr. Vincent asked Zenos about their decision regarding age's wishes. Alice announced that they agreed to let him become an adventurer with a few conditions. First, he would wait until his birthday. Within the next three months, secondly you must bring a guard with you at all times while on duty, and thirdly you must visit your family at least once every two months other than those conditions, they are confident that you are smart enough to take care of everything. At least that was Zenos's thinking. Vincent wondered if his parents had thought about who would become his bodyguard. From his perspective, he was already very strong. Is that true? Is there any bodyguard capable of protecting you? Hearing this, everyone laughed loudly. Elian used two plates on her head to show off to Zenos that she had horns. Alice told her not to do that. This image, Zenos thought of something. He patted the table and stood up happily to announce that the group of twin horns would come after the dungeon exploration. He had received a letter from the Adventurer Guild. 
They said they would return here in two more months, and he would go with Ace to the place to wait for them. Alice seemed to agree. She thought that was a pretty good idea. Hearing his father say that, Ace was extremely happy. It had been a long time since he had seen them again. In his head, the image of the introverted girl Jasmine, the giant Uncle Din, the archer lady Angela, Helen, and his sassy red-haired brother Adam, he eagerly looked forward to the day he would reunite with them in life. While working, Vincent heard a knock on the door. It turned out to be Ace. He thought that he must be missing his father and announced that his father was currently in the auction room. Ace smiled. Actually, he came here to talk to him about a problem. De Vincent please enter the room, wondering what they will talk about. While everyone has their own work, the Women's Association is busy shopping to prepare for the upcoming auction. Happening Gillis wondered if the things she made were appropriate for the auction house's 10th anniversary. Lilia's mother thought it was appropriate because a lot of noble ladies really liked the household items Alice had made. Alice was surprised and wondered if someone had seen the things that her mother, Lilia of Tin Tin, winked and said that she had secretly taken some from the house and used it to decorate the VIP living room at the auction house. Alice was surprised. However, because she thought they were just cheap decorations made in her spare time. Thinking about this, she felt really embarrassed. When the two mothers were chatting with each other, their two daughters were also there. Next to Lilia, she saw a lie with rich lips and feet kicking the stone, pursing her lips in anger. She bent down and poked her cheek with her hand, asking what made her angry. Elle replied that she felt unhappy because her brother didn't go shopping. Shopping with her Lilia comforted her and pretended to be sad that although there was no brother with her, she was with the little girl. She expressed that she felt sad knowing that she was no longer important to Lee. Seeing that Lee was in a hurry, explained that Lilia is Lilia and her second brother is her second brother. Just because she's sad because her brother doesn't go shopping with her doesn't mean she doesn't like Lilia anymore. Seeing her so worried, Lilia continues to tease her putting her hand on her head, looked sad and said that the girl used to say she liked her the most. But now, when Han appeared, how could she forget her? While she was engrossed in acting, her head was hit right away. Hedy she was discovered by her mother teasing Elay. She explained that she was only teasing her because Eli had been thinking about her for the past few days. Hearing that, her mother casually asked what she knew. It seemed Eli wasn't the only one, thinking about Ace, and could it be that she is having her first love? Her question made Lilia blush. The little girl screamed, waved her hand at her mother and explained that to her. Ace was just a weird person. Because her mother once said that children her age couldn't be magicians, and she was still patiently waiting for her awakening. She bowed her head and trembled, and said this wasn't fair when he appeared. Even as a magician who is much stronger than adults, she feels sad because she also wants to become a magician to make her parents happy. The two women heard that. Looking at each other, Alice approached and comforted her, saying that she knew this was difficult for her, but she shouldn't compare herself to Ace. She's sure she knows from the kids her age at school that her son is completely different. Lilia wonders about why Ace can be so strong, right? She or Genos trained Ale, and if it's true then can they help her? Alice hugged her and said that except for the swordsmanship that her husband taught Ace, they couldn't do anything. The words surprised Lilia's mother. She knew Vase was a genius, but there was something wrong here. Why weren't Alice and her husband curious, and asked him the reason why he became stronger, while he was missing, and even. Before the bandits attack, he was good at sword fighting, even though he was only four years old. Alice said that she and her husband were both very curious, but she believed that he had a good reason for hiding those things and realized that giving give him personal space and support until he feels comfortable enough to tell them everything. And that's what she thinks as a father and mother she and her husband should do, not ask questions. Whatever they were wondering, Lilia's mother sighed and accepted that after all, she was a mother. She believed that parents only want to bring the best things to their children. They didn't pay attention to what they said. In a dark corner of the city, there was a strange man watching them after watching him return to contact his accomplices and tell them to go back and tell Lord Sebastian that the Mana Monster was not with the people. Hedis women today, and there was a mage from Cyro's Academy protecting them. So he didn't dare follow too closely and told his companions not to worry too much because the Mana Monster's owner would join the celebration. Ten years of healing auction house, and that was a good opportunity for them to take action. Then he threw himself up and disappeared in the darkness. Returning to Vincent's office, Ace was sitting opposite him, enjoying a cup of coffee. Vincent felt pressured. In his heart, he wondered what kind of kid he was. He was only eight years old. His presence made him even more nervous than when he was in the presence of King Sabin. His situation at this time was very different from when he was with his grandfather's family. Here is yours truly. Thank you for the tea and presentation. The reason you suddenly bothered me today, I wanted to ask you to find me some things including a protected cloak, preferably a blind type a sword that fits his eight-year-old body, and a mask that can hide his voice. Vincent agrees. The cloak isn't a problem. 
but the mask only depends on the maker. Only if you have a job as a sound mage can you do it. You could try. However, right now you're quite busy. In your heart, you're wondering why you want to please me. You smiled. Thank you for your help, of Vincent, and to compensate him. He didn't have money so he thought of a way to repay him. Vincent waved his hand in confusion as if he didn't need his help, saying that Ginos had helped him a lot since he started working. For the auction house, he remembered his father and the training for the bodyguards. The theft and chaos in the gym had been reduced to a minimum. However, Ace still insisted on being thanked. He said he wanted to help Elise stay awake, awakened by a method he had just discovered, and in the process he could also help Lilia. Hearing this, Vincent was surprised and asked to confirm once again. What he had just said was said. He knew that he and his wife were both not a magician, but he believes he can help his daughter wake up as a magician and join the Cirrus Academy. Returning to his room, he rushed to practice and tried to focus on controlling mana with the new time-increasing technique. But this takes quite a bit of time and effort. He thought about his previous life when he was still a boy, how helpless he was when people he knew were murdered, and he rushed to the path of revenge. In this life, he just wants to be stronger so he can protect his family and loved ones. He won't walk on the path of revenge anymore, while he's engrossed in the memories of his past life. Sevi calls out to remind him. It seemed that the women had come back from shopping. He was preparing his clothes. With Sevi in hand, he walked out of the room. As soon as he reached the bottom of the stairs, he saw his mother with a serious expression. She questioned him about what he had done. Promising Vincent that he will help Lilia awaken is somehow not a joke. Yet he could easily promise others like that to agree with Alex's words. Lilia's mother echoed that she wouldn't be gay if it was a joke, and that he'd have taken the joke too far, and confidently affirmed that he would never joke about this. He made an agreement with Vincent, and he agreed Vincent, held Lilia to his chest, and said loudly that he would show them when everyone returned and advised them to quickly go to the living room, to is the words true, or just a joke. After everyone had gathered, he asked Lilia and Ali to sit back, and he sat between the two girls' backs. He hoped the two girls could follow. His first instruction was to practice breathing in a special way. Two curious girls breathe, everyone can do that. What is special breathing? He grinned at Lee's naive answer that she was still breathing every day. He emphasized that the way he breathes is not as simple as they think. If they can do it, they will become strong like him. He placed his hands on the two girls' shoulders and began to instruct them to first breathe in slowly from their nose until they couldn't breathe in anymore. Then, while they couldn't breathe in anymore, open their mouth and try to breathe in again then exhaled in small increments about 15 times. The two girls followed in turn under the watchful eye of the boss. He told them to do so many times until they saw spots of light floating in the darkness. The adults followed nervously, watching the process of Oli shouting happily. The little girls saw beautiful snow spots, but soon they disappeared, explaining that it was because she had stopped breathing in a special way on the other side of Lilia hoeing Mang, because she had not seen it yet. I wonder if she did anything wrong. Consolation, because Lily's parents are not magicians, so it is understandable that she is slower than Oli. Seeing that, the two mothers were extremely impatient. They did not know. What are you doing, and is it really as good as you say Lilia's mother said she knows you have good intentions? She doesn't doubt your magical abilities, but teaching a child to awaken as a magician is unprecedented, should happen naturally. He explained he was just helping them awaken the same way he did when he awakened when he was three years old. The only reason he thought he could do it as a child was because of his ability, his ability to perceive the elements. At that time, he had already pictured this in his mind. Don't worry too much. Everything will become clear after he guided the two girls and advised them to calmly follow. Then he continued. Continue to focus on instructing Ali and Lilia, telling them that their bodies may feel a little hot, but don't worry, just breathe the way he showed them. Then, he used his mana to send small lines along both hands. With the bodies of the two little girls, Lilia shouted with joy that she had seen the spots of light. Elle also praised the spots of light as being beautiful. She continued to ask the two girls to concentrate. He wanted them to use their thoughts to try to collect the spots. The white light came to a place, and he told Eli that those lights were her friends, and they needed to be together to be happy, and she should try to help him do that after a while when he had practiced all three. Guy decided to stop practicing there. He thought that was enough for today. Lilia's mother ran to ask about the situation. Can Lilia become a magician? Ace affirmed that not yet, but if she perseveres. Just like how you guided her for a few years with your help, she is completely capable. Then, she will easily become a magician. Before he finished speaking, she rushed to hug him and cry. Thank you, I'm sorry. Had doubts. He thanked him for giving their little daughter more opportunities that only when she was a magician could sit far away. Lilia watched the story. The little girl felt so happy to know that she was could have the chance to become a magician like her parents. And she longed to look at her father 
and see him with tears in his eyes. The next days passed smoothly, and smoothly he spent the mornings practicing and helping Ali, and Lilia got closer to awakening. Meals in a house filled with laughter and joy made him extremely happy. Even though he always yearned for strength, he still made sure to spend enough time with everyone, because I know I won't have many more opportunities like this in the future. So two months have passed. Today is also the date that Zenos will meet with the Tai and Horns group. Alice asked her husband if he was eagerly waiting for this day. In response, he pointed behind the two of them firmly affirming that it was not only him, but Ace too. In the distance, Ace was standing looking at him quite nervous and worried. Sevi suddenly jumped on Ace's shoulder to complain. He reminded Sevi that she wasn't small enough to be able to sit on his shoulder forever. Finally, Tai and Hoeing's group came to welcome Angela. Angela's warm, breathtaking hug made him suffocate. The black giant advised her to let go Angela, shed tears of joy, and express sorry for being so emotional Ace, hello Den, wondered if he was taller than before Mr. Black teared up with emotion, rubbing his head at praising. You are also much older than before Adam stood leaning back against the wall. Fan Nan thought about how he thought the group members had planned to be happy to welcome Ace, so why were they crying now? His eyes looked towards Sevi full of curiosity. Helen stood nearby and used it. The bow stepped on his shoulder gently warning him that it wasn't something to worry about. Right now, she seemed happy to see him again. It seems like you've grown up a lot and become more handsome. Adam asked grimacing. Is it true that if you don't cry, you're doing something wrong? He thinks he's too mature to cry. That can't be a mistake. The most surprising thing was probably Jasmine's reaction. She rushed over and hugged him. To the surprise of her teammates and everyone around her, she hugged him and sobbed, apologizing for not being able to protect him last year. From afar, his parents were also crying. Finally, the 10th anniversary of Auctioneer Helst arrived before the ceremony visit in Gotginos. Once again asked if he was sure there was no need for a magician inside the hall Renos replied they had both an angel and an unscheduled magician. It's enough to put up signal barriers around the auction house and D'Aaron to control the main entrance. Because if you do too much, people will think the healthy auction house is a reactionary. Vincent told Genos that the man is very grateful for his group. Genos agreed to help him increase security during the ceremony. Today, Renos confidently affirmed that having them here will help the security team detect any external threats. The guests will be safe and the arena will be safe. Price won't be destroyed by his housemate's confident look. Vincent knows he's just kidding, but Vincent says he needs to do exactly what he said. Hopefully things won't get worse. Vincent mentioned something. Wanted a sword before becoming an adventurer. He didn't think someone who fought with lists could teach the boy how to use a sword Zenos confusedly said he only taught him how to use a basic wooden sword since he was four years old. He taught himself everything. Vincent was surprised that a four-year-old child had such self-discipline and enlightened spirit. Renos explained. Actually, he once said he could do it on his own. Study. But every time they compete with each other, a strange pressure radiates from his body, as if Ace has inner confidence because he has been honest for decades. So Vincent is surprised by this Vaughn. He thinks that new eight years old and he hasn't even lived a decade yet. Feeling like that, maybe Zenos overestimates Ace. Reynos doesn't deny that what he said is unreasonable, but during the fight there were a few times when the Ace missed his footing or was confused. Awkward, as if he still wasn't used to his own body, Vincent interrupted. He thought he knew the reason why Zenos was surprised, but it turned out that Vincent thought that this was because Ace was getting up, so they stopped talking nonsense and decided they were about to go downstairs together. Perhaps everyone was already there waiting for them. When they both appeared right on the stairs, Vincent's wife had been complaining about them for too long because they were grown men and they were the last people. Together with Vinon, he discovered that everyone had gathered and everyone looked luxurious and beautiful. He scratched his head in embarrassment and apologized for forcing everyone to wear only black and white outfits. But because they were the hosts, he didn't. Wants everyone to stand out too much compared to the guests. The Reno's family. He thinks that they should not be forced to wear dark colors like they do now. Alice said that their family feels good with their current outfits. Wearing clothes that stand out makes them stand out. Being uncomfortable doesn't make up for it. You're feeling like wearing dark clothes like you are now can't stop you from being a cute kid, and you don't like this at all. You hope you go through puberty quickly. Vinan claps his hands to practice, getting everyone's attention. He announced that the carriage was ready to depart. Outside, Vincent walked over and patted him on the shoulder. He told him about Lilia. He heard that Lilia was going very well. He happily said if she continued. If she continues at this rate, she will be able to awaken in time to join Cirrus Academy when she comes of age. Vincent happily once again sent his thanks to Asia, thinking that he was just doing the right thing and looked forward to it. Saw the wonderful things at his auction house, 
Everyone moved to the carriage, started to go to the house swing the Hellst auction. The carriage carried everyone through the major streets of the city. Cyrus inside the carriage, Adam expressed unbelievable, after listening to the story of what he went through after falling off the cliff four years ago. Helen encouraged him that at least he found a friend what he went through. We'll bring him back. Many experiences that even experienced adventurers or nobles rarely have, I completely agree with this, he feels that the past experiences are extremely special and worth cherishing. In the end, they arrived at the auction house, hey two bodyguards opened the door of the carriage to welcome them, and curiously stepped out of the carriage. In front of him, was a large, magnificent building occupying a large corner of the city. This was the auction house hey, the 15th anniversary, five days since the founding of Healthy Auction House an event that both adventurers and nobles are excited to attend. This is not only a celebration, but also an opportunity to see and perhaps buying priceless artifacts that are stored and protected for this important ceremony inside the auction house is an extremely magnificent scene, with many man now monsters, and even strange things that hide the appearance of this building is amazing, and the inside is just as amazing. Meanwhile, Vincent happily and excitedly encouraged everyone that today was a big day. He reminded everyone to stay focused and not make any mistakes. Assign duties to the bodyguard team, in which Group B is responsible for ensuring that the side doors are checked every half hour before returning to daily work. Seeing Father's serious demeanor when performing his work, happily told Helen that he thought it was great, a great opportunity to see his father normally. This can be understood that normally our Xenos are playful and don't look like a grown man at all. Helen thought that the image it's only natural that he's the leader of the group and she's grown up. Many times she replaces his work, but she still can't really do the same as him. After talking to Helen, she said goodbye to him for her sake, had to gather with Renos right away. Then Els called him to come to her side to join Vincent and his father. The scene behind that door was extremely large, hundreds of rows of seats for those who came to participate in all the activities. Preparations are being completed in the center of the auction room. On the podium, there is a man standing. He must be the host of the ceremony. Not only is the space below large enough to accommodate goods, Thousands of people on the second floor also have private private rooms with many different levels suitable for Tung's needs. This is impressive to him, even if he was a great king in his previous life. Lilia asked about his feelings about the family's auction house. She happily replied that he was rethinking whether this place was his home or not because it was unbelievably gorgeous and big. Lilia's mother and Alice laughed loudly when she heard him say she was happy because he liked this place. Lilia happily told him that what he just saw wasn't everything. Just wait until you see the secret room at the top. That's what will make you happy. He was most impressed. Together, they walked up the stairs to the mysterious room that Lilia had mentioned. Behind the door was a super huge room, where everything was decorated extremely luxuriously. Not just the chairs in the room. There is also a separate wine bar to serve customers. The important thing is that up here they can observe the entire scene in the auction hall, through the glass partition. At this time, in the auction hall. People begin to arrive with countless costumes, together with the two mothers. Curious about what the children were doing, Ellie was trying to count the number of people entering the lobby. Lillian suggested that instead of counting, let's play a clapping game together. She happily agreed that everyone could. They all seemed very happy holding the waiter to announce that VIP guests were on their way here. Everyone quickly got into position to welcome the special guests. The gate opened, and a strange hooded man entered immediately. Then came the appearance of the king, Blynn. Queen Priscilla, Prince Curtis, and Princess Kathleen. Everyone in the room knelt down. King Brain saw everyone. He arrogantly looked uncomfortable when he knew he was in the middle of the room with the others. Vincent expressed his apologies for this and explained further that the king had wanted to meet his family many times, so he thought today was a suitable occasion to meet the king. Vincent introduced his wife, daughter, and family one by one. Ace for the king, he and the queen laughed loudly, showing that Ace's family was Vincent's friend and was also his friend. After all, he and everyone were here to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the founding of the African Auction House. Usually, the Queen agrees with this point of view. She advises everyone not to be too formal. Just naturally, she feels happy to have more friends instead of V. Bin suddenly falling asleep and attracting her attention. Everyone exclaimed in surprise. She was immediately attracted to Sevi's cuteness. She felt that she was a cute mana monster that looked like a reptile but looked smarter. She happily said that she was just an animal. The baby was just born a few months ago. He signaled Sveed to greet everyone. Seeing Svi obey like that, the king thought he was very lucky, because newborn monsters are very difficult to tame. Yet Sevier looked very obedient. He said that he and Sevier can communicate through thoughts, so following him, it was more like acceptance than listening to what he said, so the man covered his head, and first cried out in surprise. 
He growled questioning voice about his words that what he just said means he is in an equal contract with Svia panicked when he saw him react like that, did he just say something inappropriate? He timidly explained that he wasn't sure about that. He thought Sevier was the one who initiated it. Hearing this, he quickly ran over and wanted to see Sevier more closely. His appearance surprised everyone. The king quickly approached, preventing the old man from saying that this was not the place for him to study other people's pets, reminded him that he was in the process of carrying out his duties. The king hoped he could remembering his duty clearly. He knelt down to apologize to the king to relieve tension after the unpleasant incident that had just happened. Lilia's mother invited everyone to their seats because the ceremony had already started. Then he returned to his position. Don't forget to turn your head back and glance at the man with the same hat at this time. You caught his steady, hungry eyes. Surely he still hasn't given up on his intention to look at your sevier. The ceremony has already begun, the host said. The auction rang out. On behalf of the auction house, I would like to send my greetings and thanks to everyone who was present at this ceremony. Today, everyone will have the opportunity to obtain rare and priceless items. The whole hall cheered in response to the applause echoing everywhere and before starting, the host of the ceremony invited everyone to face the South Stand to welcome the distinguished guests who had come to attend this ceremony. Clap your hands according to the host's words. The atmosphere here reminds you of your past life when you were a king. But now, you are no longer a king. You feel so small and your body is still just a king. Belongs to an eight-year-old boy who hopes he will reach puberty very early in a VIP room taking advantage of adults who are not paying attention and drinking alcoholic beverages while watching Lilia and Ali play and looking at the queen mother Lilia and his mother standing and talking in one corner. He noticed that under the queen's dress, there was a wand. He guessed that she was a magician. However, he could not sense Manna. She must have been carrying something that could hide Manna's aura. Or maybe she's strong enough to hide it somewhere where he can't feel it, like reading the queen's mind and knowing he's watching her. She smiles, making the queen shy when caught, meeting in secret, watching his grandmother scratch her face in thought. Although his soul was that of a grown man, it was interesting that he had never felt any attraction to the queen or any older woman, even if they were the same age as him before they died in his previous life. In his mind, images of all the older women he had met appeared in his mind, and he realized they were probably the same age as his mother so he had no interest. However, with younger girls of the same age as him now, he still doesn't find anything attractive to Tessie at Lilio or the princess. It's fine if he just met because he doesn't plan on dating anyone anyway. You'll think about that when you're older, right when you're still thinking about love, admiring and thinking about women and young girls. Vincent walks up and announces that a sword is about to be brought to your head. Pricey told you to tell him if you really want it so he can take it away. Told you not to worry about the price because he owns this place, so he can get everything for you. As soon as he finished speaking, the audience, the person presiding over the introduction, ceremony, has a short sword forged by an expert, and also a magician who controls the fire element, holding a sword inlaid with the core of the mighty thunder iron falcon, and if enhanced, this amazing sword with just a little mana will create an amount of electricity around the blade enhancing their sharpness and even creating a stunning effect. He just announced the base price for this sword at 50 gold coins. The sound of bidding continuously rang out in the auction room. 51 52 53. Seeing that everyone was paying such a high price, he guessed that this sword must be strong because in this world, a normal house in Cyrus is worth at least a million dollars. Gold coins, but a middle class family in the countryside in Asper can live well with just a few copper coins a day, yet the price for this sword alone is 50 gold coins, enough to provide for the family. Normally, they can live for 250 years. Then, oh, it's crazy to think about all the money spent to buy this sword and you guessed that maybe it was really strong. Vincent saw you thinking. He asked Ace if he liked it even though he thought it was quite big for him, but a sword with elemental abilities that aren't always available. But Ace refused, he knew it was strong, but it wasn't really what he needed, he wanted something more normal. Vincent also thought like Ace, because Ace was redundant. He told him to rest assured that this was just the beginning, and even if he couldn't find what he wanted, he could help him find the rest. Hearing that, he happily asked Vincent, if he had found a mask to change his voice. Vincent, with a proud face, boasted that the shirk he had found for him was made from a night fox. It had the ability to hide his anger at his presence. The scrutiny of the eyes, because he knew he needed it, so he would grab it by all means and laugh out loud at what Mr. Vincent just said, more than what you expected to say. Mr. Vincent left, told you to stay here and don't go anywhere, because if anything happens to you, your parents will will find Mr. Tin. So, just like what Vincent said, that sword with a base price of 50 gold coins is just the prelude. There are many more cool weapons. Even thousands of cores of mana monsters from rank C to rank A will appear and kill them. 
The king had already fought a few things himself, even a main a monster core, but it was not until the king received the monster core that he could know whether it contained the will of the mana monster in it or not. While watching the auction, while wondering when it would be time for a break, he discovered that Svea had disappeared. He asked Lilia and Ali about Svea's whereabouts. But they didn't know clearly that she was new here. Hurry up, quickly looking for Svea everywhere from under the chair to nearby corners, he suddenly heard a sound transmitted to his consciousness, her growl. He turned to find the same guy with the hat from before, trying to catch Svea, when he's standing under the chair of the counter. Svea appeared scared, and reassured himself to calm down, because he was the royal guard's mage. He came over, and called Sevier to come back to him. She happily immediately ran to his side. The hooded man was angry. He slammed his staff on the floor, and told him that he was a rural brat, who was not worthy to accompany a special mana monster like Sevier. He was surprised by his arrogant words. The man's arrogance asked again about the old man's intentions. The man said that Svi would become his. Oh my god, I've never seen anyone with such thick skin. Hearing this made me angry. The uncle clasped his hand, and asked him to say again what he had just said temporarily returning to a few minutes earlier after leaving. A. Vincent watched intently at the auction down there. He was feeling bad that he didn't like it. Just as he thought he just wanted a good sword instead of flashy or powerful things. If so, he would probably find something in the auction house's warehouse. While thinking when King Brain patted his grandfather's shoulder. Hello King Blind and Hope. The king enjoyed today's ceremony. King Brain said that although he did not know how Vincent protected an A-rank monster core from a silver-furred bear, he was quite satisfied with the gift. V. He hoped that inside this core of Man Na, there was the intact will of the beast Man Na. Vincent, after hearing the king's praise, bowed and expressed joy, because this humble event was truly worthy. There was a sudden visit from the king. Everyone felt that there was danger in the surrounding space, as if they were surrounded by a pair of glowing red eyes. Because Vincent was not a magician, he was most affected by thirst. The blood was so heavy that it could almost be grasped. Even though it wasn't aimed at Vincent, it still made him feel short of breath. He hugged his neck with difficulty. The surrounding soldiers panicked and protected the king and queen. At this moment, King Blind swung his sword at the queen. He waved his wand trying to find the person who did this terrible thing. But there were no strangers in the room. When he suddenly woke up, he lost control when confronting the guy named L. Sobbing and hugging his mother, Vincent, after having difficulty breathing, was back to normal. Returning to him, he was surprised to see what was going on. At the same time, Rios, Adam, and Helen burst through the door and ran in to ask how everyone was doing. The soldiers reported that the room was checked, they were fine, and asked Zenos to check the surrounding areas. Renos commanded Helen and Adam to run upstairs while at this time, Ace turned pale in his mind, silently apologizing to his father for causing all the trouble. The people in the room calmly gathered on the Ace chair and used the spirit of thought transmission to talk to Svi and asked if visiting her was okay. The soldier, after a thorough investigation, returned to report that they had caught an intruder. The blind king heard that. He just calmly showed that he knew, and that was okay. Before the king's reaction, his mouth was open. He was quite surprised at King Biel's gentle handling, silently thanking the unfortunate intruder for helping him. The dangerous scene put his hands together to wish him a safe journey to the land of paradise. At the same time, the soldiers turned to tell Sebastian, the hooded man, why a guard knew Lao fell just because of an intruder. Threatening him, he screamed, trying to convince everyone that he had slipped. This answer made them laugh and say that he would die soon. He angrily turned towards Ace. He knew that Ace was the one who discovered it. Feeling the pressure just now, Ang Tan bared his teeth to show his discomfort. He turned his head and silently returned to his position below the stage. The host thanked everyone in the audience for their help and announced the match. The auction continues. The auctioneer said they now have the last item for the ceremony and usually the good stuff comes last. He doesn't know who will be the lucky one to get this treasure. Support of the auction brought a cart covered with a towel. When the towel was removed, the entire hall saw that inside it was a lion from the human world, explaining to everyone in the auditorium information about the species of animals. Even though this mana monster is currently just an adult world lion beast, when it grows up it has the ability to become a B-rank mana monster. And if this world lion is carefully raised, it can even become an A-class monster right after hearing his introduction. Everyone in the auction hall felt extremely excited. Right now in the VIP room, the same guy with the same hat stood in the corner of his eyes, constantly looking at Asia and Svea, he thought. Ace is an asshole, and clearly he didn't pay any attention to the man now monster that the auction host just introduced. The host then said that raising and owning this monster would make the owner he became a legendary tamer and announced the starting price of 500 gold. The room was boiling, everyone gave their number 550, 600, 650, 750, a man in a hat.
gave the number 800, and the last match of We Came Blin gave the number 1,000 gold coins. The whole auditorium collapsed after hearing this number. No one gave the next number. Perhaps no one wanted to compete with their King Vincent, congratulated the King on his having owned the World Lion Beast. I thanked the King for his generosity, and at the same time couldn't help but wonder what the King had planned with this new royal pet. Whether he intended to personally tame it or not, the King stroked his chin and thought. Even though he quite wanted a contracted beast for himself, he thought he would give it to his son. And of course, this was also it depends a lot on the prince's expression. The prince was very happy when he heard his father say that. He stood up, put his hand on his chest, and seriously promised his father that he would try his best. The queen was happy and would not forget to flirt. Her son that she wouldn't hear about it. He planned to hide from his teachers. The prince cried out in shame that she couldn't say anything more because she had promised him that she would observe this royal family. They were surprised as if they were just like any other normal family, which is great. However, I don't know if that's really the case, or is it just the appearance that hides the truth that no one wants to see inside? Vincent offered to ask. The king about the auction is about to end. Does the king want him to go get the items and send them to the king right away? The king wants to go with Vincent to get those items. Now he no longer has the patience. Patiently waiting and wanting to see with my own eyes and touch with my own hands what I had bought. Suddenly Sebastian, the man with the hat on, walked up to the king. He whispered something to the king. Something that made him feel uneasy. Just in case you had a bad feeling about what might happen next. Vincent brought Asia a big bag of things. He said he had prepared everything you needed, only missing one sword, and he thought you should see if what he has prepared suits your needs. Alice suggested that she would help you manage these items while you went to choose a sword for yourself. The king listened and was surprised to see, can you use your sword to find out if you can kill your son someday? The hooded man heard that and immediately approached. He thought that the devil was just a commoner who didn't have anything. Knowing that fighting with him would spoil the prince, he didn't care much about his elegant demeanor. He shrugged and smiled, placing his hand on his chest. Thanking the Vu family for his kindness, he humbly denied that his abilities were not good. Knowing how to use a sword is just a hobby for him. He really doesn't have much talent in this field and he can't compare to his son. Saying so, the king smiled comfortably while his hat bearer stood beside him and looked at him viciously. Outside the door Rhinos is coming in response to Vincent's call to act King Rhinos, salutes the king apologizing for the chaos that just happened before King Blen praises Genos for quickly discovering the real harasser, feeling that Vincent had found a powerful assistant Rhinos, humbly said that it was his duty, and that he really did not deserve the king's praise Blen Rhinos confirmed Ace was his son and wondered if the king does brain have a problem with this. The Blin King said that the hooded man standing next to him had been a royal guard for many years and had made many contributions to the country. He felt he should be rewarded, and because he was very interested in Sevier, he asked me to give him spy. This would be my honor. I have a hunch. That's right. How the hell did he contribute to the king's family and the country? His family forced an eight-year-old boy like you to give him his companion just because he liked it, but he was so angry. Oh my god, the king's request was so unreasonable that the people around him still not believing what he just said, Reynos worriedly looked over at his son who was frozen, his eyes gradually darkening. He nervously stammered and told the king that he could not tell his son to do that. Blind said that he was willing to compensate Ace, and would personally pay for the cost of hiring a magician to destroy the blood contract. But Zeno still firmly refused because he and even his wife could not decide on their own. Svia is a mana monster that evil has himself. You have the complete right to decide. He can't do it for you. Decide this. Listen to this. King Blen, once again, looked and observed carefully. Ace did not hesitate. Ace looked straight and seriously. Facing the king's eyes, Sebastian was angry because he felt he was too arrogant. He complained if he hadn't been taught by his parents that it wasn't polite to look directly at someone of higher status than him. No King Brain unpleasant words from him. King Brain looked straight once again, seriously talking about whether he could give Svia to the hooded man and that he would compensate him with a sword from the king's warehouse. The family that every young engineer is pursuing, he remained silent. He bowed his head, trying to calm himself in the face of the blind king's unreasonable words. He let out a breath and bowed. Thank you for your suggestion. King Blind offered generous compensation, but he asked permission to refuse this offer, because for him, even the greatest sword could not compare with Svia. Hearing this, Sebastian could not keep his composure, shouted and questioned how he dared to refuse King Blind's proposal. Perhaps King Blind also felt that his previous proposal was a bit unreasonable, so he offered to exchange the lion for the new world he planned to give him. This immediately made Prince Tis panic because his father had promised to give it to him. King Blind thought that this exchange was not a disadvantage because although Sevier seemed unique and rare, 
the normal reptilian monsters rarely grow up as strong as Manna hunting. Even though King Blaine had explained to A that he would not be damaged in the recent transaction, A still did not agree, so he was upset and told King Brain his decision. He would not change he was not willing to give away or exchange his companion for anything perhaps Ace's attitude had challenged the king's pride because he tried to use words the gentlest and most favorable things just in exchange for a man no monster that doesn't have much power. But its owner, Ace, didn't know what he was asking in a loud voice one last time about are you willing to give up Svea or not? King Brain's attitude made Sebastian happy. He was sure he would have to agree soon. He was angry. He asked the king how much he was going to sell his son for. Ace told King Brain that he had asked. You three times, and it seems like your rejection makes his pride unacceptable, asked King Blind again. What price he would accept to sell his son and daughter? Not only King Blind, but everyone present in the room were stunned and surprised. Sebastian gently gestured to a the other royal guards let him advance to attack Ace. The guard put Man No on his sword and quickly swung his sword at him. At the same time, he shouted that Ace was just a commoner. Why did he behave so insolently before? King, how dare you have any bad intentions towards the royal family? Looking at the guard swinging his sword towards him, he could see his skill. Maybe he wanted to cut him in half, while trying to strengthen the sword. With Man Na right now, he immediately kept the Man Na in his body moving smoothly, and moreover he predicted the guard's movements controlling his path and attacks even though the guard, no matter how the soldier swung his sword, the ace gently avoided the ace, making him lose his balance. He quickly took the sword from the guard's hand. Next, he swung his hand, and gave him a punch right in the face, knocking the guard down. With his face covered in blood, he was probably missing a few teeth after the punch just now. Seeing that the guards did not fight back, Sebastian was crazy. He silently scolded the guards for being stupid for not being able to do anything to an eight-year-old child. Then he used the knife. Man now focused his staff and decided to attack. He must have the sevier. He saw that a young animal could create a fair blood contract at such a young age, which meant that the sevier could grow up the city surpassed even rank A. He was determined to have this magical beast. A large amount of pink mana was gathered on the head of his staff. He prepared to attack. But at that moment, everything around him seemed to stand still. Again, only Asia and Sebastian could move. While he was still wondering about the things around him, he spoke up and told him not to try to do anything. Spells using mana in the surrounding environment would not work. The object that caught his eye right now was the image of an eight-year-old child whose eyes flashed blue fire. He was afraid and asked him to step back, fearfully saying that he didn't have enough ability to fight him. He was a royal magician. But right after that, his horror was even greater when Ace immediately appeared next to him, and in a split second before he could think anything. Ace's leg was broken off. Ah, 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 Sebastian screamed in pain and hugged the foot of the bridge, saved everyone around, but no one responded. Everyone around stood still lifeless like statues approaching him, advising him to listen clearly to what you said. No one will help him. Sebastian trembled in fear when when he placed his hand on his shoulder, tears and snot streaked his face. He couldn't believe that he had the ability to condense the space of possibility that even a royal magician like him could not do. He warned him that he was don't do anything to him, because he is a magician who is the king's bodyguard, alas. Acting like an evil person is very scary. He must be so scared that his brain is no longer thinking logically because it's obvious. Handing over the sevier to the king, right from the first time he mentioned it. Not a scene like that. When he saw him, he knew he was afraid. He stood up and gave him a dangerous look, warning him to know his fate better if he didn't want to die at that time. The sunlight cannot even be seen. Not simply a broken leg like now. In the memory of all the people in the VIP room, the last image they saw was probably the moment Ace defeated the guard. With a punch as soon as they were determined, it seemed like the memory was partially missing. At that moment, what caught their eyes was the image of Sebastian sitting and calling for help with his legs scratching his aces while lying there motionless. The children in the room shouted Rios and Alice in shock. King Blind commanded the guards to quickly help Sebastian. The queen asked to quickly find a healer. Rinos and his wife quickly walked up next to Ace and listened to check his heartbeat. He confidently signaled to Alice that he was still alive. He picked him up and jumped on his shoulder. Everyone worriedly looked at her small body lying motionless. Alice used her healing power to treat her son. She trembled in pain in the heart of the street, which at this time seemed bustling and bustling with people here. We had already chosen to stop at cafe right on that busy street to chat with a man. There was a beard, so who would it be? The man with long red hair holding a spear in his hand replied, Unfortunately, I probably won't be able to recognize it. I realize that I don't have the slightest ability. Why should I take care of the children anymore? With my personality, one fine day, your son will probably kill me. Having said this, it seemed like everyone at the table at that time agreed on what I said.
The guy's comment was that actually I wish Black or Helen would come with me, but honestly we can't give you much Alice and I will try to do more and make up for it with don't say anything like that. We are a family. I really want to go to the temple to observe. The boy grows up every day. The other man on his shirt looks so strange. The same elegant black guy said a beautiful young and temperamental lady also quite agreed with Din and told me that you should know that we don't do this for money. Moreover, we have earned a good amount of money. From the last dungeon, there was an arm raised high and said to me. The atmosphere right now was extremely surprised and waiting to see whose arm it was and what happened to that person and no one else. Lady Jasmine herself was surprised because normally Jasmine absolutely hates the escort duty. But why did he still agree? So the girl asked, but logically Jasmine is the most suitable person to protect her. Worship Din only specializes in working in the defense field in the spell area of a large group There was a beautiful girl who still didn't believe it and to be sure. She asked Jasmine, were you sure you wanted to go? But Jasmine herself was extremely sure and confident about this mission. Because of that confidence, the guy with the long, dyed red hair told everyone to let her go. Do this mission and then make an argument. She's the only enhancer with induction. The elemental element in all of us is sitting here. She just went through her pale orange phase last year and with the element of wind, isn't she the most suitable? But just one person was enough. And after the conversation, everyone finally agreed and found the most suitable person to protect the temple. And everyone was extremely happy about that. When it was time to finish, everyone stood up and went home. When the family arrived home, they barely had time to open the door. Baby Khan got upset and shouted loudly at her sister. She wasn't allowed to practice without you, but she didn't understand why. Hearing the little girl say that, the whole family had to laugh. But I thought that it seemed like Lilia was capable of meditating on her own, even without me transmitting mana to her. What just happened to him? He ignored the wound on his hand walked closer and picked up the sword once. Furthermore, he discovered that the weight and balance had changed, so he bravely continued to dance a few times and discovered that not only that, the handle and the length of the blade had shortened a bit to coordinate with his body. Yours with the right to touch the most wonderful weapons. You've had priceless swords in your hands for decades, but you've never found a sword that fits you as perfectly as this. Continued to dance a few times and slash into a wooden barrel. He suddenly did not think that the cut could be so beautiful which made him feel happy and excited. Although there are very rare cases of elemental wizards have the ability to create wands that combine with a certain person, the weapon would adjust itself allowing mana to flow better between the weapon and the user. But he had never read any of the fields. What kind of situation? Is it that a sword has the ability to adjust itself to suit the user? And then he wondered who we tag you. Is this while he was thinking, outside the door his father was calling out to him. It's already late, son, I heard my father's voice. He called me and immediately ran back. He saw that the sword that I got for him was very right, and it seemed okay. I asked him, so I found the sword that I like, right? Although it's not as great as the rest, it suits me. I felt it after I tried swinging a few times. Cha cha, hold the sword on this one. Judging by Vin's answer, it shows that that sword was placed in auctions at small stalls several times, but no one bid. So upon hearing that, she immediately pulled it out and swung it a few times to test the sword to see how it looked. Wa Hoi was asked by Vin. When he saw the sword, he replied that the weight adjustment was quite bad because the creator tried to make it lighter. But for him, it was quite suitable, seeing that he also had a sword around his waist. Then my father suddenly asked me what kind of stick I had. Even Vin standing next to me was surprised when my father asked. His face looked pale and sweating. He told himself, let's do it with a cold face. Like he didn't know anything and then replied that I picked it up on the way out. I felt like it was quite strong and heavy. I thought I could use it for practice. He sighed and didn't remember ever seeing it. Can I borrow it for a bit? Of course he replied shyly, then timidly held it out. He raised the stick and turned to ask Jameson. Do you have any records about something like this? Jameson remembers that stick. He scratched his head and took the note. The paper read that one of our blacksmiths told you a rather strange story about how some old man threw this stick at him and muttered under his breath about how no one was worthy of us. There have been quite a few testers checking it just in case, and sir it's just a sturdy stick, but it's quite strange, should we find an elemental mage to test it sir after listening, I said quickly sorry, if it's worth it, you think having it will be quite convenient for you in practicing. Uncle Vincent, with sparkling eyes, noticed that he seemed interested in that stick. Vin said, it's okay, to apologize here, even it will only collect more dust here, so just take it and listen. Koi felt happy when he saw a worshipping him calling him uncle. He lightly punched his chest, while Diem's son was surprised, and turned his eyes towards him. A few days later when he got the sword he wanted, it was his birthday. Of a worship, everyone gathered in a luxurious house, 
and dressed in gorgeous, luxurious, and elegant costumes to honor their own beauty and have fun together. Happy birthday to a worship a worship. Thank you everyone for going through this past year. With me your mother can't believe it's only been a day. And now you're nine years old because you're so impatiently waiting for the party you're about to celebrate. Come on now, Alice, it's not time to give speeches yet. Let's get the party started. And so the party officially started with many people pushing food carts onto the carts, all of which were eye-catching and fragrant dishes. Each dish is fragrant and meticulously prepared. Everyone seems to be secretive and aloof. One girl said this is not a museum. Let's sit down and have a meal. Everyone was happily eating, drinking, and chatting at the same time. Oh, the party was so noisy. How could you? You're dining. Do you remember the time when your pants caught on fire and you had to go back to the village with your hands covered? It seems like those words made him shyly cover his face and say, oh, come on, Adam. Someone's voice spoke up. He must have forgotten before a horned mole emerged from under him while he was walking. Cleaning in a certain dungeon, if I remember correctly, he got scared and fell back, watering himself all over himself. After hearing that, everyone burst into laughter and Adam stammered, did he? I remember at that time. Everyone was asleep. But now, everyone has finished dinner and Adam has been humiliated. So is it time to give gifts? The first person is A's parents. Happy birthday again, son. This is a gift that your mother and I have painstakingly prepared to give you on this special occasion. Ellie saw that his father was missing him, so he quickly raised his hand and said, L2. Receiving the gift from her parents, she turned to Ellie with a happy face and said, Do you want to open it with me? A's little brother immediately nodded with bright eyes and an excited mood. Opening the box, the gift came to the altar unexpectedly, because the gift that his parents had prepared for him was probably something he really liked. It came from a sharp-nosed bison that father and son personally hunted in strip of the sun that their mother had placed on them. The three stones on there are each a small spell. Each stone only carries a spell that can only be used once, but I think it will be useful because you have a few safety plans when you go on an ace mission. Put it on my arm, and saw that it was perfect, and ran to hug my parents, and said I like it very much. Thank you for the gift I am. Next is the gift for the rest of us to watch next will be the gifts. What kind of gift is it? I'm so curious. Vin opened the gift box and inside was a pair of rings. He knelt down, which surprised me. Then he exclaimed, oh my god. Vin's actions made his wife smash it. He hit him on the head and told him, honey, to stop teasing the boy. It hurt, but he still replied, okay, don't you want to watch the show for a while? Anyway, this is mine and this is yours, Alice. He felt embarrassed because the stone on it was bigger than the ring that he gave to his wife. Vin said that as long as he wore this ring, Alice, the stone on his ring would light up if her mana level decreased, down to a dangerous level. Unfortunately, two rings can only do that, but we think it will give you some peace of mind. The gift from Vin and his wife made Alice extremely touched and hugged her deeply. She then thanked her sincerely while the two women hugged each other, the two of them were holding each other's shoulders. But perhaps everyone was very sad and felt that this ring was like a double-edged sword on the one hand, made the family worry less about him. But on the other hand, mom would constantly check the ring and worry that it would light up and seemed very concerned about it. Next, Adam said, Goo, what about us everyone? Because your son is incredibly strong. We also think the same as Ski's family, because this little monster doesn't need much. We think the whole family will like this better. Open it. Adam continues speaking are scrolls of communication. I won't mention how expensive they are because winning is super expensive. Anyway, with them, you have a kind of one-way communication, which I think is quite suitable for those two rings just need to transfer mana come on at ace. Then records a message once Mother Loin gets the message, she can respond once and after confirming the message has been transmitted to ace the two rolls of paper will dissolve into dust the wire feels even though it's a bit of a show off. But it's also quite a surprise tomorrow is a big day son are you excited? Promise me you'll be safe, I don't care what rank you'll be in, or how rich you'll be at all those things are not important to me. I just hope that you will be at peace. For me, that's enough. She gently kissed the mother to make her parents feel secure about her, so she replied, of course, my father and I will. Come back as often as you can, until the party ends and everyone goes home. Everyone turns around to wave goodbye to Ace, and silently hope that he will be safe in the dark night lying in bed. Ace has felt like this for a while, but when you were about to go to sleep, you knew that now, you have a family who truly loves you. This feeling is so precious. You will preserve it and fight for it, if necessary, and for you. Need to become strong, even you are more than a king. Indeed, family is a sacred feeling that makes everyone want to protect it with everything they have, and even constantly try their best. Made me stronger to be able to protect my family, and so I fell asleep until the next morning. A beautiful day with beautiful morning sunlight, I try to get used to something. 
but he always tried his best to resist oh why did he want to use mana and he accepted and followed his will he tried to grab his tail pull it behind him and throw it into the sky causing it to fall in pain tears fell into the sink then he prepared clothes and looked extremely dashing and Sai walked out of the house in a happy mood clearly shown through the expression on his face as he walked down to the bridge fang you saw your parents and me waiting i'm their dad he came closer and said look at you you already look like an s-rank adventurer i know your man ah but don't be arrogant and always remember your limits and when things get tense trust jasmine ace politely replied yes father noel mom said it seemed like she didn't want to leave her brother l had tears in her eyes then pulled his hand back oh, are you and me really going why don't you stay my l's question made the mother standing next to me also become sad and throw back her emotions she came closer and gently told the baby i love you and i will i'll be home soon but because i love you i don't want to leave dl are you willing i want them to stay i want them but with the immense love you have for me i sat down and calmly told you that i knew my sister had passed away now that you're grown up i have an important task for you l can you take my place and protect our parents while we're away a lot of light i can protect them and then he burst into tears and immediately hugged his brother he missed the time when his brother grew up and and now he knows that little bit of time just wasn't enough but to be able to protect them this was the step he was forced to take the love of his family gave him the strength to help him become courageous to be able to face the difficulties and challenges ahead alika's mother was also worried she cried and hugged her oh don't look at me like that i'll be fine she also spoke up and said we'll be fine El hug Sai told her not to make a fuss alice's mother also held back her sadness and worry then he said goodbye ace and did not forget to tell him to wear the ring he smiled of course his mother and so he was about to open the door when a voice called ace his parents will always support ace he smiled and walked away went out he saw his parents friends and the car was already waiting for him she asked him if he was ready and of course as expected he was mentally prepared he put on a mask and walked away after sitting for a while after a long journey, they finally arrived. There were already quite a few people here. When they passed by a man, he heard that he was looking for a fire magician of at least C rank. Suddenly, Set cried out, What are you doing? And that girl was surprised, and said that my contracted animal looks different, and said that I just discovered that it can change its shape a bit. This way it looks no different from a black lizard. Looking less attractive, she had to laugh when she heard the ace finish talking. A young woman speak called the next person, Welcome to the Old Adventurers Guild X Yus, how can I help? The ace answered us, I want a test to guarantee him. The girl pressed a button, and said of course of course, please follow me. We also have a few other people taking the test today, but because it's a case guarantee, so we will push your force to the front, so you don't have to wait long. After a while, it has come this way. Everyone around Kwong is talking about ace, maybe because you have priority, to be tested first. They are gossiping curiously about your identity. Let's go. The parent's friend overheard a knock on Cock Cock's door. The man who invited them in. The girl bowed to the A rank adventurer. Jasmine Flame's world has a request for a guarantor. Sir, here's a great attest. I'm quite familiar with Miss Flame's world day. Do you mind waiting outside? The man asked Miss Flame's world. Hey, miss, how are you? I just saw you not long ago. But no, I don't understand why. Hearing that, he clenched his hands. He continued to say that it was an honor to meet you too. My name is Plan Breath, and I am the manager here. Normally, there will be an exam registration form to fill out and a mana core before the exam to participate in real combat, but because of the flamward lady, I will sponsor you. I will go through those steps. It seems that Ace's parent's friend is a reputable person, so because you are the one she sponsored, so you have the favor, and you think Miss Jasmine's family is really that special. So why did that gentleman continue to say all you have to do is have a duel with one of our inspector's weapons are your choice you use? and think that Ace is a martial artist or an enhancer. Becoming an adventurer is not required to have a name, but because you have a close relationship with Miss Flame World, what can I call you devil? For a long time, he remembered the scene in front of the mask wearing on his face. It reminded him of the half notes on the musical table, and he replied that he could just call me the note, and they shook hands through that handshake. It seemed like the two of them had sensed something. They were surprised that this power was really strong. Whose power was that? Maybe this was a well-hidden mystery. It was nice to meet you. Mary led the two of you. Go to the lobby to check. You two go this way. As you walk, both the other man and Ace turn to look at each other in an indescribable way. The Fru family in question seems to be quite respected. Ace wonders if that's the reason. Why does she want to go with him? But she seems quite upset when someone mentions her father over her behind. 
and looks at her admiringly this way Sir Note and Lady Flameward this way will lead you two straight to the promotion floor where the tests will take place. Always pay attention and go straight up the steps and take a seat before your name is called. A bright door opens, making the two of them blinded. As soon as they walk through that door, their eyes caught sight of two men competing with each other, surrounded by quite a large crowd of people witnessing the extremely dramatic competition of a man with a slim body, was able to increase most of the attacks of the man with the prod head to the point that the man with the prodding man had to recognize the other man's talent, but he thought that the opponent would not be able to dodge this attack of his. That attack was called the death blow. Even though he was walking up to his seat, he did miss the competition going on. He secretly thought why he had to let the opponent know what move he was about to do. The same way magicians recite spells to practice. With a lot of resources, the enhancer also chose to read the name Chu Thu with a loud shout. That was the move that the slim-bodied man responded to. The guy teased him and wondered how he could do it. Man answer yes, there is one thing that even old people can rotate a drumstick better than the way you can rotate your cunning stick, you are too focused on physical strength instead of vite enhancement, man they're not paying attention to the balance of ridiculously predictable moves. Even though you're 35 years old, you're only at the dark orange stage, where I've completed training on 100 push-ups, sit up straight 100 times, squat 100 times this man. I also feel helpless. I practice that much, but unfortunately my face is still distorted. Men will rate people like him as E rank. But because you yourself have the fire element, I will sting you first. If you're ranked D, congratulations. He sullenly left and went to the next person. Dan Boy H. Well, before he could finish his sentence, the girl fell to the ground because her legs were tight, causing her underwear to be exposed to the men. If you're unconscious and don't sympathize and share, you'll end up gossiping and saying that your grandmother's underwear looks nice. It's pitiful for the girl. Some people even think, why not give her an E rating? It took a while, but from afar, I looked at this guy and saw that he seemed strong. What made me feel that strength just through a look? Was it right? Fell stood up and shouted Diane, wage 18 years old orange phase magician specialized in water element. A girl wearing a hat standing nearby talking to her in a friendly way, she doesn't need to introduce herself. We have information, but prepare your weapons. And know that we have medical staff and medical staff and healing magicians on site in case of any injuries polite girl yes Jasmine Spin Sang told me. Once a magician reaches the orange stage, they will find their element instead of trying to pure all four elements, focusing on a certain element will create greater efficiency than I've ever heard. For magicians, if they specialize in two or more elements, that means the test will be more rigorous and more accurate to see if the examiner really specializes in more than two elements. The woman wearing the hat spoke up. Let's see what you've got, Miss Market, pure water energy, inside her shield wall. The test was extremely stressful. Miss Dan continuously came up with tricks so that the examiner could see her ability and effort, and then her effort and ability. Her ability made everyone outside marvel as the water turned into a mist explosion that even the person testing her exclaimed. I must say her control is quite good and the final spell sequence is quite methodical. She is a bit self-conscious. I was so confident that I didn't prepare any other defense measures. But in general, she controlled mana quite skillfully and quickly, thereby achieving C rank. Seeing that at that age, she was already C rank, she should be proud and continue. Follow Eliz, please come forward. Yes, please. Wait a minute. What happened to that guy that made everyone so surprised? The slim guy has been informed about the other person's case. You're considered an adventurer. Everyone in Class B looked extremely surprised and didn't understand why they thought they were in Class B but didn't need to check, and there was a person wearing glasses looking at them with four eyes looking at each other, ignoring everyone, wondering if it was the next person's turn Lucas Wickes finally came. Why don't you just skip it and consider it a grade? Tester Lucas Wickes, 11-year-old light orange stage magician, specializing in evil fire element, was also surprised because at only 11 years old, he has already reached the light orange core. He is indeed very strong, as the ace saw earlier. Because he is young and has talent, he seems arrogant. The examiner can see that through his attitude. Just like that, the examination begins. The arrogant boy rises, my guardian. The slender body of the examiner expresses his feelings, showing that he is a fire guardian. Big and sturdy looks like we have a special talent. Well, it's not unexpected from a member of the Wickes family, the female inspector wearing a hat. Looks like you're not just burning with fighting spirit, young man coming from the Wickes house. But that rudeness shows that you still need to learn to be humble. Evil observation, one step, one good step coming from the fire guard inspector will naturally disappear when the limited amount of air is used up in that tomb. The brat said it was too late. Lady inspector, I've heard that no inspector has ever been injured while inspecting adventurers. 
Well, it seems I'm allowing you to be. That's the first person what the inspector continuously launched dangerous blows to teach him a lesson about his arrogance and complacency. But not long after. That release he was defeated by the examiner. Thank you for your time, sir. Your rare mana and ability to learn difficult fire spells have proven your potential. But the boy shouted loudly. It's nothing. The test isn't over yet. The tester was surprised. What are you? The tester's slim body rushed forward, making him very angry. He shouted loudly. How dare you interrupt the test? My goddamn inspector calmly replied that he was the one who broke the rules and chanted a surprise spell, even after the inspector had announced the end. The boy was angry that the trash witch was the one. The one who blocked my next attack while blocking the missiles, she was the one who made the test end while I was still in control of everything. This bratty boy still has no fear and no respect for anyone. Nothing happened. The slim body inspector said you should feel free to justify your behavior. Now, Emily, please report his results. Like I said earlier, your man now amount and controllability are very good. Good even though there are still shortcomings stemming from lack of experience, we see that he is capable of getting a B rank. Everyone around him told him that he did very well and congratulated him for placing a B rank. Okay. Thank you, and you said don't compare me to you trash ape, I gave you a B rank. Of course he's indignant you idiots, just wait until my father knows about this looks like his family is quite good, he has authority, and his father gives him affection. So he doesn't care about anyone. Finally, the person we've been waiting for has finally arrived. Ms. Jasm also wished him luck. She stepped up and thought of him. Should we approach this type of warrior like that? You and I have years of training and experience using swords and those suspicious and sharp movements, but are also very secretive in defending ourselves. The slender figure urged us to hurry up. We don't have all day. He walked up and bowed his head. The inspector seemed like you were a special case because I didn't have any information about you to see what you were. What's wrong? The examiner turned pale and didn't understand what kind of sudden pressure this was. When he had just pulled out the sword, a person said shit. They are all confused and don't understand what's going on. Come on down, George. I will be the one to test this candidate. Sir, will you personally test this candidate? Please forgive my rudeness. Sir, but do you need an AA class person like you deigns to come and test a candidate, especially someone of your caliber? If it's because of my hesitation, I wonder how much strength I should use to let examiner George reassure you. I don't doubt George's ability. I just feel like I should test this candidate because his sponsor is familiar with me. This is not a problem, right? You turn to him. That atmosphere must also make the other contestants hold their breath and sweat. The man standing in front of Ace is not only the manager of the largest guild in Sepin, but also an AA rank adventurer. That he didn't show any weakness, and the pressure from his bloodlust was really heavy as if he had no intention of taking a normal test. Then why are you so excited? He pointed his sword at the Ace, and told him to get ready, and not let this special treatment bother him he got ready, and started the test, but only after a few attacks did he. It turns out he quickly and easily made you lie on the ground, but reassured you that you dodged a few of his attacks quickly after dodging them. You didn't disappoint our expectations, responded, leaving him with a scratch right on his nose. He didn't feel angry or in pain from the wound, but he felt great. It was difficult to understand how the two of them got caught up in the dramatic test of what would happen. What happened next? Wow, it was so painful. A wound appeared on his face. The more he fought, the more obvious his disadvantage became. So how will he turn this match around? His muscles still exist. He still looks young and he is 30 centimeters shorter than he used to be when he was still used to using swords. His body had become stronger after merging with Sylvia's dragon. Will, but he was still weaker than a veteran who had body has been reinforced and covered with a damn thick layer of mana. Even after a lot of training, I'm still not completely used to this undeveloped body. He suddenly said sorry for looking down on you after a while. Friendly time, we should be a little more serious at that moment your whole body urged you to move to run away. He didn't have the slightest intention of stopping, and thought it seemed Miss Flam World had found someone deserves to beat him. At this moment, he felt the wind bullets were very fast and close enough to be visible, but their trajectory was not too difficult to predict. He could predict the trajectory of the wind bullets at this time. If he wanted to have a chance to fight back, he needed to close the distance after a few movements, but he was close enough to fight back, which surprised the two inspectors and Miss Jasmine. He thought he was a magician. The fire master continued to fight but the result was already over. He was an AA rank adventurer capable of using long-range spells that many fire masters were wary of. So why was he doing this? Don't worry, don't be arrogant. The fight was extremely tense. Jasmine was also worried and stood up. Ace still couldn't stand. He grabbed him. Damn, it was so far that Ace couldn't counterattack him yet. Impressed by the Ace and chanting more and more strongly, he pushed him to turn the cards face up. 
As why, Caspian had seen the piston stamp skill. But this self-created spell really shines when used. At close range, the old man realized he was about to lose. He couldn't do that. He roared fiercely, making everyone panic. Ms. Jasm also stood up, pulled out two swords from her waist, intending to go down to support the ace. And at this moment I feel like there are two schools of light magic, external and internal. While the books say that internal light magic is too difficult for magicians, because it only increases your power a little. Have to protest with your enhanced speed, and reflexes you should be able to dodge everything hoping for liberation. Hagi went a bit too far, at one point trying to test your limits, please forgive me. And it seems like you're determined to hide your true ability until in the end, he can only assume that you want to be in the lower division. Ran all the contestants talking about you, have you seen it, or what the hell? The guy asked Ace, are you sure he doesn't mind? Ace nodded and agreed to that question. Miss Jasmine immediately ran down the stairs. As soon as the match ended, she came to Ace's side and asked, Are you okay? No, examiner. The announcement just now is the last test for today. Come to the front desk to receive your adventure card. Everyone disperses. When the test is over, he walks towards the office. Sits down at the desk. Doing a familiar job, thinking about the time he fought with Ace and sighing. His body now seemed to be soaked with fatigue. The two inspectors walked in and opened the door. Sir, please, explain what happened close the door. And they closed carefully, sir, what's going on today? So today there are more B-class adventurers than there were in total B-ring last month, not to mention all three look like light orange children at only 11 years old, which is something humanity has never had before, sir. The two inspectors angrily said he raised his hand to show them to stop say. Do you too remember what happened half a year ago in Exerus? It was the first tournament between the three races, right? That's right, most of the staff from the adventurer guilds weren't informed. But I received notice a few weeks ago that the ban on elves and humans becoming adventurers under the Sap and royal family has been lifted. Today's matches have a few contestants representing that sir. Sir all three of them are elves or dwarves, Lucas Wickes is half-elf, he has long been a resident of Sap and information about his birth date is hidden, but one has to guess maybe, he I was born to a slave who was a demon. The Wickes family has always had a bad reputation for using many nefarious methods to create outstanding descendants for the family. No matter what, he is in an unusual case that is too compatible with the fire element. Although he had elven blood, he was awakened at the age of eight, which was quite early by the standards of a normal elf, and was forced to become an adventurer. Adventurer to be able to strengthen his abilities through actual battles. It seems his clan has reached the limit of his development through the use of mana cores and magical potions to promote his growth. His development Eliza, on the other hand, is a mystery as his origin documents are hidden. But he was raised by the dwarves from a young age. He was sent as one of the representatives from the kingdom. Dwarven kingdom to assimilate with the human kingdom. But why was he given a special treatment to receive rank B without having to test? Mr. Knight only awakened a few months ago, and is only in the dark red stage. However, his ability his ability has been tested, and his sponsor is someone I can't refuse. But I'm also a bit curious about his ability, and about today's masked enhancer to be honest. I don't know who it is, but I can say for sure that I don't represent any noble family of elves or dwarves. I'm just a little curious about what kind of person Miss Flame World might want to talent. Support Flam X is the Flame World family. The examiner was surprised when he heard about that family, which is right because that family is famous for giving birth and educating the most powerful fire magicians in the kingdom. So that's the reason why he's so good at fire magic. The information I just told you two will be announced soon. However, I believe you two won't go around discussing it until it's announced. After it was officially announced and discussed, the tomb inspectors left alone. He sat there thoughtfully thinking about that masked enhancer. His fire magic, although very strange, was extremely effective. But you're wrong, George. It's his art that makes him look like a beast. Even though his movements sometimes seem awkward, as if he's still not used to his own body, I still can't. I can only imagine how terrible he will become when he grows up. However, with the ban removed, elves and dwarves will not only be the only ones who could become adventurers, but also great students. What step must this continent have taken? A new exciting era in a different development. The pretty girl with long hair didn't know what had happened that made her sigh in frustration. She remembered the image of a maybe that guy is ace. She thinks she should be happy that he reunited and had a good time with his family, but who is she? Is ace being too good to her? She imagined a scenario where he was intimate with a certain girl. The girl said it was all thanks to him holding her hand and gently replied, thank you. Everything is going very well. Thinking about that, she got extremely angry and said that they were cunning and were her friends first but she regretted not treating him well before. She should have treated him better when he was still here. This isn't all my fault, because he treats me like a child. What an idiot. 
a man suddenly opened the door and called out, Darling, I have good news for you. I caught you again. I caught her continuing to use that ball, not paying attention to what he said. She told my grandfather, What did you say about knocking on the door? Grandpa laughed, and I will be very happy when he can become my grandson-in-law. But it's a bit early right now, isn't it? The niece reacted after what you said, so don't be angry. He said I have some good news for you little niece who are listening. So if I tell you Will, is it true that I have the opportunity to go to the same school as Asia? You're not lying to me. Really? I can really go to school with Asia, right? The niece kept asking her mother, who told her to calm down. Come on, Tessia, that's right. I've long been acquainted with the principal of Exer U.S. Academy. That fierce old fox keeps bragging about finding four enhancers who can use all four elements, while I'm the one who taught them. The boy was not happy about this at all, but things were a bit more complicated than just sending him to school. Her mother asked her if she remembered the Continental Tournament. He said, well, that was just the beginning. I am still negotiating the terms of the union of the young generations of elves and dwarves with humans at Exer U.S. Academy. The principal told me that Asia has decided to become an adventurer for three years, so if everyone it's convenient that by the time he joins Hexfly's Academy, he'll already be in his final year. So practice well with them first. After all, this will be the beginning of the new generation returning to the scene. On Asko's side, Jasmine worriedly asked if he was okay. He was okay. Actually, I'm quite happy. Anyway, are you and Caspian very close? Miss Jasmine. Well, not really. Your father is quite familiar with the people in the Adventure Guild. Fake and Caspian are one of them. Sir note, sir note. Miss Jasmine pulled his shirt and said over and over again, everyone around him was talking and asking dozens of questions about him. Maybe he was, is he just a bit short? Or is he really a kid? And is that kid crazy? He walked up to the beautiful lady and she said, thank you for waiting. You have heard the announcement of the results of your simulated duel, sir. Then when I picked it up, there was a yellow card and a voice called out. The incompetents were smiling. Congratulations, Jasm. She put her hand on her shoulder and said, maybe I'm just a newbie, but now I'm an adventurer, is a part of us. And she held up the golden card that only he had in his hand. He looked at the card in his hand and now he had become an adventurer with a name he was freed free from the constraints of being a win. But today's match with Caspian made him realize a few things he had spent too much time adjusting and getting used to the new magic system of this world, like Beasts by Sylvia May. Honing your elemental powers you've been so engrossed in the abilities you gained since coming to this world that you've neglected to practice what I did so well back in the day you took advantage of I have a small amount of key. I've left you with the simplest techniques, but in this world your limits don't exist. So should you continue pursuing magic or have you accidentally bumped into someone? Please forgive me. Hey, he's one of today's contestants. He also got a B rank, but he didn't need a test. He said no. Why are you such an arrogant boy? What's the B rank? Do you two know each other? There's a meeting of B-rank adventurers that I haven't been informed about yet. He spoke in an extremely arrogant tone and replied, Why are you two going to get angry? If that's true, you're still arrogant. Don't. But you're complacent just because you're ranked in the same category as me. Even within the same category, there are different levels and you commoners must be the lowest and never forget that. After saying that, he turned and left. Seeing that this supporting character has a lot of shallow cliches, Ms. Jasmine asked what happened. Nothing. I was just talking to you. He's gone. So what's next? Do you want to go to the board? Accept the mission or do I already have it with your skills? It's just a waste of time. So I was going to do something else, and I took you to the forest of beasts. When you got to the gate, the guard outside said you needed it. Once you have a permit, you can go inside and take it out for the guards to see. She asked him if he needed to bring anything before leaving. He quickly replied that he had packed the necessary things for next week. So let's go. Through that gate is an extremely beautiful scene. The air is fresh. The animals take turns showing off, adding color to the forest. And this is a forest of monsters that seems a bit peaceful. Isn't that right, Miss Jasmine? Is it an outpost at the foot of the Grang Mountain Range? Most of the surrounding areas have been explored and lower level adventurers use this area to practice and gather materials for the liquid quests that the that monster produces in its scent glands, which are used a lot in creating healing potions and elixirs so there are always a lot of quests for them, but he seems to be having a hard time doing it. The guy kindly asked her if she should help him, but because it was his mission, she told him to let him do it himself. It seemed like he saw something, and immediately jumped down on Ace's shoulder, and he thought that it ate that one to become stronger. It must have become excited with this amount of wild man may everywhere. Seeing him standing and observing S.I., she asked him if he wanted to follow it. But he, I think it will be fine. You can still feel it through the contract. She immediately said that this forest of monsters has even more dense layers of man na, so your connection with Psy will be expanded even more. Hurry up, 
Our first stop will take all day and it will get more dangerous as the evening progresses. Try to keep up. Surely this is the feeling every parent feels when they see their child leave home. The first time he went to school, he remembered the time when he and Sai were about to leave the house. He told Sai to take care. He set off because he was so tired. He took off his mask and lay on a deserted lawn. If it weren't for his help, with the mana transport skill, Sai taught you. You couldn't catch up with me at a light red core stage. Even though I adjusted my level a little, it was quite impressive. I thought we would stop. I rested a few times, and everyone lit a fire to warm up, but I still haven't seen your contract animal yet. Is it okay? I'm still sending you the situation. It seems like it's quite happy. Oh, it must have been quite annoying for her to think like that all day in the house. And he closed the book in his hand, and happily said that she must be very happy. Jasmine, why do you want to become an adventurer? Carrying her silence death, or did he poke her right where it hurts? For a long time, she hesitated. She wanted to escape from the clan. Listening to the answer, he confirmed it. So he was right. It's okay, miss. I know you noticed me when I was at the Adventurer's Guild. The Frame World family is one of the families that has contributed the most in the fight against goblins. My family has many powerful mages, both magicians and magicians. Her lineage of enhancers is number one when it comes to the fire element. They are quite proud of that, because fire is said to be one of the strongest elements, so when she awakened earlier than all of her cousins, her parents were very surprised. I hope for you. But when all the Kate tests showed that I was not suitable for the fire element, the family treated you like a piece of trash. It was so stupid he clenched his fists and roared. I knew there were levels. There are differences in the power of the mana core, but that is completely arbitrary. It is not unreasonable for magicians to create a hierarchy based on magical elements with no element ranked above any other element. They completely depend on how the magician uses it. He shared his opinion, and she laughed out loud. She apologized. It's just that she usually sees you calmly, so she was quite surprised to see you so angry. It must have been because he was quite frustrated when thinking about his previous life. The only weakness he had was that his Kaya mount was the same as this world's mana core. At that time, his Kaya mount was less than normal, but in this world with a with the element of magic and a deep golden core, at only 24 years old, Jasmine is still shunned by her family, but it's unfair, regardless of whether it's an enhancer to a magician or elements to each other. Has long accepted the fact that people always find ways to make themselves superior, that's only natural. Besides, the group Tui Sing's Oris has been very good to her, even when laughing loudly or smiling for the first time. Jasmine was always withdrawn and looked fragile. The two of them put out the fire and went to the small personal mattress they brought with them to rest. Thinking back, I think I was a bit forceful forcing her to let me be her bodyguard. Your niece is neither friendly nor extroverted, nor the most knowledgeable person in the Tutan and H. Orns group. We should have asked her opinion first. You're quite sensitive. You shouldn't tease adults. But I'm quite happy with you. Jasm, you don't hesitate to tell me when I make a mistake, and I think I need it especially when I overdo it sometimes, but we really should sleep. It's so weird talking to you. She didn't feel like she was talking to a child. They were already asleep. The next morning, she was woken up by an animal. You're too heavy. Don't press on me. Keep your eyes open. You see something that looks real. The ugly thing is on me, so you chase it away. He, it's funny. Kid. Good morning, Miss Jasmine. Why don't you wake me up to help her? I tried so hard, but you didn't even move. I'm sorry, bad habit. It's not mine yet. If you wake up, go eat breakfast. Ask if your pet is coming with us. You're happy. This snail will have breakfast. I've got it. I think it's already there, but it's so disgusting. So where are we going now? Actually, part of the reason I brought you here was to duel. I've noticed your fighting style seems forced at times, as if you know exactly what to do. But your body won't listen, so I think your idea is good. But what kind of fight are you planning? You need to know your body's limits before going to any dungeon or accepting any quests. So, so please limit the use of manna, and only use it to strengthen the blade I understand, then use the remaining fan. You were surprised to hear her say that how did she know it was a sword? Well, it's not easy for someone like you to hold one wooden stick go everywhere for nothing, so let's do it here. According to her, when you pulled out your sword, she was also surprised because this is a sword. Why are you ready? How long has it been since you fought? Nobody strengthening this battle with Miss Jasmine only confirmed the fear he had since the battle with Caspian. While almost obsessed with homing this new and wonderful magic, he had become self-conscious about. Satisfied with his swordsmanship skills since coming to this world, his magical ability was now a burden and he was relying on it so much that it simply hid his limitations and shortcomings for a while. During the fight, you won, Miss Jasmine. My physical strength is weak and my body sometimes moves a bit awkwardly, but those precious skills have saved me. My intuition and reflexes are very formidable even. It's scary. Thank you. 
But I know you're going easy on me. It's not a scary intuition, but I'll gradually get stronger through quests and dungeons, even when using magic, and when I become a bard. That's too long. I'm a few years ahead when it comes to using mana, and now I only focus on sword fighting without using mana. I want to explore dungeons without using mana. Even with all that experience, it takes decades for warriors to completely master swordsmanship. I know you're good, but in two years that's all you need in a crowded and bustling tavern. Hey, have you guys heard the rumors yet? Oh, if you're going to talk about that famous masked swordsman, it's all nonsense. There's no truth to it. It seems like an acquaintance of mine used to be in a group with him. He was with Jass in Flame's world, and he was quite, he's so low that it's unmistakable. So what do your so-called acquaintances say about him? I think the rumors are true. He's not a magician with CT. If that guy isn't a magician, well, all the rumors are exaggerated. You've heard a few stories about him. No one said that he personally cleared a dungeon. How could that be possible? Wizards couldn't do that. Even if it was a dungeon, even if it's a low-level prison, you tell me to believe that a normal swordsman can do it. Maybe sometimes it's not completely right, but remember that Jasmine Flu is with him. Just bring him here, and I'll take him out for everyone to see. What is the matter? According to some people, he is a disciple of Jasmine Flama's world. Those things are also wrong. But the strangest story is that not only did he receive a B rank at his rank evaluation, but recently he just rose to a rank. If it's true, he's the one who reached a rank after only two years in the profession. And it makes sense for him to get mad, even if he's also a former B rank magician. The swordsman thought to himself. Something like a big pimple on his pride suddenly appeared outside the door. A man wearing a mask walked in. All eyes turned to him. He mentioned Tao Xiao Tao. Sao coming right there. Isn't that the little swordsman that everyone is talking about? It's the masked swordsman we've been talking about. The main cause of all the crazy rumors in the flesh. Oh, oh. what are you doing? He asked stubbornly. Where's your little bodyguard? She's out of time. Brat, are you ignoring me? Because recently you've been quite famous for your nonsense rumors. So you, you think you're better than me. Seeing that, everyone in the pub advised him to calm down. He knew he wasn't allowed to kill people in here. But ignoring what he said, he still pulled out his sword and slashed at him with one sword slash. This first thing surprised him. Was he dodging, or did he miss? He was so fierce that he kept slashing at him. But he dodged every move he did. He told him he only knew how to dodge. As soon as he finished his sentence, he the counterattack caused four of his fingers to leave his hand, one by one and fall to the ground. He was in pain. How dare you dare everyone around to witness it and turn pale, not knowing what kind of pressure this was. But he didn't speak and turned around. The man left and immediately brought a bag of ice, and brought it here quickly. We could still reconnect them. If there is a magician. She took pity on the girl, and said there was a bag of food placed under her name. The girl trembled seven times and drank five yes. I'll get it for you right away. Get what you want. She immediately took it with her and left the pub. Miss Jasm asked why it took so long. She hid the fight earlier and calmly told the waitress to find the things. It took a while but couldn't. Through her eyes, she saw blood on the mask. She took off her face, and no one was injured. She said the two of them continued riding on their horses, and took the opportunity to write a letter to their parents when they read the letter. This letter is probably in a dungeon. I know I haven't been visiting often lately please be patient, and wait a little longer mom and dad can you believe that two years have passed I still can't believe that Lilia has awakened. The teacher must be extremely excited, but don't let him get too excited and hire a tutor for Lilia. Just let her practice on her own, before joining Zeus thinking about she will become a herd. My sister makes me and Miss Jasmine are fine. I've gotten stronger since last time by beating Dad in arm wrestling, and I just suddenly passed the soft phase. Miss Jasmine is still helping me adjust and teaching me what she can do. She learned about wind magic, while I taught her some better sword skills of course, as we promised this would be my last trip as an adventurer before I start school in a few weeks, I'll meet you all soon love you all jazz a mask if you finished riding Ipe and the horse owner said he would send the letter as soon as the horses returned roaring, defied his horses, we let them return to their cages, so don't worry, you're right, letting them wait for us outside the dungeon door is quite dangerous, the group clearing the dungeon together, they're probably waiting for us, thinking they'll join us little girl, still talking to me and him to send a more detailed message, but still refuses to meet with us. Until he's ready I still don't quite understand what Miss Jasmine said, maybe he wants to become as strong as possible. Before I let's start school now let's focus on our mission, so let's hurry up and walk a bit and we'll already be there. Everyone is already there waiting for them to meet again, then the boy shouted nervously, he said it seemed like he was getting ready again, added enhancement master, and then said again that this brat was definitely discouraged when he faced him. So you two are the last to sign up. It's a pleasure to be with you. 
Let me introduce you two to the group, man. The burly man and Ace shook hands by the handshake. He felt this was a strong handshake. He guessed some of the rumors about the masked swordsman were true. His name was Reginald Baston, an enhancer rank, a earth element dark yellow core. He turned to the boy, complaining that it seemed like the two of them already knew Lucas Wickes. He was a rank, a dark yellow core magician, specializing in the fire element. Over there is Column Ass Enhancement. He will be our water elemental magician, and he is a B-rank candidate. What was his name before? He replied Elisa is a dark orange core, a rank magician, specializing in earth element, and I am Oliver A flat rank, a dark yellow stage, magician, ace healing magician. It sounds arrogant, but there is a healing system in the group quite safe my term. My name is Samantha Tempest, I am a yellow stage, a ranked magician doll specializes in the water element. I've heard a lot about the swordsman's mask that protects me. And this is bro. London, nice to meet you too. I've only just reached AA rank. Light yellow stage enhancer, and I specialize in fire. Today, I will be the captain. Shouldn't you two introduce yourself? He looked towards Ace and Miss Jasmine. Jasmine, the light yellow stage, enhanced enhancer, AA rank. Wind element, twin sword. The blonde man was very happy to have another rank. The AA in my group is the light orange phase, A rank enhancer, fire element, fire element. She also heard that you don't even have any elements anymore. Ace secretly thought that it's true those false rumors you not only have, but also have face set. You haven't used magic in a while for some personal reasons. Hearing that the blonde girl understood, I see you two are still carrying your luggage. You don't have a space ring, Lucas. You asked Oliver not to ask me. I'm full. I'm giving it to you, Samantha. So mine still has space Lucas must have, but didn't think even Elisa has a space ring thanks to the technology left over from the ancient magicians who built the explosive city Xura us. Even a ring with a small space is worth a few thousand gold coins. Lucas asked Ace, is that all? Yes, I think so. Ace replied, thank you. It looks like everyone is ready to go. Come on, everyone. Let's go went inside and reach the fifth level of hell. Let's be alert. There wasn't even a strange skinny monster, but then everyone heard a noise and attracted everyone's attention. People shouted loudly and dropped the demons, crouched down and joined the formation. Then everyone worked together to destroy them in their own ways. But we should not waste manna and physical strength. But the boy did not listen when he complained, and arbitrarily used fire tornado to destroy them. The captain was angry and grabbed him by the collar. Didn't you hear what I said? Don't waste manna like that. That's not necessary. You know what kind of dungeon this is, so what? That's also the reason why the people who first discovered it named it that way and refused to admit their mistakes. He argued that I should finish them off early to save everyone. Man nah, Captain said. Go quickly before they catch up and attack them a second time. This dungeon is famous for mysterious creatures that have escaped the clutches of death, and there is no way to completely destroy them. There is no mana core for venturing out to be able to collect, and then the useless battles keep going on without end. The cruel tomb. This is where I marked the secret entrance the last time I found it. In the end, the reason Ace and Miss Jasmine went to the cruel hell the first time. Hey Elisa, help me create some support, and then everyone supported each other to go to the next floor. Last time here, Captain can only go to the first floor. The last floor is still a mystery, but I'm sure. The artifacts that allow those demons to regenerate must be there. A man thinks as long as he gets his share of the gold after selling whatever's down there he's fine. Of course Creo. So let's go everyone continue walking on the path. It seemed like there was something stopping the girl. Seeing that, she rushed forward and pulled out her sword to slash it. Everyone turned their heads in surprise. Why hadn't we been told about this? Is there a trap in here? The captain replied that before there was no trap here. Are you okay? Do you need my help? Dear sister, the girl said that she was fine. Then she looked towards the ace, observed the thing she had just cut and said, This is not a trap, but a man now monster. Everyone please pay attention and be vigilant. They're going carefully to get there. But there's something wrong. Let me guess. I didn't say it like this last time. No, you're wrong. It's not like that. I also felt it wasn't this smoldering heat, but a terrifying pressure coming out from inside. What happened next? I don't know. There was a loud sound. It seems like something terribly big has appeared. This man no monster didn't exist last time. But why did it appear this time? How can a new man no monster appear in a dungeon like this? There are a few people coming forward. Attack, but it doesn't seem to be aimed at us ahem. Or should we just stop watching that worm dig a hole? Or should we go get the artifact, Miss Samantha? Please stand close to me, for the others don't, but I will protect you. Salman thinks it's not a good idea. Seeing him standing so close to that earthworm, Captain, shouts, Come back now. We need to know what's going on. Before we go any deeper, Lucas, please chant, the ace shields the surrounding heat immediately, even though he doesn't understand anything. 
Lucas still follows the ace's instructions and Ova chants the water barrier spell to end the ace's moves. Pick up a green stone and replace it with the staff. With this, it will become stronger. The girl agreed to take it and told everyone to get out of here. The captain also agreed with my opinion. We need to get out of here before there were any more explosions going on. But to get out of there, they had to destroy all the worms to get out. But Elisa's spell didn't even make a dent in it. Jasmine, me and her will distract it together right in. She aimed at the space between its eyes if it came to that, and it didn't fall at least. Let the note and Lucas attack. They quickly carried out the plan they had set out to destroy it themselves. Lucas is scared that normal fire elemental spells aren't enough to hurt that worm. So that means his spell has to be hotter than Jasmine right now is the perfect time to attack, and it looks like it's running away. Jasmine did a great job helping everyone stay safe for the time being. Let's move quickly before trouble comes again. Hurry up and walk. Lucas said that, but Big Conrun was scared. There was a screaming sound, suggesting that the worm had no intention of killing them. It was just holding them back until the next explosion. They were all on the defensive. But Lucas seemed to be in danger. Dangerous Ace pulled his body closer to save Lucas. But he didn't need Ace's help and said let me go no no the girl screamed loudly to let Ms. Bin and Bro used his body to shield her from escape. The danger but he was now in critical condition. He told them to hold him tight. One of them took out the sandwiches and told him to eat some and he would feel better. These were the sandwiches. Especially, I saved it for when I was in a bad mood while exploring the dungeon. I thanked him for the cake he showed me. The best way to eat it is to lightly burn the inside just enough to melt the cheese. After it flowed out, he handed over his cake and smiled and said to help him, he asked if the cake was delicious, right? Yes, he also felt that the cake was very delicious. The cake was delicious perhaps because his fiancée had personally created the recipe for both grilling and seasoning the beef. Ace felt he was very lucky and sent my gratitude to her for this delicious meal. He said he would do so with a smile. Smile brightly. Someone spoke up and said you too. Stop that nonsense. Am I wrong? The only reason I joined you is because the leader is a veteran AA class magician. Now is that leader? He's just an amputee, and yet we've lost the person we love. After hearing that, he was angry. You dare complain. After you dropped your weapon like an idiot, and then have asked for help, how could I control the situation? In that case, unlike you, someone who can't even protect himself. I had to protect Samantha. Something I shouldn't have had to do. If you were alert enough and reacted in time to create a barrier, if you if we do that, we won't be in a situation like that. Enough shouted at Lucas to stop pretending to be crazy. What Lucas wondered if a new enhancer only had an orange core, whether it was a gold core or a silver core, or whether you had one or not. Even if it's God, now you're just an obedient burden that he gave to Lucas. Everyone feels extremely satisfied. The captain said now, I'm going to heal my wounds. Let me rest a bit. Bro, you need to make a decision. Decide before we continue. Rainan is a bit burned, but the wounds are okay. We can all continue. But as for you, you need to decide if you want to continue or not. Bro, you have made a decision. I decided that I would continue. This will probably be my last shocking discovery. So what will I do? How do you intend to fight with only one hand? Not to mention you're still injured. Even though you're injured, I am still an 8A rank enhancer. I won't get in everyone's way. But I think I should stand up and guide everyone. You always think the most carefully of all, even when faced with unexpected situations. Very talented. Hearing that, he immediately looked at everyone around him, sighed and took on that responsibility. We will rest for an hour before continuing. Bro, I don't understand. Even this place is different from this tongue before. There was no point in bothering. So what's the point? Having said that, he stepped up and picked up his weapon, repeatedly hitting it to break the block, but it didn't seem to work. Jasm walked over and told him to try again, and after a while of struggling to break it, it also broke and a beam of blue light shone into their eyes. What the heck? There weren't any pillars to support it. Hex was fascinated by the beauty before his eyes. Someone suggested that we should rest before continuing. He was a bit sleepy and asked if we should rest, but we won't stop, because there's something strange about this place. Let's appreciate the scenery. Are you sure I don't hear anything and don't see anything suspicious other than the pile of plants around this place? There's something making me feel restless, but what could it be? Did you miss something, Clara? Is it really me, Oi, Creo, Mister? Are you okay? I know you're not dead, Clara. Wait. I'm coming right here, damn Creo. Stop. It's dangerous, Miss. Jasmine thinks these bones cause hallucinations. No wonder it makes me feel uncomfortable. Then he told everyone to stand close together. This fog is causing us hallucinations. Samantha finished creating the barrier. She asked, who is Clara? A man answered that she was Rose Fiancy, but she wasn't. She died in a dungeon. I saw it with my own eyes. We cremated her and buried her remains. 
What we need to do now is find the nasty Creole Lucas. Why doesn't anything go according to plan? You guys are really veteran adventurers, and worriedly asked Jasmine, are you okay? I'm sorry, I was a little distracted. Did you just see something in your illusion? No, the second person was her father. He was opening his arms to her and smiling at her. He took her hand and told her that she would be fine. Now back to this damn bone lane. What magic spell do you have to help her? Clean them all up Jasmine isn't strong enough to clear them all, but she thinks she can create a path to find Creo. Samantha has opened the barrier so she can cast a spell to create a path so she can find grow anything. People were surprised by where the bunch of vines came from. They appear out of nowhere, and they had nothing to do with Miss Jasmine's spell. They were coming here to show off. Lucas doesn't need you to say anything. Lucas started reciting his spell to destroy those vines, but it was useless seeing that it wasn't easy. Raynan protected the magicians while they prepared stronger spells, and they came together to create a siege break, and so it's the Chung family, united in their hearts, moving forward together to break the circle. Judging right. Moon, these vines are resistant to fire thanks to the moisture inside. You turned your head and called bro. He was so excited that he rushed forward and slashed while saying what you think. As an AA rank enhancer, he would give in to a few big tricks. But his actions made you feel too risky. Looking at Miss Jasmine, it was as expected. She doesn't need your help. Bro was in danger because the roots of the tree were clinging to his body without exception. And he rushed forward like a wind to help him escape those encirclements. Remember what you said earlier that this would be the trip is your last expedition because you intend to die here. If not, use your reason to fight. We still need you. Lucas drank some liquid and started to fight, muttering to himself. His spell, while the evil observer realized that the spell, although weaker, could easily catch fire and spread, showing that Lucas was still conscious before the bone that caused the illusion of Elisa being careful right after that. Kian had already recited his spell. He put all his strength into the ground, causing the ground to crack. Seeing his consciousness, he must have felt that those vines would have a hard time recovering because the ground cracked, causing the fuel to burn flows everywhere, and combined with Samantha's spell, they will have enough time to find teammates who have been hit by the illusion. Aqua Ship Kiss is a useful spell, often used to collect water from good surroundings. It was surprising that she decided to use the spell designed for living in this case. She did very well, but in a short time those huge vines revived everything they had tried before. Now it's all in vain, and now it seems like because of their spell, the vines are absorbing the bones. They need to quickly find a plan to deal with those vines, but maybe not in time. The vines had combined together to form a monster dozens of times larger than them. They were surprised to be facing its level monster. They had only seen this in books, but had never encountered it. In this case, Bro seemed to have gone crazy and blurted out that it seemed like God didn't want us to survive, so he immediately risked his life to attack it. But everyone didn't want him to do that because it would be very dangerous. Dangerous. But before he could rush forward, another man was grabbed by the beast in front of everyone's eyes, and he died. Seeing that, the anger and indignation of the man in his hand. The giant hammer had risen. He was determined to destroy it to avenge his teammate, not wanting his teammate to lose anyone else. He quickly ran towards the man to stop him. Then said they wouldn't fight that monster, but it was too late, and he was thrown far away, and the person who hit a rock was the one who had been with him from the start. Ms. Jasm saw that and got extremely worried, called his name loudly. Quickly regaining his will, he told Eliza to protect the other man. After hearing what he said, he immediately rushed out to support the man, afraid that his support still wouldn't be enough. As he rushed out, a hand pulled him back and turned back. It turned out that Miss Jasmine had pulled his hand and said they needed to quickly get out of this place. He asked, so why didn't they have time to listen? When she answered, he turned around, saw his friend helping the other man who had a nosebleed. He quickly told her that he had promised that before he could finish his sentence, she was finished, but promised your family. She promised that this time, she would I will keep you safe. He gently reassured her that we will leave here, but not now. I can't leave them alone. Then he turned around and left. She was helpless and didn't know what to do. The fierce battle between the beast and the man was still going on with the screaming sounds of come here, big wood. And so the three boys rushed forward to support the man and then tried to save the others. Get out of this cruel place. First, he helped the girl out and told Elisa to cover Jasmine while she reached the bro. Then let's run quickly to the exit, but not according to everyone's plan. I felt dizzy when the man had the beast wrapped around his neck. He told Lucas to burn the vines around Reed, but tragically it happened. They were thrown far away and crashed to the ground. Lucas felt extremely disappointed. Myself, this is not me. I come from the mighty Wickes family, one of the key families that led to Sapin's victory over Eleno. My duty is to survive and maintain, say the same then point the sword of the guy attacked Ace, causing Ace to be injured. 
Jasm immediately ran towards Ace, but Lucas threatened her to stand there. Regardless of what Lucas said, she still went to Ace's side, but before she could reach him, Lucas was attacked. The other attacked, injured him, and threw him far away. Elisa was angry. He smiled with a cruel smile. Don't act recklessly unless you want to be blown away like that. What the hell are you doing? Do you think I'll be there for you guys? You commoners would risk your lives. Count yourself honored. You will be remembered forever as brave heroes who held off the beast long enough for me to escape. We'll tell everyone about your heroic sacrifice, and laugh next when the monster grabs Elisa and throws him far away. Are you helpless? No, no one prepared to face the beast attack then, bro. He rushed up. Stop bullying the kids. Fight with me. He rushed up like an arrow to attack the beast. He managed to cut the shoulder of the beast. That made him smile with joy. At the same time, behind him, Ace also woke up and it seemed like he had no other choice. But will he survive the betrayal when using it? Something appeared on his arm, and down to his fingers that was the second floor of the Dragon's Awakening. His training department at Eleanor had led to several breakthroughs that made even Mr. Viren shocked. The first time was the first unlock as obtained by exploiting an innate skill of he can temporarily separate himself from space and time. This layer is quite limited because it almost drains the mana core and body. Your strength in your second breakthrough is something I never expected, something that took Mr. Ver decades to achieve. But it only took you two and a half years to integrate. Papa, the beast, seems to sense its master. I'm fine, I'm fine. I want you to stay still. If anything happens, go straight to Pig's house. Can you help me? Please take care. Tell the monsters you're playing with. I can't blame you. Was Veer when he beat you up, will you just release the integration layer you wanted to end this, and hoped you would survive the backlash. After a while of friendship, you realize that even though you could use even with all the energy in the environment in this state, his body still could withstand this spell. The beast was still roaring and was injured, and it seemed like he was too tired at that moment. In the city of Kaxar, the woman complained that our eight-year-old girl was so absorbed in playing that she fell asleep on the floor like this. I understand that Lilia, after waking up, L is still trying very hard to have her. I can't catch up. I hope so. The girl kept eagerly talking about your old days. Suddenly they stopped because the ring on the woman's hand lit up. That showed that their son was in danger. They were surprised. Believed what he saw and thought that maybe the broken ring returned to Ace. Elisa was grateful that he was awake. He was surprised that the gloves had broken the stone. So the other guy took it and used it for help. The older brother felt a blue light spread around his body, but it was so painful that it made him scream. At that moment, he remembered everything that had happened. Suddenly, he sent Lucas, and then he pushed himself up with difficulty. Jazz scarf Jasm was in pain. The other guy pointed at her. She was hit much harder by Lucas's spell. Her body wasn't strengthened with mana. I had a healing kit with me, so I treated her. She had some burns, but maybe she also had internal injuries. He told him to take an ice cube from his glove and use it on her. After using it, she seemed to be better. He thought after a few hours of rest, she'll be fine silently thanking her mother's stones for being able to save his life. Since they were four years old, this is the first time he's had something like this. He's really happy. His beast memory is very happy. When he knew his owner had escaped death, he was worried about it and asked where it was. His beast was very obedient and stayed away. He said we had escaped, so you should focus on practicing. It's not important, Papa, but you think it's quite important, believe me, super. We're just resting, but just go do what you need, I'll see you later. While I'm resting the boy lightly hit him and said, Anyway, I didn't expect that the great masked swordsman who I checked with was the same age as me. At this moment, he touched his face in panic and asked where my mask was. Sorry, it seems to have fallen out during the battle. I looked for it, but couldn't find it. What about my sword? Have you seen the black stick I often hold? That's right there. I don't know what value it has. No, but I kept it just in case an ace. Thank the boy for saving you and Jazz, otherwise I would be just like that bastard Lucas. Why Ace happily replied not at all like that, I was quite curious why you and when the beast appeared. I saw Miss Jazz trying to take him away. She laughed and replied, how could a king abandon his people? And because I promised to cherish those around me. I promised a very important person that would become a better person than the guy who laughed and talked like an old man and wondered what kind of life he lived to make such a promise. Sometimes, I also wonder. That's all. I'm not sure how long I've been unconscious but it's been about a day or so. Well, it looks like we'll be stuck here for a while waiting for Jazz to recover. Let's talk a little bit. Okay. You put out your hand and told me to come up, but just call me Ace. And that guy, Eliz Kayan, comes from the kingdom of kicking an ace, tapping on the plate that's leaning back. Doesn't this look very natural? You did it. This metal tunnel. The young man scratched his face and said he only controlled it when the cave collapsed. 
Well, he thought the body of the elder good guardian helped support the entire cave. He replied singing, M, even when you are a rare magician you know for a fact that one can only control existing metal, not create and control it. That is even if you are a dwarf, the young man bowed his head, laughing awkwardly. How can I keep it a secret? I'm curious. Tell me about it, young Tran except then give me a deal like this. I'll tell you if you also tell me about what happened at that time. Your hair turned white. You're so sick, and there are shining symbols on your body, and even your eyes. Your eyes are shining purple. Push it away and say I'll tell you. Well first of all, you guessed correctly about something from when raised in Kingdom D, I'm not sure about my origins old red is you took care of me for a long time, and still avoid the topic of my parents, and the only memory of my childhood, kept flickering hopelessly, and gave me a headache. But I still enjoyed a fairly peaceful life until I broke through my deep orange core. After receiving this strange energy, I passed out when I woke up. Surrounded by black metal trees, since then the village elder told me it was time for me to leave and explore the rest of the daikon. Without even explaining why everything had happened, it's so sudden that sometimes I feel like this. It feels like I have an itch on the back of my neck that I can't scratch, but I know it's related to the origin of my power, and I'm talking. Then suddenly she jazz raised his voice, and said that this fish was now superior to the other fish that was better. They were both surprised for a moment and then laughed happily. The boy admitted his fault. He had no intention of turning this conversation into a weird confession session, filled with emotions. The ace told the boy not to worry about it. And what is your story? The ace replied I am an enhancer who is proficient in the four elements, with two rare elements being ice and lightning. The boy thought he was a strange person, but you definitely won. Wait, what about those strange signs that change color? He <laughs> he, I'm still a beast tamer. What you see is when I release the beasts, will the beast will wait a minute. How old are you? I just turned 11 a few months ago. So the other guy is older than me. In just a few months, he will be 12 years old. Wait, this is nothing to be proud of. They both laughed again. Look at your face, you weirdo. Oh, suddenly, the guy felt a sharp pain and asked if you were okay. I was okay right after that, Miss Jostle. Also also woke up and happily she was awake, she immediately rushed to hug him sorry she was so sorry he gently stroked her hair and said it was okay, everything was okay. She was fine she jazz, she felt extremely blame yourself, then say it out loud, it's not okay, I couldn't protect you no, I'm the one who should apologize to you. Because of my stubbornness, I drag you into this mess. He wondered, has she always been this small? She burst into tears and asked about your injury. L, did you keep our bag? Yes, yes. In my bag, there is an emergency first aid kit. It should be enough for you. The two of them, she used that first aid box to bandage the wound. Thanks to the two of them, because of them, he felt better for quite a few hours now. It was time to go back home. The boy helped her to walk. Let's go, the three of them. Let's go outside. Wait and ask if you think there's anyone left alive. He said R again bro were absorbed by the beast in the previous battle so he wasn't sure what she was asking. What about Miss Salmanthe's picture? What about her? The boy was able to create a metal vault around her before he lost her, but the wound is quite severe. The boy doesn't know if she's still alive. I can't help but want to find her in this pile of rubble, but don't know what to do. Even the beast's core is lost somewhere. While underground, it was impossible, but now the boy can try. Looking for her, he put his hand down and read the spell, then slowly felt it, and he found her. Her heart was still beating. Come quickly to her. I thought that skill could only scan. Let's get to the ground. Who exactly is he? Then the three of them went to Samantha. He was about to remove the tree branch that stuck to her leg. But Ace stopped him. That tree branch was splinting her leg. He could remove it. It turns out the wound is only getting worse. Her heart rate is quite high. And her breathing is quite stable. But this fever is quite annoying. But at least, he thinks she's not in a life-threatening situation. There's still hope. Hope that at least, she's just unconscious hope. Jazz picked up Samantha in her arms, and asked us to come back. See that it will be very difficult to find the beast's core in this mess. Seems like a treasure trove priceless treasures will be buried here, and then a scream is heard. The boy panics and screams again. Holds his hand and says it's okay. Don't tell me it's a scream. Everyone looks up. Dad, I'm here. I see it. Looks like it's gaining weight again. It's getting bigger and taller. It turns out it's Ace's beast. The guy wonders if it's a wen, but it has four limbs, so it's not a dragon. It can't be. Dozens of questions from the young man. Ace calmly answered it was a dragon. The young man said, Ace, don't look at him like he's crazy. This is my dragon. But they should have been extinct for centuries. But that's why I need you to keep it a secret. Jazz already knows that. The boy must be surprised at what he has. Eleven years old has four elements. Two rare elements. Contract beast is while the dragon was bewildered. Ace called him to climb on the dragon's back to return. On the way back, 
They encountered something. Its eyes opened wide as they approach. Miss Jazz jumped down and was about to attack. Then he turned his back and left. They were all extremely bewildered by that. The boy wondered if he had a real contract, so why didn't he bring it with him from the beginning before he could hear the answer from him? When Miss Samantha woke up right away, she had to compliment him on his handsomeness and tell her that he was more beautiful without the mask. He told her to stop talking to save her strength. Wait, look what I found. She slowly opened the black scarf and hugged her. So everyone was surprised that it was the monster's core, and the ace's mask praised her for doing a great job. He took his mask and said as for the monster's core, we will sell it after returning home and sharing it. Do you want the profit? Do you want the girl to give the monster's core to Ace and say thanks to you I'm still alive? I think it's fair for you to kill that monster yourself. Receiving the reward is more than fair. Ace held the pearl in his hand and looked at everyone. And with that said, thank you everyone. Seeing that Samantha seemed to be getting weaker, he told Jazel that you two could come and find help. But I'll stay here. Before leaving, the guy left his things. Of Asia, stay behind in case you need to go to Ace open your bag to get it now time to inform your family that you have recovered some mana and are safe now, so everyone can rest assured that they won't too worried until he got home. He asked his beast, did he grow this big because he killed manna monsters and ate their cores? That's right, he ate a bunch of manna monsters, and now he's still alive. Can it transform? Hearing that, the animal had turned into a small black cat. He was happy. He rubbed his animal's head. It took a few hours for everyone to return. The core was in their hands and their body was his assimilation body was probably almost completely recovered by this time. He thought again about Lucas. He was the son of a noble family notorious for its unethical practices in creating powerful magicians because of what he did prove are dead and many of them are injured. If you want to arrange things properly, then you need to be careful because there is a natural, no matter how long it takes, debt blood must be paid with blood. After a while, there were people who came for treatment. They returned together to a big house with such a romantic view. They sat on a bench and collapsed face down. And Ms. Jass and the guy seemed to be narrating what they had been through. The boss asked if it was enough. You know, such cases are very rare, but they explained it fully. He said, yes, and we'll let the three of them rest for a while before the trial. Suddenly, there was a loud sound of the door opening, causing everyone to turn their heads to see what was going on. Lucas walked in arrogantly saying you guys are still alive. Listen at this point. Ms. Jazz was extremely angry and pulled out her sword. The guy also rushed forward with her and said, how dare you? But Ace stopped them. Lucas was helped by someone's arms helping him shield him. He continued speaking in a tone of voice. Provocative outfit, Gu Ho. Why are you so tense with your teammates? He is curious how they were able to escape that terrible monster. Did you sacrifice someone to save the humble life? I didn't have time for him to say more because he was too frustrated. So he stood up, slammed his hand on the table and said loudly, Mr. Lucas. It's best not to ignore the man's warning. He continued. Now Miss Samantha is crippled, but she's still alive. Don't tell me you guys sacrificed the guy. His eyes suddenly turned purple when he heard the young master's ear. What's wrong with your ear? He raised his hand to touch his ear, and suddenly there was blood. At this time, my ear ace stood up and walked towards Lucas. The bodyguards were also ready to protect their young master, but they suddenly didn't understand why the atmosphere had changed so strangely. It was so heavy when he saw his attitude that Lucas stepped forward afraid that the bodyguards wouldn't be able to protect him. Then he shouted loudly, What do you think I hired you for? Catch it and give it to me, and the bodyguards together, rushed up to attack Ace. But they were not his opponents. He defeated them all quickly. He was afraid that if Ace did that before the trial, he would be at a disadvantage. He pointed his sword at him and said, Please forgive me, I slipped my hand, I apologize. That action of yours made him tremble. Because he was afraid, you stopped. He asked the girl to take Mr. Lucas to the medical area for treatment. He asked the two of them, Can you go outside and wait a bit? Although I understand how you feel, you shouldn't have provoked Mr. Lucas like that. He said, Why did you have the ability to eliminate the existence of that bug, and while still being able to keep your personal identity confidential, are you threatening me while talking over him? Approaching him, do you think you are strong enough to protect him from me? He must also be scared when he hears and looking at his eyes. Those eyes of his had destroyed so many people and how many monsters to have such a sharp gaze. He sighed and said, I have no intention of threatening you. You may not believe it, but I did it for your benefit, even if I thought you killed Lucas. The Wickes family will not sit idly by because they cannot find out your identity. They will count this blind spot not only on Mid Jazz, but also on the others. People related to her group, although both current members and former members until you have enough strength and authority to protect not only yourself, but also those close to you, I advise you not to act. Acting too harshly on Lucas and even if he had enough strength to slaughter the Wickes family, would still be meaningless. 
If you don't have enough strength to kill Lucas's half-brother, he exclaimed that I understand. Thank you. Now comes the reason why you want to talk to me in private. Sit down on the chair and continue. You are a smart man. I'm sure helping someone like me is not because of a temporary interest. It's because fake guild, right? He thought this guy was because he was arrogant or just plain confident, and he replied as long as it is within our authority, I will be happy to assist you. If you need it well, then I need it like this. After he finished speaking, he immediately walked out. As soon as he walked out, the boy said you did. I'm scared. I thought you were going to kill Lucas. But he said now is not the time. Are you going to kill him? Putting his hand on the boy's shoulder, he said I'm hungry, and I'm waiting outside. So let's fill my stomach before the trial. Oh well, then they went out to eat, drink, have fun, and chat together. The boy wondered why he was eating. I still have to wear a mask, and so the trial has come. The man shouted, everyone stand up. The head of the trial said after receiving the report. On behalf of the Adventurers Guild and the jury, I ask permission. Declared the magician Luca as officially stripped of his A-rank status, for sabotaging and endangering his teammates in the Dungeon Exploration Group. Furthermore, he will be banned from re-registering as an adventurer. Until the guild's latest decision, there was the sound of the small hammer in the judge's hand being struck. Mr. Lucas, for submitting the adventurer's license, it must have felt unfair. He received a light punishment. While that mistake should have been big enough to throw him into the closet, as for the enhancer, the judge called out his name and thought to himself. So this is a man capable of handling an S-class mana monster on his own, he thought. I say that for expressing my hostility towards Lucas, and perhaps the entire Wickes family, by attacking him on behalf of the jury and the entire Adventurer Guild, I hereby declare you banned from joining. Entered Exer U.S. City during the time Lucas studied at Exer U.S. Academy. The sound of the hammer rang out again to show the decision, but after hearing it, he expressed his disapproval. He said, Sir, I object. Regarding this decision, you gave an argument as to why I should be punished for Lucas's betrayal in the dungeon. He said this was a decision, not consultation. We understood the situation, so we I won't take away your license. You will continue to work as an adventurer as long as you don't come near Mr. It's new, but do it quickly. He's angry and shouts the same thing. Read the calendar, Lucas. Continuing, what about his identity? He can completely take off his mask and sneak into the city and most likely do something wrong, harm me and my entire family. The girl next to me. The judge said we will confirm your identity as soon as this trial ends. You will not know his identity or even the identity of his family. That's for fire reasons. But the wizards chosen from the guild will be watching you, whether you're wearing a mask or not. Lucas was about to continue speaking, but he interrupted him. This is not to argue with you. Wicked's he announced the end of the trial gear. Lucas walked out in a dissatisfied mood. He turned his head and said to Ace, You should know your status. It's best to be at least five cities away from me. Ace replied contemptuously. Ran away while threatening. It made him look so pitiful, kid. He was very angry with the evil's words, but there was nothing he could do. He left with the evil bodyguards who also walked away, but there was a sound. Please excuse me. Please follow me, and I will guide you out of this building. There is no need. I will see him out through the back door. The judge said that. The two of them went to a large book room together. At large, he carefully closed the door. He believed that the little drama just now satisfied you, but you were also quite fine. Thank you for your cooperation. It's okay. Without you, it wouldn't have been possible. He just I hope I can trust you, and you won't cause any more trouble. We won't be able to hide the family forever, but if you stay calm, they won't do anything. Actually, I'm more careful than it seems. Looks a lot sir said then he walked to the shelf and took out a book perhaps in the future we will need your help hope that you will not forget what we did for you today. I see that the president of the Adventurers Guild seems to be very resourceful. At least you know which faction to choose. I'll remember to look at Asia's back slowly in the distance. He confirmed that Caspian was right. He is indeed a, a scary person just opened the door and walked out. Papa's voice rang out. He rushed at him and he and the boy Jazz were waiting for him here. He asked if everything was over. Can we go back? The house is not finished yet. Let's go home. The three of them and the animal walked home together on a beautiful sunny afternoon. As they walked, the boy asked her if he wanted to visit her. It's too early, please help me check on her. And without hesitation, Miss Jace agreed and said of course the boy is regretful and sad because maybe we have to break up here. Right. She forgot about the boy. There that he's not from Sappin, you openly turned around and told the boy if you don't have any plans I think you can come stay with us. Before we enroll at the school, the boy was surprised the school fancied that the guy I don't know what a school is. The answer is yes. It's an institution where children or teenagers are educated. The guy interrupted. Of course I know what a school is. It's just that I don't intend to go to school. 
Um, I remember you once talked about why you were trying to increase your adventurer rank to make a name for yourself. If that's the case, then there's no harm in studying Excess Academy. Sorry, I'm not going anywhere. How can I get into the best magic school on this continent? Maybe I qualify, but I need a ton of money and connections to get in. I confidently replied that I would just let him take care of everything. I need to carry the body with you. I can take care of it well, boy Bao. Can you stop talking like that, okay? He put his arm around the boy's shoulder strongly and told the gas lady, I'll take Elisa home first. I need to do something. The boy hugged his neck and told me still don't agree yet, seeing faintly even Luke is also enrolled at X Yus Academy. Are you going to leave me alone with him? The boy didn't know what he should study, then pulled Jas forward. He was embarrassed. Thank you, Aids. Then everything that did for him, and Miss Jas smiled the two of them had gone a long enough distance, Aids said to appear. The man came out from behind the tree, said it was good of you to let those two avoid go ace. Thank you, sir, for asking for the judge's help. I think Lucas probably won't suspect anything he feels happy that everything ended without any more casualties, ace, said a chilling sentence that someone died, don't forget that. He stammered and said of course it's my fault. Anyway, I didn't mean to cause trouble. I just wanted to send you off with a small gift. Then I threw the bag of fruit at ace. When he opened it, ace saw it. That's a bunch of gold coins filling the bag. You asked why he just wanted to give you more safety measures. Don't let your wallet be exposed as long as you don't use it. Now it's a potential problem. The only secret is that Lucas does see Ness. Maybe the animal understands the owner's worries. Then it transformed into another animal and asked if this is better than a weasel, making the owner wonder. I don't know how many things I can transform into. I don't know, but I'm tired. Good night, Dad. I realized that having a contract with a dragon is really convenient, right? As he walked out the gate, he adjusted his clothes. Then he put the mask away and walked in the crowded and noisy space outside him. Opening the door and entering the Eva shop, the shop owner who was cleaning the glass exclaimed in surprise, Are you lost? He answered my question. The boss replied that my father came to buy a space ring that fits my thumb. Boss, listen, kid. Although they are small, space rings are very expensive. Are you sure your father knows about them? Please forgive me for this. Yes, the boss was surprised when he showed him the bag of gold. The boss was happy. Thank you, kid, please come back. On the contrary, he was quite sad because he had used up most of the gold to buy a space ring. Just enough to hold a sword in a beast core. But anyway, with it living a school life might be better. You get in a car and say let's go to the manor. Healy, please, take the plated face. Thinking that it had been two years since he first put on this mask, he looked out and sat wondering what it would be like to be a normal student. He got home and was walking towards the house. I saw my sister waiting for him in front of the door to say hello to my second brother, L, when he came home. I ran over and hugged him, welcoming him back. I was surprised. Why did I ask? I said, welcome home, brother, I'm home. The house is really nice. Now let me come in. My sister won't let me go because I'm afraid my brother will disappear. Why do I insist that I won't go anywhere? Hearing that, she let me go and said, let's go in the house. He felt like his sister was growing up too fast, and he imagined that soon his sister would date another man and then leave him. He couldn't interrupt his thoughts. His parents happily came to welcome him. Dad lifted him up and said it looks like it's not just his hair that's growing. His beard is the same. It looks even messier than when he was planning to use it to cover his wrinkles. Mom next to him. He rubbed his head really hard and said, hey, kid, don't you dare speak ill of my troubled husband. She hugged him and whispered to her mother that she would temporarily forget the worry this time. The corners of her eyes were filled with joy because she was home safely. She also hugged her mother and stammered. Thank you, mother. Sorry for always making mom worry ahem. A man broke the touching atmosphere, said I don't want to ruin the atmosphere, but we also want to welcome the boy. Everyone is very happy to see you return safely. It seemed like he was turning sideways. His mother asked him what he was looking for. He felt like he was missing another person. The boy he brought home suddenly remembered and gave the letter that Miss Jazz leave because she has to return to the Brutoyan to carry out the mission. I feel sorry for not being able to see her off in the letter she wrote. Please rest. Thank you. See you later. It seems like she is dedicated. Well, the man said they would return but T. Gowan's group kept following like flies. Um, I knew Miss Jazz was gone. What about the woman who said if you're looking for Lilia? Then that's right, she's not here. Your daughter is here. The man interrupted and excitedly said, that our Lily had started studying at X Yus Academy. She had enrolled last fall. She was annoyed and pulled her hair so she could talk, but it must have felt great. Girl saying all of that is thanks to you. The Pick family will always be afraid of you. You're right. We never thought that after so many generations, a magician would be born in the Pick family. I'm not sure. Det, 
But I have a favor to ask you, and your father to stomp on the ground, and say if you know where everyone is, it's time to hear about your dungeon story. Your mother, sitting next to you, told me you were a son of a bitch. The kids started thinking about where to start and the two started talking about it, and everyone was amazed. The man felt it was such a great expedition, and yet he thought his annual tax was I'm already the scariest, and rank monster. You actually fought and killed a mana monster that my parents used to scare me when I was little. Evil turned to his father and asked about magic and monsters. At what stage are you? Um, I'm still stuck in the deep orange ventricular node since you left, no matter how much I meditate or filter man, nah, I can't break through. You had to use a little of this to heal a wound, but there is definitely enough left for me to break through. My son can't. It's because you risked your life to get it. I can't take it from you, Alice, my son. You brought back such a scary gift. I don't even know how much ins rank monster core is worth with the anxiety it creates for me. Maybe this stone isn't worth that much to me. My safety, it was priceless. I convinced my father to use that stone. If he wanted to catch up with me, he had to use it. Dad can't be left behind by his son, right? Don't say yes. You've reached the stage. Light orange. Everyone was once again surprised. God, what a fool, father. He held the stone in his hand, held it tightly, then swallowed his tears, and said don't cry when my old father beat me up during the competition. Come, he replied how can that be? Your mother is helpless, oh my god outside the car. The boy wondered what was wrong with her, so he just recently became crazy about his younger brother, but a while later the boy went to take a shower, while relaxing then. I didn't knock on the door, but just walked in. I brought a copper coin. Before I could finish speaking, the guy quickly covered me up, I'm not wearing anything. I told you to calm down, princess. With this steam, I can't see anything. The boy was suspicious and asked if he was sure. He quickly went to the door and answered no. Whatever the boy thought and what his expression was, he went back to the room, opened the drawer, picked up the mask, and told him that a lie had happened. Been out for the past two years, Sai so answered, and now, I'm taller than Papa, and his answer made him laugh, and said yes. The boy who had just finished bathing came out with a grumpy tone, and said it was his turn to bathe. Then the guy wondered why it took so long, because I still had to ask Uncle Vin for help with some things. I also talked about asking him to sponsor him to enroll at Cirrus. The guy happily took off his glasses and asked, Is it true? What did he say of course he said Ace slammed the door and didn't tell him what his answer was until night fell. The boy lying on the bed with Ace was so happy he couldn't believe that he was about to do it. A student at Exer US Academy, he turned to ask what he thought we would learn. Exer US Academy is still the best magic school I've ever seen, but both of us are still proficient beyond our years. Especially there, that will make us a little bit indifferent. The guy still feels happy. But there will be students from powerful families who just think about exchanging knowledge, and learning how to control my powers got me excited so I thought maybe learning some ice and lightning elemental magic would be helpful. Lightning magic cost me too much mana and even activated activate the dragon's will. It's hard for me to control it with this. Have you thought about what to do with Lucas? He sighed and replied that Lucas doesn't know who I am. And until I have enough ability to handle the whole family, I will keep the situation like this, for now training is the most important thing you surprised me, because you were able to restrain yourself from pissing off that pig. I was also very surprised, that the first thing that what you want to do before going to bed, is to deepen this pillow wall. Is it necessary? Of course it is. Two boys sleeping in the same bed is very strange. Then he leaned over to the boy, and smiled and said that's what you want. I'm a girl. But as for girls, do you think I'll be able to find a girlfriend at X Yus Academy? You look serious like you, but also worry about trivial things. Don't worry, you'll meet a four-year-old girl. Beautiful eyes and black hair, and then the two of them will get married and create cute children with four eyes and glasses. How the hell is any child born wearing glasses? Anyway, the girls will probably surrounding this sick prince-like appearance of yours. I can smell the smell of jealousy. The smell of jealousy that you can smell? Don't worry anymore. Four-eyed friend. Girls our age. I'm just look at them like children. Now go to sleep. Have a good night. So they both fell asleep. In the morning, Ace was yawning as he walked down the stairs when he saw Uncle Vin. He said, Good, you're awake. Yesterday you woke up. I said I wanted to meet an inventor. So this morning you helped me contact one. Oh, his name is Jid. He is not only a famous researcher, but also one of the best inventors. Also the biggest supplier Sapin. He will return to Excess City three days later, so we can visit before meeting with everyone at Sira Center. Seems to be okay. But that day at the center, what's there in the city? Haven't you heard? Hauling Gia Sapin, Eleanor and Duve will announce an important announcement at Aiton, and it will be shown at the Central Square, I understand. Thank you very much for helping me get it. This appointment, I'm also curious about what you need from him. It's not that I need it, 
But I want to discuss a few things with him, and I secretly think it's time to use some knowledge from my past life. Wait, what? Vin son, is it okay to dress like that? I thought you had a date with someone this morning. That's right. I have to go. I'll pick you up later. Watch the road and run without falling old friend. Talking about old age dad, how are you doing? Haha, <laughs> my old man has officially broken through to the deep orange stage. But I don't understand why. Even after I absorbed everything from this beast's core, it didn't crack. But anyway, I have to go prepare before leaving. Thank you again, son. I'll be back before dinner. I feel strange. Why didn't it crack? I felt the beast's will inside the core. A sought-after resource that grants the user unique and powerful magic that can only be absorbed when a powerful demon voluntarily surrenders its unique will or forcibly takes it from within. Their monster core came up with a bold idea. What if he merged the two monsters? Would that be possible? There was only one way to know he was focused and tried, but he was almost too late. His dragon's will had taken away the beast's will. But why couldn't his father absorb this will? He had almost forgotten what the beast's element and the magician's appropriate element must be. Compatible remember if that's the case, then you already know who you give this core to, and you think about Ms. Jass's appearance, and wonder what she's like these days as you continue to practice. You also want to make sure I spend time with my family. Each day passes like a normal boy. On a fresh morning, my sister opened the door. Good morning. My two mothers told me to go downstairs and have breakfast. After an hour, my mom, but I want a real space ring. My sister continued. Mom told us to prepare for today's announcement. Dear brother, wake up and speak. She gained momentum and jumped on her brother to drown me out. Too old for this game, she covered her mouth and smiled, asking are you saying I'm fat? The second ace held her stomach and said what did they teach me at that school for young ladies? Get ready to go downstairs and have breakfast, brother. Mom and I will go out with Aunt Tobiah first. Who does she look like, being so violent? The boy said guess what? After preparing and eating breakfast, they dressed neatly and got on the bus with Uncle Vin to the city center after a while. After a long journey, they arrived and got off the bus. The guy said he was still hungry. The guy said he stole most of his breakfast, so it's normal that he's hungry. Now I'm going to go look at the stores. Over here for a bit, he asked if you had money to buy it. It's different from someone else. I always been saving money from the expedition. Luckily, Sai, you go with him. Let's go see Git Dean. Yes, he jumped on his neck. We went through the shops with the young man. Then Uncle Vin and Ace went to the other guy's house. Uncle Vin knocked on Cock Cock Cock's door. A scary face poked his head through the small door and the owner, who was not at home, worked for us. They were terrified, but when the man realized that the person at the door was Uncle Vin, he immediately changed his attitude and actions. Hello, Mr. Vin, please come in this way. As soon as you entered, what did you smell? Hey, that guy said you should have asked if there's anything that doesn't smell like that. He said there's something coming here when he knew that guy had brought someone in he was too loud. He said not to let anyone in, but when he realized it was Vin, he said, oh, it's you. It seems like you've come to bother me again, Vin. You act like I haven't called you before about this. It's just that I've been a bit tired of seeing you lately. I've had dozens of letters from royal families for a year now. They keep screaming at me about a way to travel long distances across the sea, asking me to cross the sea. Why? He got angry and said it was a weird thing. What happened? Kid surprised him and Uncle Vin could only laugh as words. He suddenly wait who is this guy? He bowed politely. Pleased to meet you, Mr. G. Dion. Uncle Vin told me very much. Many wonderful things about you and your great career. My name is a worship, Woin, son of Jinos. Woin, he turned to ask Uncle Vin, What did you bring him here for, Vin? You know, I don't accept students or disciples, actually. I also want to know why the kid wants to come here. Laughed and answered their two questions. He came with a proposal, but he said he needed a way to move to travel long distances across the sea. Is that right? He didn't hear clearly, so he asked again. Ha, huh, he noticed a blue roll of paper. I think it might be easier to understand if I show you instead of explaining. They all don't understand what you're doing, sir. I walked over, but the problem I was facing wasn't something like a kid who hasn't grown hair yet and couldn't finish his sentence. He was surprised. What is this? Of course, a machine that doesn't use manna. Using steam created by outside ingredients. He wondered why he had never thought of this before. He looked at the paper and said, wait, this part isn't enough. There's something missing. Take it back and say, okay, I left out a few important details. The four of you will be happy to hand it over once we finish negotiating. He pointed at me and said you're not a simple child. No problem. He waved his hand to let you know, calling the guy to bring in a box of something. He said I'm sure even the piles of junk lying around in this place will be enough to make you excited. He opened it and said, use those earthly blue eyes to look at this. Unclavian said in surprise that it was an iron forged diamond. Vin told me that you are a budding magician. This is one of the most valuable gems on this continent. 
and can contain mana five times its size. It's great, but it's not really necessary for you. No problem. He turned around and told the other guy to bring out all the things on the shelf in the middle of the row. The other guy brought out everything he said. Uncle Vin was also fascinated by those things. He said I haven't let anyone see these things yet, but you will be an exception. This mirror can deflect five times. A still wasn't interested. He froze and put the mirror down. The other guy quickly caught it because he was afraid it would break if it fell down. And this one wouldn't, you won't be able to refuse. This is still not good. This thing is definitely okay. Uncle Vin stood there and commented that it was indeed Ace. The person who has the ability to stay calm in the face of something infamous. But he shouted take it all and called him master what the hell is going on in front of the Vin. He said it seems like he has no other choice him bring that transmission line here. But the owner of that thing is made for me just bring it here yes. Yes master. I have had the most famous designers work on these masterpieces, so they will be suitable for the king. Gia picked it up and realized this was made from a phoenix earth dragon, of course it was weight. How do you know what the bewildered Vin is a phoenix earth dragon? So they are a race of rank mana monsters, they just as rare as dragons. They are famous for their unique abilities to preserve their lives. I guess you found a way to write that ability into this string. That's right, handsome boy, just like a phoenix. Yellow earth protects itself when in danger. A protective barrier will be created around the person wearing it. But that's not even the best part. If the user's barrier is broken, the amount of mana in the rope will be destroyed. Absorb and it will transport the user to a safe location they know exactly the way an earth dragon does. How many times can a person use this effect? Honestly kid, it's hard to say. I wasted it. Five earth dragon and phoenix monster cores each worth more than any's rank monster core. I guess will be used twice you think maybe mom and L will wait you said just now that they were made for the royal family why royal family are the people who donated this core he scratched his head and said but they are not important I just want to know how you got these ideas and why did you publish it here and at this time kid what do I want I just want a special birthday gift for my sister dummy besides I don't plan to reveal anything unless I know I wonder if it's necessary to use it or not you'll find out later it's just today's announcement, but I'm sure that an important person like you will get more information than just an announcement edited to suit the public. Okay, okay, I'll tell you everything you have. Do you still need this pair of necklaces? I'm not that generous. Can I get one instead of both? He lit a small fire in his hand and was about to burn the piece of paper, indicating that he wanted both necklaces. He exclaimed, Devil, Uncle. Vi said I may not know what's going on inside that extraordinary department, but you can trust that he always keeps his word scratching his head, and saying okay, leave the royal family alone, then completing the ship is still more important than the year. We have previously found evidence that says no. We are absolutely certain that there exists another continent besides that. Catherine heard that. Ace was surprised. A new continent, Uncle Vine calmly said that. It's true. Asked Uncle Vine, did you know? Uncle Vine put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a black towel to wipe the sweat from his face, and said that a royal servant revealed that he was not sure and arrested him. I had to swear not to tell anyone else about this. But now that it's been confirmed, I believe it's true. Then I pondered and asked, Why are you so sure about this? Mister did he find any evidence to prove that? He got angry and said of course he did. What empty-headed scientist would dare to say that without evidence? He came to a chair and sat down and said that a few years ago, we had found an artifact attached to a man no monster that looked like Chai. A species never seen before on Decaton. It had the ability to camouflage almost completely against with the surrounding environment. Uncle Vin was extremely surprised and asked a mana monster with the ability to camouflage and fly. How did you catch it? He naturally replied. It's all luck. An ordinary adventurer. Missed the squirrel and accidentally hit the bird. Anyway, attached to it is an artifact so complex that we can't figure out what it did. Last year, it confirmed everything. Wonder what it did. What do you know that the people who have the right to this information are the royal family? Then I guess the design on this drawing is more important because the royal family certainly doesn't know. He immediately said that thing has the ability to record sound and record images to listen to the conversation between El and Gaidan. Uncle Vi realized that even the great Gideon was powerless against Ace. Ah, asked that's all. Straight old Uncle Vin burst out laughing and said, said no wonder Ace expressed with a bewildered face and said I don't understand what you mean by that. Is there no inventor on Deccan who can create it? Sir, you once said you would introduce me to a, one of the most famous inventors and creators I know. But Mr. Gideon is a very good inventor. He is the best inventor in history so far, I doubt it, and ask if it's true. Listen to this. The Gid inventor felt really heartbroken. He stood and said, of course it's real. Bring any inventor on this continent here, and he will kneel down in admiration to the point of digging an inch of ground. 
Ace laughed and said that, so because Cathan's supposedly best inventor couldn't find out about see the technology behind that artifact, the royal family assumed that there was an inventor somewhere who created it. Let's go outside, Kevin. Mr. New was completely bewildered and asked him if he needed to emphasize that, combined with the fact that those artifacts contained moving images of all three kingdoms. He said, I understand, I understand. That's all, right. We're talking about the possibility of a hell that's not only filled with incredibly talented inventors, but could also have more powerful magicians than me. I understand the seriousness of that, but please take note. Just imagine what those abilities are for. He picked up the pen under the table and said to this steam engine, we'll just have to wait and see what secrets this new continent holds. Uncle Vin and Ace left. He said, I've never seen that crazy Chongid so excited before. Ace said that, then you remembered, back when you were drawing. You just said that this steam engine will need a new one, a certain number of ingredients. But it will probably be quite the old man, Gid Black doesn't care. But it's happy, I, I, ye, ye, lo. Someone just draw it all out, Gaiden. Said that your idea is very sophisticated. But, but I still can't imagine how steam could create enough energy to move such a large ship over long distances. I guess the people of this world relied too much on man nah, so they were quite surprised by this. What makes me even more surprised by the technological advances that don't use magic is that your parents don't feel surprised or overwhelmed by the things you can do if I were your father, regardless of what Uncle Vin said. I looked at my own hands and thought that just like that, I could use this non-harmful technology to earn some useful things for my family. But if I think about there really being another continent outside going to Caton, this is just the beginning. The contract announced the situation. Dad with small glasses, and I were walking towards you with big glasses. We saw the two of you. Uncle Vin kept saying, I can't believe it. My sister's birthday is coming next week. The boy saw DC two people and raised his hand to wave at them. Then the three of them walked down the road together. He said he was really looking forward to today's announcement. I heard the village elder. R said that the three kingdoms are recently in talks about merging at nigh. If that's really the case, I don't know if this merger is related to the discovery of the new Jilluk continent as Merkadin said. Uncle Vi said I know. What is going to happen? But I won't reveal it. The boy has discovered something. What is it then? All three of them looked in that direction. They saw a man being beaten by a group of people. He was fell down then hugged him and said please. I didn't do anything. The other man asked loudly. No do anything. Just that you dwarves are present at X Yus Academy. It's bad enough that you still dare to go against the Academy's rules of self-defense with man nah. Don't you think that using Manda outside the school grounds is forbidden? Please release Manda. He was in pain and looked up at the crowd. Then he stammered and said, but the other man angrily raised his stick and said, release it. I saw something wrong. I didn't have a guy with me. I rushed over and pushed the other man. Then I'd said enough. I was worried and asked the guy lying below, Land, are you okay? Can you stand? The man who had just been pushed by the boy said angrily, I can't believe the boy shouted at that man. How dare you do that? Before he could finish his sentence, the man slapped him. The boy took one hit. It was so painful that he dropped the eyeglasses he was wearing. The man said, I think you should ask yourself that question. Why you dare to hinder my pleasure? Uncle Vin cannot accept it either. If we see that man's activities, I will call the guards before anything happens. Ace took my hand to stop him. I said, no. What do you mean we can't let them? The guy thought if we use magic here, Ace and the pig will encounter big troubles. He reassured himself that he must not lose control. The other man looked at the boy's shirt and discovered that isn't this the symbol of the dwarf kingdom. The boy replied, That's right, the man grabbed the boy's hair and said it's really interesting, you want to crawl with your pig-like brother, damn. If you don't use mana, then the boy won't be able to compete with him. The man holds his hair with one hand, he raised his other hand high and said, Open your eyes and see, I will make sure you all stay in the same hospital room as possible. But before he could do anything, he picked up a wooden stick and broke it, making the man unconscious. Suddenly he turned around and said he was a commoner, so say it before you suffer the same fate as them. The person who went with him said that in general, I won't play with you anymore. He replied that's good because I also have excitedly in another car. The man said, I can understand not wanting to join my father and mother in the announcement at the Aiden, but do we need to reduce the position, like this, without a warrior? Who is the royal family here? The one with the beard told you not to worry. This event is strictly guarded. I'm more than enough. I cut down people to make you feel comfortable. Princess Klin said it very clearly. It was clear that I didn't want to be noticed that day. I also made it very clear that I didn't want to go. But now that we're here, I wonder how you can still live in the royal family for so long, sister. You should I'm grateful to have you. Otherwise, I would probably lock myself in the library all day. You forced me to go. Just because my friend let me climb a tree, no matter what, I had to leave my greater at home. Even though I was planning to marry him during the announcement, 
Just because he's the size of a carriage and he hasn't been trained yet, Prince Tiss. It's not safe. Ryder has been very good lately. That's right, calf guy. Speak loudly, are you listening? And on Ace's side, Uncle Vin is worried and doesn't know what to do. He's never seen Ace look like that before. If this continues, those kids will die. Lost Uncle Vine shouted loudly, let's get out of here quickly before someone gets seriously injured. Quickly, quickly, they're just children. Okay, let's forget about this first. The important thing is, is your friend okay? First, those people, still not knowing that something serious was about to happen to them. They laughed and mocked and said, look at the old man who was protecting the kid, it was so shameful. Their attitude made Uncle Vin also get angry and say, no, ungrateful kids. Pompous, I'm trying to protect you. Call me Vin, I mean, please step aside and listen to this sentence. He turned pale, sorry guys, it's too late. You've done this to my grandchildren. I was so angry that I was so angry that I said rest in peace. The blue-haired boy stepped up with a confident voice and said with a stick, let me take care of it. The girl gave him the broken stick and said don't get sick and wear a new suit. He confidently turned his head and spoke to the girl as easily as Pi, but he didn't know that trouble was about to come with just one hit, but before he could hit the ace, he was hit in one blow and had to be knocked over. Turns out that made the people accompanying him panic and suddenly a man said look at this cocky bastard who secretly attacks others. I will show you the difference between a commoner and a true aristocrat is trained to use this sword. Yes, to be surprised by the skill of the shadow step that has been passed down through many generations of my family. It's not bad. It can follow my movements, but the shadow step cannot. It's not something you can easily dodge. This fake sword swing of mine is to distract you so you won't be able to dodge. Calmly dodge his attacks, making him was surprised and ace, knocked him out with just one hit. It's a shame that you can't enhance the man nah and make them fragile. Maybe I can just use my hands to end this game, right? No fear, but also say that arrogant commoner, remember carefully Jamin the cunning fist is scarier than any man-made weapon, with just one fist. I will make him know who he is in this world, but only as soon as he saw Ace, he felt how it had a pressure that his father did not yet have. But he reassured himself, and rushed up to attack Ace. But there was no chance he could not hit Ace, and was hit by Ace. With a straight face, he bitterly said how could you? How dare you look down on the most brilliant family hair? Yes, let me teach them a lesson. The three of them, Ace, walked towards Uncle Vin. The two of them suddenly looked at each other, not understanding. What's going on? A girl walked up holding something in her hand that created cute little ice and snow. At first I just thought he was just a normal boy like my brother. I thought that about my childish boy or my friends of the same age when I lived with him, but I don't understand why I couldn't take my eyes off him. That's right, he's not like other people. The prince saw that and had grown up. What happened? The group of people realized that the girl in the black dress was Princess Kai and Prince C. They immediately knelt down and apologized. We were just talking to these guys. I don't understand why that cowardly commoner suddenly attacked us without any reason. Those people lied so brazenly, they clearly bullied that dwarf boy. And now when they meet the princess and prince, they quickly changed their tone. The boy wearing glasses was surprised and shouted at you guys. He continued to say, it's so unfair. The princess is really smart. She discovered something strange. If she said that, then, what would happen? I can't explain why the dwarf was injured. The prince next to me also asked if it was true. I think my stupid brother can still believe such words. You keep talking. It's funny, bodyguard. Together with the prince and princess, they said loudly, What are you saying to Sipin's prince? So he held the bodyguard's hand and said sorry. Every time I hear a dog barking, I have to get angry. The bodyguard wondered. This kid, why is he so strong? The prince bowed down and said he knew he was sorry, and asked him to forgive him. It hurts. I just want to say that those kids are lying. The prince said he wasn't. It's Vincent. What business do you have in this place? I was on my way to the square to listen to the solemn speech of the murdered king, when I saw this group of dishonest children bullying a poor child. Say then they looked at the injured boy. The prince angrily turned to the group of people and asked what your name was. He replied that my name is Rami. Your highness is the eldest son of the family. Thank you. The prince already felt that things had become more complicated. He must have gotten bored. Fan used magic on the other person's failed body. However, the Chen family sponsored the royal family and the entire Cyrus Academy a sum of money. Big, if something bad happens to Chen's descendants, what will happen? The princess said that by imprisoning Wai Chen, you have committed the crime of using French in public. The prince said fortunately no one was seriously injured. So if you all agree, this matter can be considered as nothing. That guy thinks it's possible. How much money has my father poured into the royal palace? Even if he is the royal family, he dares to touch me. Why, Uncle Vin? Do you have a two-way communication scroll with you? 
What are you going to do with this? That guy thinks I'm an idiot. Who the hell are you to contact the principal of Cyrus Academy because I told you not to interrupt? It's been a long time since we last met. Your ace. Wow, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I'm really happy. Are you still okay? Everyone wondered. Suddenly, my tone changed completely. I said uncle. Please expel me from school. Chant and his entire clique for bullying people and using dangerous magic inside the city. Wait, what are you suddenly saying? You said the family forced you to stop learning that thing. What does that guy think? So, even if this commoner is close to the principal, how much of our family's money is spent on studying Vietnamese? I think so with pride. If you don't do that, I will revoke my intention to enroll in Ho Chi Minh City. The academy knew that those kids would be expelled, making the other group bewildered. Mom, what did you do? As soon as you finished, the academy contacted you to announce your expulsion. You didn't even bother to explain. The prince was in charge. I'm sorry for what I did earlier. I'm ashamed of myself as a prince. I'm the one who's sorry. I overreacted. I made a mistake. I understand, even though we're a family. No matter what, we should expel him from the academy to ensure there is no discrimination anywhere on this continent. After speaking, the prince got into the car and sighed. I don't know what that brat is. The first time we met, I felt suspicious. That's a strange guy. Of course, he's also a good person. How can you say that? You didn't hear what I said, right? The princess said, let's drink tea together sometime. Okay, okay. Okay, then I'll see you at the Unexpected Prince Academy. Ask the bodyguard next to you. Did you see anything? Cold princess. Did you just say that? Continuing the previous part, which ended the story, where everyone went to the square together. The younger sister pointed to the cheek of the boy wearing glasses and often asked why he called him so loudly. The boy with glasses laughed at this. And that, wondering if all these people were about to learn that there was another continent. Somewhere out there, how will they react? But what concerns me is that the continent has spied on Kathan, with the mono gyroscope, that bird family with the recording tools. They only do that if they're afraid of us or them. Is there some ulterior motive? Am I right to help Caton find this new continent? Maybe it's good. If it's really the enemy, we can organize a preemptive strike or what happened. Happened she looked more distracted than usual, she replied all know everything is fine his mother smiled and said, so I will continue to pretend that you are thinking the things a normal 12-year-old child would think other normal mothers. I just want you to know that even though I always worry about you, I will never bite you to do what you want. Right now, he wishes he could promise his mother that she doesn't need to worry. For me, but I can't fool my mother like that, he took my mother's hands and said thank you mother and smiled brightly everyone around me, was feeling very happy, and that we're watching finally what everyone has been waiting for, has come to the assembly of all humans, elves, and dwarves, I am B.L. Glader. Most of you know me as the King of Sapin, but today, I am not only speaking in my capacity as a King of Humanity, but also represents the entire continent. I am standing here, with the royal families of all three countries on the face of our beloved continent, who have gathered here for this memorable ceremony. Today is the day marks a new era for the continent that each of us still calls home. I think many people already know about the hatred that always exists between humans and love. Even humans are always only considered as business object. But that's not what we want we leaders people have had a lot of meetings in recent years to try to unite our tribes two years ago. We allowed members of all three races to become adventurers. It was gratifying to see parties of both humans, elves, and dwarves working together for the same goal. Last year was also a milestone especially when Tsus Academy welcomed students from the Kingdom of Eleanor and the Kingdom of Pedigree. Now a new generation of mages can be friends and create many memories without having to worry about the broken barriers. In the past, we all understand how difficult it is for some people to adjust to the barriers of our hatred. But we hope everyone will let go of the past and all racism. Think of a bigger picture, if not for yourself, then for your children and the future of this continent. Another man stood up and said it was an honor for me to speak in this capacity. As those gathered here on this memorable day, I fully agree with the message that King Glider has conveyed regarding the future of our continent, but although we have a clear vision of the future, in the future, I still have to say that this continent is still full of mysterious things right here. In this land, there are places so dangerous that no one dares to explore them. But if there really are mysteries and mysteries, danger still exists out there. So why don't you hear wrongly, citizens of Cathan? Today, we want to announce the evidence for the existence of another continent. Listen. Everyone is excited. What does it have to do with talking about another continent? I know this won't bring a positive reaction, but this is chaos. The man continued to speak. Please, even we don't know. So we all have a lot of questions. What we know is that out there is a continent full of challenging and possibly dangerous mysteries. There's proven evidence. They've tried to find it, 
But it seems that the current technologies on both sides still do not allow us to move out like that, another man said quietly making everyone worthy as Analyze said they we don't know much. But in these uncertain times we all believe that cooperation and mutual support is what's best for the continent and all of us. We shouldn't be angry with each other anymore. Our cultures may be different. But remember that we were all born on the continent. We are always proud of that and hope that future generations will still feel this. What about you? People continue to talk and they feel excited because this process of connecting all three races and multilateral nations will take a lot of time and effort. But today we will appoint for the following six individuals whom we royally trust and who are the bravest, most skillful, intelligent, and strongest of our race. They will represent their race on the highest level. The continent's current goal is to protect and maintain peace for decades. They will work together with those of us who keep the order of this continent to ensure that our home is protected, and we will enter this exciting new era. These individuals will be known as chess orchids. Each chess orchid will represent each of our wishes not only for our kingdom, but also for a whole continent. A servant offered him a box of something, and he stood up and walked forward and opened the box, and in it were six yellow rings of X. He called you wear the ring ring up for girl. The next one is Var, I umbrella Fet A. A. Micah Byron. He took turns bad things first received that represents six people. The guy with glasses was surprised. He just said Lucas's family wick is, why oh after the war, Lance Star soldiers commanded. Please protect and bring honor to us and O oh mages out there. Try your best to become one of the six Lance Star warriors in the future. Nothing can stop you war stars. The soldier obeyed the order and sent a face full of determination on the day of the announcement, revealing a cold truth to Ed Luska a stubborn and traitor that led to the death of most of the people in the team to use. Using the power of family and relationships to get rid of all his sins, he was warned that taking revenge on Lucas would be suicide, because he has a brother behind him, who is not only a powerful magician, who has now become one of the continent's six warriors. While this problem complicates his plans, he still has another more important problem that needs him. Had to attend the important thing, which was his sister's birthday. Mom was helping him put a bow on his collar. It was a bit smelly, but maybe it was okay and he figured he should go down to the party right now. As soon as he spoke, his animal immediately jumped on him. But maybe he had to stay in his room tonight. Hearing that, he was very sad. He saw his sad face, so he patted his head and gently explained. Uncle Vine warned me that some of the guests attending El's birthday today came with the main purpose to check on me. I don't want to take any risks, but don't worry, I'll have someone bring you lots of delicious food. Now his expression had disappeared, and he happily asked his father, Promise? He replied, I promise. That made him extremely excited and happy. He then high-fived you at your brother's birthday party, held on a beautiful full moon night. His family dressed up in splendid and luxurious costumes to welcome guests. The mother joked with her daughter, please invite him to a dance later. Miss, replied this mother evilly looked at the guy wearing glasses and saw in his hand, he was holding a glass of wine and chatting with a beautiful looking girl. I'm about to enroll at X Yus Academy. Maybe we can, they hadn't gone out to eat yet. But the fun hadn't lasted long when he was extremely embarrassed and confused because the glass of wine in his hand spilled onto the white shirt he was wearing, which also made the girl he was talking to. I had to burst out laughing. Standing nearby, I had to stand up. My friend said, don't act like you didn't see anything. Cutting off the awkward atmosphere, my father walked down the stairs, waving his hand and shouting loudly that they were coming. Then get ready everyone the mother covered her daughter's eyes, Giving her a surprise, she said I thought we were just having a family party. Why do I have to wear this cumbersome dress? My mother fresh smiled and told her to go slowly. When she got there, she opened her hand and said this is the reason. At that moment, everyone said in unison, happy birthday to Yin. She was extremely happy, and the party was held with many performances. Her father spoke before the ceremony continued. I would like to thank everyone here on behalf of my beloved daughter for coming to this birthday celebration. I received so much love. Lucky in my life, but no joy will ever be able to compare to my beloved daughter and son having their first dance together, listening to their father speak. She was stunned by what her friend said whispered in her mother's ear. I don't know if L and A will dance. Have they practiced? Their mother heard it and laughed in a creepy voice. Then said, I will kill him. Then she replied that not at all and that was a sentence. It was my father's accident that did it. The two women were extremely angry and the daughter expressed her confusion to her mother, what should she do next? But suddenly a pair of hands reached out. Will you give me the honor? Will you dance this dance with me? Even though she was confused and surprised, she still held out her hand to her brother. She only responded to her with an affectionate smile. Seeing that, her father immediately stingled for the music to turn up. The props were all screaming to create a beautiful piece of music. 
He took his hand and hugged her waist. Seeing her brother so confident, it made her feel less nervous. Even though they didn't practice in advance, they didn't practice at all. The two of them were very cooperative and got along well. Mom and my friend standing there were surprised. I thought they didn't practice, but they didn't. The two cousins danced extremely beautifully, making everyone attending the party gassed. Surprised and overwhelmed with gratitude, because the ballroom dancing lessons from his previous life had finally worked. What a beautiful performance it was so sad, he'd heard that comment from one of the guests of the day. Today he looked to see who was speaking. Looking for a while, he saw the silhouette of the inventor that Uncle Vin and I had met to negotiate. The other day, today it seemed like he was dressed appropriately and neatly. More than the day he met him, he held a glass of red wine in his hand and walked towards him, and said it was okay to talk for a bit. But in another scene, the scene was a row with a car with a girl inside, sat, and someone told her, I was told that he was quite close to Ace. So why don't you come and give a gift to his sister? He was at school, and soon returned to the party atmosphere. And he was coming closer to talk. He said, Are you doing a stand-up comedy? He walked past him and said, I hope you don't come and bother me. At my sister's party just to talk to me with that charisma of yours that made all the girls around look at me. Looking at him, he replied, I brought a gift for her. So what's the honor for you? The best invention. Please come and visit me. Don't be so sarcastic. I just thought you might want to know that the council has approved the design I recreated from your rough drawing and everything is working. Being able to build a council is how kings and queens are self-appointing themselves despite the monarchy they established in their country. Congratulations to you, sir. You must be greatly rewarded money, fame, power, those things, it's meaningless. I just want something that even the council can't finish the sentence with a finger lightly tapping on his couple. I'm sorry, sir. P. Gan, we are very admirers of your masterpieces. Yes. We I heard about the wonderful ship you just designed. He said, yes, I'm quite busy. But then he turned around and looked for me and said, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. The others continued. Ask questions. How did you think of using the flag or ore to make energy like that? Is it true that the warship won't need to use mana energy even a little? But when he heard that, he laughed and thought about his reputation. In fact, fame is not meaningless. It has a price to pay, even an extremely expensive price. Holding a glass of wine in his hand, he looked towards the street and saw it. It seemed like the guests were gradually leaving. Someone called him. He turned around and saw a smiling girl waving her hand. She quickly ran back and bowed. I'm very sorry for not coming. Hello earlier. I came to the party quite late and wanted to congratulate your sister. Before, he gently bent down and took her hand. But his parents always bragged to me about how busy he was when he took on the position of secretary of the student council, ignoring that for a long time. Right, Lilia, she looked at him with affectionate eyes and smiled and said, oh mom, it's been so long, and then she realized he's always been so much taller than her. After greeting, the two of them were caught up in the story the other was telling. All kinds of emotions appeared, along with a lot of happiness and surprises, and then after a while of talking, she felt like the little girl was always hiding behind her parents' backs, and often had meals with servants and servants. You're already an adult in the kitchen. It seems like you're feeling a bit frustrated because you intend to take me to your secret places, and you tease me like that. It's hard not to talk about you. How much pressure was there about the future back then? And now, you're doing so well in the most prestigious magic academy, let's just complain about the guys who keep peeking at you. While we talk, I guess yes. It seems like you're quite popular at school. Then pointed at the boys. Over there, she was surprised. She raised her hands to show her disapproval. But I don't even have a boyfriend. But what's more? The changes and I am mainly thanks to you in life. But you pondered for a moment. And then immediately happily said that if it was like that, I would try to accept the guy you brought home who would be more easygoing. Uncle Vin too. It seemed like she was a bit disappointed by that statement, but she reassured herself and forced a smile. Oh sure, ham. Excuse me ladies, can I borrow this guy for a bit? After chatting and explaining replied to the fans about his masterpieces. He went looking for Ace to continue his conversation that was interrupted before. The girl respectfully bowed her head politely sir. Of course, she smiled and turned around towards me and said see you later then walking towards the party he turned around and said to me that no one knew me you said proud of me you're quite popular with the ladies right that girl just now he seems to like you quite a bit so he took a sip of red wine and told me that he continued to say that the two of us are compatible but don't you intend to do something thanks to you her life has changed her feelings are not necessarily liking or loving him it's like she's more grateful now than she's realized yet but surely one day in the future, she'll also realize that her current feelings are just the infatuated feelings of a young girl in front of someone. Only my hero, he replied with a meticulous voice. May's maturity in this case really makes me nauseous and let it go. Are you here? You're just here to give advice about love, right? 
you want to give where you changing. That's right. Like I said before, I want to use the money, fame, and power that the council has given me to get something that I can't get anywhere else. Which is your knowledge? The look in your eyes. Doan was sad after giving you that hand drawing I thought again. I don't want to change the way this world works anymore. This continent is fine. Without your intervention, he was surprised. So you are still invention ideas have the ability to change the world. You are powerless to choose what you want to hear. Mr. Guyton, let me make it clear that I am not here to satisfy your selfishness. I have to sober up and understand. If that's the case then, how do you want to exchange? I don't need world-changing inventions. But let me borrow your knowledge in return. I will be the supplier of any inventions. Or any goods that he needed, he calmly replied. So how about closing the order? And so the two of them agreed to make a deal. After that, he opened the door to his sister's room and saw everyone buttoning up the gifts. I received it as a gift. Your mother smiled and held the dress in her hand. This thing is so beautiful. I didn't seem to like it because it was a dress. Your eyes were suddenly attracted to an umbrella box. This looks different. It sounds like that. Everyone said to bring it here. She quickly opened it excitedly. Her mother wondered whose gift box it was. I'm not sure. But there was this card. Everyone was curious and looked at the card sent to Yin. I'm sure you already have a bunch of dresses and a cup of tea, right? This gift from me is sent to you with the hope that you will not only admire your brother, but also have the desire to try to be like him someday. We'll become strong and capable of standing shoulder to shoulder with him. She was extremely excited when she opened the gift box and found a bow. When she saw that bow, there were many comments about how beautiful it looked. Looking at the design, it looks like it belongs to an elf. I wonder who gave it to her. Perhaps she was enjoying the bow when she walked towards her brother, holding out her hand. Where is your gift? Dear brother, mother pinched her cheek. Then he said you were too rude. When your brother heard that, he laughed happily and took out his gift box. The younger sister suddenly asked what it was. He gave it to me in one hand. He gave the other box to his mother. Oh, okay. This is for mom. My sister picked it up. Wow. It's a necklace. You said these things will protect the two of you, while you or I are not around. Uncle Vin's wife was also surprised by its beauty, exclaimed beautifully. Where did you find it? Uncle Vin smiled slightly and shook his head. He was very sad to have to say, but honey, there are only two necklaces like that on this continent. He held the necklace on the neck of my beloved sister. Happy birthday. A few days later, the employees were performing different tasks, one of which they used water hoses to spray wooden crates without their knowledge. What's the point of doing that, Mr. Gid? Even if he goes to his invention factory, there's actually no need to carry me all the way here. Did you realize that no one other than the staff, including the royal family, is allowed in the facility? At this office, he picked up the cup and poured a glass of water, and then replied yes. He told me eight times, and I knew I was very grateful and admired him. He also picked up the cup and poured a glass of water, so can you say something? With that look on your face, because all I see is an unhappy, even bored brat, but it's pretty hard to be interested when you keep bothering me with every stage of this project. I feel like it's a waste of paper. Communication, he said. So those late night calls can't connect us. Go and be friends with someone of the same age. I heard that your birthday just passed. I can't believe it. It's been more than four months. Yes, time has passed quite quickly since Ellie Goo's birthday, your birthday. It's truly a lavish festival. Is it the same for your birthday? I'd like to have a small party with just your family. It's such a wide relationship. But I'm quite surprised by that. Anyway, here it is. Happy belated birthday, kid. Then he brought out the gift box. You wondered, why did you ask? You didn't even wrap it. He was angry. Take it, I'm just kidding. You put the glass of water you were holding on the table and opened the box. There was a string with two silver coins. Thank you for doing it for me. Compare it to the effort you put in. For the steam system, this isn't worth much. But I'm quite curious. Why do you want to use it to hide not one but two elements? Don't tell me you're a magician who masters these four elements. After saying that, he drank an entire cup of water that he was holding in his hand. He put the bracelet on his hand and calmly said yes, but he was so surprised that he spit out the water in his mouth into the face of the person next to him. You are really a ghost. Mage E. Dane, do you mean you want to hide half of your element? So why are you telling me? Because more and more, I realize that you are special. You will also be able to eat at the temple for a long time. The crazy boy revealed shocking news if you let me fart like that. I'll ask for proof. You calmly replied. Go ahead, but I'm quite impressed. The day the fast train was designed. That's right, it's the same time as you. I'm going to school in a few days. When the boat to go to this god will officially set sail, you will leave the factory and mutter to yourself that the old man here is working really fast to be able to organize a team and build an entire ship. The ship will run entirely on steam in just a few short months. 
if this new continent is really an enemy, then I can't half-heartedly cultivate with the bracelet he gave me, so I should try to make the wind element, and the bull caught fire and Foy was bowing his head, mumbling when he bumped into a man. Sorry, I was a bit absent-minded. The muscular man said angrily, hey, kid, your eyes are under your throat, three girls around him. Tell them to let the kid go. That's right, I think you've had too much to drink, but you're helpless. Why do you keep bumping into these guys? He continued to talk loudly. It would be wrong for a professor to let you go. There's an insolent boy running away. If your parents can't teach you, let me teach you. He took off the hair tie on your head and said, look how long your hair is this afternoon. Lesson number one. A real man will cut his hair short and you have to be muscular like me. The second lesson is that when you apologize to a classy person like me, you have to kneel down. He used his hand to force your head down, but it didn't move at all. He wondered why he didn't kneel down. He generously said that since you were quite drunk, I would accept to let this matter go, but it was time for you to let go of your hand. Then he used all his strength to push his hand away, causing him to fall backwards, causing the two girls to fall. I was so scared that I had to catch him so he wouldn't fall. The owl said, how dare you talk to a professor from the Russian Academy like that? He said, hugging two beautiful girls in his arms, ignoring what he said, then turned around and left. Go stop right there. It seems like you know magic. But if you also study there, then when you see me, you should hide because there I can beat you to a pulp. He calmly tied his hair and said in a full voice, Prokiv, I'm looking forward to it. Then he threw out something yellow. The two girls walking next to the guy wondered, Is that your pendant? It's not possible. I didn't even see that kid. That's the end of it. There, he walked home, and as soon as he opened the door, his sister and the beast ran quickly towards him and happily said to him. But he didn't. In response to his sister asking where his parents were, she angrily said this. It's not fair. They were sitting in the living room with Elisa. The two of them had a package from Exer U.S. Academy. She pulled his hand and walked towards everyone. They saw the father smiling and saying that his son was home, friend four. With happy eyes he said look this uniform has arrived and his mother also brought a similar box towards him, from an orphan, to a king from a child to an adventurer. It seemed like he had finally become a king. As a student, my other friends of the same moon age were also looking forward to the day of enrolling at X Iris Academy, wondering what else this world could teach me, and finally the day of admission had arrived. When he was sleeping, his four-eyed friend grabbed his ankles. Come on, wake up, it's your first day of school, don't be late. Even if your beast under your pillow got angry, it rushed forward and hit the other boy quite painfully. Meanwhile, I try to sleep a little more. After a while, you woke up and gave me five minutes. After that, you went to get ready. You took off your shirt and looked at yourself in the mirror thoughtfully, but then immediately put on your clothes. To go to school, you're surprised I can't believe you signed up for the academic magician class at X Yus Academy. Why not I told you I wanted to learn more magic theory, hey? But you also have I can sign up for a few more classes. I don't need my entire semester to revolve around it. I'm not suited to fighting with kids my own age and besides, I'll also take the magician combat classes I know. But I've heard that many academic mages were defeated by battle mages. Are you worried about me? I'm worried about the students being sent to the infirmary for looking down on you. Haha, don't worry. I'll try to be careful when I'm done preparing. The two of them and the animal walked down to the dining room, afraid of being late for school. Father called to hurry up and eat breakfast. Your two younger sisters lie down. It's not fair to talk about nagging. I also want to go to Exer U.S. Academy. Ace advises then stop being lazy. Seeing my friend's face full of wounds caused by love, Alice is gentle. Please help me heal a wound. What are you doing? Sai Super come here, let me treat him while talking to my friend. I can't believe that our little son will be enrolling at that famous Exer US Academy, it seems like we raised him. He's a good boy, isn't he my dear? What do you mean by us? You're the one who raised him. I guess the only time I raised them, was the time they got into trouble. That's right my dear. Breakfast is over. There's a car ready to take them to school to enroll. The whole family went out the door, and hugged each other to see them off to school. I'll come home to visit when I have time. My parents and I can rest assured. He turned to his sister and rubbed her head. Be good. Be obedient and take care of your parents. You two still have the pendant I gave you. Please wear it. Mom and I held up the necklace around our necks to reassure them. And your father wondered, are you not going to say anything to me? Laughed and replied, yes. Don't burn down the house while practicing, Dad, this insolent kid. After a while of sitting in the car, they arrived at the academy looking at that scene. The gate of the academy was crowded with people coming to enroll. That made, they felt happy, and excited. Not knowing how to move, there was a man instructing the students to line up in a row similar to the white building in the center in front to attend the mandatory opening ceremony. Then everyone listened and moved to the mentioned place. 
They lined up and waited for their turn to confirm their names and classes. L is student can. Combat mage class student. Earth elemental magic. Welcome, student A. Woyan was a student of the earth and wind element magic class. She was very surprised when she read this and pointed her finger at herself. What's wrong with me? Why did the four-eyed boy happily touch him? She was quite surprised that he was just a two-element mage. She shook her head no no. Let's go ahead. They walked together to the place where the opening ceremony was about to take place. The four-eyed friend was surprised. Wow, I didn't think this place would be crowded. There were so many people that I was surprised because it seemed so crowded that there weren't many seats left. They walked past the students who had sat before and apologized. Excuse me, I'm also a mage student, fighting two students. The staff saw this, and then discussed it. Look at this, he's a weak academic. Please forgive me for bothering you. Seeing that Ace has such a temperament, it's enough to make him pale. Be polite. Raise both hands and invite him to leave. When he found a seat, his four-eyed friend pretended to talk to his friends, sitting nearby, while he helplessly put his hand on his chin, thinking that he had forgotten how noisy the dark kids of this age were. Suddenly, a woman appeared. Appearing on stage, she snapped her fingers, making all the students extremely surprised and excited. I immediately knew she could use sound magic, but I didn't know how much she had trained to be able to use it. This large building is very sorry for this rudeness, but I don't like to speak so loudly. It's not good for my throat, especially at this age. I would like to ask permission. Welcome, all of you, leaders. The future students and the source of Katen's strength come to this small academy. Please introduce yourself as Principal, Thea Goodsky. Although I may feel that this speech is quite long and will probably be very boring. Boring, but I realize that this year is a very special year. I am very proud to say that since the establishment of this academy, there have never been as many dwarf and elf students as there are today. So who is there? Maybe to welcome everyone better, the students will help lead and listen to everyone. Please give a clap to the members of the Zus Academy Student Council. And so those students come out from the backstage. They friendly wave to everyone. The four-eyed boy looked excitedly. Look at Lilia. We should stir up the atmosphere for her, right? Yu-Gi-Oh Lilia, a person who came out with an extremely aura, made everyone happy. The students all had to be amazed, including the animal lying in Ace's lap. He pointed out to Ace calmly and smiled. He hadn't seen her for a long time. Everyone started to talk about it. It was the Princess Alice I knew. I heard that she entered the school last year as a disciple of the Principal Goodsky. We've always known that the Principal is someone who never accepts disciples. But that proves it. She is a very talented person moreover, she is a it's not fair for a girl to live and die. Everyone says she's cold and strict. Who cares? I don't know what I need to do to get her to look at me even just once. Please hello everyone my name is Tessia Errol President of the Student Council. First of all, I would like to congratulate everyone for being admitted to the most prestigious academy for magicians on this continent together with first year like everyone else. I was given the privilege of observing the academy for a year in addition to the lessons and friends in the academy. I also witnessed the discrimination we face against academic students. If even small differences in uniforms are enough to separate and separate people, then I'm really worried about what racial differences will do. Today, I'm standing here in front of everyone, the new generation of students, and I beg everyone to ignore the prejudices of the older generation that have created rivalries between races, the way the clans have come together and created out to the council. We should also do the same thing for the future of this continent. The evil beast happily pointed towards the stage pap, pa mom there, mom down there, we should come say hi. Why is she or your mother? Suddenly there's this call. I think I'm falling in love. The four-eyed friend's infatuated eyes looked down at the stage for the princess. He looked at him with suspicious eyes. Why are you looking at him like that? Because you've been saying the same thing since the walk to the building until now. Shut up, but she's different. Don't realize she's changed a little. Ha <laughs> ha, how do you notice how she's changed? No, maybe you also know her like the random way you know Prince Chris and Princess Kathleen. Maybe all my invitations to beauties have disappeared. I use both hands to push the four-eyed friend's face away. Say forget it, you weirdo, and after a while of speaking, the opening ceremony ended, the four-eyed friend knew that what they said was important. But oh my god, I don't know why, but I felt so bored. Ace's beast jumped on his head, and everyone around him looked at him, and said he didn't know, or didn't pay attention. Four-eyed friend grimaced, and felt it was a waste as they walked away when they suddenly saw a group of people. Students, please wake up. I don't understand why a dwarf like you dares to wish to become a real enhancer. Why don't you continue to create weapons for real warriors like me? Go what did you just say? Who you think you are? Curious four-eyed friend, come here to see what's going on. You must feel depressed because you're still being racist. It seems like you're about to get into trouble again. Scarf then test my name is Nicolo. Why don't you challenge me short legs? 
or do you only know how to bark? The dwarf replied indignantly, you will regret it too. I bros and ball, announce a match between myself and Nicola. So the other guy lifted the badge on his chest and answered me with satisfaction. Nicola accepted the challenge and looked at the badge on his shirt and realized that it was the artifacts that the school gave to students that could create a line. The barrier protects the users to create an interesting battle in the academy. And so the battle begins. The four-eyed friend cheers for the evil dwarf to observe that the provocateur is the red core enhancer. Dark and the dwarf is the black core. Let's see what they can do. Both of them have eyes full of determination and continuously recite their spells. The four-eyed friend standing outside the sentence has some kind of guillotine blade. What kind of noise is that? To have the ability to control the earth element like an enhancer when he is just a red core magician. It proves that he is not only talented and has practiced a lot. After a long battle with arrows, that guy always avoids the dwarf's moves. The dwarf said, why do you fight like a coward? So you say I fight like a coward, so why win? You win, you short-legged ace feels like when the shield breaks. The battle should begin. The war must end, but I don't think Nicola plans to stop. It's just as you think he lifted his leg and said, let's see how you learn with a broken arm. You may four-eyed friend thinks this. It's an opportunity for me to be a hero. He slowly walked towards them. But as he was walking, he heard someone say loudly, oh no, that's the student council president. That made the other guy scare and looked sideways. Where is the president? Ace kid, oh maybe I was wrong. I didn't understand Ace's meaning your four-eyed friend scowled and reproached you just lost my chance to shine. Your chance you went to bully that guy with the sword he walked towards Ace, pull V you challenge me academic brat, how dare you destroy my battle, oh boy calm down. It's not cool to discriminate and besides, I'm sure the battle has been over for a while before. But I'm the one who decides when the battle ends, I'll be sick. I don't think so, don't let me catch you in class. Then he turned and left with a sigh, your beast spat on the back of his head. He angrily turned his head, and he said this is not what I did. He waved his hand, intending to fight with him. You heard a sound. GM didn't attract everyone's attention. The person looked towards the voice. And this time, it was indeed the student council president. She said we need to finish the agenda before the disciplinary committee meeting, and the meeting starts from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Thinking I didn't find evil in the speech, will he skip the opening ceremony? But Kate Yusi said he did come. How should I react when I find him? Is he acting cold or friendly? More, what if he sees me first? Dozens of questions continuously appear in the head of the president. 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 What's wrong? Do you feel something is wrong with you, President? We will cancel the meetings if you don't. Why am I okay? And she waved her hand. And they said there would be a lot of work today. Then suddenly she saw the person she always looked for, and saw her looking in that direction. The guy walking next to her, said the family's name, Nicola. He was one of the promising students enrolled last year, and the other red-haired boy seemed to be a first year. But I didn't recognize him in the group of noble students. He was probably a commoner named Nicola. I warned him not to let him. Caught him in class. He was about to attack the president and Lilia thought that boy would die if he poked the ace. Oh no, then they quickly walked towards the ace. Nicola quickly explained. He pointed towards the dwarf. This is a misunderstanding. I accepted a duel from that dwarf. When this nam boy interrupted us ace, happily raised his hand to greet test Lilia asked ace. What's wrong? The president asked in surprise you two. Know each other? Ah, Lilia happily replied. Ah, yes, my father and my father have worked together for many years, so we are childhood friends. Ah, answered we lived together. For a while then the president was surprised Lilia confused. You said that so easily that's causing a misunderstanding, huh? I didn't say anything wrong for now, let's ignore their business. The man accompanying the president asked Nicola what this means, even if you are interrupted you are not allowed to point a weapon at him. I just wanted to scare him a little. Of course, I won't attack. If that's all, we can pardon you for pointing a weapon at someone outside the competition area, which is a violation of the academy's rules. Even if you put your weapon away right before you attacked me, that action would still get you suspended. And if you touched a hair on my head, believe me, expelling you would be very lenient. The president angrily approached him and said that making him extremely scared so I will ask again, how dare you? Why did he tremble and lean towards me? I'm sorry for acting rashly because your anger will cause harm. I got reported and now I'm leaving. Everyone and you. Why did you start causing trouble as soon as you entered school? Grandpa said you should be humble. What will happen if you kill a second year who's too easy to dominate? Wondering why? You are you really blaming me after only seeing five seconds of the end of the story? It doesn't matter. Do you know what will happen if things get serious? Nicola is really prepared. Shows damage to him, even if its shield breaks. He points towards the dwarf and says, if I don't distract him, you'll have to face an even more awkward problem. Four-eyed friend. Next to him, he pulled Ace's hand. Come on, let it go. The president said it's not wrong. 
Ace angrily turned around and went to work. His four-eyed friend tried to pull him back, but he was powerless. Lilia patted his shoulder to comfort his four-eyed friend, but his hand was already on it, on the ace's shoulder and said, wait, first year, did you grow up in a cage chaw? Seeing that, the president was worried and stopped him. See, I can't, president. It's unacceptable for him to talk to you like this. So there's no doubt about it. He wasn't raised properly. He sighed and said, I hate the way people keep grabbing me more and more. Why is he surprised? You don't think he can finish his sentence. Ace knocked him away, and the three people behind him were very scared. Lilia ran to Cly. Are you okay? The president tried to pull Ace back, but Tran accepted for some reason. When she got home, she leaned against the wall tiredly saying everything. Everything was broken. Then she walked towards the bed sullenly, clutching the blanket, grabbed a pillow, banged her head on it, then collapsed on the bed. She angrily thought it was her fault. She was just looking for help. But what if? If he causes trouble again like usual, not only will he lose access to the library, but also other training facilities. But maybe I shouldn't act so tough. Actually, he's not as the one holding a weapon, but he himself is a weapon, and more importantly, why is he living with Lilia? Is it possible that he just goes looking for lost girls and brings them home? It's all my fault, K. Gusey's, for making me the student council president. If I wasn't, I wouldn't care about treating every student fairly. Otherwise, Ace and I could just hug each other and reunite. There's actually a knock on Cock Cock Cock's door. President, it's C. I wanted to ask about you. You looked exhausted during the meeting after accidentally meeting that first year. I'm fine. I'm not the one who got thrown away. He wondered who he was. How dare he talk to you like that when you were just giving him advice? Should I tell that to the principal? Everything has been resolved already. Please calm down and don't mention it again. You're so much more confused than girls. Why does he have to keep getting more and more handsome? How many classmates will flirt with him? As for C, he's helpless. He left when he heard the president. Saying so as Viv, you have returned to your room, they are preparing things, and see that they even provide genuine bedsheets. You see this academy is really big. You don't think it will take much time to visit. It's fun to listen to him talk, and I don't know what to answer. My friend asked me. You're still upset about the shoulder encounter with the vice president. Why? That's right, and many other things. I find it strange when you stop and argue. Normally you would just ignore it and walk away. You frowned, but what the test said wasn't wrong. Why am I so angry because the person who said it was Tex X? You forget everything that happened. The sound of knocking on the door, cock, 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 opened the door. Who is it? Good evening, can I come in? You were curious and looked out to see who it was. Suddenly it was Principal Guzzi. You ran to the door and bowed politely. It's an honor for me to be allowed to meet you at such a close distance. She asked Eliza, right? I've heard great things about you from Vin. He was very pleased. The boss came in and realized they needed to talk in private, and the friend quickly said, I'll go get some water downstairs. Thank you. When the friend left, the two of them were sitting in chairs facing each other. I told him to call me, please, Thea. I already refused. But she looked at the beast contract and said, it seems that not only your beast memory contract has changed, I can only sense the wind and earth elements from you. Are you using concealment magic? Can't say I'm disappointed. I was hoping to brag about protecting a child with four elements, but I was quite happy to see you register as an academic mage. As I predicted, he looked at the bracelet and said he intended to tell you about it when he had time to meet, but he had made himself a troublesome enemy as an adventurer and he didn't want to. Give him any reason to doubt the eldest nephew at least for now, she covered her mouth and laughed. Only would dare to call Lan's younger brother and heir to one of the most influential military families. Just a trouble enemy, I'm more worried about your real enemies in the future than you always are. You shouldn't say those things to a child starting school. Aha, uh -huh. you're right. I'm sorry, don't worry, but if it's about school, I'd like to ask you to tell me a bit about what's going on. I want to take the highest level mana theory classes, especially the special system classes. That's not difficult, but I thought one of the main reasons you joined this academy so late was to fit in with your peers. You will still take regular classes with your moon peers, it's just that you have a little desire to learn more about how to use your mana on the special system, because you're a bit stuck lately, he thought to himself, and because your old world doesn't have anything like that, let me worry about that. I can still give you a command. Permission to observe close combat sessions between upper-class magicians, oh yes, what you need me for? Suddenly my friend opened the door and said how could you be so disrespectful to the principal? Why do you look at kindness? Is that on purpose? Is it true? He was very shy and didn't know what to say. He just quietly put down the glasses of water he had taken and asked the principal to ask if he was worried about the student council, right? Well, if they are what people call the academy's shields this year, 
I want them to be called the Sharp Swords. I want you to join the Disciplinary Committee A Surprise Council. Okay, you see, it's an academy full of dynamic young wizards who are raised with the idea that they are as valuable as gold and are often full of problems. You see, the Disciplinary Council will be responsible. Will be responsible for keeping peace. And is it appropriate for a male student to apply the rules within the academy? Not to mention, you're not even a combat mage. She calmly replied that the playground is my playground. Of course, the rules are also mine. So leave me alone. I'm not in a special class anymore. I check out the books in the library myself. So lower class students don't have access to those books, not even upper class students. You still have to show proof that you have the special element. You can't do what you're doing right now. Sitting next to you, you see the two of you chatting as if they were old friends. Why isn't there a bit of evidence indicating that it's the principal and the academy? Furthermore, a council member chosen discipline. Because they have power, you will have friends to learn and practice with I also give them access to some top secret training facilities. People say the members are chosen based on that kind of power, means she raised her hand to argue that even though the Wickes family insisted on a position for Lucas, I refused because I wanted you to join. You're really well prepared, aren't you anyway? Pursuing the goal is you. It's okay. But that training should be concentrated. Of course, she brought out a box of items that I ordered for the disciplinary council uniform just for you. Take the set. The thing in his hand felt quite angry knowing that she knew for sure that he would agree. Oh, make peace with the student council president. Test soon. It's not good to be angry with your childhood friend. Surprised because Test is his childhood friend, the two of them walked out onto the field ace. Sorry I was about to tell, but it's already like that it's okay. I also have a childhood friend, her name is Piggat I see. She looks like a cute little girl Lilia Princess Clint. And now, the princess what's the next test are you planning to wake up to god hey. I've never flirted with anyone so it's worse than you two just need to secrete hormone to attract others. I also want to have that thing but you're so weird. That's also the reason you love me, because you're also crazy wait for me suddenly everyone in the restaurant is looking at me Ace's side. It seems like the rumors about Eureka have been spread everywhere, Ace scratching his head. He's already famous dude. I feel like he's crazy please forgive me. I didn't notice that you're wasting your time with someone who is inferior to you. Level my name is Sly Ravenpaw too, from the famous Ravenpaw family, you probably heard of well. Today, I'm feeling quite generous, so I'll let you join our group. I'm sure you won't regret it. I hadn't heard that. Both me, and my friend, were very surprised. Ravenpaw family, I'm pretty sure no one named a noble family after bird poop. Sorry, I must have heard wrong. Seeing that, Mia got angry, and threw two spoons of her food. There enough. You dare to mock the nobles. Why did I take the trouble to come here and invite you to join the group? so that you wouldn't degrade yourself by hanging out with this trashy academic. But you dare to insult me. My friend angrily stood up and said why. I'm with someone who disrespects my best friend so blatantly. We're all magicians at this academy, so stop being so arrogant. He said we're all magicians. So why do you live in the forest all the time so you don't know the truth? Our differences. And it he replied strongly I live in reality, and even the student council says that we should not discriminate of course, they say that for political and superficial reasons unrealistically. He raised his hand to hit Ace and said it seems the only way to wake you up is to see it with your own eyes. But before he could hit Ace, something attacked him, and he couldn't see who did it. It was probably just a coincidence. There was no way this academic kid could move that fast. He continued, intending to attack Ace. Boyby's friend stood in front of Ace. He said I could avoid it, but before Elisa could say that, the other guy was hit. What are these vines entangled in? Let me go. Do you think these vines really have students strong enough to use rare and powerful magic like this? Or is this the instructor's magic that let me go? He walked out and looked towards the door, smiling. And maybe he already knew who did that guy, but he didn't know how he should deal with him if he used magic. This would only get him and Elisa into trouble. Is it because the other guy said you think you can get away with this? Why did you wait until I told mom? But he suddenly realized why this kid has some kind of pressure. Why does that academic look different from before? So what you say, you guys from a noble family? You seem to like to boast about your wealth and strength. The things you do are only humiliating your own family. He arrogantly replied, wow, ha, huh? putting trash like you in its rightful place is what we should do. My family really needs to see how. But the guy standing next to me saw Ace looking like he was about to eat him. So we should do it. What's going on? Should I intervene or not? What's wrong with that guy? Allow me the honor of teaching you a lesson. I'm unarmed and in a daze. What can you do to me when I have everything? Who is witnessing so much of you? Raise your hand and say something more cruel than physical injury. You think a nameless brat like you can get away with using magic on you. Come closer and pull down his pants. Everyone around was talking in horror. Look, why can't you see anything? You is so scared. Shut up. Don't look at this group. 
He coldly turned around and walked out of the restaurant. He said, I'll be right back. He still replied strongly. Oh, okay. Sure you step out now. The night sky is full of stars and the moonlight is extremely romantic. You go closer to the president. Sitting next to her, he smiled. Thank you for helping. She looked down and said, I know you don't need it. You looked up at the sky and said, no, you saved us from getting into trouble for the second time that day. Suddenly you fell silent. Because he didn't know what else to say, he came closer to me and asked to ignore me. But suddenly she also raised her face and apologized. Her head hit his chin hard, causing both of them to suffer. He laughed and jokingly replied, I'm afraid it's me. Just heard the sound of chin bone, but he suddenly realized something was wrong. He approached her again and discovered that she was crying. He asked her, but she said shut up. Because it hurt, he was surprised to ask. It hurt so much. Is that so? She brought her head closer to Ace's face, but looking at it, he smiled and pulled her head. Leaning on her shoulder, she said she thought he hated her, and Ace replied softly, even though there were times when I got mad. When I'm with you, I will never hate you. Old test, she replied, I don't like that either, hum. She raised her face and looked at me with sparkling eyes. I don't want you to get mad at me. I admit my mistake. I know this time I'm wrong. I know you're looking for me. I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. No one was wrong. I shouldn't have said that to you in front of everyone. I guess I'm still trying to get used to this thing called the association's president. This student, the four-eyed friend with the contracted animal, walked out happily and said D. Van Poo just got out of the ropes and pulled up his pants. Ha ha, you had to see his face. Before he finished his sentence, you saw someone cuddling with each other. God, oh, am I interrupting them? He hid behind the wall and waved his hand, wondering what this idiot was thinking. The animal on his shoulder jumped down and called his mother then jumped into her arms and stood up, reached out and said, let's go for a walk. Then the two of them walked and talked. They couldn't believe things like that happened. When you were an adventurer, and I didn't expect Principal Goodski to be that close to Graham. No wonder she knows me so well. Hey, that's also part of the reason why I became her disciple. I thought maybe your skills were the reason. She looked at him slightly and saw that he had changed. A lot since the last time I saw him. The way he moves feels intentional and his face, damn, I'm so jealous of that Jasmine girl. I wish I could have gone on an adventure with you two years ago, looked at her and asked if something was wrong. She was startled and embarrassed. It's nothing. Ha ha, after walking for a while, it seemed like they had returned to the dormitory. Ah, I forgot. You took the blue monster core that I, she was surprised that I had heard Master Good Sky talk about it, but he said this was a small gift. Congratulations on becoming a two element mage. You gave it to her. I can't. When he received it, he smiled and said, I couldn't think of a better gift for you. Tomorrow is the big day for the two of us. Go to sleep. See you another time. Then you and the animal waved goodbye to her. She smiled, smiled, hugged the beast's core into his body and waved his hand. Even now, he gave me something so valuable so easily. When I returned to my room, I opened the door and saw my friend suddenly wrapped in a blanket. Suddenly he showed his face and said in a very creepy voice and face, welcoming him back. He was startled and startled. The wessel was still intact. Sit down, sir. Please explain what I just saw. Just now. Okay. And so the two of them went to bed and confided in the boy who asked. Even though the two friends were Than My Chuck Mama, I still couldn't believe that the moon goddess would rest her head on his shoulder. Did you just think of that? No, that's the name the whole academy uses to call our student council president. But why is she the moon goddess? He sat up and explained. Because she's like the bright moon. So you're stupid. The moon was almost as if you could touch it. But no matter how hard you tried, you couldn't reach it. He angrily pointed at you, and you just touched the moon. There, he hugged the moon tightly and threw a pillow right in his face. Go to sleep. The next morning, he woke up and got dressed. But he still slept and said in his sleep, Oh moon, why are you so far away? With his beast he walked to a room, and then he was super, and he attracted the eyes of everyone around him. This was the place to see who was the strongest. In which Sir U.S. Academy was he? As soon as he entered, a lion appeared. The big guy rushed forward and roared in his face. He walked towards the man while wiping his sweat. Is this a pre-prepared plan to see how thick I am? He replied vaguely. That's also true. Okay, it seems like Principal Good Sky has chosen someone quite interesting. Maybe it's because you're worthy or because you're the son of his father's grandchild. Speaking directly to a bloody ace, he doesn't know how to lie, right? He smiled and said it's okay. It's just an old saying. Anyway, my name is Kai Kroll. Just call me Kai. I also introduced my name. Shake hands. I'm glad to meet you. He pointed towards us and said, and this is my contracted beast. He forced a smile. I saw it. He thought to himself, what kind of beast could make a greater become so submissive? Another person appeared again. 
another handsome boy. Why isn't there a real man in the council? I'm surprised to remember. Isn't this the hell G that my friend told me about? Why did he come over? Who the hell is Gat? Name is Dorad Orat Nem Hat. It's okay nice to meet you Dorad. My name is A.R. Lin. I'm also a first year like you let's shake hands with you. But she pushed me away don't be so sentimental brother urging the two of them. Hurry up. The rest of the members are waiting for us in the other room. Principal Goodski didn't even tell us your name. That made us quite curious. We were almost there when the girl pulled our hand. Rushing into the last person, it's here everyone. I knew it right away. It's true that you're Ace Kiss. I'm not too surprised, the two of them looked towards the contract animal, and said it seems like the opposite happened, ah, uh, this is what's your contract. Wait, is that the world lion you bought at the auction when we first met? It's the one we signed as an equal before it got a rank. Congratulations, I'm very happy. See you again. Me too and welcome to the disciplinary committee. Everyone was confused and asked, do you two know each other? The answer was not just me. That answer made me wonder a beautiful girl walking from above. Down the stairs I'm so happy to see you again Ace. I also see Princess Clem. Are you forgetting someone long time no see Ace? I'm sorry. I know you be grumpily said I fi I. Fi vi a three a is first, even though I'm a first year like you, I'm a few years older than you. So please treat me with respect. You must be so nostalgic. Everything seems like it was yesterday. The day I punched you unconscious. You did it on purpose. Again. It seems like we're strangers, right? I'm Clayble, a sixth-year student, and also the leader of this chaotic group. Vlad H., are you related to Caspian Bath? So she asked, oh, do you know my uncle? It's just that I've heard wonderful stories about the power of Caspian breath, head from my father. Um, my uncle started training me right when I first awakened, so many of my skills are quite similar to his. But I'm glad you recognize his name. The boy with the girl looked at him in confusion and said it seemed like the disciplinary committee was too weak to let troublesome people join in. I raised my hand to shake Ace's hand when I shook Ace's hand and suddenly realized it was gravity magic he was testing me. If it weren't for my body assimilating with S's beastly will, I wouldn't be able to stand like this. Then he shook hands and felt that Ace was not bad. That made everyone surprised. One of them clapped. It seemed that Ace didn't just have a handsome face. Phi fell on his face when he did that to there he is, I'm a magician. And he's a reinforcement magician. Don't compare me to a brute like him. The girl captain put her arm around her shoulders. Let's both say it and stop being so noisy. This will be the first time the members of the disciplinary committee will show their faces in front of all the students. Wait a minute, I don't know about this, so I haven't prepared anything. There's no need to prepare anything. The student council will be the one to announce we just need to come out and act cool laughing. I guess there will be a giant A-rank monster that will be useful. Captain, clap your hands like that. Let's show it to all the students out there. They know what they have to face if they break any rules. Now all the rules have been announced. The student council would like to respectfully introduce to everyone an organization chosen by the principal to solve the problem and prevent disputes between students as well as impose penalties on violators because to maintain the peace and safety of students, please join me in welcoming them to the disciplinary committee when introducing after introducing the disciplinary committee to all the students one fine day. They started class with the lessons. When they entered the classroom, they started talking about it. It wasn't one of the members of the disciplinary committee that day. He was there at the ceremony yesterday. I remember his name was Ace. I'm jealous because he also applied for that position. Is he a first-year academic kid who is a member of the disciplinary committee? He must be the son of a grandchild. Dad, but I've also heard that the disciplinary committee has to be really strong. The four-eyed friend patted Ace's shoulder to see if someone was famous. Mr. Disciplinary Committee Member. Ace certainly said that I had never thought about becoming a member. Member of the disciplinary committee will be famous like this. The fact that he is one of only eight students wearing this black uniform in the academy is already famous. Everyone was talking loudly when the lecturer walked in. Ace looked at him and realized he was a magician. He controlled the core just enough so that he couldn't feel the core's level. He closed the book loudly, breaking the noisy atmosphere at that time. Everyone is quiet now that everyone is paying attention. Allow me to welcome you to the basic class on the theory of mana. I am Professor Avios. I know that you have more interesting topics to discuss with each other, but I want you to pay attention during class. Although this is a basic class, but it is a mandatory course, so that you can grasp the content that we will learn this semester, and to emphasize that we will give you fun projects and exercises throughout the course with the new changes from the beginning of this year. I thought it would be a good idea to discuss what has really fueled the stigma of magic mages being better than enhancement mages. In the old days when reaching the orange core level was considered extremely difficult, Magic-type magicians had a huge advantage over enhancement types in terms of physics. Magic-type magicians had many man circuits. 
more developed Na is responsible for absorbing Manno from the external environment and transporting it to the inner Manno core, while the enhancement system has many Manna channels to further develop those Manna channels in charge of distributing Manna, distributing mana from the mage's core to the rest of the body. Because magic mages can absorb mana from the surrounding environment more effectively than show, they can easily reach high levels. But as both systems level up their cores, this difference gradually becomes blurred. While the professor is lecturing, two students are not listening but are discussing a certain issue. The professor is still enthusiastically explaining the magic system has the ability to distribute mana inside the body more easily while the enhancement system will better control the application of mana from afar. The professor then used a force to push towards the other two students, startling them, and then surprised everyone. Then answer me, if at the end of the day two magicians, one in the magic system and one in the enhancement system, both reach the silver core level, who will have the advantage over the one who not only cultivates the core, but also cultivates the body, whether it would be more beneficial or not. The rest of the class continued with debates between the magic students over Professor Avius's recent argument, and although the debate could only be based on theories and records of clashes between high-ranking magicians only made the students open-minded. The buzzer signaling the end of class rang out. Everyone dismissed class, and friends greeted each other. My friend said my next class is this way so let's meet at lunch, he replied. Remember to reserve a seat for me. If you come first, go to the place where the next class will take place. You can feel it. It seems like this class will be interesting. It's better. You stretch your arms. It's been a long time since I had to sit this much. Princess, come over and ask me if I can sit here. You see there are still many empty seats, so why does it have to be here? But you still happily agree. Okay, sit down, the princess replied. Thank you. She looked at the evil contract and complimented it. It's cute. Look who's here. It turns out it's the linked princess and my rival. I wonder. They've become rivals since then. When was that, and why are you sitting next to me? I know our class will be very popular, but look at this, there are so many students, it's not the kid who humiliated me. The two of them recognize each other. So he studies here really well, so I have dozens of opportunities to humiliate him as you know this class is called applying mana, which means we do very practical things, and that makes sense. Is through example, because the most valuable knowledge is experience, right, and I am very honored. When I get to teach members of the disciplinary committee, I wonder what this drunkard is planning to do, but I'm sure it's not only it's just me. Everyone is curious about the members' abilities, right? After all, they are the ones responsible for protecting all the students of this academy, so Etna I is no fool. Don't fall into such a simple trap, but you made a big mistake when the person next to you raised his hand. I volunteered. My name is First. I have the honor to represent the disciplinary committee of the members who were personally chosen by the principal of Good Sky. Proving our strength, he triumphantly thought it would be easy to say that. First, don't come down here. He politely bowed his head. I'm very honored to be taught by you, and because I don't feel it, I think your mana core level is probably much higher than mine. Even though I'm a fire-type mage, I'll still use long-range attacks in this battle. This way, if I lose, at least I'll be able to there's a reason, isn't it? The students above all laughed when they heard that. He said Wolf's must have been activated. Let's begin. It's a pleasure. Then he recited his own spell. Observe this, is a high-level spell that adjusts the surrounding terrain to benefit the user. I didn't think that first would use a terrain spell like that. I guess that drunk guy doesn't just know how to talk because he was able to create a green flame. He came up with a series of moves to defeat him, but he saw that he was still very young. It seemed like he thought he had beaten him briefly. I'm happy to say surrender. I surrender. He's increasing his own value by humiliating first. As a consolation, you did a great job first. Let's see this as a lesson for all the players. I thought that with your elemental advantage, you would be able to protect yourself against my spell. Clearly, I was wrong. Is there anyone else from the princess committee? Stand up and say I volunteer to do it. They were extremely surprised. I didn't think that girl would also volunteer. Fish Lin is proficient in ice magic. She just witnessed his fire element and Clin. I thought not to. First, I rushed to say it, but it was too late. She reached the place where he bowed his head and said, Princess, I'm very honored, no matter what the result of this match is. Don't worry about it. This girl doesn't react that much. But okay, let's start. After a few warm-up moves, she said to fire. He was impressed. As expected. Our princess remembers that. Is that Lucas's mantra when taking the test? He sees that she's smart. I broke my ice spear into smaller pieces to make better arrows, but it had no effect on me. He fought back fiercely. Surprisingly, she was defenseless. Seeing the danger, everyone was very worried. When he saw that, he rushed down to save her from danger. Gu wondered where she was. He looked around and saw that he had saved her somewhere else. She was so scared that she was sweating. 
he turned around and said, What do you think? This little game should have ended right. My teacher is very grateful to you for saving the princess. But that is completely unnecessary, I can control it. Everyone started talking of course, a professor at this prestigious academy. Would you put one of your students in danger? Yes, maybe he overdid it. He blatantly said that I was preparing to destroy magic. Just now, I thought it was nonsense, because of magic. It's completely formed and can't be destroyed. But Clint didn't hurt me. There's no proof. I have to force him to reveal his true nature. If that's the case, please allow me to replace my colleague in this battle. Goo, if you no matter what he wanted, the princess couldn't continue fighting. He told the princess, don't misunderstand me. Princess, I didn't mean to hurt you. She asked if you were okay. She replied that the help wasn't necessary. But thank you, because you sacrificed yourself to save me. Now, professor, please give me the honor of learning from each of you. He sees that you have a nice looking weapon. Since you are an enhancer, I think it's best to let you choose how to fight. My fight will be more fair, right? Whatever, you arrogant brat, I want you to choose. Use whatever you feel confident about. If you like, I'll be gentle with you. Then we both rush into intercourse. The boss spoke softly, but he realized that he didn't use any spells, only strengthening mana into each body and sword. How dare he look down on me? I believe the members of the disciplinary committee are not rats. Cowards only know how to hide and run away, right? You still need to attack when our respected professor can't even land a single blow on a first-year student. Ah, he's constantly bitter. Attack. The first ace, sitting on top angrily thinking, should he call the student council? This isn't a model anymore. After a while of fighting, he felt the ace had just sped up. How the ace said even shy mice become scary if they are caught after being pushed into a corner. Professor finished speaking. They continued to fight each other first above. Observe that ace is fighting back the professor. He is on a completely different level. A sees that the battle should end at this point. He angrily said you think this is enough to defeat me. Why not? But this is possible. That's it. The professor has been defeated. Mai said thank you teacher for showing him how to defeat the evil professor. The people above all applauded when they saw the princess go out. They followed and wanted to call her back, but first called you back and said I admit that you were quite impressive just now, as expected from my opponent. Thank you too. But if you knew what spell the professor was about to use, I'm sure you would know so you should prepare preventive measures haha, <laughs> of course, I didn't expect that he would use such a powerful spell, to serve as a model, if not, I'll definitely win and the princess will come back and ask you too, what about me, he'd scratched his head and said, well, maybe I'm not very bright but I'll say the biggest mistake you can make is ignoring your basic defense, after saying the last spell, all three were silent until she turned away again and both breathed a sigh of relief, um, I should go too, see you later, the opponent was walking, and saw his father drooping. Asked Papa. Why does he look so sad? He gently patted his head and said it's nothing important. It's just that I can't deal with the wind element. I've realized that I need to practice harder to achieve it. The evil target was looking for the next class. Suddenly he became surprised, and his eyes widened, as he looked at the basic class of artifact artificer, transporting and manipulating mana into items used for specific needs of his old world. There is no such thing. Please excuse me, is there anyone sitting? If so, I'll sit somewhere else. I'll be fine. The friendly person replied that there's no one. You can sit wherever you feel comfortable. Thank you. My name is Emily. Nice to meet you. He stuttered and said, My name is Emily Ken. Please be my friend, I mean. It's nice to meet you finished talking. She thought, Dan, he must think I'm weird. You put your hand out. My name is Ace. Because this is the first time we meet, so let's start with the people we know first. She excitedly shook his hand. This handshake made him feel like she must have practiced a lot. She timidly said, Oh, sorry. You must feel really disgusted. It's not good, but I have it too. He showed the scratches left by practice to help the girl not feel self-conscious. Oh wow, you must have practiced a lot. No wonder you got into the disciplinary committee. I really admire that, and me, I just like crafting, so I just keep playing with the tools. Unfortunately, it makes my hands quite rough, so I'm quite jealous of her passion for creating. But in combat, the only thing she's good at is killing and destroying. Embedded with manufacturing, the more talented you are, the more things you can create. I'd never thought about it this way. But it's surprising that a 12-year-old can think like that, ha, huh? ha, huh? you say it like that you're not 12 years old, Ace, said that yes, even though it's been a while since I created the Ace Surprise projection screen, God how old was she when she created that thing, Goo, I have to say I'm honored to to meet a genius like you, oh come on, did I hear this from a first-year student, even though there is a strange man, not monster, that has the ability to completely overwhelm not only the professor, but he's also an experienced former adventurer with a pale yellow core. Don't do that to make me laugh. Don't be surprised if you continue. This is a magic academy and news travels very quickly. 
Rumors still exist. Quickly, there was a sound of opening the door and saying hello. The civilians don't have to be too happy to have the honor of having me. Professor Gid is the lecturer in this subject. He'd surprise. Is he ace? I didn't expect it was you. Also attended my class. He thought he was an eel. So he enthusiastically said about 20 years ago, I was the one who invented it. Three years later, I discovered and invented it. Did I ever say that I did responsible for Ace's helplessness? Did he come here to show off? Suddenly, a huge bird flew out of the window and landed on Ace's shoulder. He said it seemed like Principal Good Scott was looking for you. Does that mean you're not? You can witness the rest of the interpretation that will change everyone's lives and then go away. The girl said she saw that the news had spread very quickly, but then she went to meet the principled sky. He asked the two animals on his shoulder, How long are you planning on fighting? You saw the princess and waved, Oh, hello, calf, but she ignored you. You realized that this didn't look like a good thing. You hit behind the door, sir. Call your nephew, the principal Gus Guy. He felt I'm a little scared that I'll die before I look at her. I'm really upset. Please sit down. Take the initiative to say this first. If it's because of the fight between you and the professor. I only did it because I saw him using Ta, not calling you because of the conflict between you. What happened to you? And a professor made you wonder. Both of you were silent for a while, and he asked what? Do you want to become a temporary professor of the mana transfer practice class? I'm talking to you, kid. What did Kling say to you that made you decide like this? So now you're calling her by her name. If you steal the hearts of two princesses, you'll be in big trouble. Sir, I don't want to start a world war. Sir, I said don't joke about these things. But you're kidding me, right? I'm still just a student who hasn't finished my first day of school yet. But a student has, is it okay, to be both a professor and a student? Come on, there's no need to make everything so complicated. It's actually quite simple. Is it allowed? Of course it's okay as long as we say so. There are often cases. The upperclassmen highly appreciate your responsibility to teach the basic classes. You're not that special. What about Kies? We just kicked Professor out of the academy. Don't be so surprised. I investigated everything when I heard it. Saw, and with the help of Princess Klin, he couldn't defend himself anymore. I'd never seen her so serious. But anyway, I don't understand why you did that, Principal. Because I have a counter position I want you to fill. This time, I won't hide anything. You don't have to be suspicious. But I think this will be better for building reputation than challenging each other one after another. It's my professor. You'll stand out quite a bit. But I'll protect you. If necessary, parents can complain. They can. But who said I'm the principal? But that's better than canceling class. But that's it. But that's not it. You're making better use of your time than sitting in a class you know so well, thinking that after today, you won't be able to live in hiding anymore. I'll try. I'm sure you will. Do well look at Ace's back that kid always keeps to be busy, but negotiating with him is more complicated than with the royal family. What do you think about this boy Avi? He is very different don't look at Ace as a kid, regardless of whether it's the sharpness of his soul or the maturity of his emotions. He's not what he seems. Why are you so sure that because of his wish, the fox's true form is a dragon? Aren't you surprised? But I suspect that when he grows up, my strength will not be able to compare with him. Don't turn him into an enemy. Please, if you respect and trust him, he will become your strongest ally. But if you betray him, believing that he could be the entire branch that collapsed this continent, you went to the cafeteria, and as I said, your friend reserved the place for you. This is my best friend and also my roommate. Ace, this is the color. Please hi, it's a pleasure to ask. Did I have fun learning? Of course I really enjoyed the basic spell sequence, and using manna. However, some things about using manna felt like repetition because of what you said. Taught me, she was in the same spell chain class as me, she's really good at come on you're embarrassing me. What about I heard the story about you killing the professor, ah about that I ended up becoming a teacher, the professor of that class is sorry. You're about to become a professor. Um, I'll replace the professor in teaching that class. Don't squirt water in the professor's face. That fart professor, but should I skip a few classes to go to class K? I want to see it with my own eyes. And by the way, me and her go shopping in town. Are you coming? Yes, you should come with us first. I'm sorry, but I have three more classes left. I can't skip my advanced class. Okay then, it's probably just the two of us. Ah, I forgot I had plans, but we should go some other time, all three of us. Well, see you later. Goodbye. She picked up her tray and stood up. My friend said he must be very busy. Maybe I'm huddled in the library studying again, but she's nice and beautiful. Do you think I have a door? Oh, Lisa, I think you can be a better friend, my friend. After the meal, you continue to come to the lecture hall. Everyone around you is looking and talking about you. I didn't expect to see you in the advanced class. We over here are very happy to see you again. Don't embarrass the committee. I'll try my best. The whole class is here. There's probably a few more people. 
They're here. Test was happy to see Ace. The boy next to him said good afternoon, princess. Test. But for some reason, she suddenly became frowning. In response to what he said, Leah was very happy. She quickly left. He said her mood today looked bad. We should go. She suddenly stood still because she saw Lucas's figure passing by. She immediately returned to the what happened. Before he was a really arrogant guy suddenly all eyes focused on an eagle in the sky. And then the professor appeared hello everyone I am Professor Glory will instruct the class to fight mechanical medicine. And this firehawk is my contracted beast. Ace's hair was revealed and a mysterious blue look appeared to see how strong he was. She turned her back and looked towards Ace. She hides her level and element from dozens of students. Why is she? Come closer. Isn't this my new colleague? Nice to meet you among the students in the orientation class. Their eyes looked at them, and then talked about their new colleague. What does that mean? I heard a rumor that a student has just become a professor. Huh, it can't be him. A student raised his hand, and asked Professor Glory. Is that true? She laughed and answered that yes, she was not only the most male disciplinary committee, but also the new professor assigned to the practice class, and the application of mana that the students had studied while still in the lower class, even though it was only a teaching position. Temporary professor, but I must say I'm quite impressed the students are surprised. Why can't people be serious? Professor Glory, how is it possible that even the best upper class students are not taught and the youngest this is okay? Ah, it's not fair. There must be some mistake. The head of the disciplinary committee said shut up and stop being so jealous and sighed. She deliberately made herself a target professor, clapped his hands, and said, everyone. We should have more faith in the decision of the ace principal who has proven himself to some extent by defeating the professor who teaches that class when he first defeated a professor from a lower class. It doesn't make any sense. Most of us can do it, especially when the teacher is just a delinquent adventurer. Their criticism makes her feel oh, thanks to someone who said that, why don't you give it a try? The new professor of the man day practice and application class, they were whispering, I'm going to kill this bastard. Who does this brat think he is? Kill, 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 why is he taking up all the attention? He turned his hand to the bustling group and then turned around to look at the teacher. Can you believe it? The student council vice president looked at him and muttered, Why is that face? The teacher leaned closer and said to the teacher, Thank you for your suggestion, but Principal Goodski told me to be gentle with the upper classes until I get used to this academy. This is just a first-year guy in an upper class. He shouldn't be given special treatment, so if you just need to prove your level, that's fair. But that's right, the group of students behind chanted in unison, That's right. I felt like it was fair. So she continued. Why do you think my professor wants to start the semester with something that's normal but fun? Is war conquering? Is the game of ace powerless? How fun is war and conquest? A member of the disciplinary committee raised his hand, professor. I have a suggestion. Let's make a battle pitting three members of the committee against each other. This is also an opportunity for us to learn how to compete as a team and sing M not bad. The student council vice president also raised his hand. Professor Princess test, and I can be their opponent. On the other team, the princess stood next to her, gaping in bewilderment. But suddenly the professor said, oh, things are getting interesting. The disciplinary committee is facing off against the student council. But if it was just the two of them, it would be pretty cool. That's unfair. Lucas stood leaning against a corner and raised his hand to ask me to volunteer and join the team of students you're interested in. Sir Buck Kiss, why is there another genius first year student? I guess this is also a good opportunity to explore his abilities. That's yours. Good. Good. All six of you are ready to go. Lucas stood close together and said with angry eyes. So you are a commoner who took my position on the disciplinary committee right away. In response, it was never yours. So the six of them prepared their protective gear, ready for the upcoming fight with their teammates. The other students sat and waited with interest to watch the fight. The princess was struggling to put on protective gear. The princess took the initiative to help him. The princess tested whether she should help me like this or not. She pinched his hand and said stop talking loudly, Professor Wynn. Don't act serious. Like that princess, they couldn't hear her say, I hate to act like I don't know you. She said don't do that. She surprised and said that you don't care. Teacher please Thea told you I want to live in hiding. I was shocked, so I thought Ace sheepishly scratched his face and said oh, I didn't do it well right, but as long as there are a few things that remain a secret, then I'm fine for example. The true form of the super level mana cores of me. And you, have you noticed anything? She said, I don't know. I don't recognize the water ace. And quickly covered her mouth with my hand. I'm hiding most of the elements, so I hope you do the same. But there's no need to avoid me. Test radiation. She blushed so shyly that she was too close. The professor saw the two of them. And said loudly that the two of them were hanging out with their opponents. We'll start in two minutes. The princess quickly pushed Adora away. Call for a test. 
please try. I also want to know how much stronger you have become. She happily said so be careful before fighting. The professor told me before fighting that we have a few rules, that the match lasts a maximum of 30 minutes. After that, we will have a discussion and analysis of what happened. The disciplinary committee team was at a disadvantage because Tiss and Cull had gone through countless basic training sessions compared to the two first-year student council members. Which was Asia will play the role of king. If he falls, the whole team will lose the yen. He is wearing a specially constructed sentence by the artificers to measure the amount of damage the body receives if it has exceeded the threshold that has been coded, it will emit an ear-splitting noise. Anyone who ignores that warning and continues to fight will be banned from my class immediately and may be expelled for further investigation. Obviously, this equipment is not for your protection. You should prepare and protect yourself with mana. You might get injured while wearing it. Don't forget that now. The match starts Kiss sitting on the back of the contracted beast, then walk towards the princess, testing the ace, feeling that maybe he couldn't defeat the princess, but he could probably lure her for just enough time. Lucas said arrogantly, holding the weapon in his hand and walking back, Ace's side thought that when he came to X Yus Academy, he would be less arrogant, but he still had no symptoms. He arrogantly asked what took you so long, afraid that after today, his reputation would be ruined. The monk stood on the back of the beast as he watched the match take place. He closed his eyes and smiled and thought, you guys want to see the fun, right? So you rushed towards Lucas. Did he come out? Wake up and say appear and bang. Come on fire, obey me. Surround everyone standing in front of me. Hellfire Ace rushes in and takes turns dodging those moves. A huge fireball appears. He exclaims loudly, falls down, uses a few. He used his sword to break that ritual and then jumped out. He smiled and excitedly said yes, then dance for me. Seeing his father seem to be in danger, he worriedly asked him, Is it okay? I'm okay. Everyone is fighting. How is it that he cheers up when talking about his mother? Your dominating kiss, Clay. He's on top. That frowning face guy understands that if anything unusual happens, please let me know after a few months. Through his consciousness, he realized that this brat's demon tank was even bigger than when he was an adventurer. Damn, he doesn't have fire or water power. I can't do anything with this heat and lake. My ma can't keep up with this intensity forever. He said triumphantly that I'm lucky I'm not in the disciplinary committee, instead of being in the same group as a weak person like you. I'll probably have to drop out of school too. I'm so helpless. Which wine type spell can be used to be large enough to deal with any of its attacks? Brainstorm, brainstorm, ace. Let's focus on that fire. Remember, the basic way of using the technique is to zoom in and manipulate it to achieve the desired effect. But what if I can manipulate the air particles themselves? Then I can remove the thing that maintains the oxygen flame, and then you try to counterattack Lucas 2 Dak. I'm asking you to defeat that pathetic professor like that. You keep running like that. Why don't you continue to think that the more important thing to deal with is whether you can still breathe when you use that method? Why do you think so much? I go to school. It's for this reason that Professor observed that Lucas seemed to be better than I thought Hellfire is one of the area elemental spells that is quite difficult. Yet he used it fluently and when he was young, moreover, his amount of man now was more than that of the Silver Core magician. She narrowly said that times have really changed. Dion, soon old people like us will be replaced, especially when we see so many children. A kit like him is quite lacking in spells for a dual element mage, but in return, his movements are very rhythmic and tightly controlled. I'm just a little curious about the kid who has the ability to defeat a veteran. An adventurer is just an adventurer. But what kind of pressure did he live under to have that kind of energy at such a young age? Looking at his series of movements, she wondered what he was doing. What are you doing? Holding your breath. Really? If he did that, that uniform would be completely torn. She looked at him and told Deem to lower it. Then she muttered to herself, this little monster, Ace. Continue to remember that the book says it's different from the Phoenix. Air transport magic requires the operator to be alert and have a high level of concentration in reciting the spell to be able to cast it accurately, which is why there are no magicians with the ability to directly removing air from an opponent's lungs would take hours of concentration and transporting the air directly within a living, moving subject. So magicians often use their own bodies as an energy source or a source of energy. Certain fixed location on the professor's body realized he was keeping the effective area as close to his body as possible, but even so to be able to do that in the middle of an ace match continued walking and thinking of moving a thin layer of air around my body to create a vacuum and disperse the fire before it reached me. I thought it would be easier than doing that in this situation my uniform would tear. I was crushed before I could think of a way. But I was able to go through that barrier. It seemed like Lucas was a bit scared at this point. He wondered how he could block a spell like that. Did he see what kind of wind magic he used? But it doesn't matter. I will end everything. Then he shouted loudly. 
Wake up, my guardian. A smiled and said that. It was time for him to reach his limit. He felt that something was wrong. What is this sudden amount of man now? Papa, my, is in danger. Why did you hear that? You were distracted and looked up to see the professor doing something damn concentrated. You have to escape quickly. Let's get out of here and have to go to the test site quickly. I used up most of my mana to learn that stupid spell suction wall. Is that the amount of mana I felt just now? I feel like Tis is releasing his will. Beast, he worriedly looked towards Test and saw that there was no protective barrier around him. He leaned against the tree in pain. It didn't matter. He didn't have enough mana left to block it, and so he used his body to hug Test. In her arms to protect her, so she wouldn't be in danger. She looked towards Ace. She didn't know if he was okay. Even if he used the two weakest elements, it would be difficult to win. Kiss rushed toward the princess and said, When fighting, you shouldn't look away. Then the two of you continued the match. Forgive me, Prince Eldan. He jumped towards his contracted beast. But what are you surprised about? Like this, he took advantage of the opportunity and his contracted beast rushed up. He said loudly as if he were practicing. She felt from the huge amount of mana. They were collecting that it seemed like they were preparing for a battle. The big incantation, she recited her spells. But he kept dodging her. She suspected maybe there was something wrong with her core. I still haven't fully assimilated the Elder Giz core. Maybe Ashavak can't give up in my role as the student council president. I can't give in. I can't let people think I'm weak. I can't be a coward. I can only win and have fun. His contract tried to fight and made the student council president fainted. Professor saw that. Hurry up and go check to see if she was okay. Don't be afraid of unfortunate consequences. Kiss quickly explained Professor. I didn't mean it. I didn't know that she would faint. It's okay. I understand. Two people quickly ran over holding the medical box. The professor wondered how he got here. The professor said it out loud and told everyone to prepare. Bon immediately assessed the wound. She wondered what the hell just happened. Was taken to the medical room to bandage the wounds. He opened his eyes and saw Sai sitting on him, scowling and saying, Dad, you're so stupid. He laughed and said, What? Dad, he's so strong. Why did he almost die? What if? Without Dad, I don't know what to do. He said, S. I'm sorry. You're right. I took a bit of a risk. He patted his head and said, Don't worry. I won't leave you. I promise. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Knock, knock, come in. It turned out that it was the principal, Good Sky. She thought no one would answer. But it seemed like you were awake. How did you feel? You answered a bit nervously, because you've been seeing the principal a lot lately. Now you're still answering. Saucy then. There should be no problem then you worriedly asked about the status of the test. Well the good news is that the test is much better than you. But it's a beast's will isn't it body, she can't control it she wonders how you know you answer it, because you were the one who gave it to her, and you should be the one to help her assimilate it, but now it's too difficult. And she replied no you did that, which was more than enough, then it's my fault for keeping the secret of test beastly will is that she is in the most sensitive stage of assimilation. If we had told Professor Glory, this would not have happened. So thank you for sacrificing yourself to save my disciple. He replied, come on, you're acting like I'm about to die. She stood up and left. Then said, I've contacted Hoangia, and your family will be here soon. So go rest. Okay. Thank you, principal. She walked in, went out and closed the door, and said, I probably don't want to come in. Why test? Because I don't dare to face her? She replied, no, no, see no more than that. He needs to rest. Then the principal pulled her by the shoulders and hugged her saying that let's go have a drink, the delicious white dishes that I just ordered to arouse your courage. As she walked, she turned her head to look at the room where she was resting after waking up on a clear and beautiful morning. She opened her eyes. Then I saw my family appear. My father said the baby had woken up. Their faces were filled with worries. My mother lovingly asked me how I felt. I was feeling much better. I'm sorry for making everyone have to worry. Miss M got angry and said you look very handsome. Hi. You laughed and joked. It sounded very touching. Bad-mouthed sister. Dad said that's all she said. When she heard the news, she cried loudly. More than your mother. She angrily stood up, used both hands to punch his father repeatedly. Father had promised not to say anything, but he smiled happily and looked at his sister, because he felt that she was very embarrassed when he found out he was worried. Mom worried so much about him sadly rubbing his head. He asked why he was so seriously injured on his first day of school. But what else did he say? Not yet. Our son has already started fighting in school, son. They replied that they had to see what the other guy looked like. Father and son burst out laughing. But his mother's face turned pale. What did her son do? Who did he kill? Maybe there won't be any left until it's time for me to go. If I leave the house to live with a dead dwarf, I might be able to help you. Yes, Principal Sky said the boy was joking. Ms. Lawn. The whole family looked at the door. Suddenly they were surprised that it wasn't their family. 
The king's family immediately ran to bow and pray. It is an honor to meet you, your majesty. The king touched a few aces and said, Finally, I can meet the family of the child who saved my daughter two years ago. Once the queen walked towards his mother, held her hand, and gave her the bouquet of flowers, then said yes, finally meeting the king. Introducing this is my father. Eleno's former king father Ace respectfully shook hands. It was a pleasure to meet you. It was a pleasure to meet you. Wormwood, and this is my daughter Tessia. Your gentle hello. My name is Tessia Errol. I'm your friend. It's like I'm a little shy. Pleased to meet you. My parents looked at each other and looked at the princess. Then they both turned their heads towards Ace. They looked at each other and smiled at each other. Ace wondered what they were thinking. His mother happily held the princess's hands. We were also very happy to finally meet her. Yes, Ace told me a lot about you. I'm happy to hear that. I can't believe what I heard. Is it true? Of course he's really nice to have a friend like you. Mom stopped by at work. Lord, both now and in the future. This time the princess was really shy to the point that she had to cover her face with her hands while everyone was talking. Then her father brought the king to the bed and asked her how she was feeling. He replied a bit nervously about what they were plotting over there. Please calm down. Worst of all, Van, my nephew-in-law, heard that. The princess immediately grabbed my grandfather's daughter-in-law and apologized for this. I told them, don't come, but they don't listen to me. In fact, it's all my fault that you're like this. Ha ha, it's okay to test like this. It's fun. My younger sister is standing next to me. With her arms crossed, she's the one my brothers I almost died before I was able to save you. You're L, right my sister? You look prettier than I thought. She turned to the other side and said thank you. I was born no less than L. She's the one who gave me the bow. On my birthday. When Nat heard that, she was surprised and a little embarrassed. Really, she stammered and said thank you. The princess happily said, don't be polite. I'm very happy because you like it. Suddenly, she asked me who was more beautiful, you or me. He replied calmly, both are equally bad. Your answer made both of them. Think that it's lucky that you're injured. Grandpa, have you looked at the core of the test? No, how's it going? Luckily, it's compatible. With the core of a beast, more than once that you assimilated, but how did you get the core of Elder G? So he calmly replied that he would just kill one. Hearing that, he frowned to him. Principal Goodski said even though he hated to destroy it. This atmosphere broke, but the test assimilation process had to be monitored again. Besides, when she opened the door, a few visitors were pinned outside the room because it was too crowded. They fell out because of the door opening. The principal's surprise made everyone in the room laugh. After his family took the test together and her family left, he had more people visit that day. A few people came to know what had happened. On that day, there were also others who came to visit because they were genuinely worried about his health, such as members of the princess's disciplinary committee. Even the best inventor on the continent also came to visit him before leaving, said that after you recover, you should stop by your personal training room. How do you know about that? The principal called me here to build you some equipment. You really did it for free. Do you think, what kind of person am I? Now you owe me. He, I knew it was going to happen, so at least close the door. Then you close your eyes and heard the door open and said, old man, what else do you want to say? But when you look at it, you see that it's a princess test. You lift yourself up and ask if the assimilation session is over. I'm still in the process of recovery, so Master Good Sky wants me to rest a little earlier. I feel like it's the best choice. How do you feel? Is it as painful as before, or is there any pressure? She covered her mouth and giggled. He wondered what was so funny. She said he almost died. Even though I'm dead, I'm still worried about me. She smiled and replied. So you said the same thing as when you saved me from the robbers. It's been a long time since I said that, seeing the grimace on her face, and the vague answer just now, she was worried. Come closer and ask if you're okay. Oh, it's just a little hard to move. It's okay. Test, don't worry anymore. She looked down in boredom. I know, but let me apologize. Smile. I said don't apologize anymore. It's over. No, it's not because of that. It's because of taking advantage of him, like this. Then she leaned down and kissed him. Then she quickly ran out. She blushed all over. Oh my God, I just kissed him. That was my first kiss. Am I doing this right? I wonder if my face looks weird. She looked at the glasses, but pursed her lips. She helplessly leaned her head against the glass window. It seemed like I was flirting. It's a bit too much, and he will I think I'm being rude and goofing off. Should I turn around and say it's just a joke? She reassured herself to calm down. No, I can't think like that. Test you're doing it right, but just wait for it. Ace, when will our relationship progress? If you don't do anything, he'll just treat you like a child. This is for the best. Besides, if he doesn't like you, then why not? It's really bad for you. Let me tell you, one by one, the advantages of being a magician. 
because you are both smart and famous. It's not that you're arrogant, you don't look bad, it's just that you're wrong. After thinking about it, she walked out and Ace was still in shock because of what had just happened. I just kissed Test. I just kissed Test Chia, a 13-year-old girl, and then I became a criminal. You were sweating bullets continuously. Shaking my head, no, no, I'm still living in the body of a 12-year-old boy. But in this world, a lot of people my age are getting married, and she's the one who took the initiative to kiss me. But he remembered and slapped himself hard, his stupid body and this young Hawkmon thing. Calm down, watch and lie down. Then put his hand on his forehead and think, what are you doing? The story leaves that aside on a clear morning. The next day, the students are happily chatting on the door of a classroom with a paper posted announcing that class will continue for two days and then it was a day when everyone sold out. Have you heard? The new teacher of this class is only a first-year student. I heard he beat the old teacher, so he took his place. There's no way he doesn't know. If I can defeat that first-year friend, should I become a teacher like him? Maybe I'll suddenly see the principal along with the inventor, Ace, and even a man go somewhere, and the principal asked. Tomorrow is my first lesson. Do I have enough time to prepare lesson plans? I said I was just discharged from the hospital yesterday, so most likely not. But I will handle it. Please ask about the progress. How's the test chemistry? Is there any problem? Principal, if you're worried about her like that, you can just come visit her. But you're embarrassed. Yes. The principal continued to say that the progress of core assimilation was going quite smoothly with the your help is little Viren, but he's about to go back to Eleanor. So are you going to replace him or not finish the sentence? The old inventor told the other man to go away now, and then turned around. Tell the two of them that's enough and let's start the show. I really didn't expect you to be so enthusiastic about this, crazy teacher. He's just complaining all the time. It's a waste of your precious time, because I want this kid to be shocked to the point of speechlessness, so I have to be excited and this matter will have to keep him speechless. I'll just ask you to make some practice items for him. Oh well, I can do it much more grandly than that. He pushed the door open to reveal a scene inside so beautiful that even everyone had to say wow. This room is so great. He shouted loudly and looked at the item I created. Looking at this room, the principal's cheek moved, and it seemed like this thing was emitting a bit of mana fluctuation. What is it? I'm glad you asked, principal. It's an item that can be changed. Magical signature and anti-mana shield to withstand spell effects and even the ability of this mid-level silver mage class is the latest and greatest version of the explosive induction and training machine. I created Ra, also known as Toby. He used his shirt to wipe that Toby and said I'm currently setting its basic technical stats at level 5 equivalent to a dark orange core mana monster. Put it in his hand and asked, do you mean that the dummy is as strong as a golden core mage? He replied that Toby's body is made of extremely strong M oligo or IT iron. So although its damage is only at one level, that's it. But its overall endurance is even higher. Before he finished speaking, he stepped forward and used a lot of force to punch Toby in the middle. With just one punch, Toby fell to the ground. He said it looked like they were we have to increase Toby's level. He's crazy. Nui's mouth was wide open. In another development, Lucas's brother went with his teammates to destroy something. His teammates asked him, have you ever seen a ghost skull like this? He replied that it was not normal. They don't have this large body and disgusting gray color, right? You two are sure that there are no elves or dwarfs walking. Going into this dungeon, we're sure, lands beyond. Experts say the error in the entrance leads down. This place has been filled up a long time ago. He held the blue rope firmly in his hand and said that then the situation became serious. Now, back to my side, I was practicing with Toby during the fight. It seemed like I and Toby were both injured but maybe Toby was injured more seriously than my friend who was watching, so I felt that Toby was really worth it. Injured, and the principal, and he bet on something, and it seemed like the principal won. He asked you again, are you sure you're injured? Or do you have some conspiracy theory with the principal? Good sky, so stop it. Didn't you see my clumsy steps just now? Oh, why are you sorry? I thought you were dancing to congratulate the pin king. He took out his notebook and pen, ready to ask, but this time he commented. Why don't you answer that Toby's joints seem to be quite weak points so we need to find a way to strengthen those positions even more. Even for a mage who can't cast spells, it's quite limited. If it can't release any magical elemental attacks, well let's just assume that Toby will fight an enhancer, not an incarnation of a demon, like you. Is there anything else um I'm not sure. But I think Toby's mana enhancement needs further reinforcement. You walked towards your friend and took the towel he had prepared in his hand. Thank you. The boss spoke making him and the principal both bewildered. He added to help them understand better. Tomi was now radiating a layer, protective barrier around the body, although it is the fastest and easiest way to protect oneself for a magician. 
it is quite weak if I attack in one place. Although this can be a bit complicated and in-depth, but it would be better if Toby could control a man nest shield made of separate small man nest shields bonded together, that way once the solid shield layer is built Toby can easily and quickly fill it. Leave the holes once they are destroyed, and won't have to waste any excess man nest from its core to create a whole new barrier, why is everyone looking at you like that principal asked what you mean? Is it interesting that you could create a man nest barrier like that? Although chanting the spell to create such a barrier will take more time, it will be more flexible than traditional barriers. The magicians often used him. He came closer and observed him wondering what he was doing. He asked him to see if he had any traces of gold or silver in it. He pointed in the opposite direction and said, Come on, professor, don't be late. That first lesson, he walked towards the lecture hall full of fatigue and realized that maybe he shouldn't fight two level seven Toby while his body hasn't fully recovered, right? The stick in his hand tripped over something causing him to almost fall. Luckily, he touched someone's shoulder. I'm sorry. He realized it was Princess Kathanen. She coldly pulled his hand. Help you go, what are you doing? You should rest more and go into the classroom. Everyone is talking loudly. I heard that our professor will come to class today. I know, but it's hard to believe that's right, I'm coming. Let's see if that first year guy is really going to class today. I feel like eavesdropping is a bit degrading. But after all, Ace is not only my opponent, but also my teammate. Those guys really said it personally. I want to see what this first year guy teaches. Just imagine him pretending to know what he's doing. I've got a few fifth year brothers. I'll ask you a few questions that the first year guys don't know. My father. They donate thousands of gold a year to this academy, and yet they dare to let the first year teach. It's really disrespectful. I stole the photo page. You can take it to show him what they're doing. I can't do it. After gathering information, your comrades can only say God bless you. My partner, I will support you in my heart. Then the door was opened and you appeared holding a stick and a guitar being supported by the princess. Everyone was bewildered and saw that it was exactly as I expected. He really knows how to appear, but he must have felt like why was the class so noisy. He shyly turned his face away. Damn this girl is also a princess. He turned away. Come tell me I can walk on my own now. Thank you. Stand up straight and introduce yourself. My name is Ad Wynn. I'm a member of the disciplinary committee, the son of two wonderful magicians, an older brother. Normal and also everyone's new professor. The students above took turns, shouting down go away. What do you think we will waste our time learning from a first year like you? What a joke I have to file a report. He covered one ear and looked down and said to the Superman, they looked quite energetic. He thought that if Principal Goodski or another professor had come with him, things might have been different. But maybe Mrs. He had already calculated everything. Then suddenly a rather tall student jumped down and approached the ace. The ace asked firmly what he thought he was doing. It's just that I suddenly want to be a professor. I just need to do what you did. The professor's face fell to the ground. The people above cheered him on to show him who was the strongest. Let her let him know what a second year can do. He arrogantly said it quickly, but just be prepared to call me professor. Go sit down. Principal Goodski forgot to send me any official documents. But whether you like it or not, I will still teach this class. If anyone has a problem about this, feel free to leave the class. I won't stop you. Actually, I will even allow everyone to join another class if they want. However, if you are a little curious about why an injured kid like me became a professor at the most prestigious magic academy, Kath, I encouraged everyone to stay and study. He looked at the guy from before and asked him, How long will Tin sit there? Either leave this room or return to your seat. You choose. He quickly stood up. Teacher, he looked towards the students and saw that they were sitting very seriously, not daring to discuss anything else. Looks like our class is full today, so let's start because this is a class to practice mana manipulation. So I'll ask everyone a little practical question. What's the best way to apply mana from the surrounding air? Everyone's talking about the question, do you know? I think there's an arm raise, you over there with the ponytail. She stood up and answered that the magician will be able to use mana most effectively by absorbing the amount of mana naturally produced in the air into the mana core where the mana is concentrated and purified and ready to be activated when casting spells or other techniques. The fighting techniques are well implemented as everyone knows the difference between enhancers and dharma masters lies in the fact that enhancers almost all use mana in their core through their mana line while other magic mages use mana directly from the surrounding air based on the mana veins they possess. So why do both types of mages have to meditate and absorb mana, while enhancers mainly using the amount of mana they absorbed into their core? They were discussing to find the answer, when the pony-tailed guy continued to raise his hand, and answered that it was because although magicians rarely ran out of mana into their core, physical attack work, 
but they still need to use their own manna to manipulate the manna in the air to cast the subject, that's right. What the magicians are doing is essentially using the manna they themselves have, have harmonized with a special type of spell for themselves to force mana from the outside environment to obey them. So if mages inherently use less mana in their spells than enhancers, then is the color of the mana core that a magician possesses really a way to accurately assess that person's ability level? People are stirring up different opinions, yes or no. That's not the way to evaluate it. How else to evaluate? He smiled and said while everyone was thinking, I need six people with the elemental pressure of charge to come down here and line up next to me. The magician will stand on the left and the enhancer will stand to my right and there are already six people moving down the speaking trump in this practice. I want all of you to take the most basic spell transfer in the pressure elemental system that you possess Dharma masters are not allowed using your wand. Give them a little time to prepare. Now the enhancers should release their spells and the magicians should absorb the spell. I just cast it back to my hand. The six of them are confused. Why? However, they still have to be evil. Observing each person up to the princess, it seems like she did it. There were two boys among the six who thought it was so ridiculous that they lost their ability to absorb the spell themselves. What does it mean to have prepared and cast it like this? Yes, and we all know that only high-level enhancers can cast long-range spells, but once they hear it, they immediately perform it. People think that your performance just now has no meaning, but most enhancers can do that when they reach the orange core stage. Yes, it's not difficult to do that, but I don't think you've ever done it. I don't see any enhancers who can do this in the orange core stage. I can't prove exactly what happens when mages can absorb the spells they chant, but trust me, that way is only beneficial for you. He sat down and said now, anyone who wants to try should come down here. The bell rang signaling the end of the class, and everyone left and talked. Or did he use items? How could he do that? I almost could have done it. At the end of the first lesson, I asked Sai. When you saw me doing it, I didn't know that I was still sleeping, but he rested on a chair next to me. He felt that being a teacher was good and that he could finish class at any time. He was busy catching the butterfly. Even though he couldn't catch it, it still had to fall to the ground. The princess approached and asked if anyone was sitting on that chair. No, yes, yes, then I felt surprised then. He pointed under the chair and said I was just kidding. But she sat down, like she really didn't understand what this girl was thinking. Say, um, the class just now was really good ace, politely replied, thank you. That's all I wanted to say, okay. She turned to call me. Is there something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time? You were confused and scared. Is Clint also planning on confessing to me? She finally fell for someone as unique and difficult to target as Al Wynn, so she will become the cause of a battle between two nobles. But it's not what you think. On behalf of my family, I sincerely apologize. I admitted my mistake to you and hoped you would forgive me for what Sebastian did at the auction house and my father's behavior. Then she looked up and saw Ace trembling, pinching her cheeks and asking him what he was doing. She replied that she was degrading herself. But I didn't expect him to still pay attention to what happened in prison more than four years ago. She said that although I respected my father very much, that day I felt extremely disappointed in him, even though even so, you don't need to apologize for them. I just feel like I should do it because we're friends. Why is our relationship like that? My brother says only friends can touch each other. Stop hearing that. He remembered the time when she helped him into the classroom and replied that she felt strange that she had grown up with the hatred of her lineage of magical power and even her appearance because of her robbing me of the freedom I desire, I will become the cause of a civil war between the two Asian races. However, a talented young man who was recruited by many people and was constantly criticized and scrutinized can still be cheerful. It's so bright. Laugh and say I heard wrong. Is the thousand-year ice princess smiling? You look away. Anyway, your lesson today was very interesting. Why are those two wind bullet spells? The performance is so different. Did you come to me because of that? It turns out that this has been your real goal all along. That's not it. That's not my goal. I just changed the subject to avoid being overwhelmed. I stood up and said, calm down, princess. I was just joking. But now that I favor the smartest students, the class is very unfair to the others. He walked away and looked at the ball. The princess's back suddenly smiled during Professor Guiden's class. The blue-haired girl heard that in the first class, Ace was injured and asked if he was okay. I was almost completely healed. She was curious about what happened but she was immediately thrown the chalk she was holding at her head by the professor. He pointed at her and said she was sin. Please enlighten this class of mine by pointing out the main components of a glowing artifact. She stood up and answered confidently. The Lyga mini artifact was basically made from Florentine crystals, a material that appeared in abundance near the outskirts of Sapin and Pale Kingdom. After Florestina was refined into a kind of dim light so it controlled my head product, the professor said that's enough, x damn that's true. 
We've already given us homework. I have those glowing artifacts ready just for fun. You can take one if you like, because you've already missed a few classes. I asked happily, oh yeah, I'll even use those things and just leave them lying around in the dorm. You're my savior, but I'm super frustrated, dad. Oh, you should do your homework yourself, my friend. Came to the ace and called Ah, you're here. Then Principal Goodski wants to say hello, he happily introduced Elisa. This is Emily Emily, and this is Elisa. They shook hands to say hello, nice to meet you, yes. Yes. I'm also happy to meet you, I feel like these two people have a bit in common, right? Oh yeah, Principal Goodsky called you to the training room, I know. So you two just get acquainted, I'll see you later. Go back to the training room as instructed. Principal Goodsky, he opened the door, and saw Princess Test sitting there. He happily smiled and saw her. He happily jumped into her arms and called Mom, hello. Hello, Ace. Hello, Principal. Where is Good Sky? I needed to do something urgently, so I just left and then frowned and thought, I don't know if she was really busy or if she was deliberately arranging this. Assimilating with any beast requires a lot of effort. Effort and most assimilators cannot complete this process alone. Sometimes, the person being assimilated needs another mage with similar elemental pressure to the monster he is assimilating to assist him. A four elements mage can use the four elemental systems to not only help Tess assimilate her beast's will, but can also become a refined battery and test physical strength to help her resist. Fighting the forest guardian who is trying to steal control of her mana core. Maybe we should stop here for today. Um, thank you very much. They looked at Toby and Sai, and then started this conversation to drown out his anger. Me for me kiss you all, I didn't say I'm not angry I was just surprised how could I be angry so why have you been avoiding me since that day? You're so young and I even knew you when you were little. I know it's not strange for a girl your age to get married because you're of royal lineage, but I mean my conditions aren't good. Like that, she said you were just making an excuse. Both you and I know I never meant to say we should get married like that. I know what I did at the time wasn't right, but I just wanted to talk a little teen try and stop laughing. And said it like that, from eight years ago until now. I think we've progressed a lot. You're no longer the crybaby princess you used to be. That's enough. I don't hope to hear it anymore. No answer from you, but at least I want you to take this matter more seriously. I'm sorry for expecting too much. Seeing her walking away, he called her to come back to test. Wait. She walked to the door, angry, then turned back and said to you. No ace, you always feel confident about a lot of combat magic and tricks too. You're confident about those aspects of yourself. Because those are your strengths, but you know there aren't a lot of things you don't, it's not that great. Do you think the people around you don't realize that you always wear a mask to act like you're always happy and unaffected by anything? Even now, your reaction is just trying to just try to take my feelings for you lightly. You're not even kidding me anymore, she said while clutching her dress. Aren't you the one who's being childish? Just like when you rejected Lilia, ignoring her. She covered her face in bewilderment. How did she know that? She overheard Lilia telling him damn it. She clenched her fist on the grass on the ground. What do you want me to do? Test I can't say what I was in my past life. Who and how old am I actually with you? And then you go practice with Toby Nu. But in your head you always remember what the test said you know a lot you are confident about a lot of combat magic. You're also smart you're very confident about them. Because you're good at them. But you know there are some things you're not good at at all. You think people don't recognize you behind your mask. Then you pretend to be happy and not be what's the impact. Even now your reaction is to try and soothe my feelings. And even tease me in other words. Aren't you the one who's immature? Why do those words keep going around? In his mind while practicing, but that didn't make him lose focus. The low mana word turned off the computer. He was tired and sat down, worried and approached his father and told him not to try too hard because he was still too young. I'm fine, don't worry too much. Suddenly there was a knock on Cock Cock Cock's door. He opened the door and saw the professor teaching his advanced class. She waved goodbye. It's me. She came to check for both you and me. The test princess always skips her class, and I want to make sure you two don't have anything happen here. So you walked out and closed the door so I could practice here for a bit, but the test wasn't there. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm a bit mistaken. She put her arm around his shoulder and said, come on, I missed your class and another class. At least I have to go to the last class, right? He looked towards the room and said, that's fine, good boy. He has his own training room. So why is it so big and what kind of training makes a ma reinforcement room turn out like that? The more I observe this kid, the more mysterious he looks when he you went to class. Finally, they're talking about you again. Look, that first year guy is finally going to class. Let him go. I heard that he's seriously injured. Look at him and squeeze his cheek. Okay. I sleep a lot. It's not like your father and I are practicing. But luckily, I also wish I could sleep and be strong. Thur, when yes. My class finally has me coming to study, Mr. Wen. I heard that I've returned. 
I'm feeling good again after recovering from my injury. Yes, and I'm sorry for missing so many of your classes. Professor Malian or good good if so. So can I share with the class what I know about the process? Spell formation is not according to what I know. The process of forming spells is a continuation or variation of basic spells and skills to create a different effect. A very solid question. All win is a great game. Now that we've spent most of last week looking at the aspects one needs to know before learning about the foundations of spell formation, Lewin's elegant answer has brought gives us a very solid foundation to start from. I want people to imagine a world where anyone can read other people's minds. Not a very fun world, right? But give it a try. In this fantasy world where fleeting thoughts can expose those who are cunning but extremely pure, or those who are extremely cruel but have a kind face, they are exposed and exposed to others. I believe that such a world is a good cradle for the best magicians. I secretly think that is the reason why you and Papa are the best magicians. I will return to this issue later. But now let me ask a question why some magicians and enhancers chant spells while others don't I think, because if that person is good at a spell, then they don't need to chant it to a certain extent. To a certain extent, but saying that one is good at something is a bit vague. We chant mantras because those words affect our consciousness. It fills the caster's mind with precise suggestions that help guide him. Mana becomes a spell. A funny example of this is if you tell a woman who hates you that I still love you, she will definitely react like that. Hearing that reminds me of the image that the princess had just now test yourself harshly that the mantra in this case is the phrase I will always love you which stimulates her reaction or more accurately the mantra can come in the form of her recoil from causing a reaction. Kicking his feet or even ta-ta everyone below laughed happily as he really knew how to keep his students attention just like that our thoughts influence our spell when if we reach a high level of concentration and visualization we can shorten the chant or not so if there is a world where everyone can read other people's minds that world must have the best magicians, why is it? Because they have the ability to completely control their thoughts with the concepts that have just been provided to you. Please turn to page 23 to see some of the differences. Enhancers and magicians. The teacher in this matter got into his head after class and thought there was no point in going to school while his mind was all about tests. But I never thought what she said would bother me so much because mama was right. Whose side are you on? Besides, there are a lot of people who hate me since I'm an adventurer, but I don't care about that because dad really cares about me. Since when did this idiot look like a happy idiot? Well, you don't know what you're missing, and you're so profound, you know, even though I'm a bit distracted, I have to at least try to pretend to be less obvious, Lucas. We just want you to make sure you get back to the dorm safely. That's all, but even in Texas Academy, it's very dangerous. It's dangerous because he will lose his pants like you. Ah, he was angry and raised his voice. How dare you mock me? Just because of you, the whole school pulled Lucas and threw him away. Let's go back and make enough nonsense. Lucas comes forward. You think I will forget about you running away during the competition? If you pretend to hide and hide. So how can you do that, Ace? Calmly replied, there is a hole in the ground. I am asking you how you managed to escape my prison spell and appear right on the other side of the training school and save the goblin princess all in half a second as Lucas handheld Ace was pointing at you. I said, first of all, this is not the way to ask someone else. And secondly, why should I answer you? I know. Are you using the right equipment? How could a civilian brat like you have it? That goblin in your class gave you a test, princess. Do you think he's gotten any better? The fat guy shouted so loudly, he's so powerful, you must have used tricks to seduce the linfish princess. Right? What? Don't fake it. Stupid even though you're a little handsome. You're still just a dirty, uninteresting Dan. Hey, you're letting man now run down. Shut up, you have to let that guy know what his position is. You idiot. Oh, we're going to be in trouble because of you Lucas said let him go princess Clint deserves someone better, she deserves pure blood aristocrat, like me look, I'm not seducing anyone, but you're not allowed either decided that fish Lynn deserved who he was angry at Princess Acklin, she also thought the same I know that I know that she still picked up the handkerchief for me Lucas laughed, and said that fat guy was crazy, he took the handkerchief, say it like that, say it like that, say it like that, say it like that, she said I'm the chosen one, there's something wrong with him, I know that amount of mana isn't normal, but it's not you, and that means you should he was dead, he was angry and rushed to attack him. I was surprised. I was angry. He said, wait. He quickly dodged him and said, do you know that you are attacking one of the members of the disciplinary committee? Isn't it legal? The other guy said to Lucas, I think we should stop. He replied, what do you mean? I didn't do anything. Actually, we were also very scared by all of that. Then he laughed contemptuously and said to you, really want me to believe that why did he calmly raise both his hands and say, look, there's nothing. No weapons, and no magic, so what about Memor Stua? He doesn't look right, don't you worry about him losing combat class next week, so who cares? 
Either he will injure himself here, or the disciplinary committee staff will expel him. Then he turned around and left. Tell me not to let him go. Get hurt again. I don't want you to run away from me in the next battle. That fat guy kept saying die, die, then attacked the orange core guy. He's so strong. Why does he have more man than Lucas? And is using them is extremely rough. If I wanted to capture him without killing him, I might have to remove the seal. But your contracted beast had already returned to its dragon form, defeated him, and then returned to its white fox form immediately. The ace captain of the disciplinary committee rushed over. I was practicing recently and felt a large fluctuation in man -na. What happened? I also don't know that he suddenly started exploding that man -na and then exploded after going crazy and attacking me. She pulled up his shirt and saw a red line written along his life damn it again. Then the two of them took him to the hospital. When he left he asked. There were many incidents like this at the academy. One happened while he was recovering in the medical area. You know what happened to him? The amount of mana he emitted was unusually strong and the blood symbols on his back. I'll go into more detail at the next disciplinary committee meeting. Anyway, we need to inform the group. Tell Principal Goodski everything. You saw it while arresting him. Knock knock knock, go ahead and ignore him. When I entered I was surprised because Luca's brother appeared here. They were the excited girl next door. They were Lance Byron and Lance LX in the flesh. Principal Goodski introduced these two students as members of the disciplinary committee and are the most promising map mages of this generation. I'm nice to meet you ladies. My dream is to become a Lance B. Ron Bao. As I said please take appropriate measures as soon as possible. It can be said that the two of them walked out and when they passed by Mrs. Ron. It was hidden from their eyes that they looked at each other. Miss Lance told the girl that I will wait for you, making her feel so happy that she fell in love. Call Papa, I know them. Strong, even extremely strong. Now, my secretary mentioned that something urgent just happened. You two sit down and tell me what he said. Yes, but what happened? Except for two of the magicians. The strongest Caton can't just stop by to say hello, right? Well, it's not something you guys are worried about right now. Lance Byron used to be a student at this school, and his younger brother is also studying. Here so he stopped by to announce that but the girl was surprised wow, I never thought I would meet them in real life I hope they bring better news but that's enough tell me story of Lucas, Slime Marsis, followed and questioned me after school and everything after that. In general, I focused on Marsis' strange behavior and his unusual mana flow along with his unusual magical abilities. The principal asked and I told him that he had blood symbols engraved along his spine on his back. I see I realized that she seemed to know something like Cull said. He's not the first case and he won't be. In the last case, I asked you if you knew what happened to Marsis. Unfortunately, neither the pharmacists nor the inventors knew exactly what it was, so we sought the help of the magician guilds thanks to they sent a researcher to cooperate with Gaiden and some of our staff on this matter. So hopefully we will soon find the answer. We will continue to have members of the disciplinary committee patrol the classrooms. I will send more staff to assist at night. Yes, I understand. Luckily, you came back to drown out the members of the disciplinary committee who really needed help. She saw the two of them leave. She closed the door. She pondered again and thought about the beast. Her contract said, should the other students be involved in this? What if they really did? She actually said that in the worst case scenario, sacrifice is necessary, we have gone too far. Why have they already started to act? It's too early. After meeting Principal Good Sky, they're already late returning to the dormitory. Go to sleep. You too. See you at the disciplinary committee meeting in the morning. Tomorrow suddenly Ace saw Byron talking to Lucas. He was hiding behind the wall. So even that arrogant Watt had to bow to his brother. Maybe Caspian was right. Everything would be meaningless unless he's strong enough to kill Lucas's stepbrother. I can't do anything to Lucas because he has his brother's back. At least I haven't done it yet. Suddenly there was a sword close to his neck. It turned out to be Alex's lance. She said sharply. Your energy directed towards a lance is a bit too strong, isn't it? One of the disadvantages of the word weapon in the space ring is that it takes too long to withdraw it. What is the enemy of Lance Byron? Today was the first time I met him. Even though you tried to suppress your presence, I still realized that of course, even if you were a mage and finished with the elements, you wouldn't do anything. Okay, where is he? Is Byron so strong? Why is he so incredibly strong? The two of them poked their heads up to look at Byron and told him how strong he was. She held out her hand about this distance. What a strange sense of humor. At least it's funny. Let's pretend to smile. I'm the one who loves the most among Lan. So the distance between us is quite big. He patted her shoulder to comfort her. But why does she feel like it's insulting? Byron is one of the strong people. But even then, you can't compare to my intuition. So she was the one who sent me. Even before I noticed her, I seemed to finish talking to Ron and talk to you. It's a pleasure. Perhaps we will meet again. 
Ari respectfully bowed his head. Thank you for answering an ordinary student like me. Lance Alex, if my brother was still here, he would probably be around your age. With that said, thank you. Morning. The next day everyone spread the news and quickly learned that last night no one went crazy and attacked another student. I see from what I heard, it seems like they were Emrasis. It can't be that pig from the Chu royal family. Why does it seem like rumors are spreading? People are always so gossipy, I asked. It's good to see the members. Seems gloomy, so they opened the door and walked in. Seeing that something was wrong, he immediately asked what happened. The captain replied that he died last night. Why did he die? Did the creators and medical staff die? Can Marsus Mana be prevented from leaking out? He was unconscious, but Manda was still leaking out. Surely this is closely related to the blood characters along his spine. Whether or not they can find out anything about his back is a bit of a concern. But what they know they haven't revealed to the outside until now, and his parents also refuse to give them any information. Some members of the disciplinary committee angrily slap their hands down, asking what the hell is the use of this disciplinary committee's existence if it keeps important information from us without letting us know. The disciplinary committee really wants to be able to quickly investigate the matter and close it as quickly as possible so as not to let any more classmates suffer. But other than knowing that Marco is like that, the school has nothing more to do. Any other information? Let's put that issue aside. Now that the ace is here, let's assign and strengthen the patrol schedules of our teammates. When the meeting ends, they lead with schedules and the job assignment is different. The two of you go on night patrols with me. Is that okay? The start between you two is not so good, F replied. It's not that I don't care, he said to arrange the schedule. So okay, this will be better for me, because I have to teach upperclassmen and lowerclassmen as well. I'm just surprised that we have to patrol late, so that's all. I'm quite surprised to know these things. This dagger is a communication device, so I thought it just symbolized beauty. But I was even more surprised that when Kai actively patrolled alone, he was still in such a large campus area. Can he patrol alone? Are you surprised really? There's no expression on your face related to surprise, because every time I see your face, that's the only expression that appears. Said that Kai is a famous person who avoids work. Why is he proactive in patrolling this time? Ace Yohan then said that he must be bored with having to patrol with Theon, but that's a pity. We're not allowed to go on patrol together. Why does your brother have to be so cruel? I just told him that after we had a little physical contact, you became my friend, both of you. All the boys suddenly turned around, no wonder I said I'll see you two again in class, my excellent students. The lesson has already started. Has anyone thought about the question I asked yesterday? Of a manacore that a mage possesses can actually measure his or her own ranks. I think manacores are a great way to measure the level of a mage's power. The color of the core is not only correlated with effort, but the amount of time the mage who possesses it has spent practicing. I know immediately how another member of the disciplinary committee will answer, and he has certainly let Face know. The answer was already there, but it also clearly demonstrated the potential of Face's answer. As soon as it ended, she said it was wrong and dispelled all the doubts of everyone. She explained that using mana cores as that formula would lower the level. The importance of all the factors that make up a mage is that the color of a mage's magic core cannot represent that person's intelligence, reaction speed, fighting sense, knowledge of spells, etc. So it's like judging a warrior's fighting ability just by the size of his muscles. We can be sure of one thing that he is very strong, but we cannot say that he is better at fighting than someone who possesses less. The dwarf stood up and asked, What is the criteria for more accurately evaluating the opponent's magical ability? Laugh and say it's easy. Don't judge, just try to think about it. Even though you can feel the mana core level, really helps people truly evaluate the fighting strength of others. What do you plan to do if that person's strength is weaker than yours? Will you be more gentle with that person, or will people make fun of you? Mocking that person for showing off their superior abilities when forced to fight, thinking that they are weaker than the mage they are facing, will help everyone be more alert and cautious. But that's enough for now. Then let's try again, what we did yesterday. I hope you will practice fully before entering my class, and a class is over. Wake up at the end of the hour. Because I'm also sleeping. But I just arrived, you saw a piece of paper, already placed, surely, I'll make Toby beat you to a pulp love I'm sorry, I'm late Professor Glory, I'm going change your clothes right now, oh no 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 I won't risk letting you go out here until you've completely recovered. It's good to sit in the stands like that, at least I won't have to be in pain for the time being. When I first heard about Lucas' provocation, and wanted to fight with me again, I was super happy. Mom. She happily hugged him, but when she saw him, the smile on her lips had closed, and her face became cold. She was about to speak, but she stopped. Lord Test interrupted you. You don't need to explain. At that moment, I was too angry, and said things that I wish I hadn't blurted out. Not only was what you said to me partly correct, but in some ways, 
I think I know what your feelings are for me, but I always avoid them because I'm afraid of facing them. Emotions are scarier than magic or fighting. Just practice and I can't improve. I'm the same, but you know I got overwhelmed by my emotions and brought up Lilia's story which she herself told me not to tell anyone. You're much better than me so far. I've always been avoiding you, and you don't deserve that. I'm sorry but I can't have that relationship with you now. After hearing that, the princess's face showed a sad expression, at least for now. Now maybe when we're older and you think I'll wait for you no matter what, that's not true. I know you're very famous, and honestly I don't know how long it took me to be ready to listen. Smile brightly. You know that. They were both silent for a while. Then she used her index finger to touch Ace's face. Can I trust you? You won't go on a blind date after what you just said, Geo. She said with both hands and I hope this will work for you. Wait for me, and then you kiss me. I'm bored with her. That action makes you never recover. Sahigi. Someone just kissed you. You're embarrassed and collapse on the table. Shut up. It's just bored. What's going on? More than a week has passed. Why is this class still teaching only the basics of magical theory? I'm a little confused. Professor Drell. Gravity. Lightning. Metal. Lava. Real sound. Objects and ice. Both exist naturally in our world. So why doesn't the world produce other types of mana besides earth? Water? Fire? And wind? That's a good question. You know, although many magicians have been thinking for decades, century, and have done countless research projects, no one knows for sure why some of them think that the production of heterolament would require the combination of certain conditions so it does not exist. What type of mana is related to them? Although there will be some cases such as fire type because fire will not be able to burn on its own without external influence, so many magicians consider fire type to be the most advanced form of normal magic because it is very close in nature to paranormal magic. Sorry, I'm a bit off topic. He. Another theory originates from the time when ancient magicians existed a long time ago. That's why this class is so behind in the syllabus. I'm curious how the test feels after that conversation. I wonder if it's just a talk. As for the test princess, she sat in front of the mirror and looked at herself. She felt embarrassed and embarrassed when she remembered the time when he kissed her. She was bored, and her face turned red. It was just a boring kiss, but it was still a beginning. I didn't want to get too excited, but I didn't know how our child would look. I guess it's like this. But wait, if you want to have children, then yes, and I have to. She was embarrassed and covered her face. Just one kiss on her forehead made her excitedly think about dozens of things about the future. There are two students here who use paint. Red was happily drawing on the wall. While on patrol he came across this scene. He walked in and said he looked so happy thanks to playing and realized that he was a member of the disciplinary committee. The red-haired girl ran away, leaving her alone. Blonde hair bitterly said fuck it but saw that she couldn't escape so she had to use a move to attack Ace, but was defeated by Ace very easily and fell to the ground and finished watching sit up sit up and say don't know anything, what's the point of being polite? Even if a girl fights, he replied that I quite think that I represent gender equality. Now do you want to try that? He raised the technique in his hand, making the girl turn pale. He said well and obediently followed me to the manager's office. That guy also grabbed the red-haired guy and discovered that there was nothing on his back. He grabbed his body and shook it all over. Checked the other girl's body and didn't find anything. He pointed at the girl and informed his teammates that it's the same over here. Damn, I'll bring these two guys back. Can you stay alone for a while? What's the problem? Follow dad. I'm hungry and sleepy. We're almost done with tonight's shift. Let's go eat. Dad walked away and noticed V. It looked like he was approaching the area where his patrol house was located. The ring suddenly felt a strange flow of mana. He immediately hugged it and hid behind a pillar. After observing, he discovered a cloak on its back revealing that symbol. Without thinking too much, he immediately following him. He carefully looked around but did not know that there was an ace up above following him closely. He was impatient for fear of not being able to keep up with that guy, so he urged Papa to hurry up and the black cloaked man walked towards him. Please be patient. If we follow too closely, we might make a notice. If there are more guys like that, we need to let lead us to their hideout. But while we were watching, your teammate suddenly called out. He quickly signaled to be quiet. That call made the other guy realize he had been discovered and quickly ran away. Kai came closer to him and grimaced. What are you doing here? This guy, I'm following a guy with maybe it has something to do with Marsus. I could have found them. If it wasn't for the sting in the head, even if it was, you should have told me when you saw the guy you were following closely until my week. He looked up then he asked where he was and he went with him. But he told me that just now we caught two students using red paint to draw graffiti on a wall. And Theodo was escorting us to the manager's office. So that's okay. Is there anyone patrolling your area? Theodo escorted him back. He'll probably be back soon. 
They were talking when the chimpanzee's communication method of the disciplinary committee sent out a signal. The two of them were extremely surprised. The yellow light means Theo has activated the dagger and Ace helplessly patted Ace's shoulder and said because V this is my patrol area I will do my best to find the person you are talking about. At this moment, Theo needed his uncle to return and helped him go. He saw the leader's determined face. He smiled and ran while talking. He was wearing a black coat, long black pants, and high boots. Kai raised his hand. He smiled and said it clearly, but after he left, he showed a dangerous expression. Was he covering up for those people, or was he the mastermind behind this incident? Run home. He asked him if he was okay, what happened? Said that he had been hit in the back of the head a while ago, so he'd hubbed his neck. Then he said loudly and said something so casually, I only got hit once, so what should I do? Is there such a thing as falling down like that? I'm sure that blow was from a very strong enhancer. Face replied in a bland way. Kiss said he was murdered while taking the other two students back to the office. By the time we get there, they've already run away, but I think we can find them soon because they're all students at the school. It was their friend who helped them escape. No, no, a normal student could not knock me out with a blow like that. Surely it was an older person, or an ace who continued Theo's sentence, or it's a person like Mako, is who followed holding his head helplessly, and said yes. Do you know the appearance or shape of your attacker? Follow him and shook his head and said it seems like I was able to hit him once before passing out, but I couldn't see what he looked like just now when I put my hand on Ace's shoulder and it looked like he had an uncertain wound on his hand. So I asked him, and he replied it seemed like that. Hey, what did you do just now? Why did you run back from Kay's patrol area? Do you think telling them about that guy in the dark coat now won't have any effect, especially on Theo? You replied that it's nothing. I know it looks like Kai, it seems that C is lazy and can't do much business. But just trust him. He can take care of his own business, and also agree with Theo's opinion. His face looks so vile, but in reality I seeing how trustworthy he is as a human being. The three of them argued. Discipline officer, are you being racist? You are one of the people who protect the safety of the academy students. But why are you like that? That's not what I meant, <laughs> Tech handcuffed her, and she went away. Her first night of patrol had passed. The next morning, the professor's full class period was over. What did you think about? Even a whole bunch of the disciplinary committee couldn't catch the guy who attacked and what's worse, they couldn't catch that guy in the dark robe. I'm still angry that he resembled my name so loudly, so am I overthinking it? I told you that I should trust you. But the time interval and the wound on his hand made me feel like I was concentrating on thinking about that incident. You don't know that professor. Gid Dian and her friend were staring at him until Professor Gid Dian said what's wrong, kid, he was startled. He looked down at his desk and said it was a mess. Fuck I thought you were about to create another groundbreaking invention. But he turned around and walked away. At this point, she used her index finger to touch it and asked what's wrong. You look like you're out of practice. It's nothing. It's just that the matter of the disciplinary committee made me a little tired. But after the last two classes, you see, because last night's events made you think too much, you need to focus on class. But now, I can't remember what happened in the first two classes. Then the blue-haired girl touched him and opened the bag, which contained creative artifacts. She happily told me she had some in stock. This guy was surprised, and then happily said, wow, he's the best. At the end of Professor Guiding's class, he went to Ms. Glory's advanced class. She was letting Asia's teammates fight against a certain team. Enhancement Master kept the same. Team, please pay attention to your magician and don't chase your opponent. The girl outside shouted loudly to warn them, but because he was still recovering from injury, he sat on a rock. I really thought that just because he was involved in Mars's affairs, Lucas was suspended from school for a few days. It wasn't fair at all. He kept looking for his mother but couldn't find her. He sadly said she wasn't here. Tell them not to bother Vin Lin anymore. We'll meet her in the practice room later anyway. But suddenly he remembered and asked Dad, Okay, we all have to go on patrol tonight, right? He pinched his cheek and said Mig Jez were patrolling like that. Suddenly, he saw the professor walking towards him. When he got down from the rock, he saw the rich face and took the initiative to ask her if something was wrong. She lamented and said that the school board had banned people from going to Doom Gone, in most of the areas she had taken her class to. While the lands were investigating something, he continued asking, there won't be any trips this time. She looked up at him and said yes, but we can only go to low-level yawn heroes. Better than the places I usually take my students to. She giggled and said don't blame me if Dung Yan is too easy for you, and then ended this advanced class around in the afternoon. He immediately went to the practice room with the test. After a while, both of them were quite tired. He said let's stop here for today. Thank you. He pointed in the opposite direction. Asked the test if he wanted to go. Cooled down a bit. Then the two of them soaked their feet in a place containing cool blue water, 
and their two contracted beasts were also lying in the middle of the water to enjoy. He asked her how many days ago. How do you feel? Has your wild beasts will still shown any signs of resistance? Since the sparing session in Professor Glory's class until now, there have been no problems at all. I nodded and said that's good. Please remember to report. It's okay with me or Principal Good Sky if something goes wrong, because it will be a few weeks before he can come here from Maleno. At this time, in a few weeks, he will be able to completely assimilate, and if he is lucky, his mana core will even go to a higher level. He was deep in thought when the test princess threw water on Ace. He asked her, What are you doing that for? Haha, <laughs> I'm just helping you cool down. We're done with chemistry practice today, and it's lunch break and you should rest. Right after that you threw water on it to test. Sorry, you're still sweaty so I also want to help you cool down. The two of them happily laughed and joked, splashing water on each other and playing for a while before testing. Lifting her feet out of the water, the water droplets on her feet slowly dripped down. She looks so beautiful and seductive right now. She said okay, I feel cool enough. Replied me too. Their fingers touched each other. The atmosphere was so romantic right now. They were so embarrassed that their faces turned red. But unfortunately they were interrupted by the principal. Good Sky looked like the two of them were having a lot of fun. They shyly turned around to greet the principal. Seeing scratches on her face, she was worried and quickly ran over. What's going on at the principal's place, master? It's nothing, my dear. I just wanted to stretch my tired muscles a bit, so I stopped by the maid's association to practice for a while. I thought she was having a meeting with the council. But after the meeting, aren't we allowed to walk around and relieve stress a bit? Test, I'm nervous and speak like a human. I shouldn't force myself to get hurt to this extent, right? She smiled gently. She placed her hand. She leaned on her shoulder and said next time I'll listen to you. Don't worry. She looked towards me. It looks like your next class is about to start, right? I hope you won't mind if we use the blacksmith room. My son's training tonight. He didn't hesitate at all and happily replied no, test, and I already completed today's co-training session so you two can feel free and at ease. The two children happily waved goodbye. Thank you guys, see you tomorrow. He also told Test not to try too hard. He walked out the door and turned around to look at the principal good sky. She was definitely hiding something. But that wasn't it. It's not something I can pry into. He walked towards the lecture hall to continue his next class. He yawned and lay down on his desk, tired. His four-eyed friend saw that and asked, that ever since we left the dorm until now, you've been yawning like that. How late did you have to come back from patrol yesterday? I don't know, but we got back to the dorm you were already asleep. Okay, I know, but last night I also came home quite late because I had to participate in club activities. But I looked at my friend with a questioning look. Which club did you join this time? He excitedly answered the question. There were surprisingly many girls in the chanting research club there, and I had to say helplessly that you were deprived of love in your past life or something. So why did you become so thirsty? The guy got angry and said shut up. You're the one. This is a strange person here. We are at an appropriate age to discover ourselves and build loving relationships. He was a bit excited so he spoke at a loud enough volume that even the professor standing below. I also heard E. Alley, although I really want to hear more about your pink love life, can you let me continue my lesson? At that time, the whole class looked at him and laughed loudly. He was so embarrassed that he wanted to find a hole to crawl in. Thanks to the teacher, his classmates stopped laughing. Trang Geem he knew many of you had heard what happened to your classmate a few days ago. Because of this tragic event, I feel that it is extremely necessary for me to let you know about the dangers when using this type of power that we always obviously use arbitrarily. The magician and the most talented medical staff are still working together to find the cause of Marcus's death. But surely you all know that he used a powerful magic that damaged his body. There's no way you can control it. Maybe you're all well aware of the dangers you'll face when you overuse your magical core, right? It's just like the muscles in your body. Too much tension will cause injury, sometimes even permanent damage, and sometimes even fatal injury. A female student raised her hand to ask, But professor, I heard that after resisting Mkiss is still alive. Couldn't he just need to use some magic medicine to keep him alive? The professor nodded and replied that most cases are like that, but there are still some exceptions. I'm just saying this to summarize and warn you of danger, not specifically about Marcus's case. Methods of forcing mana recovery from the outside are often accompanied by a series of various side effects and one of them is that the mana core has a serious energy leak. The person who witnessed the evil incident saw that the professor's words still did not explain the deranged behavior and the mana leak symbols were tattooed along his spine. At the end of that class, he regained his composure so he could teach his class. Have a good afternoon, everyone, because in our class, no one has succeeded in doing what I did. Illustrated in the other day, so I'll start today's class with some suggestions for you guys Lester come down here. He suddenly asked and pointed at himself, yes. 
You went down, you were scratching your hair, tell me, why did you choose me? Let everyone now imagine that Super Mighty Lester is my opponent. You tore the piece of paper in your hand in half, crumpled it up, and continued to say that I was an enhancer. But I was scared and didn't dare to come, close to this terrifying form, so he chose to attack with a long-range spell. He handed over the piece of paper he had just crumpled up and said that this is the spell I prepared, a type of common spell that you are all too familiar with. Then you blew the piece of paper in your hand, and it fell to the ground. This time I will prepare the spell that I showed you last time. You put the piece of paper in a paper tube and blew it right in the middle of Lester's chest, causing him to freeze. People like Petrification probably give this suggestion quite clearly to enhancers, right? As for magicians who are crazy about lecturing for a while, the lesson ends in the late afternoon in a rather large room. And luxuriously, there is Lan Spawn, and a Lan Cow with shoulder-length hair. She said I thought my next mission would be to help Lance A and Eleanor. Do you know why Lan C V I A? Ah, I called us here not sure if this case is related to what I found in a Dung Yan located in the suburbs of Obis. She was surprised by what he found. While chatting, there were footsteps going down the stairs. They both looked in that direction, and that's also a Lan girl with long hair. She sat down and said since there are only three of us here, I'll skip the formalities and go straight to the point. The reason why the council and I decided, pulled her out of her mission in Eleanor with AA precisely because we recently discovered in some of the deepest levels of Dong Yan, that there are signs that the mage does not come from a landstock god. What do you say? As far as I understand, we have hardly discovered the existence of any continents. Byron said just because we discovered them recently doesn't mean they have too. The evidence has been confirmed. Landstock Long nodded the piece of cloth. He discovered is made of mana beasts that we have never discovered or used to belong to Dicaton short-haired girl does not believe in what I heard that. Byron said that I also felt the amount of mana contained in that piece of cloth. Did the council discover anything else from that piece of cloth? Because it was torn, no matter what kind of spell was on it, it's no longer effective. However, Alex, we called you here because of other matters. Why do you mean me? Just say all in C-V-R-I. She opened a map in her hand. And it's said that recently adventurers have been operating in several different locations in Bizer, have discovered the appearance of titanic bloodworms. Titanic bloodworms. Are they not rare mana monsters? What's unusual about their appearance? Ms. Var spread out the map on the table. At first it was not. But when linking their appearance and comparing it with some man of beast behavior researchers, it seems that their tunneling trajectory has changed a lot. Although it is very possible, this is just an expansion of their territory. But we cannot help but consider and associate the recent violent behavior of mana beasts with the possibility of Alak Kryan appearing deep in Dung Ion. Byron is leading the investigation team to Bader, but Alex said that with his sensory magic, I can control a much larger range than him. Vari believes that in order for her sensory speed to not be hindered, she will have to act alone like that. It's very possible that she will be in danger. Byron will be willing to continue focusing on deeper areas. But I'm worried that the titanic bloodworms will continue to dig deeper into the lower level ions, closer to the Sapin than very suggested. Suggested that we could wait for Micah to complete her mission in D, and then the two of us could act together. But fearing that the danger was getting more and more terrifying, she resolved to conduct an investigation immediately, because if we prolonging the dangers that the adventurers and students facing out there are facing even higher, he woke up the next morning, while he was still yawning, when he suddenly saw his red-haired teammate surfing, then he fell down on the ground, making Ace wake up and shout loudly, Hey, you crashed into ice. What's better than crashing into a wall? Princess Clint and Ace stood there wondering if they were together. Another good team followed and rushed forward and said that the concentration collapsed. The two of them kept rushing at each other and kept hitting each other. Seeing that they were using gravity magic, they still couldn't fully understand how to use that magic power, so they continued. The fight didn't explode this time. According to the saying, Good trick, Prince. I like it. Round 5, everyone was about to move forward to continue fighting, but they were stopped by the black ropes of the warden. I wanted to post a paragraph where everyone was but the call's orders made the observer wonder if the metal elemental magic didn't make a sound. Why couldn't I feel anything? How could he control those strings? People who were fighting but were stopped. And then we talked shit, I was just preparing to counterattack, but right call saw everyone there was already there and unlike the two of us, we actually wanted to go to school like everyone already knows that a kiss and I will be leaving the academy and going to the forest of beasts with our class for a few weeks. We will rearrange the weekly schedule and weekly personnel to cover the temporary absence of the three of you. Do we have anyone volunteering to patrol extra hours? Volunteer to take on a few extra hours. Anyway, I don't have any friends or anyone to date. Thanks guy. And I also don't have any friends so I volunteered. Although I know I understand why you look so proud. But anyway, thank you. The follower was hiding when the captain used his rope to pull your hand up. 
You were surprised. What the hell? Sitting next to you happily, oh. I didn't think you would volunteer Dorad. I don't have it, but I can't change it. So you'd have to sadly accept it, Kai happily told me. I haven't been able to go on patrol with you, yet Dora tried okay. But you have to buy food after the shift. Cole saw that there were enough people patrolling, so the meeting ended here. While walking down the stairs, Face patted my opponent on the shoulder. Even though you have a lot of knowledge, but you have to be careful out there. If you need advice, I'll be happy to share the experiences I went through during my visits to the Beast Forest, because I hit my true abilities. Maybe he didn't know that Ace was an adventurer ship. Princess Klin saw that when she passed by and said, Have I ever seen him get food stolen by a tree? Because of what the princess said, the two of them said cursing at each other. Taking that opportunity, Ace and Sai immediately ran away. At that moment, Ace asked Ko, Do you know what kind of magic Kai used just now? I didn't feel the properties of that spell. He kept it quite secret. I kept quiet about it. I only knew that those metal wires were quite special. Ace looked at Kai and thought maybe they were hiding his attributes. Seeing that he was looking at him, Kai immediately smiled and asked him, Are you interested in me? Why don't you try to avoid it and answer frankly? Yes, there's a bit of it. I want to reveal how you control that pile of wires. He smiled as sinisterly as possible, but then it splashed. I'm going to kill you. Why are you threatening me? While we were chatting, Kull got in between and pushed the two of them away. Come on, these two guys, come on. I have to go to class. I'll meet my four-eyed friend in my practice room to talk to you. Tell your friend about your wonder about how that Kai controls that pile of metal wires. He said it seems like I was also interested in that before, but I wasn't interested in magic so I left. Why did he tease his friend? So you learned magic to gain popularity with girls? The friend got upset and said no. There was also a moment when he threw a sword into his friend's hand. So even though he was a magician, should also learn a little about the basics of close combat. You know girls like it a lot. Once again, being teased by Ace. You angrily picked up your sword and rushed towards Ace. Why are you teasing me so much? This guy, some of your sword slashes. You must feel that it's not bad that you've been learning sword fighting since you first learned to quit. It's actually quite good, but I also find it hard to believe that you can avoid every attack so easily. Observe that the swinging movements don't have any extra steps, is steady and balanced. With a bit of practice, he could probably become a pretty strong swordsman, and on top of that, he's a unique metal magician. Even though he's thinking, but he still dodges, received his friend's attacks, and knocked him down to the ground, causing him quite a bit of pain. He approached and said he lost his temper, and swung his sword a bit wide. He looked up and said, huh, who is it? Don't be upset if he reached out his hand to help his friend up. But when he looked at him from this angle, he was extremely stunned when he felt that behind that small figure was the silhouette of a tall, muscular man. That made him hold his head in pain. What's going on? Why do I have these feelings? I sat down worriedly and asked, is your skin okay? Are you okay? He tried to help his friend to the infirmary, but he was pushed. It's okay, I'm fine, but I'm so confused. What happened? Long my friend, bowed and stood up. It's just a slight headache because I hit my face before. I'll go take a shower and calm myself down first. I'm sure maybe it was just because I bumped my head. His face was happy again. He turned his head and waved to Ace. See you at the dorm. Yes, see you again. The following weeks will pass by at the same pace. Be tone of peaceful, if not boring days. Even near the midterm exams I couldn't keep myself interested in all the classes. But even though my magic skills gradually improved thanks to the help of Tabai and my professors, I never forgot the real purpose that made me enter this academy and because of that, the small moments in daily life with the people I gradually fell in love with. Love has become the thing I look forward to most every morning when I wake up and my friend walks down the street and chats together. Anyway, there are a few more students in my class and I'm starting to know how to see my friend. Not paying attention to what I said, he put his hand in front of him late at night and asked if hey are you still there. At this point, he was startled and asked oh, what did you mean? These past few days, I've seen you a bit lost. There's something in your body. Are you not feeling well? You shook your head and said it's nothing. I'm just a little worried about the upcoming test. Tomorrow, you're going to explore the beast forest with Professor Glory's class. So don't try too hard today while practicing. Let's practice with the princess. Then wave goodbye, and see you later. Since the sword fight in Ace's training room, he has a different attitude than usual. I don't know what happened to him. I can feel it too. Nowadays he seems angry at Pap. You see that too. So I'm not the only one who temporarily put aside the questions in my heart and went to the practice room with the princess to recently test the level of assimilation between the beast's will and the core. Your man now looks more stable now. She stretched her arms and was happy. That means the man now monsters we are about to face will have no chance with me. She was so bored that she was in pain and said, 
Don't be complacent, because the assimilation process means you're probably not half as strong as usual, she said angrily. Look at the difference between the person who rushed into the forest of monsters, while sealing his two strongest elements. The thing is, I can remove the seal at any time. But you can't. I know, but you don't need to treat me like a child. This girl is one year older than you. Do you remember? She covered the towel she was holding. On your hand, and on your head. You have to remember, I also remember you telling me with a scared tone, Oh mom, you know that monsters will appear if they see you out here. Because they know you're just a child to make sure to be safe. He should continue to guard inside the tent, remind her of the incident when he was a child that made her embarrassed. Then lead lie, and push him down to the ground. He did it to himself, and kept tickling him with his hands. Good things didn't happen. After a long time of romantic fun, my grandfather came. I also wanted the two of you to be closer, but I didn't expect to see this, she asked. What did he just say? At this moment, she was surprised because she was sitting up. Ace was embarrassed and shy, and stood up immediately. Ace asked him what he was doing in Xerus. Ram. I thought he was being teased by some meeting with the council. Well, I just snuck out for a while to visit my kid. My beloved niece, who seems to have grown up, angrily picked up her grandfather's long beard and said loudly, Grandpa, don't make things weirder, it will hurt. My dear, my niece grabbed my beard. After that, he turned to tell her that she was a bit worried about the tomb exploration, tomorrow. Actually, I wanted to ask Thea to watch over her in case something happened to her core. But she was busy. Anyway, I also hope you can stay with her before the field trip tomorrow. Usually there won't be any problem. But I promised my family that he would visit them tonight to spend time with everyone before the tour. He gave a perfect high five. Then take it with you. She asked in surprise. Why did he still raise his hand in an X shape and shook his head no way? I won't go along with your plan. I can imagine what my family would be like if I brought the test home with me. I didn't bring her with me, but after a while I couldn't believe she brought the test home with me. With my family, I was excited. It was time to open the door. How did mom know the test was coming? They looked at the pile of gifts placed at the bottom of the stairs, pointed at it, and said, There's nothing suspicious. Mom said, Well, we're planning on, are you standing outside there forever? Come in. Mom has almost finished preparing the meal. Last time, my sister met me for the test. She seemed uncomfortable. But this time, she was friendly and pulled her into the house and said, Come in. I want to show you how to use the tree. How good is this sign? Hain has been teaching me ever since the Tyan Horns group came to visit. Quickly, your whole family is happy because she came to our house to visit. Seeing them treat her like that, I also smiled. They were together that evening and Lance Alex was alone searching for clues in a dark dungeon. She kept trying to find them. But the trace was once again interrupted at hey, she remembered what LNCV said and confirmed that she was right, there was no way those crowded bloodworms were moving as usual even according to the tunnel network. They were almost all converging this area leads deep down and to the east, where there are big mountains. If so it seems like she discovered something. She kept running forward, and then stopped. Because below was a deep abyss. Down there, she saw two long things that she was sure were snakes. But why did it have horns? As for color. So far only reports recorded it as gray with a blue flame on its back and with a it's her birthday and she doesn't even care about her own child. It's unreasonable for her to be guarding a tunnel like this. Land's communication device lights up. She picks it up and says, I've tracked down a snake. Anomaly is guarding a tunnel emitting a huge amount of mana. Vari said do you think that's the source? I trust your guess is based on its color compared to the destroyed mana monsters I've seen. Maybe it's asking for aid. I have 50 battle mages preparing to be teleported to the nearest gate. Please stay in position and wait for further instructions. Yes, sir. On a full moon night, the whole sky is shining brightly. The meal was over and the servants were cleaning up the garden. It seemed like he had had too much to drink and was being helped by his wife to go back to the room to rest. The daughter angrily said if every time I come home, father, if they're all so drunk, it's better for you to stay at school. However, I still prepare a blanket and pillow for my father to rest or my selfish bear. Please let me sit on the chair. Your mother said that if you don't come home, your father will cry it's true that I already regret letting you go to school at X Yus Academy, but do you know how embarrassed I was when dad told those stories in front of the student council president? I just remembered where he was. Ace stretched out and said Test wanted to get some air, so my mom went with her, so she wouldn't get lost. Ah, so Ace returned to the living room, and saw his father holding his younger brother in his arms, and said Cha. Take L to the room, dad immediately gave her to your uncle, and said, let's give it up. Big brother. He rubbed Elle's head and said that every day she asks when she'll be back. Remember to tell her to leave tomorrow morning so she doesn't leave. I stayed up late and didn't know my mom and tested. I went outside and sat on the table to chat with my mom. Thank you for coming. I know you're probably not very comfortable, right? 
Actually, I'm very happy. I see Lilia. And you. It's also very fun, right? You mean it's sad? She smiled and replied yes. Maybe that's the case. Realizing that mom seemed overwhelmed with worry, she asked his mother if she was worried about going into the tunnel tomorrow. Hell of course. But he's already very strong. Even though he's stronger than all the chests combined, I'm still worried because even the lowest level dungeon is very dangerous and unpredictable. I'm sorry, I don't have one. He meant to threaten me before I left. It's okay, don't worry, Ms. Lawn. Like the way he protected me, I will also protect him if anything happens. It's good to hear you say that, but I hope you don't do that. Tess surprised and sing you sing. The evil mother gently smiled and explained that you are also your parents' precious gem. And if something happens, they will be devastated. Why should you protect yourself? First, I'll trust my son. Mom hugged me and rubbed my body. Anyway, I'm a bit cold. Do you want to come in? I want to stay out here a little longer. Thank you for taking me there. What's wrong? She went into the house first. After carrying me to bed to rest, I slowly opened my eyes. Oh, I'm awake. She rubbed her eyes and asked what time it was. It was still night. When was it? So tomorrow morning I can't stay longer. Unfortunately, I can't. But after that, I can go home for a week. That's okay. So tell me the story. I don't know. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. Seeing that you don't seem to be willing, I can't help but indulge you. What story do you want to hear? I haven't finished telling you the story about me becoming a professor. Wait, where did I interrupt? I remember you were excited to tell it, magic question. Uncle of a professor, once activated, he couldn't stop so he stepped in and pulled Clint out because she was defenseless Clint. You mean the daughter of King Sapin Caslin? He replied, that's right. What's the problem? Why you continue to save another princess when she's helpless? Why you look like you're looking for a princess to save her? Moreover, after saving her, you even told the professor, please fight with me on her behalf. I'm interested, asking to impress her. You frowned and pinched my sister's nose, didn't you? I'm hurting you. Leave it out. Leave it. Cross your arms and continue talking. In short, in short, after defeating Professor, Principal Good Sky of Excess Academy contacted him and asked him if he wanted to be a professor. She covered her mouth and asked. So he agreed. That's all. Of course not. Who do you think your brother is? I refused until I received access to the limited library that only a few professors have. That's it. Not only that, I also have a personal training room covered in thanks to Mana Coffee, the other professors, and members of the disciplinary committee, also became gentler with him. Moreover, he had more time to practice. Are he a good professor? Of course, the lesson I also have students from other classes coming to study. Really? I didn't expect this kid so I asked again. So I used that room with Elisa and my sister. Recently, Mr. Guiden has made progress in improving Toby. Who is Toby? But because it was too late, the two of us fell asleep without realizing it and started a new day. Honey, have you seen him anywhere? I went into his room and didn't see him anywhere. Dad stretched out and said, is that right? Is he eating breakfast? I don't know where he went so early. They wondered and went to Elle's room to wake him up for lunch. As soon as they opened the door, they saw that he was also sleeping here with his cousin, smiling and going to a cold place. It was cold and covered with white snow. Professor Glory said loudly, let's all focus on which team. Ace turned to tell S. We should take the time to go in there and hunt a little. Are you sure? Of course. This is just a low-level dungeon and Professor Glory is with me. Hearing that, he jumped down and went hunting for a while. He turned around and told his father, If there's anything wrong, just call me. He looked at Lucas. I really didn't expect that Professor Glory would put me in a platoon with him. I've been here countless times until it became too easy, but after all, I'm an adventurer. He's a fake A-rank student, but the students around him are whispering that he's so cool. It's true that the Wicked Ace's son calmly said that I heard an adventurer friend say that your certificate was confiscated. But hearing that made him angry. Come and pull on Ace's shoulder. Are you jealous of my popularity? What's wrong? That's all I have to say. He was about to use his magic to attack Ace. But someone came and pushed the two of them away. That's enough before we go in. We still have to choose the captain. Lucas asked. Why you choose? First of all, the captain is of course me. Who else is there? But the harsh truth is that his teammates all raised their hands to choose to test as captain. Why not choose A? Seriously, you have leadership experience as the captain of the council. And you're also a mid-level magician who can keep an eye on everyone. Another guy happily said if she was the captain we could name the group queen and knights because we weren't chosen to be captain. Lucas was very angry and cursed them for being idiots. Professor Glory asked if everyone was ready. Are you ready? Everyone knows the abilities of your teammates. So let's apply the basic team formations and tactics you've learned. Then the professor leads them inside. She tells them to keep moving and keep in formation. 
Remember to protect yourself with mana anytime, anywhere, go a short distance. My friend said, why is it suddenly so cold? Didn't you listen to Professor Glory? How to shiver? Why did she say that? Increase your body heat even if you don't use mana. Your body temperature won't be affected much thanks to s Test Dragon Key said I know this is a dungeon, but it's beautiful Professor Glory said maybe you guys haven't heard about it in class yet. This is a D-ranked dungeon called the Subtomb. We'll only be staying on the first two floors of it, so the only mana beasts we need to watch out for are just Snacks. After hearing the name of the beast, everyone was talking to each other. I had read about Snack L before I left. They weren't too strong but it was very difficult to kill them one by one because their fur was extremely thick, not to mention their strength. They're so ugly they're disgusting when you get close to them, Tiss told Clay. I heard that it's quite easy to see some groups even on the first floor. I wonder if any expeditions have come here. No reply Professor Glory once said that. She hired a group of adventurers to limit the number of people entering this dungeon. About a few weeks before we came here, yes. It's strange we haven't come across any group. We had walked a distance where we should have passed Snack Owl's lair, but we didn't. The professor turned around and told his students to pay attention to everyone around them. Don't lower their guard. Just because don't see any monsters Lucas feels like it's a waste to stay in this place. When there aren't any monsters another student has an opinion. What would happen if there weren't any monsters on the first or second floor? Professor, shall we go deeper? Of course not. If we don't find any monsters on the first or second floor, we'll report back to the adventurer team. Kiss said maybe. We can hunt some mana monsters outside the dungeon. If you're too busy talking, you don't notice the professor suddenly stops, making you bump your face into her back. The professor says step back. You're confused, professor. Turn around. Come back and shout loudly, step back immediately. The students were now sweating and panicking, so much so that Ace and some other students rushed up to shout, not hearing what the professor said. Why hurry up, professor? Pull out your sword to destroy those mana monsters. These L snacks aren't any stronger than normal, but they shouldn't gather in groups like this. Killing those monsters, she turned around and told her students. Snack out wasn't difficult to solve, but their behavior is worth paying attention to. Putting everyone's safety first. So we will end this tour. Everyone please go back. Suddenly there was a line of fire passing through the professor. So it was Lucas who made him say it's safe. Professor, don't tell me you brought us here just to go home like that. While those monsters finally appear to make the atmosphere more exciting, everyone also let's start talking about them. They're pretty easy to kill, right? Maybe it won't be too bad. Yes. I mean this is just a dungeon level test, but Tiss told Professor, I think we can still try and practice. Standing nearby, it was understandable that Professor Glory Tran accepted especially for the lances who were researching the dungeon. After seeing that the students wanted to stay and explore this dungeon, the professor closed her eyes and thought. Based on what Lan found in the monster's lair, this was probably the only chance for these students to accumulate experience from their visit to the dungeon. And the SNL were only level A monsters. So as long as I'm here, everything will be fine. After thinking about it, she told the students to split into groups and go to other places in the basement. We don't expect an attack. What happens to each other here? They all said in unison. Yes, Professor. Then everyone excitedly moved forward. She pulled Lucas back and warned him that if he dared to do the same thing again, he would have to worry about the consequences. Go take on the position of test captain. At this time, assign a worship. I want you to be the vanguard because you were the best at close combat in Group C Roland. You two will be on the left and right sides of a worship. Please pay attention to protect you. Even if there are no monsters attacking you too. Lucas, you will stay in the middle. We will gather into a diamond formation like we learned. Lucas arrogantly passed the test okay. Don't take it too seriously. God, this is just a stupid trip. Hearing that, C was angry at this bastard and was about to step forward to teach him a lesson, but was stopped by Ace and said stop it. He pointed at the beasts and said we have something bigger. Pay attention. He looked at the yellow thing in his hand and wondered what it was. He smiled and used force to create an eye-catching blue light. Suddenly, a monster rushed forward. The boy surprised him and quickly dodged it, slashed it once. Then he looked at Lan and thanked him. No problem. The team was ready to conquer the monsters with a reasonable formation. Together, they rushed forward, contribute to defeating the monsters with his own moves. The professor stood outside and observed that everyone was doing very well thanks to the training sessions in class, but they were not used to drawn out battles. The length of time and the number of snacks did not reduce the worry that things would become complicated. She waved loudly to the teams to follow the team leader. Let's go back and listen to the professor. Everyone, go back and listen to the professor. Everyone, everyone, but maybe because he was running a bit slow. Lone was caught by a monster. Take the test and call back to drown him. But he turned back to save his teammates. 
He rushed forward and thought, damn it, I need to attack. Stronger to sweep away or else. They will keep coming. I've never tried this without Toby, just hope the result is as. I think he pulled out his sword and told him to stick to the thing. So he clenched his hands and tried to hold on to the ground. He tried with all of his might to knock those monsters away and save his friend. He reached out his hand to pull his friend up who was about to run. As I walked, I heard a loud noise, and he grimaced and said, don't be so serious. The professor was surprised and couldn't help but wonder what the hell they were doing here. They shouldn't have come to this last floor immediately. She pulled the IV cord from her neck and rushed up to attack those beasts. She shouted loudly, unable to stop. She ordered to open a way to retreat immediately. We will deal with the ace. She understood. We need to bring everyone. The person who crosses the abyss and must break through to blockade the outside. You observe once to Finn. Don't come with me. Seeing that, Ace's teammates said loudly. We will go with you. Let's all rush up. Ace said Finn. I need you to use your strength to break that abyss. I will protect you. You can tremble in fear, but I need a little time. A loud call came from behind. The girl trembled even more when that monster rushed back. On her side, but luckily he was able to destroy the beast in time. Seeing that he could protect her, she suppressed her fear and focused on breaking the abyss. Everyone was doing their best to destroy the beasts. The girl turned around and announced to the ace that she was done. He said now we need to clean this up. He rubbed his hands and then tried to punch him really hard. We have to break it in one move. If not, then it won't end. Suddenly everyone coughed and was startled. Why was there smoke? It turned out it was because Lucas used fire to destroy the monsters. He said there were too many bad things here. Okay, they're blocking our way. Realize the corpses, they're blocking other airways, so you shout loudly. Everyone can't use fire, put out the fire immediately. If there is one, we're probably gradually running out of oxygen to breathe. It takes an explosion to break this wall in one go. Careful, there's no use if we don't have enough breathing. Suddenly ask Papa what's going on. We're stuck in a dungeon. Come here. As fast as possible pay attention to what's outside the herd. Now wait Papa, I'll come right away slowly if I help suddenly he remembered Kiss and his contracted beast help. It's itself immediately Trump called Kiss. Here right now Tiss heard that and ran to Ace to ask if he has the will of like A. Is it strong enough to clear that pile? It's possible the Ace. I don't have enough mana when there's no greater here. Turn away and don't. If you have any more questions, focus on your first phase and create an explosion powerful enough to clear the rubble, okay? Fi Fi, go help the others to hold back the monsters. He looked around, then took off the rope on his wrist and transferred mana to Tiss. Mana transfer had been researched for many years, but it had failed. Even a person with the same main element as a magician had a different source of mana. Inside their bodies, there is still more than just that element. But because I have the ability to control all four elements, I can simulate and copy different types of mana and control the ratio of each element separately. I haven't mastered this yet and only tried it a few times. But today, I was careless. I was too confident. Arrogant when I went into the dungeon. I didn't consider what could happen. I thought I could. I'm capable of handling that and protecting everyone whenever something happens. The power I have at this age compared to my previous life has made me more unreasonable than I need to be. White stage. But it's a matter of time effort too. I can't be so stupidly careless and arrogant like that ace. I don't know what you're doing, but I can enter my first stage ace. Looking at man nah, his beastly will is resisting him. He shouted loudly and used an extremely strong force to break the wall. Say now, let's get everyone out of here. Okay, see the professor is still there. Diligently fighting the beast lord, even with an unusually strong piece of magic glass created from the relationship between her two elements, she was still pushed away and everyone suddenly left. When he realized he couldn't see his head, he saw her in pain and stood still in one place. He quickly ran over to catch her. She trembled and said to Ace, my mana core. He picked her up and said okay. We're about to get out of here. He helped her out of that dungeon. He must have felt it was too dangerous. Why were there two queens in the dungeon? And the lords were only at the same level. They must have been easily defeated by Professor Glory, because she was the he was an A-level adventurer. But something was wrong. He immediately turned towards the professor, and saw that the monster had evolved into a more terrifying monster. The professor shouted loudly, everyone run quickly. The student saw that, was extremely scared. The professor kept attacking it, but nothing happened to it. And you had wounds on your face here. You fat pig must feel bad, Professor Glory. Can't distract it. My teammates in the disciplinary committee called me. Let's go quickly. We need to get out of this place immediately. But I ask you to help me get out of this place. It's not that you want to because you're worried. Kiss held his hand to stop Ace. I know you're a dual element magician. But don't act stupid. We should leave that monster to Professor Glory. 
But when the man met sources radiate all over H, Yui was surprised and let go of my hand and said, I didn't see wrong, right? It's really fire. Why is that right? Professor knew man now monsters would kill each other. But I never knew they could evolve to this level. It doesn't make any sense at all. He rushed towards the beast and shouted loudly. Professor Dak was surprised that fire was fire. Why did you drown? I told everyone to leave here immediately, but ignore what the professor said. I think it won't attack the professor's teammates. I realize that none of the professor's attacks can touch it. Oh, are you laughing at me? I just wanted to try it out. It's okay, but everyone else. He had gone out and hadn't looked in that direction yet. He saw Lucas staring at them. But after a while he left and replied that they were all gone. So this thing won't be able to follow us out of the tunnel. We just need to weaken it. And then we can escape. Can you do that? A sit let's hold it for 10 seconds. And then they join forces to attack the monster. The professor recognized Ace. He was a dual element magician. Both attacked fiercely and shouted loudly. Seeing that the opportunity was right to leave, the professor rushed out of there. But it seemed like his sword was stuck on the ground. The boy sadly walked out of the dungeon. But when he turned around, how could the monster be following him? And then stabbed him in the leg, making him scream in pain. The professor heard him immediately. He turned around and called the evil one, intending to come and pull him out of this scared place. But realizing that something was wrong, he shouted loudly and backed away. Then he fell into the abyss. The professor helplessly called out in vain. He couldn't stop him from falling. Going down to the abyss, he was so tired that he almost fainted. But he tried to hold on with all his strength to keep from falling further. But he couldn't hold on anymore. There was no other way except trying to survive the fall, even with his own hands. With the transfer of Manna, I don't have much Manna left, but it might still be enough. Right now, he tried to use all the remaining Manna to move to a safer place. He survived. But it seemed like he had enough strength. He was very weak, and his body was seriously injured. He tried to sit up, and saw his beloved sword in front of him. First, he needed to strengthen his senses, and his ability to regenerate his mind very effectively. Helped him a lot. He looked at the hole, and thought that even when he had full strength, he would still have difficulty climbing out of this hole. Let alone right now. He looked around and heard a sound. The water flowed and he chose to go closer and step through it when he was surprised by what happened in front of his eyes. Home, many people died here. He didn't know what happened in this place, but it was so scary. He heard a loud noise. I got defensive and asked someone. I heard a weak stuttering sound and trembling trying to call please help me wait and you try saying it again. I'm here. You're so surprised that you're looking for Alex. This isn't a lance. Alex. But when I met and chatted at Cirrus Academy, why couldn't she be a white mage? Lan Chu quickly approached Lance Alex, because her eye was so seriously injured that she couldn't see it. She couldn't see who the person in front of her was. She asked who was who. Using her ability to help her sister, he loved her a little. He said, wait a moment. Lan Alex was curious and asked, how do you know me? We've met before. In the past, how could I answer her curiosity? Evil replied I'm evil. We once met at X Yus Academy. You even said I was the same age as your younger brother. Do you remember? Ron, why did you come here? You're afraid that the more you talk, the more serious her injuries will become. Ace stopped you and told you to stop talking. That's enough. You also know that my condition is incurable. I'm sorry. What's the point of apologizing? I feel much better thanks to you. You're helplessly asking, what can I do? Now I don't understand why. Why did this happen? Why did you do this? Hey, what do you mean? Why am I still alive? He's keeping me alive for so long. It's because he's taking revenge for killing him. Give me something. Pick it up. Come here now. Even my man no core has been shattered. I should show you everything. Let your man I seep into my body. You touch her head and feel it. Appearing before your eyes is a beast worthy of attention. Extremely scared when everyone rushed to attack it was of no use and would even have to die. He proudly gave her two choices. You can choose to fight and die, or kill everyone. Your comrades are here and survived. He said, do you think your efforts can change the situation? No matter what, there must be war, and I have prepared a quick death for you. It's a pity you don't need those anymore. I've read that if one of your senses is destroyed, the others will become more sensitive. He then proceeded to poke with that sharp claw. A red color suddenly appeared in her eyes along with the calls for Lance Alec. No, please don't stop. How about you? You can hear those desperate screams more clearly, right? Seeing such a scary scene, I feel overwhelmed. Feeling nauseous, she trembled and said that not everyone gets to witness such a scary scene, especially a young man. No one needs to overcome all the events that happen here. At least now, I can know clearly what everyone has been through. Thank you for letting me know. She was in pain and burst into tears. I didn't want to die. She also shed tears. 
She came closer and hugged her. She said, I'm scared. Please comfort me. Don't worry. I'm here with you because I was so seriously injured. After a while, she was gone forever. I told myself that Alexa's death was not in vain. From her memories, can I detect it? There's only one black horn demon. While I was wondering how many there were, they were hunting for something exactly like the first demon I encountered in Sid's cave. Whether this demon wanted all of Sid or not, it makes no difference whether Caton is a quadra elemental warrior or not. I have no choice. If a war is about to break out and that demon says yes, I can't continue to be complacent. Furthermore, in order to protect the people I love and cherish in this world, I need to become stronger. He looked at the rope in his hand and held it tightly. He stood up and walked towards the house. Alex used magic to freeze her. Put a flower on it, and you won't be lonely anymore. I'll make them go to hell. Accompany you and everyone here. Thank you for waiting. I saw the sadness on his face and called Papa for a hug. Then he said I'm fine. Let's get out of here. There's nothing else to do. Sai took him away from that place. His clothes were tattered and covered in injuries. He walked to a door and was stopped. What are you doing? Staying out so late, can you prove your identity? F1 Academy Cyrus, I'm returned from an expedition with my class at the Tomb of the Tomb. The kid said it was the Tomb of the Tomb of the Star, where an unusual accident happened hearing that. He immediately set to notify XR US Academy and the Adventurers Association immediately. Yes, the Adventurers Association is gathering manpower to search and rescue you. Kid, wait a moment while I find a healer. The boy's wound he held his hand and said he just wanted to go home sir I will report to X Yus Academy tomorrow morning okay. The kid arrived in front of the house. I thought everyone inside might be um still worry about me. But if I go and everyone will ask what happened you sit down on the steps I know it's very selfish of me. But I don't think I can handle it you look at the rope passing around in my hand. Alex's denial always echoes in my head. Her fear of loneliness. Her fear of dying. Whether by accident or on purpose. I only hope for her ending. I have a chance to live again. Your father calmly walked out beautifully. Right? It's time for such things in Phythan to have its own privileges, Dad. The guy sitting next to me said there's no need to say anything, son. I don't know if you remember or not, but your mother can only use magic to heal small wounds. She also has a scar that even today she can't say out loud, so don't force her. Forcing yourself too much, everyone has a battle that they have to fight. Just like your mother, I will always be by your side waiting for you to succeed in the future. Life is not a single battle. So sometimes we fail. It's normal. Stand up, look back, learn from it and become stronger. Then you will become victorious. Listening to what dad said, he looked down. Down in tears, it's been a night, but the guys are still sullen and sad. Principal Sky opened the door and said, don't just come to my office. He replied, the view here is better than anywhere else. Why don't we see my mascot? I told him to stay home when I came over. After what happened on the trip, I should rest a bit. Do you have any other plans? I promised my mom and sister that I would let's go shopping with them in a bit. What exactly happened? Professor Glory told me about the snacks anomaly. Is there something out of control going on down there in the crypt? She gave the rope to the principal, Good Sky. She was surprised to see it. It couldn't be Lan's. She answered yes. She was dead. Her body and that of her comrades still remained on the bottom floor of the tunnel. The mother's grave where Professor Guru took the class to explore. She thinks that Lan was murdered. They came here. The matter may have gradually become serious. She's sorry for asking, but I already know the source. What is this about? No, I don't know. It's okay. We'll inform the council about what happened immediately. Don't worry too much about this. This is out of your reach, council. And the land chess will take care of whatever or whoever caused this. She hastily went inside, leaving her alone with all the sadness. You think? Let's hope that's the case at the end. Seven then Ash had a short time to talk to the principal Goodskeeveth. He told the principal what he knew. And then, as promised, he went shopping with his mother and sister, and saw a sad look on his face. His sadness made the mother next to him also feel worried. And his sister pulled his hand into a store, under her mother's hesitation. She chose a suitable shirt for her brother, and now welcomed him. Come to my favorite store, Am, actually, I know ha. Huh? Is there a store nearby that sells training items? What do you mean? Yes, there's a pretty famous store nearby. If you want, then maybe come first. Mom worriedly said to us, maybe we will go with the kids. Her sister behind is having fun and looks super cute in this outfit, isn't she? She left her things behind and said, okay, then I'll go with everyone next time. Don't worry about me. Have fun, Papa. Don't go away. My sacrifices won't be in vain. He quietly walked down the street. Suddenly, a flower on the ground caught his eye. Looking at it, he thought of the flower he placed on Lan Alex's grave. He went to the place where Tabaiha had told them to sell medicine in a place like this. It looked like a place full of diseases and poisons. Mr. Step. 
After walking a few steps, I heard the sound of having change. Kid. I was startled and pressed myself against the wall. Why didn't I feel anything from him? It looked like I saw a ghost. I'm just an old guy asking for some change. Right? Sure. Then he took out a coin from his pocket and gave it to him. What was he doing sitting here? He didn't pick up the coin and thank the damn boy. I accidentally gave him a silver coin. He panicked and left. He reached into his pocket to grab another coin. I'm sorry. I wanted to give you this. But when he looked back, the old man had disappeared without a trace. Ace's face turned dark. Just like that, it still cost a hundred stars. He looked down, sadly walking back to the store. When he arrived in front of the door, he saw a yellow circle. What is this? Is this how the store checks customers? He grabbed it to open the door, and there was a sound as he opened the door. So you had to cough because there was quite a lot of smoke. Seeing you, a voice called out, Hey customer, can I help you? As soon as he looked at me, he recognized the shop owner and the old man who was sitting outside just now. Immediately, Tim came closer and asked for money. He gave me my money back right away. He said he was homeless, but the old man liked to justify it. No, I said I'm an old man, but that's because you saw what my appearance and the way I was sitting just now. Then he assumed that I was homeless, but you pointed at the items he had and said this. How about you take an item, any item you want, and I'll be free for you too. So we're even then he looked around and asked if there's anything worth a silver coin in this place. He confidently replied, of course there is. Just kid. If you have sharp eyes, you can see that he smiled and looked around, then thought that you need to respect adults. May must respect adults. He started walking around, searching and wondering how long ago this store was built. Don't even bother to fix or clean up anything. Why do you need to know that manual physical activity is not good for old people like me? Besides, I think this problem is still stable, but I'm powerless in the face of those words. You just ignore him. Then he continued looking for what he needed and looked up. He saw an ebony cat with sparkling eyes looking at him. He looked back and it ran away. He continued and opened a box with a ring inside. He wondered what he was looking at that ring when the old man used water to shoot at him. Ace was so angry. He calmly replied, you can avoid it. Don't worry, it's just water. I felt like I would float. I'm going crazy staying here forever. But I have to get something back that's worth the money I spent. And I'm still looking for it. But as soon as Super arrives, I jump on your back, Papa. It's me, Papa has abandoned his ace laugh, replied. I'm still alive, Conrad. He turned around and said to the old man, he couldn't find anything. He suddenly realized something was wrong. He went to the carriage and asked the old man if he was okay. He said, okay, okay. That's right. I'm pretty good. I couldn't find anything I wanted. So if you give me my money back, I'll go. This kid really pissed everyone off. Then he went looking for something worth the money you paid. Let it go, kid. You really don't have an eye for things, right? Well, when I found it, he threw it at me and told me to pick him up. He picked me up, asked what this was. He pushed my back and said, don't worry. That's what you're going to do. Now go and wait. Wait, I don't care what the customer's attitude is. He slammed the door and said, thank you. Come next time. Suddenly you saw it again. The ebony cat inside the door had gone out earlier and was watching me finish shopping. Three women were resting at a cafe waiting for him. As soon as they saw the figure of the second brother coming out, the younger sister quickly waved Rose's hand. My second brother, Mom, held a cup of tea in her hand and asked me if I had found what I was looking for. It seems like I did. Mom, I would be very surprised if I couldn't find anything from that place that only sells L and medicine. Because they that place is very famous. Many students come to get new training materials or anything from that torn place. Why don't you say that place is torn? Your face is a magnificent building. And right now, a friend is taking Lucas somewhere in a dark tunnel. For a while then he comes to a door, Lucas walks in and looks around, and then uses his foot to kick the other guy to the ground, you what the hell are you planning on doing? This guy heard a greeting. The other guy quickly knelt down and turned around. It turned out that he was the leader of the group of people involved in Marcus' death, the person he was always hunting in front of. Appeared was a masked man sitting on a chair and dozens of men wearing dark cloaks stood around the leader, said welcome to one of our secret meetings, Lord I brought Lucas Wickes came here as per your request. This is the famous Wickes sir. Welcome to join our small adventure. Say goodbye to all of you. Who said I would join? He has something interesting, he wants me to come see. I thought it was something more impressive and who are you? You don't look like a student. Don't tell me you're a professor, okay. One of his subordinates angrily pointed at Lucas. How dare you, you should feel honored that we allowed a stupid person, like you, to come to this place. Lucas asked, you stupid person to warn Black and his subordinates as well. Showing Lucas the strength of the leader, he snapped his fingers, and said now don't talk rudely to our new member like that. But after that snap, 
the fire flared up fiercely. Along with that, was begging for his life, he stammered, saying, Please, please forgive me, I was wrong. Please forgive me, Lucas, was now amazed by his strength. He thought he could do the same. But that spell he unable to sense his mana level. He spoke now about this small faction of yours. I want to know a little more information. Why you always try to chastise, and why you meet me, guys? Are you an organization that specializes in poisoning and manipulating students? He replied. I think the mission we are accomplishing is much bigger than that. What do you call it? Poisoning and manipulating students. I have a big plan. A plan much greater than this academy, but the current situation does not allow me to carry it out. I need a stronger magic to carry out the plan, while still waiting, and you are one of the candidates everyone here, are people of noble status, but always dissatisfy people who are always proud of XDS Academy for the purest bloodlines possible, you are an exception. But I believe one thing is that the students and the operating structure of that academy, aren't those things also making you feel bored? Wakus Lucas angrily said why am I wasting my time and effort on? There are mistakes that can be fixed at any time, but the peasants at the academy are no better than the low-level adventurers who always flail about with their weapons. He pointed towards them. The guy behind and all these pampered aristocrats have no value to me at all. He walked away calmly saying I have no reason to lower myself to a lowly level of them to put on a chain around your neck and obey your orders. The leader calmly said the rumors were no exaggeration. What an arrogant mage who always thinks of people in the lower class inferior are weak and incompetent people, but hasn't your friend Eth Wuin proven that why did hearing the name of Wuin anger Lucas how dare you he angered Lucas saying you could be hailed as an outstanding prodigy and a pampered person to Eliz because of your awakening. But to a Wuin, you are nothing said in a sarcastic tone. There's a sad truth that he hasn't even experimented yet. And maybe you know that too. Isn't that why remembering the last dungeon expedition with A. Lucas now makes you angry? So angry that he slowly turned around, walked towards that guy, and shouted at you. Who the hell are you? He stood up, bowed his hands, and said, I'm simply a philanthropist who came to this land to make it more beautiful, sir. Everything is clear and transparent enough for us to be able to work together on this. But Lucas wonders how long he has been observing you, and then continue talking. Soon we will be able to do it a fight, and then the weak link between the three shocks will be broken. I also occupy the council, and control the president, everything is completed, dear Sir Wickes. I just need you to help me finish the rest. Come on, Lucas, said finish the rest, I will make Aeth win one of them. He clapped his hands, very good, very good, yes. It seems your half-demon blood doesn't have much effect on your ability to think what about. And if it's true what you said, Ace has never experimented before. Why do you think I can kill him? If you want me to take any of the drugs you gave Marsis, he said it's because of you. That pay is too weak. If you are as strong as you think, you are completely capable of controlling the surging strength of your body. Believe me, those energies will reach new heights. Lucas Bao, I also guess that you have also risen. Plan to make Aeth Wuin Don put all his effort into fighting me. Yes, he replied that it's simple. Aeth is just a normal human being. He is very important to his family and friends, but there is one person. Especially Lucas interrupted him and told Tessia Errol, he said it right Tessia Yalis. A star is a school prefect. Don't you think this is right? The group of people in dark robes shouted in unison, no disgust. No, Lucas, you know think that if that elf princess just sheds a little blood, your friend who loves to hide his love will be angry. Why the hell is Lucas smiling sinisterly in the dorm room of a four-year-old boy? I was sitting on my bed wiping the glass when I heard a knock on the door. Cock, cock, cock got up and opened the door and saw that it was a guy scratching his head and saying sorry. I think I forgot my key and just saw you. You immediately hugged him and patted his back. You said I'm here. I'm fine. You can't get rid of me that easily. You hugged me and said, I know you're a stubborn person. I'm helpless. I can't help but say it. I came out right away, and the two of them walked into his room. My friend told me that yesterday, Principal Good Sky stopped by and said he didn't need to worry about him. But when I heard Clay tell me what happened, it was hard to believe that he didn't have a destiny. No problem. I asked if everyone was okay. Yes, Clay and Kiss were released from the infirmary this morning. Um. Texa, Principal Sky, said she was with her grandfather in the training room. Yes, you should. Go visit everyone so they can see you with their own eyes. I'll go fine, but I'm afraid I won't be able to deal with everyone's doubts. If I show up there, can I come to the meeting room tomorrow? Just tell them you see me and I'm fine, and they'll believe it okay. So I'll say it then. He walked closer to his friend. The two of them punched each other, and a friend immediately collapsed on the bed. Sadly, he covered his face with both hands. He continued to go somewhere. As he walked, he thought that maybe Principal Goodsky was at the council. Mr. Viron would never miss a meeting unless he suddenly felt man not urging his father to go quickly. Come on, I'm going. Don't be sorry. As soon as you opened the door, inside was filled with black and gray smoke. What's going on? I'm so glad you're here. I need your support. 
The ring on his thumb glows Papa. What's wrong with the ring? I don't know. Something inside makes it heat up a bit. Looking through the smoke, he sees Mr. Gurr sitting in front of a pile of vines. He approaches, almost asked, what the hell is that test? That's a test. That's right, it's been like that since he left the dungeon. What's wrong with him? I don't really know, but the beast's will is madly counteracting the devourer, causing the process to assimilation has a problem. It seems like it's trying to invade the test body. I think I think something unusual happened to the Elder Good. You defeated the assimilation process for so long and yet it's still transforming like this as if it were mutating. He blamed himself. Why didn't he give her the beast core? He touched it to feel it, but was immediately thrown away, leaving him injured. That injury almost killed him. Then suddenly it turned into long ropes and attacked him. He quickly dodged those blows, but it also gave him a few wounds. Mr. Gramp asked him if he was okay. I'm fine, but it seems like your niece has some grudge against me. Is this the time to joke around? Those guys have no intention of letting you go. They keep rushing towards you, and then attacking you, worriedly asking Papa. What do we need to do now? Let's go to Mr. Viren. We need to be careful to test, so that we don't get hurt. I hope that when cutting these wires, there will be no problems. When preparing to cut the pearl that you when I went shopping, my mother suddenly flew towards test. He was wondering what the hell was going on when the pearl broke the strings and touched Test's stomach. At this time, the strings were all broken, creating a stream of yellow light flying into the air. A cloth covered his body. Ace immediately rushed forward, grabbed the towel, wrapped it around his body, and held her up. Mr. Graham didn't know what he had just done. He touched his shoulder and told him that he was fine. Save her. Thank you, Test. Now slowly open your eyes and ask why you were lying on the ground. Open your eyes and see your grandfather and Ace in front of you. You will see her happily running towards her grandfather. Raise your hand and wait for her to come. Then hugged him, but it seemed like he had to disappoint him. Then the person he rushed to hug was Ace. Not him that action made him bewildered standing still like a statue my dear niece. You went the wrong way rubbing her head. She hesitantly said numb Tessia. She happily looked at him with eyes sparkling with joy. You're still alive. That's right. I'm still alive. There's a wind blowing through my body. I hope this wind will accept my shame. Me, my grandfather and Ace took her to the hospital, so the experts could check her. Ace stood against the wall in deep thought. I still couldn't understand why the ball the old man gave me at the door was the old shop flew to the testing place again like that. It seemed like it calmed her down, but did it really save her? I should definitely go back to that store and let him see what he really gave me. What is the grandfather worried about his beloved granddaughter? Then asked him how is Viren's test, is she okay? Answered the grandfather's question. He replied her condition is stable now and only the measurements of the mana in her body is no longer an obstacle. But there is also a rather confusing problem. You said that the test core status is bright orange, right? Yes, is there a problem with her core? Why isn't it just, even though she had a dark golden magic core, I still couldn't measure her mana core? Grandpa walked over and said it's impossible. He also followed and asked if she was okay. He put his hand on her stomach while she was still awake. Check Mr. Surprised, couldn't do it. He was also worried and kept asking what's wrong. Is there something wrong with her animal will? Is her core okay? Mr. Kwai knelt down. It was a girl. Better than before a lot of Tessia's cores are almost at beginner Silver Ace. Wondering if it's okay for us to leave her here alone. Okay, Ock, she's just exhausted after breaking the link. Continue three realms at the same time. She needs to rest. When she wakes up, I will take her back to the castle immediately. I've been wondering all this time. Can you tell me a little about the lands? No, Cynthia told me about what happened. What do you want to know about them? How strong are they? So how strong do you think a core of white mana magic is? Hearing what Grandpa said, I immediately thought it would be necessary. It takes 23 gold core magicians to defeat a silver core magician. But what is the exponential increase between silver core and white? He said I am an intermediate silver core magician, and need about 10 people like me. To be able to confront a white core magician, like Cynthia, a high-level silver core magician, would have to have 6 to 7 people like her to have 10 people like you. Are you that weak? He angrily pinched his cheeks. Ace, I'm not weak, that kid of yours I'm saying they're very strong. I'm sorry, they sat down on a bench Ace hugged his cheek, and asked, but how can a white core magician be so strong? And even though some Lan are very young, they are extremely strong people. I mean, why don't they run a kingdom of six Lan, so they can easily dominate, and no one could stop them? Look up. I looked at the sky, I can't answer. Lan, now they only become stronger when they are granted titles. What do you mean? The answer is that it has to do with how a royal family maintains its position of power since its founding. Establishing your own kingdom is a secret that only families with royal blood can know. You mustn't tell anyone about what I just said, so maybe you can say this to me. 
It seemed like he had a lot of faith in this young man. He asked him if he believed in gods. Throughout the age of beasts, elves, humans and dwarves were nomads who conducted journeys with their fellow humans and interacted with each other. Trade with other races despite differences in culture and faith, the relationship between the three forces is still strong and good. The three races would have always lived in peace if it weren't for the birth of demonic beasts, stalking about their lives and always searching for them like precious prey. The number of survivors decreased year by year until one day a god descended to the human world and bestowed tools on the three tribes. In order to be able to fight the Manna Beast and end this era, that god appeared before the three of them. Those three people were the ancestors of the three great royal families of today, the Glider family, the Gray Sanders family, and the Alice family. That god gave us six antiquities, and those six antiquities were divided equally among the three individuals chosen to become kings. But those three kings did not intend to monopolize those antiquities for themselves, and instead, that gave the two most trusted courtiers who spoke in spirit and held a title investiture. Ceremony those artifacts that gave them a deep insight into the utilization of powerful energy sources. Existed around them, men of those three kings personally commanded six people to use the ancient artifacts to expand the scope of understanding for the world about the knowledge and power they had just discovered by teaching the learning ability. And that was the process of creating the first generation of wizards. Human elves and dwarves gathered to push the mana beasts deep into this bloodline trench that people now often call the Bezer. Then true peace was established throughout the territory ending the age of beasts, and opening a new era, where the three races diverged in peace. And naturally, the human king ruled over the people in the southern region. The west is a flat and fertile region that is a true place to promote strong development. The king of elites occupies the south, a place where they can truly live in harmony with the surrounding world full of forests. Magic and creatures live in symbiosis with each other. The dwarf tribe that followed the king to the north is a place that stores a large amount of rare metal ores and diamonds. The three kings and their land chess watch over the gods. Their people actually live for a time in peace and prosperity as you are talking about. Then suddenly, wait a minute, the land chests were the first to use magic through the six artifacts that the god gave them. Is that a gift to the king? Not to mention that this story is old enough, and there is something wrong at the end. What about the war between humans and goblins, land chests? Where are you? He angrily grabbed his ear, and said of course, there will be something wrong, because what are you doing to let me finish? I've only just started talking about the war. The old man sighed and looked down tiredly. Kid, knowing about those wars helped us lessen our efforts. But basically after just a few generations, that fam bin life ended until one day, all three clans forgot all the times that their ancestors stood side by side to fight. Pacify everything and greed has overcome everything. Looking at him with an indescribable look, he said that the land chests are not where they went, they have existed for generations of growth associated with the royal family, and to nominate each person to use an artifact just for the discovery of other continents that we have agreed to inform the land chess, that you understand why these things are kept secret. Even the land chess, even if the information leaks out that the ancient artifacts have the ability to create white core magic, he said, the collapse will happen sooner or later. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me, kid. Hey, you've really grown up. Your body is finally growing, along with your brain. Than Thuck has been useless since we first met. He just patted Ace's head and thoughtfully called Ace yes. I'm telling you these things because you have a part in it. What is your hobby? Your wish is not just a simple hobby. Your wish is an Ace God looked down in surprise and saw it sleeping soundly. He asked the old man what God he was. Let's hear it. Gods aren't like the religious books that simply say they are creatures with abilities. Grew from a body that we would only consider mortal and became completely in tune with mana. No, it's a dragon. I mean, it's super strong and intelligent. But there's a reason why. Why is it that dragons are considered a blessing in our culture, and that's why you keep it a secret because no no I don't blame you. If it were me, I would have chosen the same. Believe it or not, I don't think the contract signed between no and her was just a coincidence. You stood up and said the world is changing. We don't know what role you and I will play. But no matter what the situation is, you need to be ready at any time when the conversation ends, and as you walk down the road, your face looks sad as you walk, and you look up at the sky. You're deep in thought. Mummy wondered and asked Papa, where are we going? I need to check something. He came to a formal building and walked to the wall. He saw a gem in a corner. He reached out and picked it up, along with it. A piece of paper after reading the content, he smiled and put the pearl away. The next morning, he woke up and had breakfast with his family. He saw a thoughtful look on his face. His mother worriedly asked him what was wrong. He shook his head and smiled and said, no, it's nothing, Mom. Breakfast is great. I really miss the food you cooked at school. Really? That's why I'm always eating peas. 
If there's something I need to do, we all understand. You said it's not true. I also promised that we would spend time together in Aurora. Stet your dad said you're always as busy as Vin. Dad wants to have a normal son after everything is resolved. What we want to do as long as the child is safe is enough for us. The girl said angrily that I just need him to come home safely and remember to bring a gift too. The father next door asked what cool gifts he had. What if my father gave it to me? The younger sister looked down sadly. But those things were all for children. Her mother sat and giggled and said, Oh my God, evil also smiles and says thank you to my family. Your family. He walked out the door and said goodbye. He turned around and walked away, holding a piece of paper in his hand and saying yes. Let's go. On the piece of paper it said that if you want to know the whole story tomorrow afternoon, go to the west teleportation gate in a large space. There are four men standing below, and one is sitting on a chair. One man is standing, and says this is very necessary. King Grey is followed by another man, who says this is the end of our kingdom. Important to the people of our kingdom. The kingdom you rule, where everyone is ready to fight for us you need to kill her, kill her King Grey, after killing her the world, will not never mock your kingdom again. And then it's a space with a black background color and red streaks appearing over the tired and worried face, call Papa Papa, are you okay? Pat your head, and say I'm fine, it's just that I had a bad dream. Why do you think that memory popped up at this time? You reached into your pocket, pulled out a piece of paper, and looked at it. You remember the store you used to visit. Then remember what Grandpa said that the world is changing, you need to be ready at any time. You think that this note must be from the old man at that store, I don't know how he overheard this. Conversation. But surely he knows something that Mr. Varen never told me, I believe everything Mr. Viren said there is no way he would lie about it, but who could know more Mr. Viren? After walking for a while, he reached the place where he wanted to go through that gate, a man said to leave the country with the reason, and the ID card. This place is the western portal connecting to the kingdom. Eleanor country, we need to have identification papers, to be able to allow people to pass by. He wondered why it was Eleno. He pulled out something and said, is this considered identification? I looked at it and accepted it. Right away, that's the noble seal. And Eleanor, who is this kid? How can he own it? Seeing that, the man immediately bowed his head. This way, please, say thank you. Then continue walking forward. Then he reached the door emitting yellow light. As he got closer, the light became stronger. He felt this was strange. Suddenly, there were strings of many colors wrapped around his hand, dragging him down. Afraid that he would fly away, he told him to hang on. After a while, he fell into a dark place, trembling and saying to his father, he was afraid. This was the first time he felt the pain. Scared of his ignorance, he raised his hand to create a small fire just enough to light up and observe everything around him. He wondered what the hell was going on. The power level around him made him fall to his knees. He noticed the front. It seemed like someone spoke up and asked who was there. A pair of eyes appeared from the darkness and had to widen their eyes because of the scene in front of them. He was so scared that he covered his eyes against the white light coming from the sky. There was a voice behind me, we finally had a little privacy to talk peacefully with each other. The light was so bright that I used one hand to cover my eyes while the other hand was holding the glass and shivering. In my heart, I slowly appeared behind the beam of light and realized that you were the cat that disappeared from El Slag's store. Who are you? From a black cat, you suddenly turned into a tall man, my friend. We are the people you consider gods in the quiet night. Principal Good Sky and his contracted beast are walking in the dark. A luxurious room where a meeting of the council was taking place, everyone was debating what Anduin said, a lands was dead calm. The measurement was wrong. We need to gather more information. Before acting, a lands asked her, please, Thea, are you sure the kid who found Alex's body isn't hiding anything from us? An assistant slammed his hand on the table and said, just bring those sin students. Come here now. We have to interrogate them. We can't bring a single student. Coming to this place, they will feel arrogant and delusional that they are a hero. Furthermore, she asked Thea to interrogate them, and go to that place to take a look. The next action has already been decided and sent the best magicians of the country. Let's see if we can find any remaining evidence. She asked Thea if she could join. Unfortunately, I still have another urgent matter that needs to be completed immediately. An angry old man said there was something more urgent than that. He said that I, from a personal perspective, thought that Ms. Thea had contributed. More than enough for the council once again, thank you for your help Academy X Yus. Welcomed you home early when you left your contracted beast, asked what made you so distracted, she replied anyway. Thinking about it for a moment, I don't know if not telling the council that it was the student who discovered Lance Alex was a right or wrong action. Of course, that kid is quite mysterious. The council suspects him. That's really not good. I think we're very lucky that he couldn't see anything down there. As he walked, she felt something, and then suddenly got attacked. Maybe they've been waiting here for a long time. 
It's been a long time since I injured her in the back. She felt that there wasn't just one guy here. It was troublesome. But when the group of people rushed up to attack, she defeated each of them easily, and she ordered Avi to take care of the rest. One of them said I've heard a lot of great things about you. It seems like you live here very well. She reminded him that your mana core doesn't have much left. I will let you die happily if you tell me your plan. They laughed loudly. She thought I would tell a traitor. Why did she make a big mistake? Then they will gradually take back her power. Originally, you could just assume that this continent would disappear in a century or so. Well, we have spies in every corner of this continent, from the jungle to the deep sea. Let's go, you guys are just in a few short years. The war will break out. Will he be able to live long enough? Then he will be beaten so much that he will cry out in pain. Mrs. Thank you, Avi, for solving that mess. He answered you with one sentence. Extremely scary, nothing. The human flesh is a bit stringy, but still edible. Mrs. Tain came closer and rubbed his head, worried about her. He asked her how the wound on her back was. She was fine, but it seemed like everything was going too easy. Maybe we should have gone to the beach first, just hoping my suspicions were wrong, and she took out a blue solution and poured it on the wound on her back, where she was attacked until her shirt was torn. But why did it appear on her back? Red characters appear like the guy who died. Is this related to her? And on the other side, their conversation is still going on. The other man said I feel like if we can communicating this way would be much more convenient. He was sweating and somewhat scared. He thought that someone was even stronger than a white core magician. A god. He reassured himself that he needed to calm down. Now was not the time. To be dumbfounded like that. Now you say before starting I want to confirm a few things. The guard said earlier that the gate connecting to Eleanor has something wrong with Princess Test and Mr. Viran. These things have what does it have to do with the orb you gave me? The man raised his hand and a stream of yellow light appeared. Then he said I just need to confirm that you will pass through the gate. That stream of yellow light appeared. Princess Test and her grandfather as you can see. The demon princess. And the previous demon came are fine. Now the demon princess is even much stronger. Thanks to the L stone that you generously gave her. Stop her core from exploding remember to keep the second one that one is for you ace surprise sorry to explode now. Let's talk about why I brought you here. You are now a subject of Decathan. But Dicathan is not the only continent in this world. Nor is it a secret that Daikin and Alaka are always under the control of our gods who reside in land of Yuas. Even though lower class people like you call us, we are gods. And have always kept that honor from ancient times until now. We call ourselves Azura's Yuas and Alaka wait just like you god passed down the ancient artifacts that taught us magic. Now, you only know about the ancient artifacts because the demon king Zen told you. But no one in your land can know the truth about them. Ajuras Ajuras are governed by a kind of aristocratic duty. We never intervene directly in the affairs of your people and lands unless peace or balance is threatened. But the rules of destiny, this order has been broken. The different multiracial families have divided the Yu's flock into three factions. The ruling families of each faction have their own priorities, but we all still remain neutral. Resolutely not against the lower classes. However, after Anna became the new leader of the Vritra faction, he broke that doctrine in an attempt to promote his party faction to cover Vritra. So that is the name of the faction of our party. I'm afraid you've met a few members of the Vritra family who always act irregularly and even confront Azuras, thinking that they are scientists and constantly researching and delving into projects. Researching about mana, when Agrona took power, the power of Vritra increased exponentially. We concluded that Agrona and those faction members experimented on the lower class human bodies in Alaka to find ways to different things to improve their own abilities. I feel cruel, but I don't understand what these things have to do with me. That's right, maybe these things probably have nothing to do with you. But from now on, you have to must be related because you were connected to us and the man who used the powerful blue light to turn the dragon into a dragon said we had been searching for Lady Sylvia for years. And when we finally found a clue to his man, now we saw a small boy carrying a god on his shoulders. And now he is bonded with my master's only daughter, and you, the daughter of the strongest person in the three continents of this world, was bewildered so everything Viren said, was true so dragons are gods as well as Sylvia's grandmother and one of the strongest people if you talk about blood, it's true that they are strong and have their potential. Most gods have three forms, but it seems that Sir Sivia Ace Bao's daughter. Her name is Sive. The other person feels like Miss Sive told her to only take that small beast form to store. Energy, although most Azurists tend to maintain humanoid form to store mana Ace, looked at S then wondered humanoid Sylvia's if she hasn't transformed into humanoid by now, 
Then it's most likely because of her. It's impossible that Miss Sides mana core is still undeveloped, and considering how other factors are going we have found signs that Rona's spies have set foot on this continent the war is gradually coming. And although the upper class Ezalon and Yus will never admit it at all cost your connection, with Lady Siv, can play a huge role in this as long as you agree to become their ally. If we have win then, we won't have to divide CT. What are you and Miss Sivai doing? Ace clenched his fist thinking. So if I don't help you will take Sivai away. Calm down. Tell me how much this war will last, including my continent, and also my family and friends I will become your ally, in a way other than what you are asking, am I willing to become a pawn under your control? It's up to you whether you're young or not, but you're so sharp. Your mana core has also developed very well, but once two Thu Siv comes to use, we can train you with Ace. Whatever we have to do, to use, that's right, the power of Lady Siv that even Azura's would envy lies hidden beneath him. You are hardly exploited use is the only place where you have the chance to learn how to unlock your potential. Because yet both of them were able to become stronger, and only then was D. Caton able to fight against the five magicians from Alasa, and one day dark clouds came to cover the sky in a room of committee members. The disciplinary committee is meeting. The princess thinks it's been almost two days since Clay and Kiss returned to the field trip. But the two of them can't rest with all the crime that's increasing in the K Academy campus. They brutalize and blacken the statue right next to our building, just because he was an untouchable and a goblin. Kiss said we need to stop this group of discriminatory people right now. Now before they do anything more serious, the princess continues to think that her brother hasn't told anyone since he told her what happened in the dungeon, and that he and his group had to leave the church behind. What's behind the question? How does the search work? The professors don't bother to help us search for real evidence. They're too busy worrying about stupid sponsors. What does that idiot think? He raised his hand and said I only caught a few faces hanging around here, but they weren't the ones involved. I also kept a close eye on Sly Ravenpaw, but I couldn't just arrest him without permission. Is there any evidence that according to what the sentence said, what's the point of the disciplinary committee still existing if we can't solve this problem? Cull sighed and said we can only wait for Principal Good Sky to come home. I can't believe it. They caused all of this just because they were dissatisfied with the way the school was run, and what made us act was that the angry princess became a professor. It was a testament to his ability. It's not because they have support behind them. There's no reason for them to use this as an excuse for a member of the disciplinary committee to grab the princess's wrist and say of course Princess Clin we all know, and I still hate her. They are much better because they dare to use excuses to commit crimes. Clay helplessly said we just don't know what to do. Now the princess bowed her face and said if Ace were here, he would definitely know how to act. Call Sand. I'm sorry, but we can't drag Athe into this incident. She said he would return to Fuyuai soon. Call Kellen and suddenly everyone heard a loud noise. Sorry, everyone looked in that direction. Clay asked if you were Ad's friend. That's right, sorry for interrupting. I'm not sure when the next time we'll meet will be, but it's nice to have everyone here hear about it. Suddenly there was a loud noise that shook the whole room. Everyone rush out quickly. What's going on? We'll meet everyone on side B. Besides Ace's friend fell to the ground. A friend helped him up and asked him if he was okay. I'm fine, thank you princess. While running, I thought equality was always important to my mother. I still remember when I was little, I refused to take classes with others, because they weren't princesses like me. Mom gently said to my mother's little Clint, I know you didn't do anything wrong, but you don't want to study with anyone because they're not princesses. That's not good at all. I want you to know that before you were a princess, you were also an ordinary person, an important person who was not a king. Still a queen, a servant or a powerful magician, or even an elf or troll everyone is different in their own way, but a human is still just a human. Never hate someone because of what they can't do and shouldn't change that. I realize that my mother is a rational and intelligent person. Even now, she always thinks of others. She always teaches me and my brother strictly about the types of people and the inequalities we unconsciously cause. Mother fought hard to get a building on campus to serve as both a museum and a memorial place for the alliance of the three races. When I was a child, my mother took me here and introduced me to her. This is the Hall of the Three Great Alliances considered a symbol of culture and peace. But now, it is on fire. People are running away in panic. It cannot be considered a fire target like this. Professors and members of the disciplinary committee quickly entered the circle to put out the fire and rescue the classmates who were trapped inside a reminder. Be careful on this side. There are students on this side too. Take them to the hospital. Immediately deal with the fire on the left side. After a while of effort, the fire has been extinguished. The beautiful council of the past is now burned even though the fire had been extinguished. That made Lai disappointed. He felt pain and was not happy about it. Seeing his mother's brainchild burn, Princess Klin shouted angrily and shouted Lai. Then rushed towards him to attack. 
but he immediately used a nearby friend to escape, but unfortunately for him, he was able to grab his shirt and lift him up. He asked for help from everyone around. Someone help me. He was very angry and threw him to the ground. You said less nonsense, whole lie. We need to ask you something. He sweet dropped and looked around to seek help from everyone. A professor came, walked over, and asked what was going on here. So now was not the time to attack each other. Seeing a glimmer of hope for help, the other guy quickly shouted loudly and pointed in the direction of the disciplinary commissioner, professor. Take me up by the neck for no reason at all. I don't know what's going on, I almost died in the explosion, just now, but they still surrounded and attacked me an innocent bystander following the innocent anger of a group of superiors I've noticed you countless times. You and that group of friends are always hanging around the crime scene. But you want me to believe that you're innocent, the professor said. Could it be that the disciplinary committee is now in charge? Just wandering around and drawing baseless conclusions. Why attack students without evidence? Professor Glory is no better than Professor Glory, who is afraid things will become more tense, and has come between the two of them. According to her, she understands the feeling of tension. I'm helpless, but I can't accuse students without evidence. We can't be too hasty now. The students outside will see this right away. Start talking about the disciplinary committee. What are they doing? They're preparing. Beat that student before the professor arrived, right? Princess Clint was about to use her magic wand to attack that obnoxious guy, but Tiss grabbed her wrist to stop her and turned around to tell her. Listen to Professor Glory. We need to apologize and make sure no one else inside the building angrily picked up his book and threw it at his two friends, then angrily turned around and walked away. Princess Clint walked away, turned his head to look at him, and he was being helped by his two friends, then turned around and smiled sinisterly. His friend was practicing very tired, feeling helpless about himself. Damn it again. He came out. I tried again but it still didn't work. He sat down on the ground. Communicating with the earth was easy, but his control was too weak. Even after reaching the pale state, he still had to try harder. It was too much for him. Because of my inherent talent, I must talk to my boss about this and ask him to train me more so that I can become a magician with the four golden elements and the will of the dragon member of the K-Law Committee after rescuing everyone. The grandmother who was able to extinguish the fire sat down to rest together. One member said that if she was here today, she would probably extinguish the fire herself. When she heard that she was still alive, the whole group was very excited. Clay happily covered his mouth and smiled and said, that's right, I know, I know he's still alive. He's my one and only opponent. Thank God, maybe we have to solve this miserable failure before Ace turns around just come back so he doesn't have to do anything. I know right away that annoying boy won't fall over and die right away. Right, four-eyed friend put his head in his hands and continued to think, I don't know. Will they still worry like that when they discover the true power of evil? Will they worry in another way? I see with that skill and power, he is very famous, even without he has people like the disciplinary committee member and Princess Tessia, who are genuinely worried about those factors. If I hadn't grown up with dwarves, would I be able to be treated like that by them? Who are we? It's the same as strange creatures of nature. But the only difference is that everything beneficial is for Ace. He tore his hair and suddenly remembered the image of Ace reaching out to pull him up in the practice room. About the times when the two of them laughed happily, when they were resting, when they were adventurers, they got to know each other and overcame difficulties together. Then he felt that it couldn't be like that, he staggered to his feet and saw that always stand by my side, but he still has to face an even bigger battle. If I want to stand next to him, I have to be stronger. Without hesitation, he immediately rushed into practice and came to a door. Quite large, there was a green light emitting, and there were many people waiting with carts waiting for their turn to go through that gate. A muscular man stood leaning against the cart, drenched in sweat and frowning. How long will it take to finish? The guy below quickly replied that at this speed, we'd be lucky to finish it by the end of the day. Just be happy, because at least we can still work here thanks to the committee that established the group's name. That big man saw her, and an elf girl blatantly not having to stand in line when they arrived first, but were still waiting in line. He angrily rushed over and pulled his shoulder to push something. Please wait a minute, coldly replied. Can I help you? When he saw Ace's face, he recognized this boy. He's not even an elf. He said, Hey kid, did the mist make you blind in one eye or something? He pointed in the direction. Don't you see that there's a place to line up to get to the castle? She quickly used her hand to stop him. This guy was Eleno's guest and was in a very urgent situation right now, but he didn't pay any attention to what the girl said. He pushed him hard. She came out even with a man waiting with him, pulled his shoulder to stop her from leaving. Roger ignored him and grumpily said no. We are all licensed to be guests of Eleanor, and we also have business to attend to. Inside too, he pointed his finger at Ace, I'm asking why this uneducated guy can't stand in line while we've been sitting here but for hours. And then Ace is calm and cold, I shook his dirty hand away, 
and told him clearly that I had a good reason for not placing him there. But that made him even more bitter. He smiled contemptuously, as if your father didn't know how to teach you. Right, he used his fire magic to grab you by the collar and lift you up. Don't worry, I have enough self-control so you won't be burned alive, kid. Even though he lifted you up, you weren't scared or worried at all. On the contrary, he calmly replied that if this uncle wanted to burn me alive, it would take at least this amount of time to burn him. He used his ultimate magic to get rid of that guy. That power made him fall to the ground with a look on his face. Pale with fear and everyone around him was extremely surprised, and so no one dared to come close to block his way or cause any trouble. He looked at the soldier as he walked and remembered the conversation he had with himself. Claiming to be a god, if you said it was so difficult to find a monk, why did it take so long to only find us? Doesn't my beast will also have Siv's mana characteristics once you took Lady Siv's feathers to use? By covering up the contract seal, you also covered up that unique presence. However, you did very well. But now that we found you, it's time to depart for use. Let's go for a while. They also arrived in front of a magnificent palace. He looked up at the sky and asked himself. If Fio Tusu walked a little further, they were stopped by two guards. Good morning. Who is this? He took out the family pendant, looked at it, and asked if anyone had verified this pendant. He was thinking if no one believes that this badge is real then, what's the use of me holding it? Those two guys looked at each other suspiciously and then bowed and asked to leave. Go straight in. As you were about to enter, suddenly there was a blue stream of power. The two guys quickly raised their shields in defense. Ace stepped back. Ace already had his formula in hand, ready to attack. He felt happy to see that the royal guard was not a bad person, but now he was in terrible trouble. Suddenly there was a call from behind the blast of power. There I'm so happy to see you again. I'm sweating. Did someone break in? Do you think I did all these things just because Russia was the intruder? The green light continued to appear at this time. Stronger than just now. I can't control it. He looked at her and said it turned out her body had long been filled with the beast will of the Elderwood. She gasped in surprise. Why did she do that? Can completely integrate the S-Sir level animal's will. Not to mention that this is related to the marble from Winds. He told you that even though she keeps awakening, Texie still cannot control the rope. Leo, if you cut something, it will grow twice as much. Come and try once, kid. I'll be on the ground helping the people behind. Ask Mr. Viran. Do we need any help? He waved his hand and said to everyone, You just need to stand there. Let's clean up this area and make sure no one comes here. The guy on the other side asked questions, but as for the other kid, he turned around and told the other kid to stay, then they left. They just turned their backs and asked, I wonder who that boy is. He said the less people who know about Tessia, the better. Now kid, are you ready to go? I asked Papa if I should stay back. Yeah, we don't want the people in the castle to panic. I was scared because I saw a dragon in the explosion. I'll call you if anything goes wrong. Then you turned to him and said, let's go. The two of them started to enter the vines. After a while, dodging the attacks. Ace felt that using the Fire Master at this time was too risky. He thought for a while then quickly rushed towards the test. He told her to try to hold on to the vine so it wouldn't close. She was quite happy when she saw Ace and said I can hold it for a while. She told her to hurry up. She couldn't hold on any longer. He came closer to her and gently said, Okay, I'm coming. He hummed, took her into his arms, and carry her out of the vines. Test, are you okay? Test reply. I hate the scene where I always need you to help me gently hug test. Consolation is not your fault. If there is a fault, it is also the fault of the beast. Will that I gave you punched him in the chest and replied that no, what you gave me is a great opportunity. Now I have to learn how to use it and become stronger so that I can fight with you. You punched your hand to show your agreement. I will wait for the boy standing aside to see everything. It's too early to tell him everything, but one day that boy may know everything from Miss Saivai, especially the secret behind it. After his lineage, Princess Test and Asia were looking at each other affectionately when they were interrupted by Mr. Viren's coughing voice. I don't like to destroy the atmosphere, but think of the people who have to clean up this mess and catch them. Let's go first. The cleaners whined and said, Master, at this rate, we'll have to clean all night to finish. Why is this happening? Princess Test and Ace looked at each other shyly and quickly walked away. Further away, she stood in a corner, covering her face, and asked where to start. He pointed to the back and said somewhere that wouldn't explode into pieces. They sat on a horse-drawn carriage and went through a wing. Romantic, romantic forest test, because she was so tired and fell asleep. It was my fault for encouraging the test, which she wanted to release the first stage of her animal, Well, we both thought it was her. It can be controlled by her body. After all, it's already been integrated. So, I also think I have the ability to keep her under control. I'm not in a hurry. Her coordination was accelerated. 
She skipped the training phase and never had a chance to test her level of control. She could feel her animal willpower being completely different from the one I had expected to have. Fully integrated, it still feels like it's blocking her mana. At this point, Ace told Mr. Tess to be more careful. If this continues to happen, both she and those around her will definitely die. After hearing about danger, he immediately got angry. Of course I know, I'm just a normal grandfather who's a little excited and proud of his granddaughter's achievements. But that's a sin, right? Having a seal restrain her mana until she can control it better is the best solution. But if that's the case, she'll be put in a passive position at any time if something unexpected happens. If she can't handle it, maybe we should start by finding an artifact to protect her safety. Yes, a protective artifact. That sounds good. And if that helps you feel good, then I will be with your beloved niece as much as possible. Oh, I'm sure you will do it. But suddenly he pondered and said, Hey kid, although I know I tease you a lot with testing, but what do you really think about my niece? I wonder if you have ever thought about marrying her one fine day. Hearing this question from your grandfather, you felt very surprised. You were stunned for a few seconds, and then called out, Mr. He continued. I mean, sure, she has a bit of a rude personality towards both her parents, and I've spoiled her a little bit, but she's a very good person. You two have been side by side before, and you can't find anyone like her, you know? I think goblins love everyone. Dating or getting married will be very late. I heard that. Laugh out loud. Ha ha. I often look at DK Tendy's dizzying rate of change. If we don't change, what will we become? I guess I really want to know if you like my niece. You calmly answer that you do. But I also can't be sure what the real meaning is between like and love. I hope that in the near future I will find the answer, but until then, I want to improve myself more before thinking about it. When it comes to getting married with your niece, he was quite pleased with your answer. He said it was a good answer. His mind was in the right place. The computer sat in his lap and tested, and he was happy to say he he you know. Even Papa also likes Mama, but seeing his worried face he laughed and said not to worry he was still sleeping, but to his surprise she heard everything he said, and she broke out in a sweat, oh, oh my god, he just admitted that he likes me, I can't believe that grandpa was able to make him admit that he liked me, great job, grandpa was so happy that she felt like she was breathing too fast, remember to close your eyes to test and then breathe softly, can he hear me breathing too fast, oh no, can he hear my heart beating, the two of them looked at her, and wondered why she was sweating so much, I don't know if I have nightmares or I look out the window and start thinking. My concern for testing is definitely different from other people's, but the best thing I can do for her right now is just is to protect her. I will become the best protective artifact for her. After all, knowing that Ellie and her mother also have Phoenix pendants with them is also a kind of security for me. But even so, it's just it's just a temporary charm and L hasn't fully awakened yet, and what Wynn soon said about the approaching war is also true. I should find the contract animal for L one strong enough and big enough to have. If the contracted beast can protect Elle's life, then surely it can also protect her from those scoundrel but cowardly brats who always bully her. That's right, I should definitely find a pet for my sister that can pounce on anyone within three feet of her. He said I don't know what you're thinking but stop it now. We're here after a while of traveling, they arrived at their destination. As soon as they got down, she was happy to see her father and mother immediately running back to hug them. It's nice to see you again. It seems like whenever my daughter is in trouble, you're always by my side. That's right. We all know how to thank you. But maybe someone would be kind enough to explain to everyone. Why did we move the whole family all the way here? And why was our manor destroyed so much? Everyone laughed loudly and looked at the test. Father laughed and said, Don't tell me you're finally here. Have you learned how to destroy things or something? Test is embarrassed and shy to say it's not really like that, but Grandpa has relieved his beloved niece of that situation. No need to worry about this anymore. I'm just training Test, when he got a little excited and accidentally destroyed a part of the manor, but he stood next to him, with a wondering face. What kind of thing? The eyes of his grandfather and Test made him admit yes, yes, what he said. He stretched and smiled and said he would fix it right away, but there were only a few draft pages in the manor that might make him feel uncomfortable. Besides, I think it's been a long time since I visited Rinia. Test told us that we haven't seen Rinia in a long time. Is everything okay? He hesitantly replied that Rinia was just a little busy. He turned away and told everyone nearby that Rinia also told me a few times that she really hoped she would come here in the future. She replied that I was very curious. I wonder why she is interested in me. But where exactly is Rinia? I don't remember clearly the last time we visited. It's been a long time since she moved away. We can see Rinia. And you answer everyone's questions. Rinia chose a place to isolate herself near the edge of the kingdom. She won't say why, but I almost died because of her traps in the time I came here without warning. I also said that we will come next time, but we need to be careful. If she is on guard, it means there is someone she needs to be careful of. 
around and thought, what made Rinia have to protect herself so much? Everyone went into a pretty deep forest and saw the prey appearing nearby. Savai came close to attack it. She was very happy to have C. This bait test father told Ace to say that your connection, once again, surprised me. Ace replied all day and so did you. It made you go from one surprise to another, even though I realized that I haven't had a chance to thank you two properly and ask why I feel sorry for you for keeping my daughter safe. From what I heard, every time I escaped, it was all thanks to your help. The boy scratched his head and then humbly replied that it's nothing. The test also helped me. Surprised oh how, Ace thought for a while and said that it had helped me many times to keep my mind alert. He chuckled and said that. Not what I expected to hear from a 13-year-old boy, but for some reason I had to consider you as an adult. Thank you for your generous words towards me. He stopped walking and said, that's not necessarily a compliment. As a father, no father wants to see their child grow up too quickly, let alone see their child take on things that are only for adults. I thought to myself that I stopped being a child more than 30 years ago. Do you know that it was because of you that the council was formed? You pointed at yourself and asked why. To be honest, I have no impression. Good image to humanity since the war. I lost my beloved mother because of them. I have never found a reason to forgive them and think a few years later, I almost lost my daughter after the slave traders invaded our forest. There was a human boy who brought my daughter home safely. His courage not only saved her from those slave traders, but also about the Love King's sister being lectured by a human child is a necessary warning for me. Anyway, I just want you to know that I have no objections to you becoming a member of our family. Mother Test turned back towards us. The two of them then said, he could make a cool face like just now, but my husband vomited for you more than just once or twice. He was so embarrassed his face turned red M-M-E-R-I-L. If you want privacy, you should summon the Fang Meyer group Theo from what I see. It seems like you want everyone to hear everything. Surprise test wow, this leaf looks so beautiful. Look at these very symmetrical leaf veins, and it's so smooth to the touch. The two of them standing behind could only laugh. Except suddenly Grandpa raised his hand to test and stood nearby wondering Grandpa told everyone to be quiet everyone heard a noise and were in a defensive position intending to rush up to attack and scream loudly monster but got caught he stopped the woman and loudly said that you were swinging your sword to slash the old woman. It was because you guys were late but he felt helpless and thought with that face it was me I also cut the test. He quickly ran back to Hub and meet Grandma Renia. I'm so happy Miss Itsko. At first, he said it was nice to see you again, my dear. He said I thought we would meet her at the entrance. But she reasoned and said it was because I had been waiting for so long that I was impatient. So I went to look to see if you were lost. But she happily pinched his cheeks, and it's been a few years since I last saw him. He's a big young man. He's so handsome. If he were a hundred years younger, I'd take him home, rub his face, and say that after he almost pooped his pants because I thought I was seeing the ghost. I didn't know how to react when I heard that sentence. She told me not to ask Viren how beautiful I was back then. The men all fell at my feet as soon as I appeared. Mother tested, covering her mouth and smiling. That's right, my mother often says that girls her age are all jealous of Rinya. Your attitude is that she's only good enough to be watchable. Of course you'll think that then there's only one girl. The only one that caught my eye Viren no continue talking. But she suddenly stopped and turned towards that direction. Vivan, I'm sorry. I was a bit careless. The whole test family bowed their heads when they heard that he said, I'm the one who should apologize to me. I also understood how she felt, cutting through that awkward atmosphere. She said that no matter what, we were almost there, and then he told me to wait, but there was a hand pulling him back and everyone walked together for a while. Then they also arriving at the place, she guided everyone. They were surprised by her series of actions. She advised them not to summon any light. We will walk in the dark. There are many things to discuss in our house. They also arrived. Her residence. Then we drank tea and chatted together. She poured out hot cups of tea to welcome everyone. She held a cup of tea in her hand and sipped it, wondering if there was any kind of black magic that could make a person die. The space inside was bigger than the outside. So while they were chatting, suddenly they all fell asleep. Was it because they were so tired from the journey that they fell asleep without thinking much about it? He continued sipping his cup of tea. She held a cup of tea in her hand and told him that I thought he should be more careful when he saw everyone unconscious at the same time. His face showed a sad expression. Then he slowly replied that he had been thinking for the past few days. It was difficult to and not surprised anymore. But it's very possible that she already knows this. She smiled and replied that you're right. Can you say that what I'm about to tell you is something only you know? Yes. But before that, I felt like I still needed to speak about my power as a fortune teller. You were surprised that in the history books of Ex-Yus, there were almost no records of black magic because it was so rare. If it were true, the teacher of fortune telling, she smiled and said you look interested. She put the cup of tea on the table, and slowly as you know, 
or don't know. Those who possess divination can exploit the four forms. Higher basic elements must find their own source of power to charge their magic, which is also different from ordinary magicians who draw their power from man nap particles in the air. For example, your mother's example is a stimulator whose healing ability is unmatched by any return to origin spell in my lifetime of voodoo users who have a unique supply of their own magic. They can only be counted on the fingers of one hand, and all of them have a common trait. Their man may source they take from there to charge their magic. This is also different from people with unusual T elements, like you and the fortune teller. Our powers also develop in different directions that can awaken our powers at any time in our lives and most often lead to the process of cleansing the marrow. And from there, the prospects are blurred. About the future often appears in our minds. Most of us are extremely vague, and it is difficult to grasp what the image is. These flash images of the future actually don't consume any mana at all right now. Now if I can't control it then it's not a useful power, right? I wonder what about those spells that you used when I was little, the kind that can connect with my father, my mother, and can communicate with them. She happily answered your questions. That is the mantra that I have used to combine the powers of a fortune teller, to illustrate the image of genuine fortune telling that must be known. To foresee the future means to know when something will happen, and where you are. That sounds quite vague. I'm sorry, Rinia. I don't really understand if that's your true power as a leader. Fortune teller. And if the mana core doesn't power that magic, then how come she interrupted me with a rather serious face? My life expectancy is the times fortune tellers like us peep into the future. This means that our lifespan will become shorter and shorter. That is the true power of divination. Everything else is just choosing a useful spell without exceeding the allowed limit. Do you remember? Last time, did we mention Mr. Varun's wife? Her name is Lania. She is also a one-person fortune teller. She is much more powerful than me in unconscious divination and her magic is detailed and long. Much more noble than me and more often than not, with her beauty and gentle personality, she always makes the succubus of our generation jealous and hateful. She is the pride of our kingdom. After she and Viren fell in love, the two of them held a my love wedding and officially became husband and wife. It seemed like even fate smiled and blessed them. Fate was also extremely harsh on her and both of them. The war between the demon world and the human world was approaching its end. They sat down and negotiated a treaty. The tension between the two sides was still extremely strong, and they I suspect that humanity still wants to assert its power. We were right because the Queen of Spain has launched a post chew move against the future heir to the demon throne. The King of Aces is constantly surprised. He was surprised by what she said to make sure what he heard was true. He asked her what she meant by admitting that it was true that Viren became their assassination target. Hearing that, he immediately remembered when on the way here she if he said one sentence, of course he would think that way. Then there was only one girl who caught Ver's eye. Her eyes and sad expression softly said I understand. Then she looked in the direction where Mr. Varin was sleeping. Mrs. He clasped his hands together and continued to tell the unfinished story. Viren's wife was extremely tormented by his death. She only had very little information about how he would die. He said indignantly, but she is a fortune teller. She can explain. If she tries to defy destiny, someone else will definitely die. Varian also knows that his wife will have to receive all the backlash and begged her to stop but she ignored what Mr. Viren said and stubbornly continued to do it behind his back. We only see the future once and can still feel the life that is coming. Every day gradually drifting out of her body, she continued to do the same every day for the person she loved. But after all, she still endured. In the end, she was able to keep Viren alive enough until the day her beloved king came. The glider organized a rebellion and defeated her father to end the war. She succeeded but in return her life was completely burned a few weeks later. She died within a few weeks. The hand of the person I love is also the reason why I have to hate Varen for a long time afterwards. And I also hate my sister for being cruel and abandoning me in this world. What sister? What do you mean? After that tragic story, he looked at Mr. Varen with sympathetic and understanding eyes and thought that Mr. Varen's appearance and personality were always filled with joy and love to play around with others, which he never had. I can't think that he was a person with such a tragic past. She picked up a cup of tea, took a sip, and continued to say that I didn't tell you this story just because I wanted sympathy. She immediately asked why. Why? Because I had to use the same power that killed my sister to see into your future. I asked suspiciously about your future. Why? It seemed like she sensed something so she climbed up. You sat on your thighs and looked frowning. Seeing that, she said it seemed like your contract could sense that you were in trouble. Yes, that's right because our emotions are linked together. You looked at him and patted his head to reassure him that I was fine, but thank you for telling the truth. Even before I saw you or your contract for the first time, I was peeking at your future. Even before we met, why is it so natural? 
She calmly said that having the vision of a specific person in such a way was something that had never happened before. It's a whole new era. Everything is changing, and you always seem to be at the center of it all. Thinking of a new era, you immediately asked why. Why me? The answer was very difficult. But if I reveal too much to you, it will affect the result you want. But if I tell you too little, it will destroy my point of finding a better result than she did. So I'm sacrificing my life. Rinia, what can I do? Can I help you? Wait, does Mr. Vera know? She raised her hand and waved back and forth, saying why him? I've lived long enough. If, if it can help someone's future, I should use it. But it seems that when looking at his future, there are a few more troublesome enemies. So this hideout itself is no longer a secret. About to say something, she raised her hand to stop him and said it was my choice. I just wish I could gather more useful information and you will have to face a series of difficulties. No matter what future you choose, it will not change. On the path you walk, there will always be enemies and obstacles in your way. But after all, all I can tell you is that you need an anchor and cling to the shore. The ultimate goal overcomes the stress of thinking. The ultimate goal, she continued, you want to accomplish. How your life is is what guides the path you choose. I just want to say two things. A person does bad things for good reasons, not just looking at the surface of the iceberg and two. Often the most dangerous enemy is not necessarily the person who sits on the throne and holds supreme power and pull the strings of everything, but an abandoned soldier has nothing left to lose. Mrs. I apologize and apologize for not being able to reveal anything more to you. Serious evil. Ask what if you don't make the right choice. She put the cup of tea in her hand on the table, then stood up and patted his shoulder to comfort him. Sometimes, the right choice is not necessarily the best choice. We talked all night before returning with the family to test tomorrow morning. Then you should rest a bit. Late at night in a deserted forest, Lucas held a green liquid in his hand and told the other three guys, this is the same Talao thing as the one your little leader gave you. Is that Marsus the pig? That guy explained that Marsus was willing to take it, but his body was too weak to resist this thing. Lucas asked, so you haven't tried to hit him yet? He turned his face to the side. Being angry and not saying anything is even more outrageous. Lucas moved closer and provoked, wait a minute, don't tell me, I'm not even going to try this. He covered his face and laughed loudly so none of the three of you don't you dare try to be embarrassed. Look, he looked at the liquid in his hand and thought that their core was weaker than his own. While the moment the drug penetrated their body system, it was very difficult to escape the death of that guy. He was so angry he shouted loudly at Lucas. Do you think we have to babies at you like a baby before tomorrow? There is much more to do our intelligence has informed and warned that the disciplinary committee is getting more and more, there's more blood. We need to act right now. There's a pretty big source of fire right past his body, and then he's quite startled and scared. He says, hey, the lights haven't awakened yet. The fire around Lucas's body is burning brightly. Just saying you're just a news kid. What reason do you have to dare to scream loudly at me? Your leader is acting according to a predetermined plan while you still have to stand here to look after me. He used his hand to open the lid without hesitation and drank the entire bottle of solution. It immediately took effect. He clenched his hands in pain and then fell face down on the ground. Seeing that, the other guy smiled with satisfaction and said, great. Trung started pointing fingers and talking about how he couldn't resist. This medicine isn't much better than that pig. I've had to suffer. Seeing this scene these past few days, it's worth it for him. Arrogantly saying that if you bark to your heart's content, then you have to hide behind a trash family's family, then you'll always be a trash. You're about to die. Hurry up and do that. Don't waste our time anymore. Just finished speaking. He was blown away by Lucas's power and hit the corner of a nearby tree. The two guys who were with him, one ran back to the other guy and the other guy scowled and held a sword. In case of Lucas, Lucas knelt on the ground and looked at the source of the power. Strength was radiating around him, and then remembered the conversation with his brother Land when he stopped by the school on business, and then took advantage of the situation to threaten him. We heard that you were the one who started the fight. I thought I was enough, strong enough to keep wasting time deceiving everyone around you. Why do you still want to depend on your parents and spend thousands of gold just to forcefully make your ruined body stronger? Or do you finally knowing that he was self-reliant after thinking about it, he smiled cruelly. The sword-wielding man was so scared that he quickly ran away, leaving his two teammates behind. But before he could run far, Lucas was attacked. The other guy burned to death. Seeing that, he was also worried. He stood up and shouted loudly. Juno, the injured man, saw that he intended to leave him behind. So he grabbed his wrist and told him that wherever he wanted to go, he had to heal me. He shook his hand away and said, let go of your hand. Juno is dead. He immediately ran back and was heartbroken no-no. He turned around and shouted loudly, You monster, you kill him. He wasn't scared or scared at all. 
Lucas replied blightingly. Right after that, I pounced on him and strangled him. Bao Tao just wanted to make sure you all knew that that medicine was much more effective for me than that pig. The pain around his neck was so painful that his eyes were bleeding. There was blood pouring out. He moaned and said please, don't but Lucas didn't care about that plea and killed him too. One up and the other was injured sitting at the base of a tree, Lucas now had symbols on his back. The red color aggressively walked towards that guy. He said devilishly and said hey, try saying I'm trash again. He was scared and said no no no. In the forest where Ace had come, Mrs. Rinia had already prepared for everyone. A meal after waking up, everyone was still quite tired. She brought the food to the table and said it seemed like the sedative herbs I put in the tea last night were a bit too strong. I didn't know it would knock everyone out. Test's father happily said it's okay, we also need to sleep. But Mr. Viran replied that it's just me, I still have urgent work to do. She interrupted him. What does it have to do with Tessia's matter? My hidden love turned into a large part of the castle that and in and Mur, I spent many years repairing into a pile. Hearing that, Mr. Viren was very embarrassed to stop her from continuing. He hastily fed her vegetables. Then she said this vegetable is delicious. She tried some deer irinia, and suddenly she took out a round box from her sleeve and put it on the table and said that your grandfather wanted something to help control your sexual drive. I couldn't believe my eyes or was it because she was so tired that she rubbed her eyes and took the box and opened it. She was very surprised because inside was a very beautiful yellow bracelet. Thank you for asking. We were just talking about the beast seal yesterday. Why did you look at me with a look of wonder? Okay, now you must be the strange one because you're still surprised. Tessa's father has expressing gratitude that Mrs. Rinia has always taken care of Tessia Mrs. Tui said it was my pleasure that now let us enjoy lunch together before the children have to leave. After eating and drinking, Mrs. Rinia led everyone there. A tunnel with a door will lead us back to the city of Hexorus. Ace wondered and asked me if I thought the portals that existed since ancient times would be strictly managed by empires, but are you allowed to own them? One just for me. Mrs. Rinia heard my question and didn't answer, but just smiled. Through that smile, she also provided information to let me know the answer for me, and my parents were wondering. Embrace her and hug her. We will come visit you soon. Mr. Viren came up and patted her head and told her to stop by the principal's office. Good sky, before school started. We haven't heard anything about her in a long time. I want to make sure she's still breathing. She happily replied, I'll do it. Then she ran towards Grandma Rinia, hugged her, and said thank you. Thank you for inviting us here, Grandma Rinia. I wish we could stay longer. Then Grandma hugged her niece lovingly and said it's okay my dear, I love every moment, with Ace standing nearby witnessing everything about their separation. His face was indescribably sad, it seemed like he was vi, felt his father's feelings, and immediately asked if he was okay. Papa, I'm fine. Don't worry. The farewell is now over. Asia and Test stood near the door and waved goodbye to everyone. The two of them also after entering the gate for a while, they reached the city of Xerus. She wondered if there would be guards in front of each gate. Evil Star replied, I heard that many employees quit their jobs when the Aurora Star game appeared. Currently, because trading is slow during this time, maybe they are just sure of staff. The two of them walked silently forward. But she was very happy and surprised when she saw the Aurora constellation. She said, even if I look at it, how many times has the star cluster Aurora been really beautiful when viewed from Tsus Looking up at the sky, and then telling Papa, the sky is still cracked. They looked at the sky while walking together towards a magnificent house. Nearing the house they ran super fast. First to knock on the door, and the person who opened the door made the boss and test freeds for a moment. It turned out that it was Ms. Jasmine. She opened the door and said I haven't seen you for a long time. I came at that time. Then there were two people behind the door, looking up to welcome him back home. They said he had grown up a lot. If I hadn't been wandering around, I probably wouldn't have noticed that he was gone. The red-haired guy put his arm around the shoulders of a big man and said stop pretending no more dude. I've been teasing for a long time. Do you see anything different about this bear? At first I thought he was imitating me, but it turned out he was the inspiration for this horrible thing and there was a beautiful girl walking down the bridge, Thang then ran to hug her and said you're getting cuter and cuter. The princess saw that and was so jealous that her face turned red. The other girl saw that and immediately hugged and said hello. Hello there, it's my baby. Cute sperm right, dad happily said okay okay, he pointed inside the house and said why don't we let them in now. She happily welcomed him back, glad he didn't come back this time. Is there a difference between life and death? She ran over, held Tessia's hand, and happily greeted her. Okay, everyone, let's go up while everyone was going inside the test house. She walked behind Shiley and said um actually, I just wanted to stop by to visit. Before going back to school, 
I missed a lot of student council work, and I also had to meet with Commander Goodsky, but thank you very much for the invitation. Hearing that, I immediately turned around and asked worriedly, What's wrong? Why did you try to grab my neck? But can you kick quickly and nimbly to dodge? No, I just want to ask her for help adjusting this thing because I will wear it. For a while, she raised her hand to wear the bracelet given to her by Mrs. Rinia. And as the owner, President, I shouldn't be having fun here while Lilia is still in school, thinking that I told you I'll be with Tessia. Because most of her spells have been summoned now, so I can test with peace of mind. Say it's just one night and I'll be fine, okay, but don't work too hard, and remember to rest your mana core, is not stable yet. Suddenly a woman ran out holding a towel in her hand calling Tisha, I hope you, you can stay. But if you have to go, at least keep yourself warm. Saying that, she put a towel on my arm for the test. Test was surprised and stammered. Thank you. Thank you. All of Ace's relatives smiled and looked at the test. But his sister interrupted him. Let's go. Everyone happily joined the party. The red-haired boy held up a glass of beer. He said it's a pity that the princess had to leave late. It's still early and just this once. I don't have to sleep in the same bed as the blackhead. I raised my glass and said let's praise the gods about it. When I heard that, I didn't know what to do but laugh. But I couldn't laugh much. After a while, I had to turn pale because I saw my sister struggling with someone. And she looked very happy about it and everyone was talking to themselves. He turned quiet again and he he heed. Give me two more sets. Morm of G O. Those words created an extremely noisy atmosphere. Suddenly there was a call. I mentioned how worried I was when you went away without finishing. The woman's face became embarrassed and turned red. The other guy came closer to her and said yes. You mentioned Jasm twice already. He was bewildered and could only laugh. Hey, let's go out for some fresh air. Yes please, Uncle Vin is quite drunk. Stand up on the chair and say I'll go too. Is a four-element mage Adam did that ha 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 yes, how the two of them went out to get some fresh air and to have a quiet space, they sat down in one place, she started the conversation. Yes, I have I heard that you took care of your mother for your father, and felt like you were getting better and better at it without having to put in much effort. He wanted and knew what he was fighting for, remembering what Rinia had told him. But beyond those things, what we could say was that he needed support based on an ultimate goal in his mind. Rinia also said the same thing and she asked, Are you a bit drunk? Helen, where did you get that sentence? Then she laughed. Maybe she stood up and continued with finding a new mainland. I guess it's me. I'm a little worried. I'll go back inside to keep my teammates from burning this place down. I'll go up there later. Thank you for pulling me out. Is there anything you should sneak back to your room? Then rest a bit. Having finished speaking, she immediately went inside and closed the door. At this moment, she was the only one to drown him in thought knowing what she was fighting for. She didn't understand why she was brought to this world, but she didn't. Believing I was put here to be a pawn to protect the smiles on the lips of everyone, I love in this world is my reason God, or whatever the fuck that is my destiny created at the same time. The leader of the group of people who have been doing evil things recently, he raised his hands and said let's start attacking. When he said that, a series of scary monsters appeared. Horror appeared behind him, and towards the disciplinary committee, who was preparing to do something he raised his hand. Don't move and ask Kai if he's done yet. He was holding something purple in his hand and replied almost done just need wait until Dorad arrives so you can activate call. Make sure you ask Kai if you're sure you want to join us. Hiss, standing next to you, also told you that Crazy Follower is about to launch a general attack. Must be on high alert and prepare for battle. Kai held out the thing he was holding in his hand, saying that today I also went on a reconnaissance mission. I thought that continuing to train would do more harm than good. Dorad hugged him. The pile of things in his hand quickly ran back. Sorry everyone I'm late, I brought some energy resistances for training. As soon as he finished speaking, he fell to the ground. One of those energy resistances was broken. It fell out, rolled to his feet, he bent down and picked it up, then asked Dorad, Do you want us to waste all our mana training with these things? While the actual battle has already begun, ask. Go ahead and pull Dorad up, tell him too. I understand what Dorad means, and besides, I think training will be more effective when all this trouble ends. Seeing that Cull is on my side and defending me, Dorad immediately stuck out her tongue. With Tits following with both hands to protect against the cold, he said gather enough and activate the boundary. Kai Kai replied that it had been activated. Everyone went down to a rather large yard, and the disciplinary committee stood together in a red circle. And Kai was busy outside with something and saw something wrong, and asked huh. This looks so strange, why, is the barrier red? Kittis said Kai. I think something is wrong with this barrier, stop it, and laugh, haha. Just kidding, comrade, now. Tell us if Clay touched the barrier, 
and asked everyone if he couldn't hear the sound from inside as he touched it, and shouted loudly telling everyone to be careful what you did just now. It also caused him quite a pain. Princess Klin looked around and told everyone not to waste mana anymore. There must be some urgent extermination work around here. Kul agreed with the princess's opinion. Klin said yes, that's right then. She crawled down to the ground, looking for a job to turn off that barrier she said as she looked it was probably right here. Then she opened the lid and saw something that did something to her and all the members of the disciplinary committee that were surprised. Suddenly, there was a loud noise from the door that attracted their eyes to look towards the mysterious members they were looking for this time. They appeared in large numbers, and then marched towards the disciplinary committee immediately. The disciplinary committee immediately attacked those people first, to defend themselves, and then to destroy them to protect the public. For all students in the large clad academy, assembling a squad at this time is not a demonstration of everyone trying to attack together. But because they are very large and quite strong, they have a bit of difficulty. Big Grad tells everyone to move forward. Go ahead, we have to open a bloody path to help Kai. He's in danger out there. There's a saying, you still don't understand what's going on. Everyone looked at the voice and were surprised. Suddenly, and found out that person was Lucas. He arrogantly said that Kai was the one who set the trap for you guys to fall into. I couldn't believe that my teammate, a member of the disciplinary committee, would betray and follow that guy. Those trash Dorad shouted loudly and lied. Lucas said, why do we need to lie, when we can easily destroy you? The disciplinary committee heard that, and was quite scared. Lucas then started to attack them and Clay exploded. There appears to be a gap to counteract Dorad's energy being entangled in the barrier. She told Dorad, I think we just need to open a gap big enough to escape. We need everyone to step back here, he replied. Say so. Easier than Domi. Don't know you guys what's new, but he's even stronger than the professors. Luvis was preparing to attack, but Theo attacked him to protect his teammates. But before he could do anything, Lucas grabbed his neck and said, Look, look, watching a back like me crushing this person. At the same time, Lucas cried out in his pocket that the target had arrived. Lucas immediately let go of him and fell to the ground, thus escaping a life of ignorance that the target was. Who was it that those guys mentioned made Lucas so interested? He licked his tongue in a scary way and said it was time. Lucas immediately went to the mentioned target. Seeing Lucas leave, he asked, Where are you going? You should have caught it back for us. Lucas walked away and said he caught it. Now we have a more important task to do. A member of the disciplinary committee realized that Lucas had left, but there were more of them coming. I think we have to go now. C agreed with that idea and said okay. She called after Kath to use the chest room to scream. We need to get out of this place. Hearing that, he contacted Try Your Best to use Dunn to send Uncle so everyone can get out of their cafe. Everyone tried so hard to defeat those guys. Clay and Big, what are you doing? Quickly run out and follow me reply. No way, come on. I'll leave C. Don't be stupid anymore. Go away right then. Theo was attacked right in the chest. Theo still tried to defeat and told him to die. The troll said, I'll help you kill one of them. Let's fight together. Fight that crazy goblin of yours. Call, led the way everyone out of there and said this way, everyone quickly run after her. Then she said, run to find the professors to follow. Suddenly heard something. Then asked the story, what is that? What is that noise? What they saw right before their eyes made them extremely surprised. Extremely powerful monsters were attacking the professors and other students of the academy who were not aware of the danger. Danger is about to happen to me. The test princess is sitting in the car going to the academy. Her face is quite thoughtful, thinking that she doesn't want to worry about me. But her body is out of sync with the mana core thinking. Completely exhausted, she looked up at the bracelet she was wearing and sat down, hoping that Principal Good Sky could help her get used to it. The car suddenly became upset. She quickly closed the brakes. She was startled, opened the door, and got out. I asked what happened. So the driver stammered in response while looking in the direction of the academy. She was also surprised at what was happening in front of her eyes. The driver asked the princess, What should we do now? She quickly answered. The words came back right away, but it wasn't long before she was hit by a force that threw her away. I fell to the ground, and she was in pain. She raised her hand and said, No, no. I couldn't believe that someone asked the princess to test. You finally came. Going alone here is much easier than I imagined. But she painfully looked towards the direction of the voice and discovered that it was Lucas. She was extremely surprised because he was creepy and creepy. With a scary face, she said hello princess. She was in pain. She cursed Bay, then thought she could still save him. She tried her best to extinguish that fire. He said that while he was talking, ignoring others was rude. Why? Don't you? If you worry about yourself, why worry about anything else? She struggled to stand up and used her magic to tell him to shut up. I don't know what you're doing, but stop it. Oh, that's it. Are you going to be the one to stop me? You can't even concentrate to stop me while using your magic. 
Princess Test felt Rinia's arms restraining her beastly will, but it also causing his magic to be limited. He grabbed the princess's collar and lifted her up, saying that's right, she's so beautiful. No one knows. Maybe you'll end up liking me more than your boyfriend. Pitiful that Test was not afraid at all, but arrogantly replied just maybe. Why don't you kill me immediately means I'm not a target using the same drug that killed him Okraka was to follow me. All of those goals were just to lure her out, right? He got angry and said shut the fuck up. What do you know? Then he threw her heart on the ground. Even though it was very painful, she still said I still know. Clearly your inferiority complex had reached a new level, so he slapped the princess and said just because I don't kill you doesn't mean I will. Go easy on you. The princess immediately said fine and tried to use both of her hands to hold her wrist. He then said, because I don't need that so-called mercy. He said to let go of his hand, surprised and asked what is this. The princess pushed him away. The princess tried hard to tell herself that she needed to hold on. Just let him use me to lure him in. He shouted loud enough. And then he walked towards the princess. And said I can't let that magic you use to kill yourself. So either put it on, or I'll let it go. It corroded him. Then he took the bracelet and put it on her hand. He grabbed her hair and pulled it up on the ground. Then dragged her toward the inside of the academy. She was in pain and helpless. She couldn't move. She needed to get out of here. All the students in the academy were being attacked by monsters, some trying to run away, others trying to attack them in that chaotic scene. Suddenly, there was a sound. Human students, raise your two hands. Raise your hands and swear allegiance to us. If so, these ferocious beasts will not attack you anymore. All the students and lecturers of C Academy, listen a few meters away. My dear, I will not bite you. So it's good and dwarves don't resist us anymore because we'll destroy your mana cores anyway, and you'll be able to leave in peace. My friend hid behind the corner watching and thinking, why did Principal Good Sky let things get worse like this? Suddenly, there was a girl's cry for help. Save me and you. You were surprised to discover that even the professors belonged to that cult. You were angry. Angry, he rushed over and told him to let him go. Ignoring his friend's words, the professor used his magic stick towards him and told him that if you were still alive, get out of here immediately. Kiss member of the committee. The disciplinary committee promptly appeared to rescue the girl from that professor. Kiss told Rur that it was his contracted beast to protect. We, my friend, saw that and also intended to attack the professor, but saw that couldn't fight back. So he chose to run away. Kiss told her to run to the training facility. There were some good professors there who could protect his safety. Hearing that, the girl immediately rushed there, but still didn't forget to thank her for helping her escape danger. His friend immediately came over happily and said, Good job, Kiss. You're still fine. How are the other members of the disciplinary committee? Most of them are fine and are doing well. Divided into many directions to help everyone, but Dora and F were worried and hesitantly asked what happened to them. Help them back so we could escape. So what about Test and the other student councils? Kiss said that luckily neither Asia nor Test had returned to school yet and the student council was fine just coming to Lilia and Kel were separated. Well, my friend breathed a sigh of relief and asked, What should we do now? I don't know what to do at this time. Survive and wait for the soldiers to come to the rescue. And maybe even can't wait for the land chests to be dispatched here. Suddenly, there was a loud, shocking sound that made the two of them have to cover their ears to calm down. All the students and lecturers of the academy, listen here, my pets, bit you guys again. So please obediently walk towards the clock tower. It's time to begin the final rites, and I'm sure you won't want to miss this moment. Parents whose children study here. The academy stood in front of the gate and worriedly asked what was going on. I couldn't contact my daughter. Why couldn't we go inside and hear those words from the parents? The man still stood there, blocking them. Entered and said please stay away from the barrier so they can feel more secure. The man said our magicians are trying to get inside so please stay calm. A man said to the next to me, please update the situation. And that person replied, neither the magician's guild nor our mechanics guild has ever seen such a barrier and its structure is completely different from the previous one. Set up our barrier. The man immediately answered the other guy's answer, and then scowled and said, I'm not interested in knowing what it is. Can you break it? He was worried and replied that he couldn't break it with those what we have in hand. We contacted the mechanics union branch in Aiton to send a larger beam drill, but it seems they are having trouble there too. Maybe we can request reinforcements from an orchid. They can definitely break this barrier. Do you think we shouldn't try to do that? Why are all orchids now so worried about the incidents going on across the continent? What I'm trying to say is this. This is part of the general attack. C was afraid that the parents would hear it. The situation would become extremely complicated. The man quickly squeezed his student's mouth shut. Sheh, you still want the situation to become chaotic, because it was quite painful. He covered his face and said that no matter what, our guild is spreading out. 
Finding the weak points of the barrier will take time, but we will be able to break it. The man looked towards the academy was surrounded by a barrier, and worriedly said I just hope we don't make it too late Kiss, sitting on the back of his contracted beast and his friend Elisa, also followed him asking for permission to let us pass the students are also here, and they are treating each other's wounds. Kiss told Elisa, please wait here. I will go find the remaining members of the disciplinary committee. Elisa looked around helplessly and thought, what the hell? This could happen. But the students tried to ask, why did you do that? Let us go. Let us go. Why did you do that to us? A loud sound continued to ring out. Thank you. You are here. The leader appeared his hand was carrying a dark bag with red liquid flowing out. The students were all angry and said, let us go. Then repeatedly hit the barrier. The leader said, you do you think you can get away with this? He laughed out loud. Ha ha ha. It seems that despite the deaths you guys have witnessed, you stupid gods don't understand the seriousness of the situation I was encountering him. He put his hand in his bag and said, maybe this will help. Then he threw the round bag out at the students. What they saw was a human head right in front of their eyes. They were terrified and shouted in unison. Ellis was so surprised that she vomited. That couldn't have been her, right? Seeing that, she shouted angrily. The dog then rushed forward. He tried his best to hit the barrier. Dorad. No. Dorad, he was in pain, to the point where he burst into tears because his teammate had died miserably. He shouted loudly, come out and fight me, coward. Hearing that, he immediately asked, coward, pointing at himself and saying, I open my mask, revealing half of the face of this all-powerful, nor I, yes, it's you, don't hide behind this barrier, fight with me. Before he finished speaking, he pulled his hand and threw him away, and he immediately stood up. Get up to fight with him, open your mouth and die. You son of a bitch. He didn't say he was bringing you along. He tried his best to hit that bastard. The students standing nearby said that even the professor couldn't stop him. Something like that, yes, but it's not like everyone thinks he knocked him down, made him lie on the ground, then stomped on his face with his feet and said that's all I'm fighting you like you mean it. Theo was injured to the point where blood was pouring out. He said, you have some blood on your face. Let me help you. He snapped his fingers and immediately sparks appeared, making Theo scream in pain. Seeing that, he immediately liked it. Tri said it was clean and beautiful. Don't worry, he's still alive. Now let us start the main event. The other students saw this and were all extremely scared because of what had happened before their eyes. Right after that, the guys in dark coats led the captured people inside. Those people were chained with a yellow rope around their necks. Those guys were extremely happy because of that as they led them away and laughed. When my friend saw that, he couldn't believe his eyes. No, behind those people was Lucas holding the princess's hair and dragging her inside. Her body was full of wounds. He saw what was happening right before his eyes. I made you so angry. You were about to rush up. Bacall tried to hug you and stop you. She covered your mouth and begged please tiss. I can't ignore Gray's words, Kiss said in pain. I'll kill him. Gray still tried to beg and stop him. Please just wait. Don't be so impatient. We can't lose you too. He angrily pushed her away and asked, Can we wait? When he let him kill him and woo, Princess Clem walked over and turned him off. She cried and said we need to think of a way to save them, and stop those monsters we need a plan to protect the people here. But we can't do anything if you stay like that, or if you die hearing those words made him cry. And he agreed with that idea a student raised his hand and pointed at him, and said look over there everyone looked, and saw the princess testing the four-eyed friend thinking she wasn't supposed to be in school. So why why is she there bro, I feel extremely hurt and helpless, when I can't do anything. That scum said that now it seems like I have everyone's attention, so I'll start by introducing myself like I said before. My name is Dren If, and I come to save all of you. I come from a very far away land, a very cruel place to the weak all of you you here are considered the elite group in d -Cathan. But from where I come from all of you are rubbish, so I will prepare those I find worthy so that when my supreme lord becomes the new ruler of this continent, you will have a place in your kingdom. Be excited for the opportunity to gain unique new powers that you can imagine. Lucas stepped forward for everyone to see. He slowly took off his hat and said to the brave officers, strong and even the goblin princess genius. They didn't have a chance to see him. The four-eyed friend was angry and shouted, Lucas, you son of a bitch. How can you hear that? Lucas immediately provoked him by pulling the princess test up and close his face to her neck. He was so angry that suddenly everyone around him didn't understand what had happened. What's wrong? Everyone cried out in pain. Stop, please. It hurts so much. I'm scared. Hey, I saw my friend using his moves, the purple color around him. Dumb man escaped from the barrier and fought with the monsters. He felt like this was not at all. Look at who I am. Seeing that, those people immediately rushed up to attack him but was stopped by the leader. He thought it was okay. As long as he could kill Lucas, 
he tried his best to attack Lucas, causing him quite a bit of pain. He almost missed it, but maybe because he used up all his strength. The force to attack Lucas caused him to bleed and his body became weak. The leader came out. He caught him at this moment. He felt a lot of pain in his body and wondered where he was. Cull remembered, back to before. Loyal, resolute, and fearless. These are the words I heard all the time, before I knew what they meant. They are the four qualities necessary to have a mind as sharp as a sword. These are the creeds of the Sea Mind family, and I truly believe that I will follow this sacred dogma, no matter the circumstances how foolish I was then. She suddenly realized she didn't know what kind of magic Elisa used to break the barrier, but now, perfect opportunity to counterattack. So why is my body not moving at all? A star monk has moved forward and told the students to get out of the way quickly. The professor said worriedly, Professor Grandin, ear your wound. He said last, the same barrier has also been broken. We can't waste this opportunity. Hearing that, Professor Glory also agreed, and will go forward to counterattack with that professor. Sia looked at the two professors, and thought they thought they were can defeat Dren, if now why do they keep taking turns to die like that? And she thought they were idiots, then Tiss and the others walked towards her, and called Grey, what should we do? Why are you so surprised? Why are you asking me? Tiss said because you're the captain of the disciplinary committee. We're ready to do what you say. You're worried, thinking we can't. Why do I let professors fight? I'm afraid, why do we have to throw away our lives? The way you think, I really feel like you're very selfish, because you're the captain of the disciplinary committee. To protect the life and safety of the academy students, she has such thoughts. It's unacceptable. She hesitantly replied, I'm done. She looked toward her teammates who were in trouble. Seeing Professor Glory turn around and smile at her, she remembered the things of her childhood, humility, loyalty, determination, and bravery. All of those things awakened her and gave her more motivation to fight. She shouted loudly. Those who are injured and scared should stay behind. The rest of us will fight for Artsuras. The leader came closer and grabbed Lucas's shoulder and said there will be some changes in the plan. We will go back first. I hope you will follow us through the gate right after you finish dealing with the idiots who came near and threw away this trash. Those hooded subordinates are also shouting at the people who were chained and told them to stand up. Lucas grabbed the leader's shoulder and asked why did you bring that thing with you? He didn't even answer and then did something that made Lucas feel pain. The subordinate told him he was ready. Sir, he turned around, who left and told Lucas that don't make him disappointed. The professors rushed towards him and shouted don't let Dren, I run away, you won't go anywhere, but Lucas stopped the professors. He used his technique and told all those annoying pests to die Professor Gloria Big. That's all you got, the accomplices have come forward to support Lucas to kill all the professors Professor Glory. suddenly I couldn't repel all of them with my damn power. But luckily, the brave students stepped up to fight to protect the hostages and support the professors. But out of concern for them, Professor Glory said, What are you doing getting out of here so quickly? It's dangerous, Cull. Said this is our battle too, Professor Glory. You taught us that right, and you told them to be careful, and among those group of people, realized that wait, wait, that's how dare he, how could he, she got so angry, Kai. Then quickly rushed to attack him. How could you do that to us? Hakai followed with Dorad. Why can't you? No, we can't let him go. Seeing her teammates coming towards her, she wondered, what are they talking about? Why are they coming to us? They should have chased after Kai. She was injured and then turned back, told everyone to chase her, and she felt pain, then looked down at her body and realized that a sharp thing had stabbed into her. She wondered why this thing was here. Then suddenly everyone looked in the direction of Lucas, who was burning and lifting the professor up. Then he looked in a certain direction, and so did everyone. Clay saw that and smiled happily. There was someone approaching near the battle, and it was none other than Ace, and his dragon contract beast. Finally, he appeared to fight this battle, two horns like two shiny swords were growing from each side of the its sharp tip crystal scales, sparkled so mysteriously black that its shadow appeared gray, and its eyes glowed with such intelligence and brutality, that even a veteran adventurer could standing dumbfounded. But just as terrified as the dragon, was the boy standing underneath it, making my heart tremble with fear. Every step he took showed a confidence that was not easy to see but was difficult to shake, and every inch of his body radiated an undisguised rage, so ferocious and intense that Cole's only regret was not being able to see Lucas's defeated expression at the last moment. The professors were all injured quite seriously. Lucas thought he should strengthen his cognitive processing and reflexes to be able to cast spells at a higher level. An almost limitless source of mana like mine would be available to him. And using Dran's elixir, I escaped the mundane world, and these so-called elites are now nothing more than foul lance to me. Why do my internal organs feel like they're being squeezed by a sharp cold claw? 
Tight and twisted hit Lucas who spoke pet welcomes you to the party right at that moment. Do you think that oversized lizard can help you? Even the respectable professors of X Yus Academy can't touch me. If you think you can ignore or care about what he said, you passed him and Tinla at the test site lying injured over there. Those accomplices at this time quite was scared and said, hey, it's a dragon. I have nothing to do with your attitude. Lucas was extremely angry because you ignored him. I sat down to check her pulse and it seemed like she was was drugged but other than a few bruises and scratches. It's okay. Lucas turned his head towards me and said she was screaming your name. You know Ren if you don't want me to touch the little elf princess. Your burns but I don't think I'll listen to him because what better way to humiliate you than forcing you to lie on the ground helplessly watching me break the limbs of the girl you care about. But when he heard that, the student got angry and roared. He thought he would be angry when he heard that, but he was disappointed. I said that but he still ignored me. He shouted angrily. Don't you dare turn your back on me. Me while I'm talking to you. You country boy, I'll break every bone in your body so you can only cry when I humiliate you. Teeksia was boldly walking towards her and carrying him. Suddenly he felt this feeling is exactly the same as before. It feels like there is a crazy demon twisting and tearing inside me. Why do I feel like this? Why does this presence terrify me more than anyone else? The respected professor of this school is more than his brother. At this moment, he replied Louis, I see you as nothing more than a son of a bitch that I would kill. But if that son of a son chose to extend his sting even to the, the holiest saint would kill it. At this moment, Lucas felt even more pain because something had clung to his body. He painfully thought that it wasn't like that. I should have been stronger than him. So what should I do? A butterfly can scare you to death. How many legions of humans and beasts did he kill to get such a bloodthirsty and oppressive messenger? Get out of me. He's grown so much. Save I. Call dad. Ace replied, it's okay, super son. Just keep protecting me. At this moment, Ace slowly walked towards Lucas. He said you don't just hide fire magic. How can you use ice magic as well? It's okay. Take this. He used all his strength to attack Ace. But Ace easily dodged every move he attacked him. He was surprised what and he cried out in pain. My hand hurts too damn. It hurts so much he stammered and said you you also have light and magic. It can't be you are an abnormality of the four idiots. He held his hand picked it up and said yes it was me then used his strength to destroy his arm Lucas's rotten name. He groaned in pain and said you can't do that I'm Lucas Wickis you can't ignore what he said and stomped on his foot and forcefully forced him to scream in pain and asked him earlier you mentioned Dren if he's the one who made all this happen Lucas replied yes. And you know what else he captured, that useless idiot you called your best friend you lost and overpowered the world, I can't do anything about it. But please don't do anything to at least I can do everything, to make sure that trash like you won't taint future generations. He was very hurt right now. I beg you in pain. No no don't do it I'm sorry. I beg you please, don't let me be so cold. Please let your suffering last until the next life. It's been a long time, since everyone's eyes when faced with a terrible force, fear, shock, awe. I've forgotten how lonely this is. Holding my stomach in pain. Call dad. Lucas, calling in pain. Brother, brother. Suddenly I was startled by a source of power. It turned out that it was the lances who appeared and saw my brother brutally killed. Byron was extremely angry and tried to attack me. Seeing the danger, I shouted loudly. Got out of there. But it seemed like there was no time left and it was injured and it roared angrily at the lands who stopped me. No, I can't fight them. The lands and their robots are helping the students escape out of there. I thought if only I could go back to stage two. Byron was angry. Come closer and tell me that people like you were not dead enough to do such a cruel thing to someone who is wickest to my younger brother. As he was about to attack Ace, someone promptly stopped Byron from touching him. This guy tortured and humiliated my younger brother before killing him, and you said I couldn't hurt him. Do you want to oppose me too? This boy is the one who saved everyone from your younger brother, and although I understand your loss, I request you to be careful what you say when you talk to me to save everyone. From Lucas, don't test me, I don't have instructions for you, okay? My brother just died in front of me, I was just responding to his killer. I felt I couldn't stop B. Ron, you used your power to two, the robot came to stop him. He flew. Someone held him tightly and shouted loudly in anger. It didn't take long for him to escape with an expression full of determination to attack. Princess Clint and Tiss were surprised. Then he said, No luck, a lunch girl came and promptly stopped him, and said by Ron, You are not the one to make the decision. The council will be the one to decide what to do with this boy, and the dragon is not allowed. Disobeying the order, he helplessly accepted and said he understood that at this time, the students could run outside to meet their relatives. They happily hugged each other and shed tears. There were also those who were crying. Don ran around looking for relatives. Medical staff arrived at the scene to perform first aid or take the injured woman to the room for treatment. Someone was bandaging the arm wound for A&A. &A. 
the Lance girl came over and asked if he needed further medical attention. He replied, no, I was just exhausted from man nah. She showed me something like handcuffs and said that you will have to wear this without resistance. Then reached out for her to put that thing on, and she said even though I don't think you can break it, then she took out a yellow brittle shaped thing and pointed it at the ace, and said I don't think you can either, I can't escape. I understand, but can you do this for my summoned beast, so it can be more comfortable? She looked at me, and then coughed. This dragon is your summoned beast. I told it that I should returning to his fox form, he replied. But even if we fight, we can't win against them. Even though he didn't want to, he still chose to listen to his father and then turned back into his fox form. He immediately ran towards Ace. Then called Dad, Dad, what will happen to us? I'm not sure anymore, but don't worry, we'll be fine. Lan said to follow me to the Mage's Guild's camp while waiting for further instructions from the Guild. Dong everyone nearby saw that and immediately started talking. I heard that he killed a student from a noble family. Yes, it was also the Wee Kiss family. But not that guy named Wikis. He was a member of terrorist group, yes. But no matter how he killed him, the civilians weren't from Xurus before. As they walked, they listened to those talks. And thought about it even when something like that happened every time. People only know about random rumors. There was a voice calling. A worshipper looked in that direction, and it turned out to be his family. His mother worriedly ran to call her son. Ace immediately asked the girl Lan if I was allowed to talk to his family. I don't, she agreed. Byron got angry and asked after everything he had done. How could she? Someone standing nearby calmed Byron down and told him to listen to all sides. The boy was only doing what was necessary. Don't let your emotions cloud your judgment. Ace approached his family to talk, separated by an iron gate. Ace said C has made your parents worried again. It's just a little misunderstanding. So my parents don't worry. Your mother worriedly asked what happened in there. Why are you in handcuffs? I'll be fine. No big deal. Of course. So please take care of everyone while I'm away for a while. Mom asked if there was anything we could do. She grabbed her hand and said you'd be fine. You're my son. Painting the ring on Ms. Lan's hand and crying out, the man nearby said it must be a union. The council had made a decision. Then a letter appeared in her hand, and she called, please. He immediately let go of his mother's hand and walked towards it. She opened it and read it with the power that Dykin's council had given her. I, I, General, and the King of the Six Sects hereby declare that if Woin, son of Jinos and Alice, Woin the Council has decreed that due to his excessively violent actions and the undetermined circumstances involved, his Mamma Corps will be sealed, his title as a mage will be stripped, and he will be imprisoned until the next verdict comes into effect immediately. After hearing it, he had no reaction other than a sad look in his eyes and a sullen face. It's so unfair to make such a judgment against you. You punished Lucas, a nobleman, but he cruelly harmed so many innocent people. If you don't come, the next one will be. How many people had to die? All the professors and students rushed to attack Lucas to save everyone from danger. But no one could do that except you who helped everyone. Punish evil people. But now you have to accept such an unfair judgment. Where is the justice? After listening, what is everyone talking about? What is exploding? Is it true that he killed someone in the continent? There's a barrier that detains students. Your mother was sad when she heard the news that her son was imprisoned. Your father said my son. It can't be, General. It must have been a mistake. That's crazy. He saved them. Actually, he deserves this. There's a lot of talk about this incident. Princess Klin felt disgruntled and shouted loudly. How dare you? How dare you? Punish the only person who did a good job. Are we still alive? I was able to get out of that place thanks to Ace. If it weren't for him, you would have no one to save me. When my parents knew about this order, they would have immediately annulled it and the Lance girl had raised the letter showed it to Princess Klin and calmly said the King and Queen Glare also supported this decision. Along with the King and Queen Grey Sanders, the Princess looked and was surprised there was no way they would never have arms. If the verdict is approved by the Sisters of the Two Kingdoms, then it's useless to reason with the Six Sex. It's too violent. You see, without context, then it must sound like I'm the one behind this attack and the voice of the voice calls all and see via I, I can I talk to my family one last time before you take me away. She gave her permission, and then you walked towards your family, son, to calm your parents down. To get rid of some of the worry, he smiled and said don't be sad, but this mistake will soon be erased. I'm sure of that, honey. Don't you know what will happen to you? He looked at his sister and gave her, I just wish I had more time to spend with her and comfort her. Then wipe away the tears from my eyes. I'll only be gone for a while. I'll definitely come back. I promise, son, no matter what happens, no matter what people say, our family will always be there for you. We will always support you, so remember to come home with us. Listen to the words and cares of your family. Aaron's sadness touched his heart. Byron glanced at him, filled with sadness and anger. 
then took his brother's body back. The others also went somewhere, and when they arrived home, all the servants in the house were surprised to see him. Lord and Mrs. Ron, everyone bowed to him, and then entered the main house. He was angry and kicked the door. The maid didn't know what was going on. She happily said, Welcome home. Lord, Mrs. Ron was really surprised. She didn't expect him to come back, but the joy didn't last long. The smile on the girl's lips disappeared when she saw B. Ron holding something. He got angry, too got angry, and told him to call his father. After a while, he reached his father's place after knowing everything that had happened. He was angry and said that Guy is the disgrace of the family wickes to erase that shameful thing after I did everything for him. That bastard, every tutor, every monster core, every vial of magic medicine, went to waste, and you why did you lead him, where after failing to avenge the family's honor wickes you came to tarnish the day my night and my house are equal to the corpse of this useless idiot. Why did you want to slap him? Buddy, calm down. Take my father's hand and say, Father, please respect yourself. I'm still a member of the luck religion, right? Forget it. You've been arrogant since then, but you're in that luck school, just because you're the person we kissed. Don't forget that. He became calmer, and asked what happened to him. Told his father everything according to the testimony of witnesses. Lucas had terrorized the school, with a group of members of a cult, led by a man named Dren. If he clenched his fists angrily, and said the boy brutally killed Lucas, he sang faintly. We will take action first. Adeline heard a girl call. She opened the door and said yes. Please write a letter to the council immediately. Tonight, with the content being about the unfortunate attack on my dear son Cho's shows under the control of Darren, if surely there was no other choice but to obey his orders or lose your life, boy. He was so young, and was forced to make such a decision. Just thinking about it makes me sad, but my dear son, a victim, received an extremely cruel death at the hands of a vile, lawless person. Unworthy to continue living in our society, there is no other repentance than death that could be more appropriate for such a heinous crime to harm the Wickes family, while we prepare a monk. Quiet ceremony for my precious son. I hope the council will come to a fair decision. After speaking, he asked if this report was accurate, Mrs. Ron. He nodded and the secretary finished writing the letter to send to the council. At the same time, I also bowed my head. I would like to express my condolences to you. I will send this right away. Byron asked father, if you still celebrate the ceremony, why don't you let me send Adlin to take care of it? Now leave me alone. I really don't understand what the family Wickes is like. Their younger brother's son did something extremely cruel and harmed everyone, but that family still tried to protect them while their son was completely wrong. So why didn't they think of these actions? Their children's wrong actions have harmed so many people because they themselves do not understand or deliberately do not understand even the name Lance Byron. He is a person in the ministry who protects everyone's safety. People go, Kevin. So why did he protect his younger brother who did stupid things, so that now a good person, Ace, has to endure all the resentment and hope that that hasty judgment of the council can come up? Make a fair decision as soon as possible after getting his father's consent to do what he wants. I asked how far we were from the finish line, and he replied that it wasn't that far. He raised his hand and said, Hey, I don't need my hand. I'm not stupid enough to try to run away from the two people in the six spears right in the middle. It's not in the air. Mostly because we're flying through monster forests. You can find a way to cause trouble for us. You're a member of the six sex. What you mean is that there are men, not monsters, that even you can't do. How can the six sex be strong, but we are still mortals? Monsters hold so many mysteries and surprises. I think you already know that, and along with the strange events, and what's going on. Never be too careful. Then suddenly he wondered what he was doing. Saying all this to a boy, asking a boy. I thought I was a prisoner. He smiled happily and replied. You can be both. But the ace kid got frustrated and said from what I've seen so far, it seems like it's better for me to go with both of you. He agreed with that. He said you're right. Vali and Byron are not people who like to talk. Let me ask you a question. How did you become such a good magician? That I'm a good wizard because I've heard Ron talk about his younger brother and from the students. I've talked to I know enough that I don't need to watch you fight. Curious to know what he heard from them. Considering he was still escorting me to prison, he replied you were wrong. We are in a very unusual situation. Ace's sad eyes looked down at the frame in the scene below. The man walking with you said we were there. Welcome to the council's castle in the sky. The three of them set foot down of this castle, used magic var. I said you can't use magic at the entrance to the castle. So we'll go up by the stairs, and then the three of them walked up the stairs after a while they finally arrived at their destination. The shining door appeared right in front of them. The man instructed, Hey kid, we're in the castle now. It's best not to talk to us or anyone else in the six sex. Listen to the man's instructions. He felt that this castle was very similar to a castle in his previous life, beautiful, but empty and lonely. 
they went up to the three kings and queens and bowed their heads to your majesty. We brought him to worship. When came to the council, a fat old king angrily said so arrogantly, you think you are equal to the six sex, why should you at least kneel down? He looked at Tess's parents and said sorry to my king, not taught how to show respect to nobles and royalty. The red-haired king raised his hand and said come on very, take off the handcuffs on ace, so we can begin obey your majesty. She immediately took off the handcuffs, let me if one chess, said before we start, I want to thank you not only as a leader, but also as a father for saving that fat old king who heard that and shouted loudly at them. I'm here as the leader of this damn continent that has no father or son. This kid brutally mutilated a classmate before killing him. I don't see any need to thank you. Do you need me to re-read his cruel report? The queen sitting next to the red-haired king spoke up. I didn't think it was necessary. Both legs were crushed until more than half of the thigh was cut off. The left arm was cut off. The groin and pelvic bones were all crushed and the test father shouted loud enough to measure. Wrong. The test mother at this point also spoke up. We all read that report, but we can't ignore the fact that he also saved the good students of XR US Academy. That old man is right. This kid conveniently saved the entire academy, but that doesn't fix the torment that he forced the wickest boy to endure. He can take advantage of this, to do things. An excuse for personal revenge. Father angrily argued that he meant he blindly rushed into danger just for revenge. Even so, we can't prove that was his motive. But we I can see clearly he saved our children, and what was left of the Queen's Academy sitting next to that fat old man, raised his hand, and said, And this is also the reason I oppose killing this kid. We just used magic to cripple him. That old guy already. Thank you Glud, this kid is too dangerous. What if he and his dragon want to confront us? Why you think that old guy is too unreasonable? Montest spoke up Olive. Do you see how unreasonable you are? You're overthinking everything. She turned to ask Blin Prilla, what do you two think about this whole incident? Me and my husband as parents. We all agree with you on this. Our children are safe now thanks to him, the red-haired king said. But as leaders we also need to consider Gray Sanders' point of view too. Don't they? Only thinking for themselves, but objectively, for the whole continent mother test, said objectively Father Ted angrily asked, then how about we turn him into a cripple and kill the dragon just in case he had hand with us and decided to plan revenge? Why did the fat old man, Test's father, start to get angry and argue? He said Anduin must know your location. Jates also replied that we are not here. To lay out those accusations, that old man didn't give up and continued talking. Do you think you're equal to us just because you're sitting here? Do I need to remind you that you are powerless in managing the six sex? When the queen heard that, she said, Why did the measurement go wrong? He dared that the old man had no intention of stopping the continent, which was on the brink of war and he was so careless that he lost one of his great assets. Our leader, standing below, interrupted the old man, Your Majesty. Can you turn down and shout loudly that you mustn't speak unless I tell you to? I refuse to accept any demands that this kid is trying to make. Say you are acting too unreasonable and acting arrogantly over your calmness. Continue, Your Majesty. I see it is useless for me to stand here. If I am not allowed to speak or narrate what happened, and why it happened, as it happened, the queen sat next to the fat old king, raised her hand and said, He's right. This prisoner doesn't need to be here to torture him and put him in prison until there's a new order and denounced your beast. I went into the cage and got angry and said the measurement was wrong. Lauda, this council is not run by two people. The fat old man angrily said sit down and remember that you only have one person in the six sex supporting you. Stop listening to your father. Tesfar stepped closer to him and he raised his hand to stop him and that ended the argument here. She was escorted to prison because she had witnessed the whole story earlier. They argued on the way. Going to prison, he thought the Deep King and Queen were both against him. King and Queen Gler didn't support either side. I was glad. Was too tired to have to endure all this. I really had no choice but relying on Anduin and Mert Isle to get means out of here unharmed. And so you also went to prison. The man who escorted you said from time to time, We will stop by and visit you said at least it's quiet here. Suddenly someone asked. That voice over there was you. Why were you surprised when you heard that? Her voice sounded familiar. He approached the door and the voice of the principal, Good Sky, followed the signal. Good Sky, how long has she been imprisoned here? The day before, she didn't know anything about the attack on X Yus Academy. I told her everything that happened at her school, but I still don't understand why she was detained. Kept by the council, not long after she met them, Principal Gizzy spoke up to thank him. I'm sorry for what you had to go through. I know you've talked about this, but can you tell me more a little what was Lucas like at that time? When you fought him and didn't win, he told you that he had used a drug that had appeared in the school not long ago, but it had a different effect on him. He was much stronger. Many but still awake, 
or as alert as usual, he is still the same, he can still know what he is doing. Principal Good Sky wondered and asked, but other than you fought with him, you didn't see the leader, what does it look like? When I arrived, he had already left. Is there something wrong? Just a few things we need to confirm. But I think I understand now. It was something that was bound to happen, but it shouldn't have happened. It happened so soon. They were proceeding as planned and much faster than expected. He was surprised to see her say that. He immediately asked what she meant by must happen, and who they were, principal. Did not answer, but remained silent. It seemed that at this point, she had begun to draw a conclusion, principled sky, a conclusion that I hoped would be wrong. She slowly replied, I am no longer the principal. After the council made me the scapegoat for them, the scapegoat instead of whatever she sat in a dark corner, and said that's why I have to be in here. I doubt the council will blame the incident at school gave me to steer public opinion away. I can't speak, I'm afraid I'll be forced to keep quiet about what I know, all not voluntarily but by force and magic, both cannot resist, even when it was very painful to tell you, and slowly activated the overcoming curse. He seemed quite angry. He clenched his fist on the iron bar of the door, and said the curse. How convenient. You kept punching the iron bar with your injured hand. He sat down on the ground and said, Thank you for your information. She's helpless. I'm so sorry. The fat old man suddenly opened the door and said, What the hell are you talking about? The red-haired king calmly poured. The old man rushed in and said, I thought we had an agreement. But the red-haired king raised his hand and shook his head, finishing the glass of wine in his hand, and then said, I knew our agreement. Don't worry, you will have my vote and my wife's vote, but you can't force me to make such ridiculous accusations. Not to the boy who saved the entire future generation of the six palaces. This includes my children, he asked. Future generations, there will be no future generations at all. If you are not on my side, he angrily slammed his fist on the table. If we want this continent to have a future, the ace and his beast must return to him. That's our agreement, red-haired king. Continue pouring wine and tell me clearly what the deal is. I don't need you to repeat it. Every time you feel don't you realize that you and I are betraying the entire population. He blatantly said that by betraying this continent, it's time to be destroyed. There will be no one left to betray. Now we judge you have to save what's important to you. There's nothing wrong here. The calm, red-haired king. Saying you want to trick yourself into having a good night's sleep is fine. What we're doing is abandoning our people. Just to save his own life. The old man replied that it really helps us sleep well. Thank you very much we will live and serve him while gaining wealth and wisdom from the continent, the red-haired king asked. What about the people of this continent? We don't know what he will do to the kingdom of Sapin and D. Not to mention what Elena will encounter. The old man argued. Oh well, goblins are always too fair with their own interests, unlike us. They don't know what a leader is like. Just imagine what technology and wealth he will bring to you. Go Cath immortality, the power of wealth, endless wealth, can you believe it? It will no longer be a fantasy for us anymore. The red-haired king angrily slammed the glass of wine he was holding on the table and said, shut up, don't it's only for the benefit of my family that I'm included in a group like him. He abandoned his species just for his own personal gain, wealth and power. What about your people? Have you ever thought about what he will do? Once he comes here, there will be a genocide. Or if he is wise, he will turn them all into slaves. But my wife's love for her children is much greater. Concern for the entire human kingdom, and for what I have had to do to get where I am today. My responsibility to preserve the glory of the Lur lineage, hoping that my ancestors will forgive me I saw that, and the old man immediately left, leaving the red-haired king sitting there sadly. The red-haired king drank wine and suddenly thought that the promised wealth was nothing to me. My only wish was become the most powerful mage of all time to make my ancestors proud, but I'm just an incompetent mage, even after using countless elixir. I also struggled to level up, I was jealous of my beloved wife and our children, but when I saw my father blinded by power, I vowed to never forget why I needed power to maintain peace and protect my family and people. But even now having two people in the six sex in my hands and not erase my feeling of inferiority, is it true that I made this decision for the safety of my family, or just like when I was drunk? I was also thirsty for the power that he had promised. The glass of wine fell to the ground, and he was tired. Lying on the ground, his hands were bleeding from the broken pieces of the wine glass. Maybe it was the thing. The only thing greater than the boy's magic power was his bad luck when involved in this plot, and then suddenly he put his hand on his forehead and laughed loudly. That smile also ended in a few short seconds. I'm sorry kid I want to believe that your sacrifice was for the good of this continent that's right it was for the better things for the better things I did suddenly a black and gray scene appeared this is why are there so many fruits you cling so tightly to the iron bar that blood flows like a stream what are they eating from here you can't tell you have to try to climb higher to find out what's going on what's wrong four human heads are stuck on a sharp iron bar 
Suddenly it turns around. There are four heads of students in the Academy X Yus, and among them is the princess. Check out this scene. How scary because he was so scared that he fell from a high place and jumped up. Looking at his shaking hands, luckily it was just a trembling nightmare when suddenly a cold face walked in, told him not to speak up, and then gave him a letter. He took it and opened it. The letter said, Dear Evil, I'm afraid the level of this incident is deeper and more evil than what is shown on the outside. There's not much time. Soon the guild will declare you and ask the Avid Sky to be the culprit who caused that terrorist act. I overheard the conversation between King Glider and Doa. They are planning to hand you over. For someone when I was alive, I asked my father to take your family to a safe place where he hit you have done a lot for Tessia. But I'm sorry because right now I can only do that much your sincere friend as soon as Anduman finished reading the letter, it disappeared. He was sitting there thinking when Byron walked up with an indignant face and said the council was waiting for him. The two of them were standing in front of the door of Byron's council, leaning against the wall, arms crossed. I was looking forward to this trial very much. After you were detained, I assured you that I would take care of your family the same way you did with my younger brother. I was not afraid and replied that I wanted to fight a 13-year-old child. Really old though, he got angry and grabbed his collar. I don't think you understand what you're about to encounter while be. The great run is threatening innocent people to avenge his crazy younger brother who killed the students' innocent students. He was the one who chose to participate in the attack. He chose to kill those students. He chose to join the dark side. Byron heard that and immediately got angry and threw the mask to the ground. The door of the council opened, and he heard it by saying goodbye. Refused to answer and asked Theog Sky was sentenced to public execution. Upon hearing that, she was panicked. She asked Theog Sky was escorted out, and then confronted by A. It's so sad that after she was sentenced, it was the fat old man's turn. Open the edict, and read it. Remember that the council is merciful to you, even if your actions deserve to be executed. If you are in cases different, but we have agreed that your actions were for the common good, so your sentence will be as follows. A Thwin will be stripped of his title of Magus and all the benefits that come with it. According to that title, he will be detained until further notice. Do you have anything to say? Tess's parents were very helpless as they couldn't do anything to help. When they heard that announcement, the two of them were very sad. He asked what he meant by being detained until further notice. We will monitor the victims of this incident and their families. As soon as public opinion no longer remembers this event, we will release you. Think of it as temporary detention instead of imprisonment. At this moment, I immediately remembered what Test's father had said. They were planning to hand you over to someone while I was still alive. I understood and thought it was acceptable. My divine beast, the old woman sitting next to the fat old man slammed her hand on the table and angrily said loudly, your divine beast. The council was very lenient in letting you live. You don't even thank us and are still there. Why you ask for anything else my father T, sadly called in losing the rights of the wizard meaning he would no longer be able to keep his magical beast anymore. He suppressed his anger by clenching his fists, then calmly said I understand. Then my king, the fat old man said don't worry, your magical beast will be well taken care of. The council knows that a creature of his size needs a mage as powerful as him. He will be well taken care of. The red-haired king now spoke up and told Byron that you can now lead him to the prison cell and remember to chain him up on the way when Byron escorted him to the prison cell. He was thinking. I know that Grey Sander is still happy to help Vritner. As soon as he reached the prison cell, the corrugated iron barricade pushed him in mercilessly, then turned around and left when Mrs. Ron just left. He said you know that if you ignore the bars, it's not so bad that it will destroy the room. The white color you brought me to you should see the cell I used to live in. A man walked out and replied it seemed like you were waiting for me to come. He turned around and said the timing was right. The so-called god also appeared. He went to Ace's cell and held the sleeping student in his arms. After the trial of the fat old man and his wife were very happy. I love the madness. It's almost over. Holding a glass of wine in one hand and his wife in the other, he said Lada, let's imagine that everything went our way. We together with our people chose to leave the continent. This time in a new era with that person. The wife immediately asked him how powerful he was, my dear. Yes, in the past I tried to confront the terrible man and monsters when it was just me and my axe in confrontations, have pushed us into life or death situations, countless times. But nothing has scared us as much as him when he came to meet us for the first time. It felt like we were facing God, and he had chosen us. He doesn't need us to achieve his goals, but he still chooses us and Anduin in brain. They like to joke that the kings of this continent are not as strong and talented as their people. I was once more powerful. There were a lot of them, if it weren't for the fact that he almost forced his mouth to say it. He suddenly remembered, oh that's right, she didn't know about that incident that left me crippled. I should have gone beyond the orange core by now. I didn't expect my mana core to be damaged. 
Eternal harm just because a farmer wizard hit my core, just because he caught me in bed with his wife. There are not many women I choose to serve in bed. You should feel honored, right, father? Tan and Su Tu couldn't make up for what happened to me. He continued to talk to his wife, sipping and hugging her, saying the incident that caused me to be hexed had not yet been said for what reason. But he drank it all. The wine brought out the glass and told his wife to pour more for me, my dear. She obeyed and immediately took the bottle of wine and poured more for her husband. She called out, Oh honey, you know our people respect you, but they only obey my orders. If it weren't for the two people in the six sex, they would have rebelled and usurped my throne. She caressed his long white mulberries and continued, It's simple, just kill everyone who dares to do that because you have six spears and strength, and now I have more days to support me. Yes, you are right, more wealth, more magic power than many people serving us and best of all immortality, to enjoy everything the wife told her to do. And don't forget then, she climbed on top of him, and he told A that he was right that he could be beautiful. And so those two were cuddling each other right on the couch while they were climaxing. Who the hell would dare? Broke in without making those two very angry. A tall man with white hair walked in to greet Grey Sander and in his hand was a soldier who had been defeated. He immediately threw him to the ground and slowly walked inside. Then he said forgive me for my intrusion. The fat old man hugged his wife in his arms and got angry. How dare you? Do you know who I am? The other man calmly said he knew. Something immediately appeared on his forehead, purple color, and then told the two of you that you were vermin that I was instructed to eliminate when I knew my king was in danger. Lan immediately appeared to protect them. Please forgive me, your majesty and queen. Infiltration will not escape. That man calmed down. Saying bloodshed is not what I want. I only came for the heads of the Grey Sanders. That land doesn't know fear yet, so he said that unfortunately you won't have it. Saying that, he immediately launched an attack, not only him, but also several other robots surrounding the man. With just one wave of his hand, he defeated those robots, while Lan was concentrating. Read the spell, give me continental armor, and a layer of armor covered that lance. Then he confidently walked towards the fat old man and his wife who were hiding behind the wall observing him. As I said, this is what made you die so arrogantly. But the man did not panic and stood there leisurely when his fist was close to his face. He used some technique that made him lose his temper. The fat old man was thrown far away and hit the wall. Seeing this, the fat old man was now frightened. Len, after being smashed into the wall, tried to stand up. The man said to a lowly person like you, Your skills are you are very admirable. With that strength of yours, it may help the future of this generation. But not now. With just one finger from that man, everything fell apart. He apologized. Gray Sander for making you wait when the other two were about to be in danger. Lan appeared. She said Micah was very sorry for being late. He used his hand to shield his scared wife and got angry. Angrily said Micah your king is about to be killed. She replied Micah will handle the intruder. She rushed to attack the man then confidently said welcome to Micah's world sorry if you die okay. Those threats still didn't make the man tremble in fear. When she showed her trick, the man calmly walked away and said excellent gravity manipulation. Is that your limit? That made her very surprised. She immediately wondered how he could move so easily. His body weight must be more than four tons, but she tried to calm down and answer. What is the limit? Micah has no limit. I used all my strength to defeat that man, but unfortunately the one who was defeated was her. With just one finger, she was thrown far away. The old man was surprised and frightened. He knew that even though he tried his best, she can't fight him. I can't die here. Mr. Tat immediately knelt down and bowed his head while the wife didn't know what to do. Why are you shouting so loudly? You don't know who you're touching. Once my husband becomes Agrona's right hand of messenger Vitra, the almighty God, he will see his wife speaking then. He pulled her head down with him. The man said there are no gods in this world, only the Atula old man. The old man bowed his head and stuttered to beg, please be kind and forgive me. Sir, I will do anything, man. It seems that Agrona had carelessly chosen the wrong pawn for him. And the old man still tried to beg. Please, please, I haven't even met him. Yet he has threatened my wife and people to force me to submit to him. I beg you please forgive me, the man said very good, please release the two people of the six sex. The old man was startled and asked, What's the matter? The old man trembled and didn't dare to argue. He replied of course not. In his heart, the old man secretly thought that he had always been taught that oaths should never be sworn, was liberated, but his life was in danger because of his desire to live and fear of death. So he did as the man said, and when he finished, he immediately announced that he was done. Now please, please forgive me. The man calmly said sorry. I said I would forgive you. When did he get angry and say you? But there was no more chance to say it because the man sent his two wives back to heaven. After completing the task, after order killed the two of them, the man turned around and left and spoke. 
And so the chessboard now began to return to the ace's dark cell when Wynn's appearance soon followed SV. Ace immediately approached So He looked at his head and saw that he was still sleeping. Wynn soon gave Sai Vi to his wife. Thank you for that. He said he didn't expect that you would let yourself and Lady Sai Vi be captured so early by Vritra's allies. What you did to save the academy was admirable, but the safety of you and your wife should have been the top priority. There are people whose lives I consider more important than mine. I asked because of the Goblin Princess. Why did Du answer that it wasn't her, but because of the disciplinary committee and my best friend? He comforted me that if it's over, let it go, but I still don't. I don't understand why the guy who did this brought your friend with him. I don't know, but now you're here to get us out. I need to find out where they took Elisa. And what are you planning on saving him? No, we heard that they took him back to base, and asked where to back to Walaka Ace, sit down on the bed, and put Sai next to him, Dan. He said you can't even escape from this place, and why do you want to save him? An act of suicide. Overwhelmed by sadness, he stood up on his hands and said in boredom that I still wanted to follow him in the hope that he was still alive, so I could save him. But it seemed like he was very sure that I would be killed as soon as I got there. What should I do if I get there? Luckily the guy named Crack left before you got there. Vrine is interested in you, so they will let you live, but if they find out you have your husband's original will, Sylvia's character as well as her daughter, I'm afraid that even Azura's people will have a hard time protecting you. You're safe. So why do I have to leave my best friend? Why did I expect to receive help from Anduin, and I know you won't leave me and SV here, because almost the whole council works for the richer people, so I don't have many options here. I can't run away with my family, without being searched the teacher is after my mana signature, and I can't hide in the swamp beast without being caught by the mana beast. So what should I do early when? It seems you've had a lot of time in here to think about my situation. I said that the Grey Sander family has a close relationship with Vritra, and the Glider family seems to be on the same side as them, but I have a feeling that they were forced. Wynne soon said that's the impression. As we were chatting, Byron appeared and asked who. There he walked into the cell and asked how did you get in? Did you break in here? Wynne soon coldly replied yes. Byron said with enthusiasm, no need to say much more. Lightning then attacked Wind early, but he very calmly, he used a small technique to destroy Byron's powerful technique. He said, you kid, you can't fight against me. But Byron's ego and arrogance are so high that he won't give up. He still tries to defeat me. Wind down early, he said enough, then used his hand to make a gentle move, and then said heal. Then Byron immediately fell to the ground. At this time, Vari also appeared and told Byron to step back from him. Stood up and told Vari, I don't understand how he broke in here. Vari coldly walked past Mrs. Ron and said he was a god and not someone you could address so casually, and I bowed and apologized to the king. Ours respectfully, please, sir. And so Wei soon walked up with Ace to meet the two kings and queens. They bowed to Wind early, and the man who had just killed the fat old man and his wife, the man introduced himself. Welcome, for those who don't know me, I'm Andia. I'll keep it simple, Wind soon, and I was sent here to give lowly people like you a chance to survive in the coming war for it. All four of them listened. When we got there, we were extremely surprised and chates, stood up and said that it was just as we feared that the war would actually break out. That man said that we had taken the first step of eliminating the pervert of the Grey Sander family. Removed and our people will listen to my orders, but we have also decided to review the wrong decisions that may have been made in the past. The red-haired king stood up and said, Sir, I say one thing clearly, your abilities are superior to ours. Can the Azuras reach the Alaka continent and defeat the Vritras without our help? The lowly man shook his head. Say I'm afraid it's more complicated than that. Many of the richer clans along with the three other clans that obeyed their orders were all former Azuras who broke our laws. A battle on such a large scale would definitely level the world. Azuras clan we and the richer clan signed a pact that the superior clans were not to directly attack or interfere in the affairs of the lower clans. With that treaty, why did he stay silent while Win soon shook his head and said that Daikin is currently fighting against the army directly commanded by Vritra's Agrona? You will not be in such a hurry to break the treaty because we are just to level the field. Playing evil, angrily asking. What about the Blackhorn demons that have invaded our land for so many years? They've been here since before we knew about them. He clenched his fists and said one person even killed another person in the continent. The teacher was standing and asked, How do you know about Mrs. Theus guy was sitting next to her? He held out his hand with a purple block and said he was talking about the owner of this fragment. The man closed his eyes for a few seconds. Tell the kid it's true that you win early and don't reap the rewards when you say that you are not simple. The people who keep sneaking into this continent are not Azura people. Those V monsters were once a lowly species like you, but of experience after countless experiments, Tess' mother worriedly asked. Are there monsters that are not Azura? 
but still have the ability to destroy Daikin's most powerful magicians? Can we win? The man said. There aren't many of these monsters and Agrona's cardinal card in this war. He's not in a hurry to send out like before, because now, he knows that I'm here. Consider me the leader of the coming war for your sake. I will protect this continent. Their conversation continued, but A held Sive in her arms. Sleeping with Wynne, he left soon before Ace asked where we were going. Shouldn't we have attended the discussions? About the battle, why did he say that Andia was more than capable of taking care of the preparations for the battle on her own? We are going to visit your family. You will need to say goodbye to them. Where are you going? He turned around and said, I will take you and Lady Sav to the homeland of the Azura people. You will be trained and used. And so the two of them began their journey. They walked in the dark at night, walking and scratching. I don't like it. Measuring the route through the forest isn't much. You can't teleport us closer to Elder Rena's place. How can I teleport us straight there? And that would break the law. The barrier protects your family from any danger. That sounds reasonable. Okay, you have a point. Now, have you listened to what I told you about Yuz and Bat Dai? There are no worse people. Clans and Yuz, each clan consists of many clans. Each race is considered a clan and the eight great clans and richer clan belongs to the Basilisk clan. I still can't believe it's the guilds. I still can't believe it's the rest of the guilds tried to assassinate Agrona. I thought negotiation was the first and only answer to that because you know for peace and stuff like that when soon said Agrona was a little too dangerous for us to consider, we didn't know what he was doing in Alaka or what he was planning to do to us. So we agreed that eliminating Rona directly was the best way to ask questions, but I was still a bit confused about how Sylvia is involved in all this and why she appeared in Daikin. He carefully spoke over what I was about to reveal to you, must be kept confidential. This information is only known to a few members of the Inner Act clan. Well, at that time, Lady Sylvia went with the elite division to defeat Agrona and asked in surprise, and did they allow her to go? He said they knew nothing about what was about to happen, except that Agrona is very dangerous. So wasn't in a suicide mission. He said Lord Urath never allowed her to do anything. She disguised herself and hid in the army and only revealed her identity when it's too late to turn back. How could she have been captured? And why was she hiding from us after escaping? I don't know what happened to the Azures who left with her. He clenched his fists and seriously answered something that customers and experiments, we were completely outnumbered by tens of thousands of hybrids. Everyone from Yuz was killed or captured Agrona, appeared appeared before Lord Inder himself, informing him that Lady Sylvia had been killed in battle. Lord Inder was ready to wage war regardless of the consequences, but other guilds supported negotiations. This was forbid the Azuras from taking direct action, because the consequences would be dire on this world. If the seven Azura clans of Yuz were to go to war with Ritra, we would have pushed this responsibility onto the other Basilis in Yuz. But the punishment punishes them all a race because of the wrong behavior of a few people is not right to just do experiments like that. Hearing what Wind had told him, Ace felt that those things were terrible and evil. In his mind, he immediately thought about the other guilds of Ushchak. Must have done the same as the Vritcher clan created powerful warriors from mating as their conscience and pride. Must have stopped them. If Agrona had really been in Alaka all those years, then Vritcher's army numbers would have been must increase a lot, not to mention the imbalance between Alaka and D. Cathan. Suddenly you realize something and suddenly said wait then ask six ancient relics that you gave to the people in D. Cathan, who men said they were given to the people of D. Cathan, to create a more evenly matched battlefield ace, set the battlefield, so this is where I will go star a piece on the side of the Azura guilds in this battle, wind answer soon. It would be easier for both of us if you just thought of it as a way to protect your friends and family, said to his friends and family, he suddenly remembered and asked what he had been thinking about how to tell this news to your family, your face is sad, and you don't say anything. Your family is at Rini's place. They are sitting in the yard in front of the fire. Rina gave something to her mother. She gave she took it and thanked the elder Rina for holding it. There was a sound that it smelled good. Is it mine? Everyone turned around. Her sister looked surprised and said it couldn't be. Dad and mom were so startled that they dropped the fork they were holding in their hands. The whole family was happy and ran out. The girl raised her hand and called him. The whole family hugged each other. The girl put her hand on Saivai's face and asked how you were. Adventy asked why didn't you ask how I was. The girl hugged him from the side, behind his back, and answered that no matter what, he would always come back alive. His parents standing nearby, listening to the two brothers' conversation, burst out laughing. But his family was surprised by something mysterious. When soon? Can you kill me? Then I introduced myself to my family. Everyone, this is the early winner, the one who saved me and will be my next master. Mrs. Rena behind bowed and welcomed my master. Win purred, mother. She shyly said, sir, you must be a powerful magician. Thank you for saving my hidden beloved son. Then she came closer, placed her hands on Ace's shoulders, and gently asked me to say that he is the upcoming master. 
Come to me, why is he going to teach me something? He stammered and said that but mom told me it's okay. It's okay to touch your face and look at it lovingly. You just came back from a long trip. Why don't you go take a shower and use it? A little dinner ago. And so the whole family was happily gathering to have dinner together. But while they were having fun, Wind quickly interrupted him and interrupted his happiness. He looked towards him and bought the shirt. The fork in his hand went down to the elder's table. Rena, can you talk to your parents in private? Then the three of them went out. His father turned around and saw Wind early looking in their direction. Mrs. Rena was smiling happily, and his daughter he was playing with Phi Vi, and said come on you can eat it, and went to another room his father slowly sat down, and said your master should also come in here with us right mom, then held his hand, and asked him I love you, are you worried about us, don't be sad, slowly tell me that I've caused you a lot of pain, but there's still something I need to do, I'll tell you everything about it, but before we start, there's a the fact that I had to think for a long time about telling my parents he sighed and continued, since I came to this world, his mother said in surprise, since I came to this world, I mean when I was how were you born? He looked at his mother and replied yes, it's like that, but it's not really like that. Mom, I don't understand what you mean. I told my parents to trust me. I remember the moment when I was born more clearly than anyone else. At that time I was teleported and reincarnated something happened, and I was taken away from my world, and brought to this world, his father didn't believe what he was hearing and said wait wait kid tell your son again. His mother immediately knelt down on the ground, placed her warm hands on her son's face, and worriedly asked, What are you talking about? Another world. Why are you okay? Where did this thought come from? I see my teacher told me about this. Why did you hold my mother's wrists and say no? My teacher doesn't know about this. No one other than my parents knows about this, and I don't know either. What is the correct name for this phenomenon? I've been thinking about this for a long time. I guess it's something like reincarnation. Your mother asked worriedly. What happened to you when they took you away? What did they do? Why don't you come here so I can try to fix it? Sit on the chair calmly and say, Baby, let the boy talk. Mom looked at Dad with extremely worried eyes during that conversation. My world at least the part where I remember my role there and the relationships vividly so they wouldn't misunderstand that I was making this up all while my parents were mostly just sitting around. Silent, sometimes my father asked a few questions, but his face still had no expression at all. But my mother was clearly very shocked. Her face turned pale and her limbs trembled even more as I continued. Telling my story, I don't know how much time passed, but I was probably talking for a few hours until Dad said King Grey, so that wore that magical talent of the ace, replied yes internal system, the energy system in your old world is quite similar to the mana system in this world, and as for the war, I understood correctly. Your mother was looking down and crying. Suddenly, ha 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 mother, I understood. It's all one. It's a joke, I can't see my wife like that. Dad immediately used his hand to pat his wife's back to comfort him. Oh, my son, the donkey almost got us. Second, her whole body trembled, and she grabbed it, son's hand, and said this is a joke Arthur Wynn. Please tell mom that this is just a cruel joke. Tears fell down her face pale with anxiety then said, I can't be a some dead king, and was transported into the mind of your unborn child. Right? Mom's eyes lowered, and she answered, I don't know exactly what it means. But I'm not kidding. Teasing his mother. He immediately sat down on the chair, remembering when his son was born. The three of them happily played together, and then gradually he went away and came back. His family was there. Welcome back. Lifted his son up and told him his hair was the only thing that grew long. Why did he happily laugh and grab his father's beard? Then he said his father's beard was the same. It was even thicker than before. He used it to cover his beard. Is that it? Or when you were injured she was so worried, she was so shocked by what she heard she cried loudly in her head, saying no 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 this is not true or don't say it's me believe in this, our son is sick, he must have encountered something, he must have hugged his wife and reassured his wife, he immediately stood up and walked out, outside, he was having fun with his sister when his father opened the door, walked out and said to El, can you go in the tent and sit next to your mother, she happily gave the sleeping Savai in her arms to him and said here, I stood up to leave and turned around to ask if he was feeling better. He was almost to the hut when he suddenly stopped and ran to hug him, hugged him, and rubbed his head. Looks like he's a safe person now. He comforted his brother and looked up at him with innocent sparkling eyes. This time, he seemed to understand what he was saying and said he wouldn't ask anything. If you have to go away again as long as you're here, just go home, and then I'll go with mom. And Ace was walking in the rope tunnel, bowing his head sadly, informing my mother that she was sleeping now. Did you ask about her mother's condition? Is it okay? She was quite shocked. You were silent for a few seconds, then asked, Dad, Mom believed me, but tried to calmly say that I had no reason to deceive us. He looked up and continued, Now everything makes sense. 
I woke up early and am an outstanding warrior and magician. It's all reasonable. At first, come closer to dad, isn't okay. Maybe at this point, he couldn't calm down anymore. He put his hand on his chest and said, Dad, of course it's okay. This is not an easy thing to accept. Athor Gray, or whoever all the memories our family has together, are all fake. Have you always played the role of being the son we always wanted? How should I treat you when you were originally better than me? But now, you have become my 13-year-old child and my mother, and I have grown up in Ace's face for raising a newborn child. The mother of a middle-aged man, while thinking that it was her son, angrily punched the cliff next to him. I'm sorry, but are you really our son? You two have taken over my body, the unborn child who would have been our son when he was reincarnated? What happened to him? Because the punch on the rock just now caused his hand to bleed quite a lot, and he remained silent, not knowing why. What do you say? He raised his injured hand, bored stammer and said he didn't mean it. Right now, he was very confused and overwhelmed with sadness. He said he was right, Zenos. Like I said earlier, the truth is that I, I don't know why. Maybe I saw where the child could be yours, but I don't know how that process brought me here. I don't want to hide things from you two. But now, I don't know what choice I made. Is it true or not? I've wanted to tell him for a long time, but never had the courage to say it. I wanted to say it before I left. He was surprised and asked, Where are you going? Yes, I think with love. The current situation would be better if we were apart for a while. How long would you be gone for at least a few years? He looked down sadly and said, Why has it been so long? He turned around and walked away, then told him that I never had memories about my family and my old world growing up in a situation where no one truly loved me made me an invincible warrior, but a terrible person. But since coming to this world, the two of you and then is that Illy taught me something that I never knew, I may not be the most powerful warrior or mage in this world, but now I am a much better person than the person I was in my previous life. The corner of his eyes suddenly said softly, I'm sorry for hurting you too. Thank you for teaching me to be a better person, and thank you for loving me like your son. Both of them cried quite a lot. Then he walked back to where Wynne was waiting. He asked me to see that you finished your business. Are you ready? He picked me up and said yes. Let's go. Elder Rena said wait, you're not planning to say goodbye to your family. Why should he shake his head and say no need? I finished everything I need to do here. He bowed down and thanked her. I would like to ask her to take care of them for me. She pulled him back and told her to ask. That's the look on his face. Nags I'm so scared it's not suitable for someone with a kind heart like you. The farther you get from that fall, and that deep hole, the harder it is to climb back up. She let go and said, now go, I'll take care of things here, and Wen soon sat down, took out a round object and dripped his blood. I went in there so the two of them went somewhere together on the way, and asked Wen what's wrong with my expression. He said your expression reminds me of Pantheon, Azure is in use. They are talented warriors, you've learned how to hide your emotions to fight most effectively, a very useful method. Are you sure you've handled everything here? I need you to concentrate completely. When you reach use, you turn around and look back. Towards the house and said I'm ready do. Was slowly walking in the cellar talking to a while ago. He thought I hated what happened part of the I wish I had told him. It was okay that he was still family, but a bigger part of me. The part that I hated. Wished that he had never told us that I knew him from an early age that he was very different. Maybe that was it. It's too hard for me to accept because it hurts my pride, my selfish pride that maybe just maybe I've nurtured a millennial genius whose signs are always present in his behavior. The boy's strange behavior since he was very young, his incomprehensible mastery of swordsmanship, and a talented magician. He sat down next to Mrs. Rena. She said you're gone. He replied that I know she said I was I'm afraid of the day he will tell the two of you. Surprise, I ask you if you already knew. Elder Rena said I have seen many things, but it's only that boy that I have to use all my old brain to figure out. Try to guess what his future will be like he's not a boy, she said, but to me he's still a child just like you're a child to me. I always thought that was funny people's prejudices. The older a person is in terms of age and intelligence, the wiser they will be, and the smarter they will be, the more logical they will think. Putting those two things together, a smart older person will be a cold and calculating person. You agree? No, she put the object in her hand down on the table, and then came closer and told me you don't think I'm that kind of person. Why did you stammer and say of course not but I don't understand what that has to do with you? She said didn't you wish that he wouldn't tell you that you would be happier if you didn't know who that boy really was? Why, I bet you also wondered why he told you right. The heart is always the one who the biggest enemy of the brain. In fact, for men, the most formidable enemy of the brain is something else. As we said, the heart's emotions are always in conflict with things like rationality, efficiency, practicality, anything that has logic. The comforter says it's something that gets us hurt or even killed, but we can't do anything about it. It makes us weaker when we stand alone, but stronger when in a group J asks Ace, 
first acting on emotions, rather than thinking logically when he told us about this, she shook her head and laughed, ha ha, how do we know what he was thinking? She raised her head and said, but I know one thing I already know that boy when he was just a child in this world, and he has told many stories since then, she stood up and stretched to continue saying perhaps, this is a big step that he must take to completely escape from the shells that used to be his safe and comfortable place to live. She handed over the white cloth bag that was prepared for the rope, and told me to hold this for me so I can go prepare some food for my teacher's wife. Told me that it was a gift for the one family. He took it and said it was a gift. Then there was a bear in it. The girl standing behind said, oh, it's so cute. Dad, what is it? Can I adopt it? No dad turned to say you startled me. And dad, no, maybe that's a good idea. He thought he once dreamed of riding a mighty magical beast man, not a fight if my daughter had a magical beast to protect it so good. The girl looked at it. Then picked it up and happily said, hey, I'll call you Bucha, stood next to him, wondering why it was Boo, the girl answered because the two black dots on his face made him look as always, she was upset and hugged him. Then the daughter informed her father that yes, her parents were awake. Hearing that, he immediately came in to see if his wife was feeling better after a nap. She sat on the chair, asked my husband how long had I been sleeping? Then he hugged his wife gently and said for a few hours she was sad. Asked where did she go? Yes, you're a bad person, aren't you? No. Why do you think like that? I told him I was crazy. I don't want that. I didn't really mean it. She leaned on her husband's shoulder and cried. He hugged his wife's head and comforted her. It's normal. I don't believe anyone can easily accept it. What did Ace tell us? She trembled and asked. Are you a disgusting person for doubting whether Ace is our son? He was startled and silent. But in his heart, he thought he wanted to tell her. She doesn't but how can I when I even feel disgusted because I have the same thoughts as her? Alice is the one who has been carrying a heavy child for more than 10 months to give birth. She has nurtured, fed, and taken care of her. When he was sick and taught him everything about this world, now everything. She knew about that child turned out to be a lie. I need to become a strong person. I need to become someone my wife can rely on. I'm sorry. Ray hugged his wife and said he didn't do anything to make us feel guilty. We just need time to sort out our feelings. I know this, so that's why. He told us before he left she asked how long he would be gone for he said a few years I said ah Alice please don't say that don't ask questions like that she said will he be brave and outgoing like me or maybe he will be a bit cautious and shy like you he looked at his wife with tears in his eyes she cried and said darling don't you dare interrupt my husband's words you're our son why are you crying and saying I don't realize why we've been talking all this time talking about him as our son right now just like you it's hard for me to confidently say that he is our son Hopefully that will change when we see him again, but it won't. Can change the fact that we have considered him family for over 13 years. We have laughed, fought, celebrated, and cried together. Isn't that what brought us closer together? Because the blood that flows in us is not because of who we were in the past, but because of the things we've been through together. Do you still remember the time when I risked my life to save you on our way? I'm coming about this. She wiped her eyes and said, don't look at me anymore. She must have looked ugly, but she was startled because her husband held her wrist, kissed her, and said she was very beautiful. The atmosphere was romantic when her daughter called her mother. Come out and see Boo. She immediately asked Elise. What bee did you call? The husband happily said he would tell me later. After her husband's words of encouragement, she seemed to be more excited and no longer crying. The two happily hugged each other there. A place with a beautiful blue sky and a blooming peach blossom garden. Pink petals interspersed under the golden sunlight. A voice asked. This is the land of the gods. It's so beautiful. The wind said welcome. Coming to use, or more precisely, the castle of the medical clan, N.R. was startled and slowly walked behind Wynne, and soon came to a door, and asked if there were no guards or guardians. Wynne said that they have been watching us all along, when we cross the bridge. Let's go, we shouldn't let the Lord Eendurath wait for them to go to a magnificent castle. Thinking in his heart, this is Sylvia's house, he asked. What should he pay attention to when meeting is this Lord? Sylvia Wynne's grandfather soon replied that unfortunately, even I don't know what will happen because this situation is too unusual. They walked inside to a door, with two people wearing white clothes, and said, Chief, Mr. Wynne, soon after all, you brought the alien boy here to let a human child hold the princess like that. Is it appropriate? Wynne early said to let's go. They have already made a contract with each other, and now we have to let them go. Shall we come in or not? So the two of them opened the door for Wynne early, and behind that door, there was a man sitting on a chair. Wynne early bowed respectfully. Lord, stand up and go, and immediately thought, in my head. So this is the Lord E.N.D. or a Thea of him. I didn't feel it all of a sudden your body shouted back for something like this. It was burning you in so much pain that you fell to the ground that Lord breathing for a long time. 
He picked up Sai Vai who was lying in Ace's hand and suddenly turned into his hand. He looked at him with a puzzled expression. Thinking how could he? What did he say? I allow you to hug my niece. Why have I never seen you? Did you give it any training? Its mana level is embarrassingly low, and looking at its current state of hibernation, it seems like you've made it work too hard, clenching its fists in anger, but unable to do anything. What wind please hurry up and ask for my lord's forgiveness, I shouldn't have trained Princess Siv while I was in Decathan. If you want I can train the princess right away, he said no need I will personally take care of it choked Sai Vai, he touched his index finger, to Sai Vai making him startle up and look at him, he turned down looked at his father, and asked Papa, where are you we are in a very far place Sylvia, how do you feel inside? Then he yawned and said he was sleepy, can I continue to sleep? He smiled and told me to continue resting. He said Lord in NR 8th Elder Wind had already explained what he needed from me, but still haven't told me exactly yet. Why bring me here? If it's simply for training purposes, then wouldn't an isolated dungeon in Decathan be the right place? Why bring me to the land of the spirit? Sings dinly thinking, give me the dragon hair, and bow. Why is it ringing? Raise your hand to cover your face and say, whatever I do, you're wondering like that. Just give it here. And regrets taking the hair and giving it to him. Suddenly remembered and said on now, I realize that you lower race have to sleep more than us. Let's rest a bit. And wondered and asked wait, so we're going to the center of this crater again tonight. Why are we coming back? Then answered who said it was us. Me and Quinn some. There are more things to do on the battlefield. There is no comfortable bed waiting for you to eat. I just want the best for you. Quince and rang in turn, told you to try to rest okay. Ather said good night, and so the two of them left. Leaving me alone here. He grimaced and said good for me. Yes, I'm talking nonsense. Night fell, and N was sleeping in the tent that he had set up. Suddenly, the sound of rocks falling woke him up. He stood up and tied his hair. A limb suddenly attacked him, but luckily he was able to dodge it, and then used his sword to attack it with difficulty. Back then, you defeated Ren standing above, and talking down. You will never truly rest in the middle of a battlefield kid. You have to always be ready to fight in an optimal state. Now take off your clothes and continue fighting and helplessly took off his clothes and hid this insane old Bakhtin master. His goal is to take down the general-level golems, the ones with crowns on their heads, and rush to attack the soldiers. Normal golem to be able to quickly defeat the golem general Jean announces that in this battle you will have allies Ather is one of the main forces of the war. Everything will depend on yourself, whether you choose tan attack and rush towards the enemy or defend alongside his teammates to preserve the lives of all. After a while of attacking, he took the sword, and stabbed General Go Lem in the chest. Then the battle ended where he lay down. He breathed a sigh of relief and said that it was really fierce. R went down and picked up a piece of paper to read that the total number of casualties on his side was 271, and the enemy's was 512, a victory that was not very impressive, compared to the weak Lems on the other side. The enemy held up the piece of paper for Ren to look at, feeling frustrated and saying that he let too many of his teammates die and immediately sat up and said that maybe because they look like stone gorillas, I didn't temporarily put aside the battle just now. Rang brought a loaf of bread and a bottle of water to feed him. When he saw it, his eyes immediately sparkled. He took it. He sat in a corner and ate his food. Am, I don't feel any sympathy for them at all. Whether it's our side or the enemy's side, he told me that I would pay attention to that. Now go to sleep. Tomorrow won't be that easy. He immediately lay down and closed his eyes to sleep. He immediately heard a noise. He quickly got into position. Ready to fight, he was surprised to see an animal, with an evil smile, holding him by the neck, lifting him up and falling, using his hand to hold on to its fingers, and calling for help to let me go. Can anyone help me? And to you angry, he rushed in and cut off the arm he was holding to save her. She was now free from him, but the arm that had just been severed suddenly grew back immediately. It rushed to attack her, and he did not stand by and watch. Immediately attacked again. He was standing above and saw Tet lying unconscious down below. He immediately jumped down towards her. His hand was bleeding quite a bit. He said that things had gone too far. Enough was enough. Immediately, the beast immediately said, disappears and walks out from the cloud of smoke. Tell you to realize it quickly. I'm waiting for your next move. If things go any further, and Bao won't have a hard time realizing that this silly situation is fake. I hope you don't do this just for fun. Why am I being kicked just for training you? Because you don't agree with my training method. Is this a punishment for a low-class race, An? Answer no, it's an idiom forget it and use the word which means for fun, but rang literally means trying to kick ring saying anyway. I'm doing this for your own good look at your current state, you spent most of your energy recklessly just to save that test girl. And Ko did say listen, I know it wasn't the best choice at that time. 
But for I have people more important than myself um. But you can't deny that it was a very reckless act. He shook his head and said of course family relationships and life partners are also very important even for Asu and blushed. Explained slowly. Ted's partner is not my partner. Oh, according to Kwan Song, he told me and by his expression. He was definitely in love with that girl. Seeing that the two of them had and was so embarrassed that he got angry and asked him what he was doing. Haven't you calmed down yet and said come on, you're off topic. Ring so you can create all kinds of scarecrows with just dirt. Why ring and say I can? Created by himself. The object he created was a chair and sat on it, holding his face and saying in frustration. But isn't it all that we can't simulate the properties of water with just earth? How can you realize that it's all just I'm old? And answered after calming down a bit I realized. I could see the vibrations of the yellow earth type super traveling particles around their bodies even though they looked very realistic. But there was no way an 8 super would catch the test, even to the eel tuss. Can a person of a low race be able to express the profound understanding to perform supernatural travel at the same level as those without genes and continue shaking his head and saying that my dictionary does not have the word impossible, but this has a very high possibility that it will be impossible but you don't need to worry about that. And wonder why because you are living proof that anything can happen you are born with it. Be able to comprehend how to operate the four elements and even special forms of them. In short, Controlling all four elements is the necessary key to unlock the mysteries of the things that the dragon princess has given. Given to you, you are so extraordinary, kid, even as who doesn't have the same natural talent and luck as you. And smiled and said, if that's a compliment, thank you. Now, teacher, what should we do next? He took his hand and told me first. Let me see which hand is your dominant hand. He raised it and introduced it as a mineral called Lakdia. If it stood alone, it would be like an ordinary and useless piece of stone. Going through the process of refining and synthesizing properly, what I will take with me to the grave, so don't ask it could become extraordinary. Remember I said I am not a swordsmith, but a sword maker with crystals with the right tools. We can grow them into a weapon. And curiosity grows like a tree growing, right? If you can reason, just assume so. Usually it takes years or even centuries just to observe how you fight and then analyze and synthesize the necessary information to create something. The weapon suits you perfectly. But due to circumstances that don't allow it, I have to try this method to see if it works. While Rang was pressing the pearl into the flesh of his hand, he asked him what he meant, but it seemed like that action of Rang's hurt him very much. Why didn't he say anything in advance? Ren mumbled under his breath, I'm sorry, I forgot. Counting to three, he said that I had synthesized this Dia pill from the feathers of Lady Siu Viva, and the microscopic Lady Scales are extremely important things that contribute to making you who you are today. Every moment of action. Thought and change in your body will become the deciding factor in your weapon, even I don't know what it will look like, or if it can even become a weapon, I wonder, looking at my hand and saying, but why did he choose such an uncertain path? I thought he didn't intend to do it. Weapon for me well, a sharp sword alone is not enough for you to deal with VJs, and we don't have much time left wait. I thought it would be two years before the war started, but Quinn Somboy just received news from the slice about Jaikin's current situation. I'm worriedly asked to be Ren, told Quinn Som, and Lord in name didn't want me to tell you this, but I want you to make a wise decision later after listening to everything. Even though it was impossible to determine the time they'll die a pill work, it must have taken a year or even five years for it to become his weapon, but he still needed it. I have to increase my strength before the war, I know. But why you look so rushed? It's not normal at all. Even though the army hasn't arrived yet, the war has already begun, and angrily clenched his hands. Then asked what he meant, Quinn's son told me there were still two years to go, but he shook his head, and said that's what war is like, kid, you can't predict it. He turned around and said I'd come back if there was war. The fight had already begun, so I had to go back to fight. He made two giant hands hold his legs back, then angrily said, then why wait for Xia to come and kill him? And angrily replied, I've been practicing. The months to face them, isn't that the only reason I'm here? Why are you saying it's not enough brat at that level of yours? You're not even a match for a servant. Seriously, one year, give me one year, and with my help you will really be able to give Jack in a chance to win in a magnificent building. He expressed his wish to Mr. Vion that he could fight. But his grandfather was reading the stacks of papers in his hand, and then replied to his beloved granddaughter that I said no. The Asu Price named Ledia was sitting on a chair drinking tea, and told my grandfather, that's right, it's too risky for me to go to the battlefield at this time, and it's completely unnecessary. Who needs me? It was the person who said that I was much stronger than before, but he said that it wasn't enough. She got angry, and told me to ask permission, and went out, closing the door loudly when she was gone. Mr. Vian asked Tathagata if this was really the best way. Then Vian replied that he knew how much his granddaughter meant to Ather Quinn. 
no matter how many years we trained. Besides, letting her go to the battlefield will definitely affect his judgment. Ket walked on the Lang Street to a door, and there were two guards blocking it. He asked the princess which wind brought you there. I'm seriously sane. Please open the door. I'm sorry, but we haven't received any orders from Commander Vision or Mr. Leaf that someone will go out during Tet. When we told them to open the door, Lan So Vade was standing next to us. She told the guard at the door that he was coming with me to solve a few small matters. Hearing that, Guard Mood stopped him and immediately opened the door for them. Thank you, and go inside. There was a soldier. Bowed and said, General, and Princess, Test Chia, where do you two want to go? Look at it. Then test and understand immediately. Say Land City. Please, soldier, because attacks from the outer cities are happening more and more every day. Many please show your identification when you arrive at the Test City Gate. Turn and whisper to V-Day. Are you sure you want to follow and watch over me? V-Day replied anyway. I just finished the training session with Princess Tin, so it's good to rest for a bit. I heard that and smiled. Edis believed that it was once the capital of Sepin, a human kingdom. I remembered in school that this city was built on the west coast of the continent to stay away from the kingdom of dwarves and elves, as well as to stay as far away from the beast forest as possible. Currently, the battles are concentrated in the beast forest, so Etten has become the furthest city from the battle, a defensive position. Ideal strategy with three sides bordering the sea. However, after the announcement that war was about to break out on a large scale, a few years ago, King Guider destroyed the entire city and rebuilt it as the last line of defense to confront the enemy. Deputy head of the Axia Army V-Day, and Fell went to the city of Etten and closed his eyes and advised her to remember to have knowledge and warnings, at all times falling Mavely said, but there is nothing to come with you. There is nothing more than this isn't it is the city farthest from the battlefield in Salva. It is said that during wartime, you always have to be ready for every worst situation that can happen. Ted asked you, you said you just finished training with Thin Fish, right? Fellow trainers, how are you practicing? Bon told me that Du is quite determined and hardworking, but his progress is still quite slow. Even though he is a beast tamer, his ability to manipulate Super Du is only average. On the other hand, the fish princess Thin is progressing very quickly. I heard that he is a more natural genius than others, and after two years I finally understood why he was buying something on the side of the road and replied, well, no. Probably more than everyone in Dei, said that really can't be said haphazardly. I forgot that there is another boy about the same age as you Ether is truly on a completely different unknown level after completing training. How amazing will his level be? Hopefully he's ready to go to the battlefield. Tet sighed and said yes. Do you think the AIA army can sweep all the way here? Did Grandpa say the signal? Chief Kai said that AIA is located west of J. Kathan. Doesn't that mean that Edis believes to be the closest city to the enemy right? But she also said that they have no way to send a number of troop soldiers across the sea. That's why they chose to more discreetly use the teleportation portals they had set up throughout the beast forest VVG, can bring in a considerable amount of resources, and hide them in endless mazes and the dungeons until they are ready to attack Tet, said I understand she lowered her face and thought all the information we know about the enemy comes from the principal, please. Thea good guy, even though the master leaves Dia partially broke the curse that prevented her from revealing any information related to her home country, but she still fell into a war coma that negatively affected the relationship between me and my grandfather, but I also wasn't the only one who was upset. He and the council had to do what they could on the social front after the death of the king and queen. The dwarves had rebelled, so the council had to working hard to rebuild the alliance and at the same time encouraging each city to prepare the armed forces. Grandfather had to take care of all of that. Fortunately, I'm still trying to practice, because it's 2XE. She was so lost in thought that she didn't pay attention to everything around her, until there was a person holding a pile of paper in his hand, and then said be careful. She was startled and pulled out the sword in her hand, and was about to attack the other person, but a moment later, she stammered and said Emily. The two of them happily and happily hugged each other. Princess Emily saw Vadao, standing behind. Emily immediately waved goodbye to you, General. Vade and Day also politely replied hello. She shouted at Princess Ken. I felt extremely happy to see my classmate again. She sat down and said it was great to meet you. She helped my classmate pick up the pile of papers and said sorry. He suddenly ran out, so my body took over. Reacting like that, Emily said, I'm the one who should apologize to you. I have to fix a lot of stuff so my glasses slipped down and I couldn't see anymore. She adjusted her glasses and said with a smile, but it was quite fun. You know, it's like an adventure game, but she suddenly panicked and realized, oh my God, I can't waste any more time here. She quickly stood up and said she had to go. Ted asked what was going on. What's going on? This seems very important. Emily replied that Professor John had even asked for aid from a spear to the whole council. Then she hurriedly ran away and fell, clutching papers in her hand. 
and asking for money. Can I go with him? Then I looked at the direction my classmate had just run away and V-Day agreed. Have you been with her recently? What is Professor John researching? It's been a long time since I've seen him come to the castle. Emily said don't call him Professor. His mind isn't normal, let alone educating his beautiful children. I don't remember how many times I had to train my beloved professor from piles of broken pieces and useless trash after the explosions he caused. What are you recently? How are you princess? Don't call me Princess Emily. You know I don't like it, but I'm bored to death these days. You don't know how stuffy it is in the castle. Of course it's a castle, and the hallways are full of ceilings. Then I heard that the castle is out of season now, and I burst out laughing. Do you think you're so funny? Emily whined, just try hanging out all day with someone like a professor and see if your sense of humor will go away forever. Then I'll fall so high. Let's try being stuck in a castle for a whole year with an aunt and a grandfather who's so domineering that just breathing makes it seem like you're in danger. See what Emily said, but don't be too hard on him. Commanded Vision after he was kidnapped. I mean, after what happened in Superdue, I can't imagine how worried he and your parents are. It's not been an easy year for all of us. Practicing hard is the only way for me to reassure myself that I'm getting stronger. But the AIA army's attacks on the beast forest suddenly. I just wished I could go to the battlefield right away. Emily asked, and and do you have any news? You mean the old news that the old master repeats every day like a parrot he's training? That's all I need to know. So what about deer? Tet sadly said no. There hasn't been any news for a long time. But until now, I still don't understand deer. He was caught. All I know is that he was trying to save yourself before being taken away. It's not like Vea told us to come, and they walked in. Tet asked what the bad smell was. Emily said what smell? There are a lot of minerals and materials here. During the smelting or refining process, it is difficult to distinguish whether someone is saying, damn it, Emil, how many times have I told your flat brain before you understand that you cannot put those minerals in the same container? Well, their properties don't match and in the end we're left with two piles of useless rocks. Emily said you're like a wind lion deer. A man bowed to you good afternoon, Princess General Emily. Really luckily you came back so quickly, Professor John is waiting for you. Emily said you're lucky, are you having a fit again? Today, I'm afraid maybe he was looking forward to the notes. Do you know what these are? Professor Professor John, the man, and Emily were focusing on the papers, reading them, bumping and falling, standing outside not understanding anything. Emily asked Professor, what is this? He opened the book, read it, then closed it, General. I was sent an official request to the council. By the way, Miss Deer, can you come with me too? That would be very helpful in question. So where are we going? John said the east coast at the northern border of the forest monster. They set out together to get there. Ted thought, why was Professor John in such a hurry? John announced that we had arrived. Remember to be careful. Ted panicked. Why did you follow me? John said they were arresting me. Must find a way to be able to travel long distances across oceans with an engine that is not powered by supercruisers, but by steam generated from outside materials. What do you mean by worse? Worse. Why doesn't John answer? He just says to hurry up. Do you think he's going to answer any of our questions? Ted asks, are these marks bite marks? Emily told me, how big must that monster be to leave bite marks like this? V-Day said there were no signs of life. John said it was a useless precaution. But anyway, thanks for the observation test and wondering if this is the case. It's not a jika according to the assignment. So what is it besides Professor John? Is there anyone else who can create it? Even take it to sea, and the people on the ship, why have they gone? Everything was completely destroyed. Someone deliberately erased all traces containing valuable information that could prove the identity of the Tet ship. It seemed like there was someone on the ship who did not want others to know their identity. Emily asked if someone had stolen the professor's blueprints. Could it be one of his competitors? John said it couldn't have happened until a few weeks ago. Is still completely submerged in the sea. If it weren't for the receding tide, a group of adventurers discovered it and sent a report back. We would never have known about it. Emily asked, but what happened to the sailors on the ship? Do you think they all drowned? John said no, at least they couldn't all die. No hiding the remains. No evidence. Nothing. The sailors didn't want anyone to know about this ship, let alone its belongings or people. On the ship and the wire said I had a bad feeling when I saw this ship, but I want you to confirm him yourself after reading the report. I have prayed to heaven and earth that my guess is wrong, but maybe I guessed right. At first I thought maybe just maybe the lost sailors along with their assigned J crew were able to repair it and bring it back, but after reviewing it I confidently affirmed that this is not the case. It doesn't have anything to do with JK following the assignment, nor JK. Then Emily worriedly asked Professor, I mean that's exactly what I mean, its existence will change the entire situation of the war. Hey Tet Bao this war, you mean right princess means Axia in their weapons list, 
has the ability to create a ship that can carry an entire army across the ocean and Count J. Kath. When Professor John led and dragged the fallen Princess Emily and the man to a ship with strange traces, they asked dozens of questions when they arrived here, and the vision was sitting in a sad room feeling everything. The matter seems to be much more serious than expected, or rather, our leaders are being subjective. During the council meeting, King Bine pounded his fist on the table and said, Damn, he's sure about it. John John standing below slowly presented as I said, Your Majesty, whether this ship is from AIA or not is just my speculation. But I can be sure of one thing that it is not Jaka, according to Jio Hoang Hao, grabbed her husband's hand to reassure him, and then asked John how he could confirm that. John said that Jay singing along is an invention that I am extremely proud of. I want everyone to know about it, so I has marked that signature. And it is on the entire ship's frame. But there is no sign of any kind on that ship, and the material used to make the ship's frame is completely different from the jik according to the contract. At this time, King Bine was angry, slammed the table, and stood up. Damn Mr. Vian told Bine to calm down. Bine asked, calm down. Didn't you hear what John just said? Forgive me, but how can I calm down when I know? The enemy is about to attack them. They can bring hundreds if not thousands of magicians and soldiers across the sea to come here. But the fact that those bastards are hiding in the forest of monsters is already annoying enough. But now to speak up enough, then ask and advise her opinion and answer. Although I do not have a thorough understanding of the structure of the ship, I agree with the professor's point of view about the ship being damaged. Clearing all traces was proof enough of that then Bine's wife asked if there was a possibility that it was a trap or not to a strategy to divide our forces and distract us from the forest of monsters that was the place to think that if Akshi's purpose is to separate our forces and take the wreck of the ship, going to the west coast would be much more effective. Because that's where they want to trick us into thinking they will attack the motherfucker with constantly changing tides. It's a miracle that we found the ship. Say now. The question is whether it's worth the risk. Is that AIA person asking for help? She revealed that the AIA is trying to trying to dispatch soldiers deeper into the forest of monsters but being so subjective that they only have one plan is foolish. We have no other choice but to prepare as best we can to deal with them all. Too prone to attack, but without the help of the dwarves, it will be difficult for us to gain the upper hand Baline Bao mean as in. Please allow me and Piala to join the next meeting in the dwarven kingdom. We must continue to fortify the cities along the west coast. Mr. Vi agrees with Bine's opinion. He is right. We need the help of the dwarves to be able to win this war. When the council meeting is over, Mr. Vision returned to his room with a headache thinking about how Alia was able to take soldiers across the sea and Tija discovered one of our ships. He couldn't even be angry that V-Day took her with him. To be honest, I was quite surprised that Tez Chia left the castle for so long. I was immersed in painful thoughts when there was a knock on Cock Cock Cock's door. He spoke up and told me to come in. Tizia opened the door, then told, and told Grandpa to call his nephew to stand up and said, yes, Tisha, I want to show you something. A blue light appeared the battlefield scene of five days ago. We sent more than 400 people to the dungeon. There were 200 soldiers and 20 magicians who couldn't return. Vian sadly said I was the one who ordered them down there. Their deaths are my responsibility. The war has only just begun. But I did what I was told. Making decisions that I cannot forget myself for the rest of my life is just a man's selfishness that makes me want to protect you from dangers regardless of the great role you can play. Tez's face looked worried and stammered. Mr. Vision sadly walked over to pick up a sword and said, Tez Chia, you are an extremely talented magician. And with two years of hard training, you will be a valuable resource in war. But no matter how great your strength is, you are still just a human. Just one small mistake is the reason why I always prohibit you. I've participated in every battle up to now. I was surprised, but I still stood still and listened to Grandpa finish Tez Chia. After seeing what I'm about to go through, I still won't be a part of the battle. With a face full of determination, Test answered yes. He threw the sword in his hand for Test to fall, and quickly grabbed the sword that I gave him. He said, prove to me your determination. You two immediately came together as one. On large land, he asked me if I clearly understood the principles of the match. Without hesitation, I quickly replied that I understood, and immediately the two of them rushed into the match. Even though it was just the first moments of the match, but the battle was extremely tough and fierce. Not long after that, she fell and was beaten. But she was not discouraged or discouraged because of that. She still focused on fighting seriously to be able to prove to him. Seeing her ability in battle, Grandpa commented that her ability to control animals had improved a lot. Using that as motivation, she still tried her best to prove it, and he was surprised when she prepared to strike again. He said test while preparing to attack. She told her grandfather to be careful. But on the contrary, the injured person was Test, not her grandfather. He had defeated him with a kick. Ted had just faltered at this time. 
Admit that you've lost. You can't even land a decent blow. You look quite sad and helpless about yourself. Grandpa seriously said on the battlefield you should call me commander, right? It wasn't Grandpa Tet's surprise. Then she looked up at her grandfather and suddenly realized something and happily asked what that meant. She got closer to her grandfather and smiled and said, Thank you, Grandpa. But Grandpa said that if I go to the battlefield, I will have a condition for you. He slowly said that you must have the permission of both parents. You must bear the responsibilities of a member of the royal family. Your squad leader will mention this, but whether it becomes a burden or not depends on you. If your teammates feel you can't take care of yourself, I will pull you out. The battle was immediately clear. Without any hesitation, Tran happily and quickly answered yes. Of course, of course, being allowed by Grandpa to participate in the battle made Tetsuya happy, to the point that no words could describe that feeling inside her at that time. But Grandpa seriously warned her to try not to fall into a situation where she had to use it to a stage where she still couldn't control it. Completely so for you to use it on the battlefield is too reckless. She was silent for a moment and then waved away the hand that Grandpa was pointing at her face. She said that the old master said the same thing. He said that the will is beast. Assimilated, there was something very strange, but he couldn't understand why it was like that. She turned away and continued. But don't worry, I'll try my best. Now I'm going to find my parents right away. Who is this? Grandpa is worried. Call my baby, look back and listen to me. Starting today, I will no longer be your grandfather. In the past, my actions and decisions towards you were all for your own sake, regarding your safety and happiness. He clasped his hands behind his back and continued to speak. But now that you have become a soldier, I must treat you like one whether I give you direct instructions or not. Your general, you must understand that these orders put Jik, then as the top priority, and not your own safety. This is my final warning from now on. Not finished yet. After finishing the test, he immediately rushed to his grandfather, beaming and saying I understand, commander. After hugging him for a while, she let go and put her hand on her. Bored in the style of obeying orders, her expression at that time was also very serious and answered him. You will be a soldier who can do anything to protect Katen and our people. Grandpa also put his hand on board and replied yes, I know. Looking at Tess back as he left, he immediately thought that was the one. What makes me afraid is that one late afternoon in the magnificent palace Mr. Vian walked somewhere alone when he opened the door and walked in. The girl named Anna was quite surprised when Mr. Vian came and saw that, she immediately bowed down. The person then said that I'm really sorry, I didn't think anyone would come to visit him. Viola slowly replied, it's okay Anna, it's just natural, I wanted to come. He was worried, and asked her how she was. Anna immediately replied, I just having prescribed the necessary medicine, to keep her body in a healthy condition from a physical point of view, her body is always in good shape, but no matter how hard we try, we still cannot beat her. Mr. Vine asked her sadly. As usual, Anna stood behind her and politely bowed her head and said, I'm afraid that's it. I won't bother you anymore. Please go ahead. Sad eyes, bored expression. Mr. Vine sat down. The nearby chair asked my old friend, Did you sleep well? Did you sit and confide in her? Good Kai. I don't know if you knew this in advance, but Axia's army was able to build steamships and is likely to use them to send tens of thousands of soldiers to our continent. And then he answered himself that it was unlikely that she could not know. Anyway, when constructing JC as assigned, she was already here with us. But it almost happened. Forget the main purpose, I have some news for you, you won't believe it. I just gave permission for the Chia test to join the battle. If you wake up, you'll probably be surprised by my decision. Saying that, he carried Mr. I laughed out loud, and then I said I would treat her like a soldier, not like my niece. But then his eyes looked sad and worried, but I was afraid I knew that he wanted to go to war. Her school is so fierce and I know how stubborn she is so I decided if she wants to go to war, at least she has to fight under my management. He covered his face sadly. Keep talking, but don't tease. Actually, the reason I abdicated is because I don't want to do all these things and the things I'm doing. Even more serious, Ad is always there to supervise. I guarantee that I'm mentally and physically fit to command the war and powerful enough to be able to give orders to all the generals and guild leaders, but I just want to lazily sit in the garden and watch my niece be the leader. Day by day is my wish so pathetic how ironic that I have to send my own niece to the battlefield as Zun and Mai and Baleen and Paikal all tried their best to help but in the end they also turned to listen to my orders. So the Lord considered me the only person suitable to lead the war. Please tell me my wife has gone before me for a long time. I don't want to see my children and nieces go too. If you leave me, I can't bear it. He slowly took her hand and then told me and I, I still haven't had a chance to say sorry to her. I feel like something's not right. You know that right. Mr. Ladia removed the curse on her. She knew that she could die if she revealed information about Axia about V. 
I thought about that too. But I didn't stop her. His whole body trembled and he bowed. Face down saying that in order to gain the upper hand in the war, I put her in this situation, I will never forgive myself. I should not have let things go this far. It wasn't because we've been together for decades, even though some people shun you because you're a spy. But I would never do that. You turned against your own people, so you could make us strong. Stronger than anyone here when confiding these things, Mr. Vision's tears fell without realizing it. He used his hand to wipe away the tears. He continued. The real war was about to begin. Then I won't be able to come down to visit you for a while, my friend, he stood up and said seriously. But I promise you once this war is over, I will find every way to help you wake up until then rest Tet and his comrades have set out to join the war. Let's change positions to Tan Na right away. Commander, be careful. If anything happens, your grandfather will not leave us alone. Tet replied that don't worry, I saved your lives a lot, but you guys can't help me much. Jaya said don't argue with her anymore. David, it's not there anymore. David turned around and asked Tan Na behind him. Did you see the boss? Not yet. These guys are fighting forever, but can't get rid of them. How can Tan Na reply? I haven't seen you ask the commander. Is that okay? Should we withdraw our troops? Our group won't be able to kill these guys. New Year's Eve. Agreed with that idea and said that our attack on the dungeon should be considered a probe. That's okay. Let's leave. David said that the mages behind us were right. We blocked all of their monsters' suction attacks and left Na. I think that each profession has its own benefits. Come closer to Tan Na and tell me I will hold them off. You unleash all your firepower to destroy Na. The enemy clearly said it. You shout loudly. David Sidia, you two dodge. At least when the two of them had dodged after work, they aimed at that monster and then unleashed group fire. The four of them joined forces. They were able to destroy that monster. David asked after work. That was a type of magic. The new technique is strong, but it reflects aftershocks that don't fit. Jaya nearby also said that it's a lot of noise. I told you to practice more. But after work, complaining about practicing with the miserable girl, I'll give up. Tet said that's enough. Now is not the time to meet each other. The move that just caused the fire spread enough to hold her for a while. David said happily, then rested. After work, he scowled and said, thinking about the meal that he has to eat almost every day. I feel like I want to die. David came closer and said to my dear commander, Should I call you a princess? I wonder if you can prepare a proper meal for hard-working warriors like us. Tet Lux said stop it. Daya's brother squeezed in between the two of them and pushed David's face and told him to stay away. If he wanted to be flattered, he looked and hid his face before talking nonsense. David arrogantly said don't be jealous of my beauty, you bitch. Short brother Daya was angry bow, said what he said he's a cute short guy who like you hates it right TX and David just reply there he's as cute as tan brother, this is the little one he's taller than my kid, just a little old and that kid was already short and bad-tempered. David was about to put his arm around him to end his shift, but he pushed him away and wondered why he had to drag me in. I told him, come on, everyone. I was fighting almost to death. There's blood all over there, giving birth to bad things, so go back and rest. Everyone thought about going to take a relaxing bath and felt happy. Then they walked towards the door to get out of that dungeon. There were quite a few people outside, and there were tents set up there. He turned around to thank his teammates, and said it was time to go back to rest. David was trying his best to light a fire to burn the pile of firewood in front of him. After a while, he was able to celebrate Ted, looking at the three of them with radiant faces, thinking that in three months, everyone had such close memories with each other. There was a test call. She turned around and saw Helen waving to her. She happily ran back and hugged Helen. Then he said it was fun to meet everyone. Let's test, come back, and introduce to the whole team. This is Helen Sater Z Myfar M.W. Doom. Quake and Nizam Kenya, and Anga of Quine Hone. And before I could finish introducing myself, David grabbed someone's hand. The woman then said, Hello, beautiful lady. Nice to meet you. I'm David, the most handsome person in the clan. Tavia behind him hugged his face and continued speaking. He was also the laziest. The Tet clan saw that and immediately thought that arrogance was also, there's a reason. He's one of the masters of mana control. Helen asked, Are you sure you're a girl? Daya surprised and asked, Yes. How do you know that? The Deaf family served under the Leah Deaf family. It's been many centuries, but looking at how to control mana so skillfully, she can guess that when she heard that, Daya whispered shyly, her face turned red on both cheeks. Maybe she was quite happy about that, and also a little shame, the De Deaf family is famous for its fierce fighting ability. The Leah Rong family is a family that uses skilled guides. People from the dead family were born in a family with no sons. David with his personality. After reaching the Golden Core, he left the family. Coming to the battlefield, 
he easily achieved a lot of glory along with him. Sidaya was born in a family without a son, so from a young age he was treated like a boy, so they made a good couple on the battlefield with his irritable personality, but in reality he only cares about two things in life, flirting with beautiful women, and taking care of little Sidaya. Because he was raised as a son in the family, he is quite tough, but he is sociable, and always cares about everyone. She is the center that connects everyone. Once they were on the team together, Tia immediately clung to David and beat him. David told me who to go to. Why are you always so violent with me? Helen saw the two of them like that and immediately said they looked like Aether and T. That's Shia, right? The whole Taekwine team heard that and burst out laughing. And when they fell, they were so embarrassed that their faces turned red. Dune looked at the end of shift and said, Oh, look at this strange crossbow. I'd never seen it before. After finishing shift, I laughed and replied. It's because I have skills and powers that are a bit different from everyone else, so I customized it. I simply understood that I created it. Everyone was surprised by those shots and said that he looked terrible. After work, during the assessment of his ability, he created many surprises, so he was introduced to his grandfather by Professor John. A Golden Core magician possesses two magical attributes of fire and wind, but due to his body's characteristics, he cannot accumulate as much magic to perform magic as other magicians. But after work, he still tries to learn asked and proved his great qualities through his creativity and mastery of magic control. His team was one of the teams with the youngest members here, but they fought very bravely. I feel that for the purpose of protecting our homeland and country, our team always does a good job in everything assigned, always maintains the battlefield to chase away monsters, helping the whole people feel secure in fighting Ted. At this time, I asked what was going on that everyone was afraid of. Here, Helen suddenly answered with a serious face. Um, we just returned from the protective wall area over there. The situation is very tense, but there are instructions from above to send your team over here to check on the situation. I'll see if I can help you all or not. I'm quite surprised. It seems like something is about to happen here. So you and your team should prepare well after work. I'm worried and asked what I saw. At the wall, the whole Taekwine home team was rich and tested. They asked everyone if they had fought against the AIA magicians. Helen answered yes. We were at the wall for about B months. It was like a military base. But we're fighting at the Bet Lades border. The mages aren't the biggest problem. It's the monsters. Helen and Le said that's why the higher ups sent us. We're here. The level mutant monsters D in this cave are all controlled by the AIA. There are hundreds of thousands of them. We have to find and kill them before the AIA use them to destroy the wall of mutant monsters tamed and controlled by the AIA people. Usually the leader of their own dungeon can use energy to control hundreds of monsters under their command. As long as those mutants are still alive, the subordinate monsters will all obey their orders and fought for the AIA. Countless teams entered the dungeon to find and kill the mutant before the Axia could gather enough monsters and destroy the wall. My teammates and I were assigned a dungeon with high-level mutant monsters. S fighting down here is more fierce than war. Seriously, tell me more about the battle at the wall, Helen A. M. angrily say, listen, princess, it's not a fairy tale you were read by your nanny before bedtime. What is war? Both sides have people dying, and that is considered good luck. Tet told me I understand what war is. I ask because when we fight monsters here, my team will be sent to fight. My school wants them to prepare well. Kang and Les smiled and hugged Aim's arm and said, okay, it's time to run, and then take it easy. Dinner will be ready when everyone returns. Dune told Test, don't pay attention to what I say. I'm on the battlefield is very fierce. Am reacted like that because he didn't want you to know. Helen said that the Alama soldiers are much more barbaric than the mana monsters here. At least here they fight because of their survival instincts, while the others don't. Fighting to massacre others, to be honest, I feel a bit sorry for them. After work, I ask what you mean? My battle information is the most important thing in war. Both sides want to collect all information about the other side, which means there will be imprisonment and torture. The fight here is black and white, the bad monsters, and I am good. But when I fight with a human being who can talk, scream in pain and beg for his life, everything becomes gray. Distinguishing right from wrong becomes much more difficult while talking and pondering in worry. When there is a sound of pleas, let me in quickly call the doctor here. Everyone immediately goes into a state of defense and observes Helen immediately asked in the direction of the call if this happened often. She replied that it was not. In the room where she was injured, she took a few people in and everyone in there was surprised. Ask the princess what's going on. Are you injured? A red-haired man called Helen Close. She warmly and cheerfully shook her hand and said, Nice to meet you here. Rogo, or, should I call you captain? That's my position. But why did you two come here? Are you okay? Right now, his face is quite worried. 
Elder and Baya asked the princess. This must be curious about the information our sleeping prince brought, right? Smiled and said that it was true that he didn't hide anything in front of her, Elder and Baya. This shabby infirmary looks like Miss Tam. There's a lot of trouble. Come near and help me hold these herbs. After work, he stammered. I'm okay. Helen said we don't want to bother you, but I have to report to the superiors at the wall. I think the fastest way to find out what's going on is to talk to him. Fortunately, it must have been a while before he answered. After work, he held a bunch of things in his hands and asked him what was wrong. Chief Storm and Baya was checking his leg and then replied that he was dehydrated and seriously weak. It seemed like he hadn't eaten or drank anything for a few days. Looking at his feet, he must have been running for a long time. Zoga wondered, but what was he running from? Suddenly he stood up and asked, How long have I been fainting? I know you just woke up, but we need to know the situation right away. Where is your team? I was so drunk that when I heard what they were asking, I clenched my fists, bowed my face, and told them they were all dead. I was the only survivor. I had an argument with my teammates, so I didn't continue. But I felt guilty so I followed them right after they left, but when I got there, I was extremely scared to see that they were in danger. There were a lot more than up here, up to hundreds of them. Some of them even had human weapons. I hid in a corner, shivering, and felt very lucky. But I had to hide and hide for so long to be able to install it. I didn't open the teleportation gate there because I was afraid they would destroy it before using it. So I ran back here with a worried look on Rogo's face and asked him. He said he had finished installing the teleportation gate, which means X waste and pale face. Go worry and then slowly tell them that behind them there is a large door and they seem to be protecting something behind it. It seems like we found the lair of the S-Class mutant after hearing about it and retrieving everything. What he witnessed and experienced just a few minutes later, Yogo's voice echoed throughout the large cave, informing everyone about the message from the police team to assassinate everyone in the cave of more than 100 soldiers. I've been scurrying around to prepare for the impending battle. I've done very well in the three months we've been here. But this is really a battle against a real mutant that I can accept. It turned out that the CIA and David also had some worries that they themselves needed to shake off. But as for Tija, even though she was the youngest, she was still very calm and confident. But suddenly, her face turned red when she got off work. Looking at the test, he said to himself, Concentrate on getting out of work. Maybe I can reach her. She loves Ather. He picked up his crossbow and said the monsters we had paired up and fought would not what is that compared to what we will find once we go through that gate. We have 25 low damage rounds and 8 high damage enchanted ones might be better if we had 5 low damage rounds and 2 high damage. Or maybe you said everything you thought of. And then after shift, I was startled and fell. Kadaya Kadaya laughed and said come on, after shift, you have to stretch your muscles. Before going into battle, she raised her hand. After work, he took his brother's hand and smiled and said okay, Vanga team, listen clearly, when you come, remember to be careful. There's no way to predict how many monsters there will be on the other side. Well said Tet, everyone. We will all get out of this place alive and have a hearty meal to end it all. Okay. David K. Dia, and after work heard that, Dom Thumb Bao immediately agreed Rogo said loudly okay, then put on the gold team and moved forward hearing that, everyone rushed back in front was fighting with monsters. After shift, he panicked when he saw a person being attacked by two monsters. This was David. After shift, he tried to save her, but then his body touched her. On her neck, it's so damn sad. She's dead. Someone reminded her to leave shift on the left side. After shift, he looked to the left and attacked the beast. Then said die. Dia took advantage of the attack and shouted loudly. Flowers David said it's time for you to be useful right after shift after shift. Coldly replied keep your mouth shut brother Dia told your teammates to come help me a bit. David told brother Dia to come here. Tet bow David begins the siege hit was clear. The fire magician finished it all and left them alone. Rogo told everyone to open the way. After shift after shift he used his crossbow to attack the fireball monsters of you have defeated them Rogo saw, that then say loudly healer dome door up, if possible gather the wounded at the healer's place. If you can't fight anymore, then return to Doe Camp David, and they're already finished work. David said good job, the strange young mage Rogo stood on a rock. Cal raised his sword, and told the warriors, this is an overwhelming victory, despite the mana monster army suddenly attack us, we will continue to move forward the sacrifice of our comrades will not be in vain end of the shift in contemplation, overwhelming victory ha Rogo, said that but how can it be considered a victory is here, the weight of a human life is not just a simple number 10 people have died, and we haven't even reached their lair today, how many more people will die after when the war ended, everyone was sitting down to rest, and she saw Tet looking at her after works, so she asked why. Then she said she was glad we won, but still lost. The warrior was suddenly interrupted by David, Princess. We are always rich in kindness, 
and we are giving kindness and grace to rude people like us. Tet tell David to stop. Sitting on the ground, he looked up sharply and held Tet's hand and said we did our best. I'm strong and we won. Stand up after work and tell her she's right. We all know what can happen every time we go into battle. It's impossible to save all the warriors. We laugh and say, I'm sure you're right. I can't save all of them. David said okay. After work? Wait, wait, that's not what I meant. Someone asked everyone who needs your love. Tet said sadly. At this rate, I won't. Keep up with him. Dia wondered and asked him. The name you just mentioned is the name you keep mentioning, right? Ather, right? David must be frustrated and say oh it's him again. Did you describe him as well-rounded and attractive? Like a person without any flaws. There's no way she wouldn't be biased. Kedaya laughed and said oh please. You're just jealous because Thu is the image you dream of being able to achieve. Also, he's definitely more handsome. David angrily told her to repeat the old Tet thing standing behind him, and said I mean he's quite famous at school even though I don't know if he realized that or not, but at first just met him. And he's a bit scary. David and the other guy are arguing. She asked Test. She said he saved her from human traffickers after she ran away from home, right? Yes. Although to be honest, I don't feel like it's real. It's pure kindness that comes from the heart. But it's Lai Tri's conspiracy. His eyes sparkle, and he's talking like a bad boy while David is standing next to me. My mother will vomit. I don't see Anne as being very good. I mean after you kidnapped during the Academy's invasion. He didn't even check to see if she was okay. Just went to a place no one knew where. My grandfather to make sure I was okay. He was just busy oh yeah. I went somewhere to practice secretly after work. Stood there and told David to Kadia also said David was being too harsh. David reply, if if you ask me, I just saw him running away from the fight because he was afraid of death. The test behind him said he was wrong. David Ether may be a bit naive and ignorant in some areas, but he is not someone who is afraid to give up. Where to hide? The desire to protect the people he loves is too great for land to be like that. David said oh well, Ather will be the hero to save us all from the wrath of Edonha or whatever. Then he left. The three of them looked after him. Then Dia scowled and said that bastard got off work and asked him he couldn't be that strong right? He shook his head and said he was very strong. Daya excitedly said wow, I look forward to meeting you I'm so you'll introduce us won't you? She laughed and said yes of course. I hope to see you soon. The rest of the team is done. They continue on their way. David feels so scared. Listen to what Rogo told us. We'll quickly reach the point where our adventurer is drunk and his team is ambushed by mana beasts. Based on what he reports, we should expect at least a few hundred monsters. Bigger and more dangerous than the ones we have faced before. I told everyone to prepare themselves and hope everyone is protected. Rogo looked left and then right and talk about what the hell they saw. The monsters have all been defeated. David said, I don't know whether to feel relieved or scared. Jogo gritted his teeth and told us to go to the Tet door. Tell our team to keep the same formation. One person came to open the door, then said the door wasn't closed tightly. Rogo ordered them to open up. The remaining people were in a state of readiness to fight, but when the door opened, they were surprised to see that the monsters had all been defeated. That monster Tet saw Ather sitting majestically, with his sword waiting for everyone. Why is Ather you? Everyone looked at each other in bewilderment, not understanding what was going on. That's it. The room suddenly went viral, jumped into Test Rogo's lap, and worriedly asked the princess if she was okay. Stop, she's a friend. Rogo shouted loudly, Who is that person? Tell me now. Ather jumped down, slowly walked towards them, and said I'm not the enemy. Of everyone Helen happily told A to take him back to pick him up and after work stood behind and thought that it was Ather Laquin that Teet Shia had been telling all along, but Test Xiao, why is she not happy to see him again? Seo Jogo said sorry to interrupt the reunion, but there are a lot of issues to deal with what exactly happened here. I wasn't informed that anyone was going to join this attack, looks like Jogo's face was quite angry. Ather calmly replied that I'm sure no one has been told that because I've only been here for less than an hour and I didn't expect to appear in the middle of a, such a huge group of monsters. Jogo immediately asked what you mean. You took care of them all yourself. The monsters behind you. Even those S-class monsters, but you're just a kid, and we're a whole battalion. The magician has been preparing carefully for a whole week. Everyone immediately asked who that kid was. How could that be possible? His aura said after work. So what about the monster cores? Ather said. Oh, that's it. My summoned beast loves to eat monster cores. Go was surprised and asked that small beast. Why did he eat all of that monster's core? Suddenly a beast appeared behind Athu. Seeing that, he was extremely scared. Panicked. But Athu is very calm. Slash it once, and you can defeat it. Sorry, I must have missed one. Anyway, if you have any questions, 
please wait for me to rest and eat something. Don't fall. Immediately turn around and tell Yogo, I will take care of him. Commander, we will definitely escort him back to base safely. Helen said he is also our old teammate. I almost fell down and said thank you Tet for giving me a very bright smile. There is no doubt that this is definitely my childhood friend, but something has been uncomfortable in my chest for several years since that time. Last time I met him, and I thought my meeting would be different like this, I can tell everyone the rest from his sudden appearance. He fell asleep soundly in his arms, and she was also very happy because of A's appearance. They returned to the camp and sat together in a room, and kept it completely secret. He only briefly summarized the important things, which made Zilgo unhappy at all. But it was enough for him to plan his next action if tomorrow left and told him to rest well, Ather and to wave goodbye to her, when there were only two left. Teet looked at Ather, then grabbed her hand and ran away. Ather turned around and smiled and said it's been a long time. I really miss you. Tears filled her eyes, and she hugged him. Thu said you're an idiot. I miss you too. Ather used her hands to wipe away the tears. There were tears on her pretty little face. She said you're still a crybaby. Tet blushed awkwardly and said shut up. I'll tell you that I changed a lot. Ather smiled and told me. I know, he put his hand on his chin and his eyes were affectionate. Tell me about your story. I want to know everything. After work, I finished my shift outside and was sitting by the fire in deep contemplation. David came up to me, hugged my face and said, It's so frustrating. Kadia was thinking about it and said I said it was different, but even if we all joined forces I'm not sure we could come back unscathed from a fight like that. David pointed towards Kadia, then said exactly that's impossible. That guy I said he was just one person. How could he kill them all? Did he really kill them all? Kadia laughed and said, Ha, oh, why do I smell jealousy? After work, I ask you what you mean by jealousy. Jealousy is when you worry that someone will take away what you have. Jealousy is when you keep pursuing what other people have. Yes, David stood up and said, I understand I'll challenge him to a duel. The two of them told you not to do that, brother Dia Bao. Why are you bothered by this? He's just a human. David doesn't need to knowing how strong he is. He can't end this war. David replied, I don't need your pity. I want to know the strength of a person who has wiped out all monsters and even the S-class beast. How horrible would that be? And the way he talks to everyone, it seems like he's a snob. After work, he said he just came here and doesn't know anyone. David asked angrily, why are you on his side? There's no side. I'm simply speaking my mind. On the battlefield, it's normal to be wary of strangers. But you've heard Tess Gia talk about him too. Don't you think we should trust him? David said her mind was clouded by childhood memories, and you clearly saw the tension between the two of them. Is there something wrong with her? After shift, he got angry and scowled, pointed at David's chest, and told him that he was so petty. Why was he like a child? David couldn't help but angrily grabbed his shirt collar after shift and argued back. I'm just relying on my instincts. That annoying guy Dyak stopped them and told them not to argue, but regardless of Dia's words, they continued to argue. David said that maybe he couldn't do it, what is your deformed mana core? That's why you're angry with me. Tanka told me at least I don't overdo it. When I see someone clearly stronger than me, you keep my priceless self-esteem. David was angry. I was so angry. But then he let go of his hand and stopped grabbing the collar of his shirt after shift. Then said damn it and let it go. Dia finally breathed a sigh of relief and told May that he even realized his mistake. Tet and Ather walked out. Hey everyone, our meeting is over. David said, but it's still different. He walked up to Ather and introduced me as David Leo. The fourth son of the Leo family officially challenged him to a match. Everyone around. Cheered come on David yes, show us what the power of the flying axe can do, there is no other way, Ather said even though he accepted the challenge, but I can see why you do you want to fight with me. David replied that it's a man's pride. Jogo stood there and said okay, let's talk about the rules a bit before we start. Just use Ma to strengthen your body. Who surrenders? If you lose the ability to fight first, you will lose. You understand the rule. Ather immediately stop. David is a good fighter. So this kid will have to fight for real to see if he is as strong as he says. Rogo shouted and started. David quickly rushed towards Ather. But Ather easily dodged it. The people outside saw this and immediately said what's going on. David, don't hesitate any longer. David shouted loudly. Shut up. After work, he thought. I think I've known David long enough to understand the madness of an A-level monster. Although he is cruel, he fights very effectively. I once saw him defeat an adventurer of the same A-level but twice as big. Him and an arrogant smile on his lips. Now, I can't believe my eyes anymore. Standing from here, I can still see the bloodthirsty monster David is afraid. David shouted loudly and continued to rush towards Ather. He tried he tried his best to defeat Athu. But unfortunately for him, Athu was able to dodge everything and punch him in the stomach. 
After that punch, David realized how fast this monster's reflexes were. It's crazy to block this attack. Athur easily broke the attack. He rushed to attack again. But the one who was attacked was him. At this point, David's whole body was in pain. Then he collapsed. When we got down to the ground, everyone stood outside and watched and asked what had just happened. But Kat Dyer realized that it was a tan mana acupressure point and asked her what she meant by the skill of blocking the flow of mana in the body. Did I read about it? This is in the Mana Anatomy book, but those points should have been protected due to the body, strengthening from Ma, Kadea Bao, and those points are also so small that it is almost impossible to aim. In another fight, I pulled closer to David and asked if he needed my help, but he told me to stay away from me after the shift and laughed and said I think we just witnessed K something wonderful. David lay on the ground wondering what what's going on. Why can't I move right now, Mr. Vine is coming. Tell you it'll be okay, kid, right? After everyone turned to look and wondered when did they come. Mr. Vian? Then he took his hand and hugged Ather's neck, and then asked, sarcastically, Why didn't he tell me you were back? Too much Ather said I also hope so, how do you two know I'm here Mr. Vian told me that you received a letter from Mr. Quinn Song, and so I came here immediately. Is it Reng's idea for you to go to where Tija is stationed? His sense of humor is truly unforgettable. Tet told me that meeting Ather was more surprising than meeting an S-class monster while hunting. Also, Ather said that when I arrived, a group of monsters attacked me, and the virus didn't even have time to catch my breath. Tet excitedly asked if what you said to Yoga was true. Why are you alone? What's wrong? What about the door? How did you get in and how did Mr. Vian interrupt Tess dozens of questions? Not right now. Tess Chia has something important I need to discuss with Ather and also not here anymore. Tet asked so we will leave. Then the diocese said no, I'm not going to stay. Tet immediately told Ather that he had only been here for a few hours and you guys had already brought him. Why did Ather immediately say test well, I still have a lot of things to tell them again. Mr. Vian told me that this dungeon has been cleared, so everyone will leave here soon. Well, you still have your own war, right? You and the team yours will be very busy, so prepare them. Remember what we agreed on. Don't be sad. Obey my order. The ring battle must be fought by my own strength. Yes, good command. Private battle. It's mine to fight because it's my strength, Ladia said. Now go, I'm sure you've gotten stronger in just the past few months. The battles you've been through are training you very well. Thank you, Master Ether. Master, sir. Why did you take the Xia test? So I was surprised. Really, I fell and Ather walked out. When he saw Ather finishing shift, he happily raised his hand to greet him. David asked, why did he say hello? After finishing shift, he replied, I think it's appropriate. Sir, Mr. Vijian and Ather went somewhere. Ather asks why he didn't talk to D earlier. He replied a lady must have a secret or two, right? Oh, now I'm already a lady, she said, next time I do the test. Why are you surprised? Ather looked up to see a huge bear. I'll tell you that she's appeared behind that bear. Ather will be surprised, right? I'll leave the story. She immediately rushed to hug Ather and said, welcome back. He also hugged me and said, thank you, I'm big now. So don't jump on me anymore. I said they're here, she waved and called. Ather's mother looked sad at this moment. But surprisingly the two of them walked over and hugged Ather in her arms. He stammered and said I don't understand. I thought the mother's voice was warm in saying the person I raised for more than a decade. Kai has returned after years of training. I think that's enough for a hug. She patted my son's head and told me I'm sure you've gone through all kinds of difficulties. Mom then said there's more that I've invested in. There's a lot of children. He scratched his head and said Mom was right. The two of you gave me more than I expected. Cam saw Ather's hand and called me, Brother, why didn't you ask me about Bo? Why did Ather immediately say Big Dog? Hey, his name is Bo. He then roared and said he was using my name as a joke. He immediately warned Ather. Ather turned to tell me that I saw Bo. It seemed a bit hot-tempered. So I immediately hugged Bo and bow. He just wanted to see if I was as strong as what you told me or not. Is he very competitive? Thu was surprised and asked, wait a minute. Can I talk to the beast? Can I bond with it? I laughed and said, I guess. So the father is proud of his children and the mother said, at least we know who raised this daughter. Ather immediately asked when did this happen? Mr. Vian immediately replied that Lord Quinns had not mentioned this issue yet. He gave this ma animal to my family as a gift before I moved to use. Ather was wondering and said that but Quinns gave the stuffed animal. This flower is for my sister. How can she ride it on the battlefield? The goat immediately said yes. When Lord Quinns gave it to our family, it was only a baby, but I still have to say that it is very big. Very quickly over the past two years, she also told me that growing up is a bit fast, and the boss said that it was very touching to witness such a warm family reunion like this. The rest will have to wait until after we after the discussion. Athor looked at his parents and said, 
but he'll leave soon and told Ather that now my family has always lived here. As expected, this place will bring the best benefits to you, and I will see them again. Ather bowed politely and said yes. Thank you, sir. He patted his sister's head and said I'll talk to you later. She happily replied yes, and then he left Mr. Vision. Ather walked away together. Ather turned away. Looking back, I saw my family having fun. Bo was rubbing her head and telling me that I would go to practice more to protect her. She happily laughed, ha. I knew it, but she confided in the virus. I'm glad my sister doesn't have to be lonely anymore. The virus only replied with one word yes. The three of them entered the meeting room. This room is quite large. Ather wondered and asked, Why isn't there just us? What kind of council does the king or queen have? I think at least there should be a good guy commander here. Mr. Tildia shook his head and Mr. Vian looked sad and said there were still a lot of things from the war that I haven't caught up with yet. Scythea is currently in a state of deep sleep to deal with the effects of the curse that was activated when she revealed information about the person a LCDA heard. Ather was angry and did not believe that what she heard was true. Immediately asked her what, but you tried to stay calm. Tell me everything. After that conversation, Ather did the same thing as me. She spent hours attacking you too. Held her by the countless questions I had I was out of the loop for almost two years, Quinn and Zane only told me the information they thought was necessary. So it wasn't much according to Vision, the gliders were focusing mostly their attempt to enter the kingdom of Jia in the hope of winning back the loyalty of the dwarves Du Tai. And King Guider did what Test had done to form a team to seek real combat experience on the front line and his family. I've been staying at the castle for protection. But the Pig Ray family has gone somewhere. Vin Sin is using his resources to support the war resources. Ather asked his parents. They also seemed interested in participating. Mr. Vision said your father did, but I told him to restrain himself. Until you came back or Ellen said he was a little older. Thu thanked him and said I couldn't imagine it. How would you feel? If your father went to war and died in the war, if you weren't here for half an hour, let's get to the main topic of the meeting. Come on, you know we didn't tell you to come here just to reunite with your family. I also know there's something very serious so you keep your niece a secret otherwise you wouldn't have told me at the camp. Then Mr. Vigan immediately said Tess Chia is a very ambitious person and has been trained very well. But Ather immediately said, but you still worry about her and Gui more than anything, right? I understand, Vision, if I say something wrong, please correct me. But it seems like the current battle is everyone's concern. On the front lines, although the defenses at the wall are preventing mutants and AIA soldiers from leaving the secret portals created by the Axia types, and their ability to control mob beasts are forming a the fighting force is very dangerous. This is very suspicious. The clearings are probably the perfect place for them to form and control S-class demonic monsters or their numbers, but that's too obvious. None of them. Being able to overcome our defense lines means that our side is stronger, or they are wasting time and looking at Mr. Vision's worried face. I think it must be the second case. Mr. Vigan's face is extremely frowning. Seriously, the recent evidence that has come to light has confirmed that this is very suspicious. The speaker said that right now, Ather, I can't let you blame yourself for what I'm about to say. He opened the piece of paper and placed it on the table. Looking at the details drawn on that piece of paper, Ather was shocked and said that this is the boss, and immediately said that this is not Guthioge if you are wondering this is a ship built and used by Aya. He picked up the design of his nephew and took it up to observe. He angrily crumpled it up and immediately stood up. Mr. Vian stood up and said that at the time of Ather, someone opened the door to announce the Lord Commander. Mr. Vian saw that there was a bad omen here. The look on his face was concerned. He immediately asked what was going on. They were in sight, Commander. He stammered. He said yes, the West Coast was hit. Axia's ship heard that. Ather panicked and ran away as quickly as possible. As he was running, he was told by a guard along the hallway, but regardless, Ather continued running to the door with two guards. He stopped him and told him to quickly declare his identity and purpose, but ignored his words. Ather was still staring blankly and ran inside, but was stopped by two guards who were bewildered. What is this? Stop, he told Ather to step back quickly, and Ather quickly said please open the gate. Said no matter who comes in or out, they must have permission from Commander Vision or Lord Ladia. There hasn't been any orders from them yet so the gate cannot be opened. Kid Ather replied I just returned to the castle with Vian and Ladia, and they know I need to go out. I ordered him to quickly open the gate. He also said that Commander Vision and Lord Leaf Dia, no matter how noble the noble children are, you should still learn to respect your elders. Go now, if you go out alone, it will be very dangerous. If you have someone to protect you, if you see that talking normally with these two gatekeepers is not okay. Ather used the authority he has and said I don't need a guardian. The guard was not at this time. 
At that time, Lord Latdia also came and told the two door guards who were trembling because of Ather's power. He put his hand on Ather's shoulder and told him that he could leave at any time. He wants it. He advised Ather, but remember not to do anything foolish and waste time. Ather ran inside and said to open the gate to Eton, and where Ms. Shinthea was lying, there were two men. Stand on both sides of her bed and say quickly give us as much information as possible. Ivory's knowledge is the key to victory. Principal, please Thea good guy. Think of the millions of lives you saved if cooperate with us, even if you die because of the curse, it doesn't matter. As long as we get the answer we want, your value will end here. Suddenly, suddenly, you suddenly opened your eyes and said death. Maybe Lord later. Dia has resolved what people said and perhaps the two men from before were just a nightmare after a long sleep of hers. In the middle of a vast field of flowers, there is a man and a woman walking. Walking there. As we walked and talked, the man asked. Now that the war has ended, what are you going to do next? We've known each other for a while in the Thang years. Whether we were enemies or not, there's one thing we know. Always thought. The woman smiled and asked, Oh, what is it? Eternal love for me, man. He laughed and said sorry. But don't you forget that we have a family. Why did she say that's okay? Making the other nobles hesitate, he said that the elf was very loyal. I always thought she was a great and inspiring guide. I could imagine the scene where she was the principal of some famous academy leading the younger generation to a bright future. Why you suddenly think like that for many reasons, but seriously I think you should consider this. It's very suitable for you. Raise your hand and let the butterfly land on your hand. His petite and pretty face then smiled brightly and replied, How about I open an academy myself? I've grown to like the super travel sea. He happily said that an academy for magicians is located in this famous city. That's interesting. She put her hand on his shoulder and said, Let's open it together. He covered his face and laughed. So what is it called? The Magic Academy of Good Guy and Dai Lin. Please, I will send you, or I'm sure until they're old enough. If my school is good enough for them, she will definitely open a school. Just wait and see. Super Travel Academy will become the best academy for mages in the whole world. He shook. At first, she said that Super Du Academy is located in Siu Du, which doesn't sound very special, right? She said it's better to let Good Guy and Dylan's Magic Academy go too. Your descendants are very lucky to be able to attend, you know. Just kidding. Then I hope Super Du Academy will be a great success. She smiled and said she hoped so. This was the end of the conversation. The atmosphere turned gray. The man left, leaving the girl behind. After calling me, drops of blood began to appear and drip onto the ground. The man turned his back and said I'm just an old man now. Hurry up. A loud noise woke up Mr. Vajan because he was so tired. Fell asleep on the table and it turned out that the dream from earlier was a memory of his past, and she asked him to go out and ask the soldier. What's going on, sir? I don't know anymore. The scream seemed to come from downstairs. He immediately said there was no one. But suddenly he remembered that that was where Ms. Cynthia was lying. He suddenly slapped his whole body and called Anna Athur, had reached Eton City, and a man pulled his hand and asked him, Kid, what are you doing here? Do you know that this place is on emergency alert? Thu said that Commander Vian has arrived. He pushed away the other guy's hand that was holding his hand and told him to open the door now and look at A. Thu is still young and doesn't know his true abilities. He said that's reasonable. Virian commander sent a skinny handsome boy here. If you're a noble boy who ran away from home because he was angry, then now is not the time he called Led C. Azam to take this kid home now. I don't have time to protect anyone else. I see there is no other way. Ather used his ability to prove his strength. He said if, if you don't open the gate, I will go myself. You and the computer have now turned into dragons and flown into the sky. At this time, Athor remembers the day he went to Mr. John's house with Uncle Vin to make an agreement. Exchange, he walked on the solid shoes covered with white snow. He remembered what Mr. Vian told him not to blame himself. No matter what happens, always move forward and don't try to fight for let's fight for a better future than you think. I've never considered myself a hero who needs to save the world. The reason I fight is simply to be able to protect the people I cherish. But now, after all that happened, I have another reason, which is to correct the mistake, and Mr. Vision, after discovering it from downstairs, immediately ran downstairs. When he got down, he saw the rope. His face was very sad, and Anna was looking down at some other people who were also here. When he opened the door, he was shocked at the scene in front of him, and discovered that Cynthia had died. He hugged her in pain. Her face screamed and cried because of that. So it turns out that her nightmare of dying was not a dream but reality.